Leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. Sending it third, Carter at second. Here's the pitch. Young swings and blasts one. Deep left field. That is on its way, and that ball is history. To the back of the lower deck. A tremendous three-run Jimmy Jack for Josh Young. And the Rangers grab a 3-0 first inning lead. And then Josh Young would be grabbing his wrist. Good morning, Metroplex. It's a Tolo Tuesday live edition here with Sean Sharif and RJ Choppy on your home for Rangers baseball 105-3 the fan. The good news is the Rangers dominate the Rays in Tampa. Tampa not getting rid of those memories of the American League playoffs Last year. They don't forget. They they hold grudges down there in South Florida. They do? I don't know. Sounds like it. Nine, three Rangers. The bad news is three Rangers are hit in the ninth inning, including Josh Young and Bruce Bochy after the game announces it is a fractured wrist. So the injuries continue for the young Rangers stud. Yeah, they do. Uh, that's a sad one because... Uh, we had just talked about how actually how good he is. He's and, the player of the game too. Yeah, he was, and I mean, he gets him off to a right on the right start. Or Dane, you get that. Yeah, you know, Dane was, but uh, from an offensive standpoint, you get them off on the right start. You get that. They get the early lead, uh, and then I mean, look, all all season in the first three games, uh, you know, we had done maybe just like we're talking all about Wyatt Langford and Emma Carter. Like, let's not forget. Let's not forget who last year was trending to be the rookie of the year until he got hurt. Or at least top two, um, and that's what he was anyway. So, like this is this is a tremendous player that has been bit by an injury bug a little bit. Got hurt last year, and then again now gets hurt this time. Very weird, kind of swung. He went moved his body into it. Very odd how he moved his body into it. Uh, whereas like a turns the other way and gets hit on the on the side of the hand, right? As he goes into it on this one. Uh, and it just catches him, and you see right there, I mean, that's a terrible spot to get hit. And, of course, every Ranger is going to take this to the question of intent from, is it Mayton? Yeah, Phil Mayton. That's what we're calling him, Phil, Phil Mayton. Uh, with three hit batters in the inning, Evan Carter, Adolis, and, of course, Josh. How are we judging intent here? And will there be some Ranger retribution today? Ha! <laughs> Uh, yeah, there might be retribution today. Hit three guys uh, in a row. You're, you're going to raise some eyebrows. Now, Phil was with Houston last year, and he'd been with Houston. So there's a, there's a history with, uh, you know, with him and, and you know, being in a rivalry uh, with this team. I don't know. It's weird. Like, I, I have to go back and look at how many games he's pitched so far this year, how wild he has been. He was trying to bust guys inside. If you bust guys inside, you miss a little bit. This is the time of year where you're going to miss. Like, this is it. This is the least command you're going to have all year. If this was June, I'd be like, yeah, there, there's intent there. I don't know. I'd get some pause late March. Peyton, what do you think? Intent? I'm not buying the intent. I mean, the first one got away from it. It barely nicked uh, Carter. The second one, I know Dolis got mad at it, but I think that's just him being frustration. I mean, that one, it got, if you, if you can pinpoint on the forearm to hit a guy, I, I mean, you're just accurate. I don't think it's intent. If it was like, you know, shoulder blade or behind him, then maybe you're up around the head, but I didn't think intent there. It just sucks that it was Josh Young. I agree with you. I'm leaning a little bit more towards Wild. Uh, Macklemore in the post also did not think that there was intent. Uh, because the one that Josh fractured the wrist on, and that was, I mean, he was swinging at it, you know, like he was, yeah. it, it, it wasn't to the point where he was just 
ducking, dodging, trying to get out of the way. It was close enough that he appeared to try to put a full swing on it. It mm -hmm. just sucks. Um, but uh, there you have a lot of Ranger Tolo saying, well, get him out. Tampa, what are you doing on the other side? This guy clearly cannot control what he's doing. They're just trying to burn away outs and innings in order to end this thing because they're going to lose down six late. Go ahead and get him out of this game. So that's where we stand, and uh, we'll see if anything happens today. Six o'clock right here on the fan for game two. Yeah, I, I mean, there there might be some some retribution. Um, I mean, you hit three guys. He was was he trying to bust you inside? He tried to bust you inside. He's got a tailing pitch. I, I could see how they would they would run. And then the, the, the young one, it did run in on him a little bit. He was lined up inside. The catcher was lined up inside. It started kind of close to Adam, and then obviously it runs. So, I mean, look, it, would it surprise me if there was a tet? No, it wouldn't. I don't think there was. I think he got away from him because he was trying to pitch inside anyway. And today, I do suspect they will probably at least give a courtesy <laughs> up and in. Not at the head, maybe, but to give him an up and in. Somebody will get an up and in today. Bruce Bochy with a Josh Young update after the game. Yeah, well, uh, bad news uh, with Josh. He, he's got a fractured wrist, and I just feel horrible. Uh, he's had such tough luck on this end uh, as far as injuries and kind of puts a damper on this one, uh, especially the way he was playing. He, he was carrying the mail today. Um, he'll be back. You know, I talked to him briefly, and... Yeah, you know, now this hurts. Uh, you know, I feel for the kid because he's had to deal with so much. Uh, so anyway, um, it's going to be a little while, but he'll be back. Josh Young on the season, seven for seventeen, hitting four twelve, four extra base hits, two home runs, six runs batted in. The OPS fourteen fifteen. That's fourth best in Major League Baseball. So he was off to a fantastic start. And then, of course, it's a treat to watch him play third base. He's very good. He's a, he's a tremendous defensive player. And that's that's part of what makes a player from really, really good to somebody that can be great, is that they can, they can also play on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, he, he is, he is going to be missed. There is no doubt about that. I mean, now where do you go? Right? Glad you asked. Jared Sandler, seven hours ago. Some options. Call up Foscue. Okay. Zeke is everyday third no. baseman. No, I mean because he's also that means he's also an everyday base runner. Foscu play uh, platoons at first base with Wash. Option two, call up Wenzel requires a forty move. Zeke plays third. Uh, no, again, no. Versus right handers and left handers. Either Zeke plays third, uh, Wenzel at first, or Zeke at first, Wenzel oh, at third. I got a great idea for Zeke. Play for somebody else. The Cowboys. Yeah, absolutely. Just got that, that base running. Got to go. Got to go. <laughs> uh, and then call up Ornalis or Duffy. 40 man needed as utility on the bench. So these are some of the different options. And Sandler says, I think option one is my pick. Call up Foscu. Zeke is everyday third baseman. Foscu platoons at first base with Walsh, uh, who did more damage last night. Yeah. And now, listen, in, in the uh, all, all joking aside with Zeke Duran, they probably don't make the playoffs without him last year. He was tremendous when Seager went down. Very, very good. Um, yeah, he's fun. Yeah, he's a good player. He's good. He can't run the bases. I mean, if you could do a courtesy runner like they do in, in, uh, in, in like youth baseball, courtesy, you could do that. One, you get like you could pick one or two guys a game and do a courtesy. That, that's the guy to do. But he's a good, he's a good player. Overall. Meanwhile, what a way for the armpit to stop the stench of 0-4 starting off against the Yankees. Here's early history in the season. Ground ball. Dubon throws the first. Go header. Run up, Blanco. In his eighth career start, the 30-year-old makes magic on April Fool's Day. The 30-year-old on Astros television throwing a no-hitter for the armpit, Ronel Blanco, and Houston gets their first one of the year. What style? There you go. What style? Listen, I, I really I don't like this organization, but I got to tell you one thing. They know how to throw a no-hitter, man. <laughs> they have 17 no-hitters in their franchise history. It's disgusting. <laughs> which has not been around considerably long. It's like 1960-something. 
And Nolan Ryan only has one of them. Oh. Only has one of them. They've got seven since 2015. What? It's one a year. What is going on? This guy in a span of seven days welcomed a new daughter, made his first opening day roster, then threw the first no-hitter in the bigs this season. Struck out seven and walked two. Did not play in the majors until he was 28, and as the announcer said, making his eighth career start. He wouldn't even be in the rotation if not for the injuries right? Uh, to Verlander and others. Uh, but there you go. Uh, the no-no takes place yesterday uh, for the Astros to get the first W, and this was against Toronto, by the way. Yeah, so second no-hitter at all time against Toronto. Earliest calendar date of a no-hitter in league history. Mm. Um, they've got four since 2022. Wow. Since June of 2022, they have four. I mean, that's just crazy. What a, of course, what a what a flair for the dramatic to get your first uh, win and and actually get a get a get a good game at home. So there you go for uh, for Houston. All right, we have a Rasheed Rice Dallas drag racing update. An NFL Pro Bowler tragically passes away, and I was hoping that the Rangers would put this out of reach so I could switch on over to the event that RJ and Bobby were boycotting. And I got my wish last night, and it was worth it. The Tolo Tuesday edition with a Rangers four-pack giveaway during the Expressway is just getting started on the fan. Coming up the next G-Bag Nation.
She's a career high with nine threes. She's got 37. That was the call on Iowa Radio. I wanted the Rangers to get started early. They did 6 o'clock here on 105.3 The Fan. I wanted them to handle the Tampa Bay Rays, put this one out of reach. They did until the late drama with all the Rangers getting hit. Josh Young with the fractured wrist. And I wanted all that to happen so I could switch on over to the second half of Iowa against the, the well, the team from LSU. The debutants. I'm not going to say the. I'm not going to say the, uh, the, the, the. I still don't even know what the hell that means. Well, you can't look it up on this computer. I know that. I learned that yesterday. I, I, I looked it up and it keeps, gives you a million. Yeah. Like different definitions. Yeah. Milking cookies against the evil empire. That's what this was billed as by some publications. And it was tied at halftime. And this was worth switching. I know I got some man card court violations thrown my way. Uh, but this girl's sick. She's Steph. Uh, I think it was Peter Schrager from NFL Network saying she's Pat Mahomes. She, she's Steph Curry. She was pulling up on everyone like she usually does. I, I'm sorry. She was pulling up on Haley Van Lith. Not everyone. What does that mean? That's the one girl that was guarding her the entire night, and Kim Mulkey never made an adjustment. You put a white girl on her? Okay. Oh. That's what she said. Oh, that's what Larry Bird said. Don't do that. Don't put a white guy on me. It's disrespectful. So she said that she repeated no, it out. No, I, I, she didn't. <laughs> Twitter did. Twitter did. They're Twitter like, did. Oh, you didn't make an adjustment when she had 37? Uh, you put a small, you just put a short girl on her. Go ahead. And then she can pass too, man. Just threading the needle against everyone. She's Steph Curry. 41, 12 assists, nine threes made, seven rebounds. No other NBA, WNBA, or Division I men's or women's player in the last 25 years has reached all those numbers in any single game as they eliminate Kim Mulkey, who can now buy some newspaper subscriptions online and read all the LSU obituaries. That's right. Yeah, Twitter came through with that one, too. She defended herself against the uh, newspaper better than she uh, did against Caitlin Clark <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in this game. Uh, it was uh, what, what a uh, what a not a good performance uh, by Kim Mulkey and by LSU, who uh, Iowa, I guess, gets the revenge. And now they move on to the Final Four. They have UConn in the Final Four. UConn, I know, advanced they to the advanced, Final Four. Yeah. I don't know what the, uh, the bracket looks like, but... I, to me, she's a treat to watch. We'll get Bobby in here, uh, who tweeted me back saying, what are you watching a UFL game after that? Uh, you know, taking all the shots. Uh, I lost some friend points uh, on when people were screenshotting my tweet and sending it to me saying, seriously, what are you doing? But uh, she can ball. We're going to get into an explosive topic later on oh, no. featuring Kenyon Martin, Gilbert Arenas, oh, yeah. and Ice Cube's $5 million offer for Caitlin Clark to join the big three and the argument over what she would do or not do in that league. So that'll be a fun argument later on with uh, with, with you and Steve Darcy. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I wonder, I'm trying to think what, what take you're going to have here on this one, but I'm, I'm interested to see this. Okay. I'm very interested to see this. 877-881-1053 uh, to hit us up on the Franklin Franklin Injury Attorney Hotline. Did you switch on over at all? To Iowa LSU. Did you care at all? I switched over for a second. Now, I caught it the first time. It was at halftime. Uh, and I saw the score was 45 all. I was like, ooh, that's a high-scoring game. Um, and then, you know, we were, we were you know, Sarah's, you know, we, we, she loves watching baseball. She's like, do not, do not do that. Do not go to women's basketball. Do not put women's basketball on this TV. Pay, pay. And I was like, yeah, you know, you got to tell me twice. So I did, it was like, I think late in the third quarter, I switched over just to watch and my girlfriend Mackenzie, she was like, women's basketball? Like, what would he do? It was hard to convince, you know? Yeah. And it wasn't just because it was a, you know, girl sport. It was just women's basketball. Like you've never, and, and <laughs> it wasn't, know, it's not because it's a girl sport, yeah. women's basketball. What do you yeah, basketball? It's, just, it's just why, why, why that, you know, NBA, NBA, you know, I, I can have the excuse for, but you know, women's basketball, she was like, why? So I had to switch it back to baseball. Yeah. Uh, we have some Angel Reese audio afterwards. She's getting uh, talked about a lot. Uh, for talking about being victimized a little bit after her college career ended. We got some updates. Uh, Rasheed Rice is apparently now cooperating 
with Look Dallas that. police. That's unbelievable. Yes. Fantastic He's news. got great remorse. And we got to see all the facts that come out, even though we actually seem to have them on the dashboard camera that was released from TMZ. It was fast. It was hard. Yeah. There's uh, there's uh, Rasheed Rice, who is now cooperating with authorities after they were looking for him after the Corvette and Lamborghini accident. And then really, really sad news as... Uh, former NFL cornerback Vontae Davis found dead at the age of 35 at his residence in South Florida. Brother of the tight end Vernon, Vernon Davis. And of course, he had that awkward retirement 2018 playing for the Bills and he abruptly retired at halftime. And after the game, he said, I mean, no disrespect to my teammates and coaches, but I didn't feel right. And truthfully, uh, look, it's more important for me to walk away healthy for my family than embrace this warrior mentality and limp away too late. So Vontae Davis, we do not have cause of death. Police are saying no foul play is expected right now. Uh, dead at the age of 35. Yeah, and then the no foul play, I mean, that leaves open like, oh, gosh, now what? Because uh, you, you hope it wasn't like self-inflicted or anything. And, and I mean, football, you go right to the CTE. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's sad. It's, it's really, really sad. I had forgotten about that, um, that he was the guy that left the game early until I saw that yesterday, that left the game at halftime with the Bills. Uh, but yes, it's, it's sad to see. And, and way too young. 35, way too young. I got DFW Toe, YouTube Kidnap, and Eclipse Jail. I know that you're all over the Eclipse story, uh, but we may have some uh, fan tolos behind bars right now who are not happy that they're not going to be let out to experience history. Yes. Yeah, so if you are in prison, letters from prison, letters from prison, a lot of prisoners around the country are not happy that they will not be allowed outside to see the eclipse uh, on Monday of next week. Go to the yard, look up, look up at the sky, <laughs> depending on what state you're in, what area you're in, what kind of. You know, you know, um, amenities you have uh, in, in your prison, but there's a lot of prisoners uh, who are unhappy that you know, in in certain states, they are not going to allow them. Out. I haven't seen a Texas one, but I've seen certain states where they're not going to allow them outside to go see the eclipse, and that is they're starting they're starting to start to protest. Oh, they're starting to protest inside some of the yards. What's that protest? I don't stuff? know. Yeah. I don't know. Shanking. I have no idea what it is, but um, you know, if you don't. If you're incarcerated, say, say, for, say, for say for example, in New York, you know they're not going to see an eclipse till 2045, so 20 more years. Uh, this is, a, you know, for us, I mean, a total eclipse. We're talking 300 more years for a total totality. Where it's going to be like pitch black for you know 300 more years. So prisoners are not happy that they are not going to be able to go and see the eclipse. And we have Tolos who are getting crazy money for their Airbnbs. I'm sitting there thinking about you know renting out. Uh, my home that I'm trying to sell, uh, you know, as an Airbnb, what, what you could fetch per night. I don't know. And what is everyone's big plans for this occasion? I uh, we, I don't have any plans at the moment. We're going to go look at it. We're not going to go anywhere. We're, you know, S Sarah will be working. And we're so where her route is on the Monday, she's like in a great spot to watch. She's in a better spot than, than I would be at the house. She'll be like southeast Fort Worth at the time. So it's a much better spot than where I am on the north side of Fort Worth. Um, so I, yeah, I'm just gonna go outside in the backyard and put the goggles on and look up, look up at the sky. Goggles? Oh, you can't look. You gotta get those special. They look like three D. Remember those three D glasses you would wear? Yeah, they look just like that. You gotta go get them. Um, my son's orthodontist has given them away today. Oh, they, wow. they said, come on in, get your free goggles. Uh, you can go get those. You can order them online. Good luck getting them here in time. Now, though, they're like 20 bucks. Oh. They're upcharging you on Amazon for these things. And they're so. plastic. No, it's just plastic. They're paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not plastic. Yeah, they're that, that's what I have. I have the, the oh, you ones have plastic that, ones. Yeah, I have the plastic. I mean, yeah, it's like paper, but then like the lens are plastic. But I don't have, yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. goggles. Or I wonder if I could just wear like two pairs of sunglasses at the same time. That would do the same trick. We have a major update on something the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban, and every gambler in DFW is going to be interested in. Did it finally pass for the Mavs new owners. RJ Choppy had his report. Was he proven right or wrong? The big Texas gambling update is next.
Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. Got the entire morning squad together. Sean Tree, RJ Choppy, and our Cowboys insider, Bobby Bell. We got Peyton and Ryan in the back live on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. Almost overslept this morning, gentlemen. Oh, no. Yeah. Late night of women's college basketball. I was Stop just, it. I'm exhausted. God. I got something for you. Okay. Uh-oh. I I, I guess I got something for you later on. Is okay. they're they're shaming me, uh, especially Bobby shaming me for tuning on over to Caitlin Clark, and it was absolutely worth it if you sit there and look at the highlights. But uh, I'll sure. uh, I'll fight you uh, and Gilbert Arenas and Kenyon Martin a little <laughs> bit a little bit later on. But uh, I'll go ahead. I'll, uh, I'll 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 take the shots right now. Get the man card court uh, trial coming up. RJ Choppy, what happened yesterday with a story that uh, you were reporting on? Uh, Well, I love being right, and uh, here I am right again. There has been a petition filed, a petition filed by a coalition uh, started by the Mavericks' new ownership, the Adelson family, uh, to get on the ballot legalized gambling in the state of Texas. The petition is fighting to bring luxury resorts, top-of-the-line entertainment, fine dining more to Texans' backyard by expanding casino-style gambling into Texas. You could do um, uh, horse racing now in Texas. Um, There are poker rooms that don't take rakes that you can have, that there are some out there. They're in, like, strip malls. Um, So you can have some of that, but there is no casino-style gambling, uh, gaming. So that coalition is backed by the Las Vegas Sands Corporation, the Adelson and the Dumont family, to legalize that gambling. It needs two-thirds support within the state government to get the ballot. The ballot is not the problem. Once it gets to the voters, you know it's going to pass. The problem is, is that they knew they don't have the votes within the State Department in order to get it on the ballot. That's been the issue. That was what I was told couple of months ago or a month ago maybe that they just they don't have the votes and this proves that you don't start a petition if you already have the votes you start a petition to change things if you had the votes and you wanted to stop it you start a petition to stop it if you don't have the votes and you want it you start a petition to get it so if you have a million signatures on this thing perhaps it tells some of these congressmen and women and senators to change their va- their vote, their vote. W- women, Bobby, they have a vote too. They oh. do have a vote, Bobby, and they could drive. What, what surprisingly year is enough, this? I, know. What, what I was surprised to see that too. I mean, come on, but uh, they and can, they can shoot basketball. I mean, they they try anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's the latest. Is that they are trying to get this petition to garner enough signatures to get the congressmen and women, Bobby, into uh, in the State Department to sign off and to change their vote. So they need to have, like I said. Two-thirds support in order to get it on a ballot, which would happen, obviously, in an election time, so November or whatever. And then once that happens, it just needs to pass 50.1%, I suppose. So what they do? Did they misevaluate their their power here, or were the Adelsons brought in to swing their power so that they could get this vote? Like, did they come into this knowing they didn't have the votes? I don't know that they came in knowing they didn't have the votes. I think they came in knowing that the people want it, and the only ones that are the roadblocks are Congress. That's my guess. Most people around the country don't care. They don't care about gambling. They don't care about marijuana legalization. Most people are like, fine, just do what you want to do. Like, like open it up, whatever. Most people, I don't, I don't believe, the studies show most people don't care. Um, Congress... It's crazy, but where politicians think that people care about things they don't think they don't care about. I, I don't know why they're so out of touch with some of these uh, congressmen and women, but they just they just are. So where do you think where where do we go from here? What do you think ends uh, up happening? They got to get a certain amount of votes. They've got to take it to the governor, the lieutenant governor, uh, the constituents. They got to take it to some of the young the underlings too to get them to change it because it's not going to be necessarily them that change it because they're you know the governor may not have a vote in this state. I don't know how that works. Because you have the House and the Senate. It's got to pass two-thirds of the House and the Senate of the state to get it. But, you know, you're going to need you're gonna need people at the top of the parties that don't want this to say, hey, I've heard from enough of my people in my community. They want this, so 
I have the duty to change this. Pepe, you starting to sweat over there? Starting to get a little uh, nervous excitement for uh, this maybe finally getting passed? Man, I hope so. Because those, I mean, even though it's an hour and a half drive north to either Choctaw or Windstar, you know, I'd love to have it right around here, you know, just somewhere locally. But man, my, my, my foot's itching. Yeah, what would <laughs> what's it? <laughs> what would happen? What would happen to to those casinos? Oh my God! Uh, so have what, we heard from them on this? By the way, um, I mean, I think you've uh, yes, we have. The fact that they don't have one, we've heard from them. They they speak with their with their wallet. Um, you know, like look, when we were in Florida for the um the NBA Finals with well, the Heat Mavs, yeah, there was that Hard Rock right by our hotel. It was in Fort Lauderdale. Or Hollywood. It was fantastic. Now, because there's only one of them, I mean, it's expensive. You're not getting your $5 tables. You're getting $25 tables. And if they put one here, I mean, you're probably going to get the same thing. There's a lot of money here. Um, but at least that's the start. Then you get some of your smaller ones, and you might be able to go get them. But, I mean, you figure right there at the old site of the Texas Stadium, that's where they want to build. That's where that would be. I mean, maybe you have, hopefully you have one by me at the at the Speedway. Be a great idea to have one up there at Texas Motor Speedway. You have one all over the place. Lone Star Park, great spot. Right outside, the, right Texas Live. I mean, just put some slot machines inside of Texas Live, if you ask me. So, I, I it, that'd be a great idea. And the casinos here would blow up. Their goal is to make this a top five uh, destination for travel in the U.S. So, you figure your your you got Vegas is a huge travel destination. New York City, Gaylord, Michigan. Miami, Gaylord, Michigan, absolutely. Um, those would be one of the ones. Here's here's the thing. It it makes so much sense, and everybody wants it. So that should tell you the fact that there's resistance and it hasn't gotten done yet. The kind of power that's behind not making it happen, and the fact that they have to bring in the Adelson family, big time GOP donors, big time donors, to bring them in here to try and wage a war, and it's not a slam dunk. Yeah. Tells you. This is a lot of uphill work to get it done because there are people in place and forces in place that don't want it done. And that's that's a lot to ask. And my only concern at that point would be if the Adelsons don't get what they were expecting out of this deal, how do they then change the deal? And how do they... That would be where I would start getting concerned about. Yeah. Do they eventually say, well, we're going to move this team. Like, we invested with certain expectation. We're going to go do this somewhere else. Well, that's a good point. I mean, because they're probably, there's, there's no getting out of the deal. Unless you want to sell, they want to sell it. They, they want to offload it again, right? But that'd be a quick, quick offloading. When this discussion and subject comes up, uh, how do the Tolos usually respond on the Franklin and Franco injury attorneys text line in terms of totally for or some against? Yeah, two one four says uh, this is still a long shot from happening. They don't believe it's going to happen. Eight one seven says uh, it's crazy if they legalize gambling before marijuana in Texas. So some people yeah, still want I, marijuana I, I, before, I mean, before I, gambling. Those are one and the same. Like, you know, like they, they should be on the ballot together. Like put them out there and because you can already get they have um it's uh it's hemp THC, so like Delta eight, Delta nine, you can get those gummies here. Uh but I mean all, 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 so many states have legalized marijuana now. Like so many states. Speaking of the Mavs, Mark Cuban hopped on the Draymond Green podcast and talked about the decision to get his new best friend. Kyrie Irving. When you watch Kai back then and now after any game, he's hugging five guys. It's not like high five, quick hug, walk off the court. He's hugging you like you're related. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to people around him before the, we did the deal, nobody disliked him. Everybody loved him. When mm -hmm. you talk to teammates, you know, current and former, loved him, mm -hmm. right? And when you ask them what the issue was, it was like, well, you know, media, you know, and Kai was just a caring guy, and sometimes he lets that heart come through, mm -hmm. and the media doesn't appreciate it. I'm like, you know, I can deal with the media. This is Dallas. I've grown up dealing with the media. I'll take all those bullets like I've done for other guys. Let me just tell you, I love Kai to death. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the more I talk to him, he, he's got a heart of gold, right? Mm -hmm. And he cares about too many things, right? If he's got a problem, it's like he's too caring about too many things. You know, there's certain people, when you hug them, you feel who they are. 100 percent That's Kyrie Irving. <laughs> There's so much there that I, I first off, it's Mark Cuban saying, look, I'll take I'll, I'll take the bullets yeah. like I always have, guys. Message I, to I, all the other I, free agents. I, I'm here. I, I stand <laughs> in the way and, and take the <laughs> the slings and arrows from the media for you. Uh that that's funny to me. But second, the 
Positing Kyrie's... I'll take all the Kevin Gray's insults <laughs> and personal shots. <laughs> Positing this as Kyrie Irving's issues ultimately come down to the guy just cares too much is a little bit of an oversimplification of the issues Kyrie Irving yeah. has had over the course of his career. Well, yeah, I mean, there's one big one that I don't think is <laughs> about him caring too much. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> But, but he does, stretch. he is ultimately saying what Sean said this whole time, which is the the benefit of coming here to Dallas is Cuban felt like we, we can operate around yeah. the media with his his issues. Look, I haven't looked at Kyrie Irving's Instagram stories in a long, long time, but when I did one day, um it it mentally exhausted me. <laughs> I said, I can't ever go back to this. In New York City, they have 15 media members to our one. Or five to our one to look at Kyrie's Instagram story and bring them up. And they have non-sports reporters who are at the Garden and at the Barclays Center in order to ask him something random. We don't have those non-sports reporters consistently showing up here. And we don't have our Mavs beat guys sitting there. I don't think Dwayne Price is dissecting. Oh, shots fired. No, no, it's not a shot. It's not a shot. I don't, he's right. I don't think <laughs> that's right. I don't think Dwayne is breaking down the Native American message of the day that Kyrie Irving is trying to send out yeah. in order to ask him about it. Yeah, the, 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 it's just a different different environment kai was his own worst enemy in new york too with some of the things he said and did but like also the fact that you're right the fact that like like that's every the deadspin reporter lives in new york City, yes you know like they're just there so yeah. it's easy to go to the press conferences they're not they're not making yeah they're not taking flights to dfw to go sit in a press conference with kyrie irving so that's a big it's benefit a, it's a benefit i to mean an you're, athlete you're, who wants to be left alone you're shielded we got we have we have a bubble to us Yep. Um, you know, we've always it just in general. I mean, you can you can kind of hide away here from the, a lot of the media. Draymond had a comment about a younger Dallas Maverick, and he says that Derek Lively is going to be a future All Star. Not only is it getting bigger, it's getting more athletic and faster. And y'all are covering those bases well with a big Daniel Gafford. Derek Lively will be an All Star in this NBA, in this league. Like, and you guys are covering that interesting because mm. i've even for all the outlook of lively and what he can potentially be in the way that he's played really i've not yet once thought like oh but he'll he'll click together as an all-star no but i mean that's and and specifically here's still there, a lot of garbage points yeah and you you specifically hear though like the way draymond dog green, garbage point <laughs> draymond green is talking about the way that the league is heading like okay players are getting bigger again and it's faster and like lively is a big like nimble very athletic type of center that obviously is not built like you know the old shacks of the the day or that like the bigger bulkier guys like he's more of a floor runner and so he is I, I've, I've thought that okay he can be a quality start in this league he can be a big time player never thought of him on the the level of an all-star but again Tyson Chandler who has been his comp since he came out? Tyson Chandler was a guy who eventually became an All Star. How many All Stars did Tyson make? Couple, couple. I think, yeah, yeah, couple. I mean, he won Defensive Player of the Year once or twice. Let's look it up. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three is the Franklin Frankel injury attorney text line to hit us up here on the show. You got it. One All Star, twenty thirteen. One All Star, one Defensive Player of the Year, NBA and, third team. Yeah, NBA once, third team. Defensive Player of the Year once. First team once on defensive first team once. Defensive second team twice. Yeah. Do you think that the Rangers will be out for revenge after what happened last night to three different hitters in the same inning? That's next on the home of the champs, 105-3, the fan.
Through the fan segment here brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you have been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there's never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Dubensky works this entire inning as <laughs> Garcia may change that equation. Goodness. That's the 100th career home run for Adolis Garcia. And a monster shot at that. Rangers are back up by four. 
That was the call on Fox. And then Adolis joined the wrong type of hit parade last night against Tampa Bay. Rangers get the W. Also on this radio station, we are known as your home for Rangers baseball. This is Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. One hour from now, we start another Rangers four-pack giveaway to send you to Arlington. Just a way for us to thank you for turning it on, leaving it on. That is what Tolo stands for. But the bad news last night that sours the win. Josh Young fractured wrist. He's out for a while as he was one of three that was drilled by the same pitcher. Evan Carter, Adolis Garcia hits number 100. Then he gets hit. And then you have the bad injury to Josh Young. Uh, Bobby, Choppy, and I uh, did not think that it was definitely intentional. Don't know about Ranger Retribution this evening to send a message back. Did you think any of this was on purpose? Uh, no. First off, I mean, the first guy to get hit, Evan Carter, he gets hit a lot to begin with. Like, just, you know, throughout his minor league career, he was getting hit a lot. Yeah, we uh, could rename him hit a lot. Yeah, I mean, that's a good that's, that's do, a good one. Right? Uh, HBP. That's what I've always called Evan Carter. <laughs> um, but he, I mean, you also got to look at the fact that all these, like, when he hits a dolies, he's clearly frustrated that he accidentally hit him. Uh, like, you see him, like, go, like, damn it, didn't didn't mean to. It wasn't on purpose. And... Bases were loaded, right? Uh, mm. No, I don't think so. One of them... When Young was up. When, no, Adolis got hit. Adolis. Yeah, Adolis. Adolis was base loaded. So, and then Second Young... Second wrong this morning. Young, Young was, like, I mean, it was close enough that he was trying to swing at it. Like it wasn't. I, I think if he's was trying he swinging to swinging to defend himself, or was he swinging the swing? No, it's like I think it rode in, and he was he was just a little fooled by it. But I mean, he's. I, I don't think that any of this was on purpose. It obviously is tough with the connection of, it's the Rays, and they've gotten their teeth kicked in by you at home several times now, and then the guy on the the mound for you is a guy who'd been with the Astros, who, especially with somebody like Adolis, they're probably not big fans of him if you were over on the Astros last year and so I understand why it's an easy connection to make but he looked frustrated like he didn't mean to do it and I, I think we'll know baseball players generally it feels like there's no they question know. to them they, they know, know when it's on purpose even if we don't and so I think we'll know today based on does somebody get thrown out but of course the, I mean Dunning hit two guys last night yeah and let's be fair like I don't really have a problem with people hitting people on purpose no, I don't That's either. Yeah, it's part of the game. I don't either. I yeah. just don't think this was. Headhunting, yes, I have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with you riding somebody up in their you know, upper, you know, their mm. shoulders. And that sounded really bad. <laughs> uh the problem is you get hit on the hand. I mean, there's just no there's no padding. There's no fat, there's no meat. It's exposed bone. And that, that's an easy way to break, and it's an easy four to six weeks that you won't see that player again. And that's a problem. And and, and uh, no matter what kind of a, a jerk you are, you don't want to see um the guy you're playing against be gone for a month. These guys are all doing the same thing. Um, so even if he was trying to hit him, I don't have a problem with that. That's the game. Uh, the problem is, is that if you do it three times in a row to three people and you were trying to hit all of them, all right, now you're a, you're you're a problem. You're a problem. I need to go. Um, I don't know if that was the case. I, I I doubt it was. I mean, I doubt anyone out there is trying to hit three guys in a row. Uh, two of them. Uh, Adolis and, and and Young. I mean, that was a t those were tailing fastballs that rode in on the hitter. You know, even if you're trying to throw inside, and he was. I mean, the catcher was lined up inside again uh, on Josh Young. And I mean, if you're lined up inside and you try to bust him in, it's early in the year. Your command is not where it's going to be in June. You get you, you you're off a, a, a little bit, and it rides. You're going to hit the guy. That's the way it is. So Adolis hits number one hundred. If someone was going to get hit, it would probably be Garcia. Uh, even though you'd be terrified of him because of his stature, but man, he pimps every home run, <laughs> and he every pimps, single one. He pimps every home run. Maybe not to the Rugi extent, but there's always some flair and some style on every one he hits, and that includes the one that he hit last night. I don't, I don't know. Like it might be worse than Rugi because Rugi's was always the uh, he he'd kind of like flip the bat a little, like kind of drop it, and and definitely show up like. Yeah, that's this is what I do, people. But Adolis is, is feels much more like loud and emotional than even Rugi's do. I mean, look, that's um, that's just flair. The guy's got aura for days, for days, and it's yeah, you either you love it when it's on your team, and if it's not on your team, then you're like, oh, this guy, 
someone drill him. Like that's what that's what that's what other fans are thinking about. We, we, and we should nickname him Pimps Every Home Run we should. Garcia. Absolutely. That should be yeah. his nickname. Twenty fifth player in franchise history with one hundred or more home runs for the Rangers. The eleventh player in baseball with a hundred plus home runs since the start of twenty twenty one. So that shows the power surge taking place. And then uh, Chuck Cooperstein, friend of the show. Yes. He was catching some shots last night on social media when it comes to Josh Young's injuries. Man, he was. Uh, he posted on I gotta text about this one. He posted on Twitter. He goes, I know it's early in this career, but Josh Young sure seems injury prone. Shame. He's such a terrific talent. Caught some strays for that one. And then he goes back and said, Good to see Ranger fans in midseason form. Oh, you mean mm. Chuck did not back off? Has he, he ever backed off? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I've been around that guy for a <laughs> long time, and he he has he believes what he believes. Have you ever heard him say like I was dead wrong? I got it wrong. I'm sure he about a player that he didn't yeah. think was going to make it, or but if he has an opinion on something, generally his opinion is is he forms his opinion with, with pretty good knowledge. Um, he said, good to see Ranger fans in midseason form. Doesn't matter how it happens. It just happens. Ooh. Y'all killed Porzingis for the same reasons. Great talent just wasn't or hasn't been available. So it's, his stake is, look, you just it happens. Doesn't matter how it happens. If you're not there, if you're not available, doesn't matter. I disagree with Hagee on that one with Dak because he called Dak injury prone. And I'm like, no, Dak's not injury prone. Miles Austin. You get those soft tissue groin pulls every time. That's injury pro. Dak, yeah. he got rolled up on his hand on a helmet, yeah. right? Broke his thumb. Uh, didn't his elbow happen the same kind of way? It was ripped back. Um, yeah. Calf was a relation to the to the, to the ankle. Uh, to me, if like... I'm if, surprised Chuck had that take. That's the fascinating part of the discussion. Does it matter how it happens or are you just injury prone? I agree with you. It matters how it happens. Yeah, it does to me. I mean, like, if you just get hit a lot. Now, Giancarlo Stanton used to get hit a lot, right? And then, like, and that's why he hit that that the big G on his uh yeah on his helmet. Like, he used to get hit a lot. Which has become pretty commonplace. A lot of guys wear. Yeah, that, that a lot of guys wear the C flap. Like Bobby's injury prone. If I if I take a yeah. bat and swing at your knee three times in this calendar year. That that doesn't make you injury prone. No, I mean, yeah, Bobby's injury makes you whiny assault, prone. Makes you assaultist. Makes me a, an right, assaultist. Right. Yeah, matters he, how it happens. Even though my sick days probably total up to less than both of you, but yeah, yeah, wow. I'm injury prone. Yeah, yeah no, I here's I think I think the, we'll try working a little more. The, the things, <laughs> you, you get more sleep. That is that is it. Well, not now. Now that uh, now that you're driving your cool 22 minutes from Sunnyvale, uh, I I look at it as the offensive part to me is trying to compare Josh Young to Porzingis because Porzingis felt a lot of times like his was quit honestly like, like it felt like Porzingis was looking for any reason to tap out on a, on a basketball game and so to me you know, what we're talking about his two biggest injuries recently were the broken thumb fractured and the broken th wrist fractured thumb yeah. in August stress fracture in his foot and a torn labrum in his shoulder that required surgery and a lengthy recovery I I admit when he got drilled, I did say to myself, oh, Josh is hurt again. I, yeah. did, I did say that to myself. Right. Now, look, I mean, you know, Adolis gets hit. Now, you guys, if, if Adolis got hit but, but, in the but, same but last, spot, but, uh, the same way, like, because obviously Adolis on the left hand, the back of the hand, right? Very small bones there. And then Young was hit in the outer side of the right wrist, um, which is his throwing wrist, obviously. But what is more exposed? Uh, and then Adolis also is a tank. Like you can't. I don't think. I don't think you could. I don't think a, a bullet could go through his arm. It's. A, <laughs> it, it, I, I really don't think so. Uh, so it's like you know. And then here's Josh Young, and he's not. He's not fragile by any stretch. He's a big dude too. But Adolis is on a. I mean, he is. A, he is not human. Two one four says this was right after the Rangers got their rings with the road meaning. Even though the players didn't design the rings, the Rays are still butthurt. So he thinks this is related. Two and four thinks this is related to those rings. Well, Maiton was on the Astros last year. Exactly. Not even so with he's the included Rays. on that ring, though. He is. That means the he majority is. Majority of fans are going to think it was intentional, and they're going to want blood tonight. In a vacuum, if you just hear they hit three batters in a row yes. last night, you think, yeah, you oh, think so. that sounds yeah, personal. You got to well, look at the you got to look at the throws. Uh, and I suspect the Rangers will get rep retribution tonight. You think so? I do. Uh, they got to be careful because, let's see, do they play? Is there a third game of this year or is this a two-game set? I think there's a three. Look at our uh, 105 uh, in the fan schedule. Uh, I know, right? Noon Wednesday. 
Yeah, uh, so I think Wednesday's the day you do it. Why? Uh, I think if you do it today, it looks too obvious. Uh, Wednesday yes. is a getaway day, right? So you don't play a third game of the series. You do it Wednesday late in the game, and you end it. That ends that ends re-retribution. Yeah, but the only problem is that like baseball players talk about when you do that at the end of a series, at the end of a game, it comes off looking really soft. Like, oh, you wait till we're out of town. We can't get a chance to you're soft. I mean, that's yeah, but, but we're matching what you did. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't get a chance to come back at us. That's we're that's, evening it. That's true. But like but that was apparently like I know there's been discussion like that was something some of the Rangers themselves had issues with years ago when they hit Bautista. Was last at bat of the last game of the series. Like, that makes us look bad. So, what do y'all think? Do you think that Josh Young is starting to become injury prone? Is that thought in your mind? And does it matter how it happens? Or you agree with Chuck Cooperstein? It doesn't matter. Just the fact that it happened. 877 881 1053 in order to hit us up, Choppy. All right. There's, uh, for the 204, there's injury prone, then there's bad luck. From the 682, facts are facts, but context matters. Um, let's see. That was obviously people say right after the Rangers got the rings. He had two people that hit homers. It was on purpose. But uh, they, they didn't get the rings in Tampa. You know, no, like no, they yeah, didn't yeah. hold the ceremony on the road in order to introduce it against you. I I think the guy. I just think the guy was wild. I think. Yeah, I, th I think he lacked. But a I also bit of think you may have to go back at them. It's like, come on now. Uh, Regard, yeah, he, even if he wasn't doing it with intent, yeah. you still did it. You still got to go back it's at like, him. Rain him in a little bit. He's dr uh, yeah, drilled like the Evan Carter one. You got to start there, right? Like to even count that. Um, you know, again, context matter matters how it happens. Uh, yeah, if you hit Carter's back foot with a sweeping slider, nah, I'm yeah. a, I'm I'm a, I'm I'm over it. I was curious, how did he pitch those gears? Okay, did he give? Am I forgetting? Did he give up one of those home runs to Adolis or something like that? Is that what? What? And I look, he threw four and a third innings against the Rangers in the ALCS last year. He gave up one hit and struck out five. Like he had no problems with that. So typically, I wouldn't think he's like bitter personally that he got shown up or anything. Yeah, Abreu might. Sure, Abreu yeah. when they play Abreu might. Live on the fan cam, live on Twitch, and live on YouTube. We want you all in the six a.m. club to win. The Rangers tickets. The four pack is going to be given away during the 720 Expressway this morning and every other day this week. Speaking of rings, man, this is a pretty sickening story, unless I'm misreading it, about what happened to one of Kobe Bryant's championship rings. And can anyone beat Patrick Mahomes' late night snack that you're addicted to before going to bed. That's next with Sean, RJ, and Roberto right here on The Fan. But first, it's that time of year to...
Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More new Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet. Registrations 2023. Good morning, Metroplex. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. Thanks for being a Tolo. That stands for turn it on, leave it on. We want to thank you for doing it by hooking it with Rangers tickets starting at 720 with the commercial free expressway. One more Rangers note. I was going to save this for a little bit later on, but I just want to go ahead and get it out of the way. But apparently there has been a ton of backlash towards a problem and issue that RJ Choppy brought up and raised yesterday that's the song i asked you to grab <laughs> see i think i do a great courtesy to all the producers and i'm like no, no just cut it off right now cut it off. and like three seconds before i literally give like the number if you see me talking on the fan cam i'm like all right three i don't i, I don't even i don't even leave the guesswork up to the person behind the glass to be like okay they're talking about this subject let me look at the cut sheet, and this is the range I need to be in, and this is probably what he's going to play. No, I, I I say it. I say it. I'm like, okay, we're going to go ahead and do this. Now, I did. <laughs> I, I was going to play it at the end of last segment, so there's my little pass for Peyton. Um, but, RJ, this is, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> this is a problem you had yesterday. There was the, the problem I had yesterday, and I heard from uh, some people that were at the games over the weekend that this was not played during the seventh inning stretch after uh, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, uh, which is a song that everybody sings the wrong words to, but whatever. Um, what did they sing? They say Cracker Jacks. It's Cracker Jack. Finally some peanuts and Cracker Jack. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. Little things, little things here. Um, but that was the thing. They had, uh, they had stopped this year playing the Cotton Eye Joe at... Uh, the seventh inning stretch, and then they play a remix of "I Like Texas" the Pat Green hit uh, at the end of the game. That normally they had played the regular traditional version, yeah. But now it appears they have played a a, uh, a remix. I'm gonna have to get to. I'll, I'll be at a game this year at some point, well, and I'll be able to check this out for myself. So, the Rangers DJ felt the need to weigh in on this. He did. <laughs> the post is now deleted. I did not screen grab it or whatever it's called. But basically, C stats DJ. I guess it's C stats. Okay, you have the post. I do not have the post. Well, did you po you screenshot it? <laughs> no, I didn't oh, screenshot. No. It. I sent the tweet. Yeah. We yeah. all just grabbed the tweet, but basically, I didn't anticipate it was something that would get deleted. Yeah. Uh, no, he basically was like, "Quit coming at me. Quit calling for my job. I just play what I'm told. I've been a Rangers fan for years and years, and like you know, sometimes reads things. This. Yeah, sometimes things aren't left to me up to me, but my friends and family read this, and I certainly." sympathize with that the idea of like you know people calling for your job i mean people call for my job on the text line every day oh my god i love my brother my brother uh this is when we you know talked regularly but <laughs> he would there'd be a segment here on the show where he'd leave me voicemails criticizing the show or just texting us and i would play them but he's being serious like a know-it-all right and he posted something the other day about oh does anyone else's wife not touch their laundry and like two hours later, I went to look at some of the responses. It was taken down. And I texted him. I'm like, what's the deal? What's going on? He's like, the people, people just chiming in too much on their opinions. I didn't like what they had to say. And I was like, oh, so I'm sitting here every day taking slings and arrows and we get destroyed on this fan text. You're like Beth. But you can't have your little, uh, you, can't, you can't have your little Facebook poll up for more than 30 minutes. So that's kind of funny as I'm looking yeah. at the Ranger DJ reaction. Yeah, now the DJ did post this uh, that is still up there because there there's a photo of a, of, a, of a woman holding up an I Like Texas bill, uh, 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 poster, like a sign that says Pat's version in parentheses. I Like Texas Pat's version. And he writes, I guess the ironic thing about the sign is that the new version is Pat's version. It was his idea this offseason to make the remix of it. So the remix, the Rangers did not make the remix of the Pat Green song. Pat Green made the remix himself with his producer this offseason and basically sent it to the team. Look, I said this. I took the slings and arrows. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Last year during the postseason. Whatever they can do to liven that place up out there. 
Uh, I, I don't know. It's not going to probably change fan behavior where people stand up when they should be standing up or have a baseball awareness of two strikes or a big moment because it was, it was pretty pretty disappointing atmospheres for World Series games uh, last year when I went out there a couple of times. Whatever they can do to spice it up there, please do it because it, it's needed. I, got I, don't, I don't think it's going to change Texas fan behavior. But do what you can. I got a text from somebody on the season ticket advisory board <laughs> who comes up with all these things. Uh, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm supposed to read it, but I will anyway. And I, I'll, I'll just ask for forgiveness later or, or I'll just ignore him. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll just avoid him as well, much as I possibly those can. Tickets yeah, later do, like Palmer, do like Palmer does to you. Yeah. So he said about the roof. Okay. Because we talked about the roof not being open. Yeah. Right. He says. Oh, at, this is good. He says, as built. The intention was to open the roof as much as possible. But they discovered with certain temperatures and humidity levels, the water condensates on the surfaces in the upper level and the lower level concourses. There was a kid that slipped and broke an arm because of moisture on the concourse. So they have now a chart that tells them when this happens and they won't open the roof for safety of the fans if the temp slash humidity hits certain criteria. That may have been the case over the weekend. It was not. I mean, we. I guess we can go and check the humidity. And what is the you know, barometric pressure? Dude, it was. It was like to the point of cold. The weather was so awesome. This, this is the over fight. The I, this is the fight I had with everybody when the discussion of the stadium was coming up. People were always like, "Would use this line of, well, it, if it's retractable, you know that. Like they can open it whenever the weather's nice. It's like, but they won't. Yeah, I've seen this happen in every other stadium. The Cowboys they don't do it. The, Houston, the Astros open it like 15 games a year. It's like they're not going to do it. So you're you're playing in a domed stadium, yeah. essentially, you know whenever you awesome commit to that. It would feel just to go out there every once in a while for the look and the feel for with the thing open. Yeah, it would it would, it, would, it, it may totally change my mind about the park. Oh, it's, it's a great park with the roof open. Even when it's closed, I like it. Have you been the, there with the roof open? Yes, yes, a couple times. Um. All couple times it's been open in <laughs> three years or whatever. <laughs> yeah, basically, I uh, got lucky. So um, you're telling me because of so it gets you know, you get the temperature and the humidity, you get condensation and stuff. The floors now maybe they just change the it's slippery. Maybe they change the the epoxy or the 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 texture of the floor instead of making it like a shout out Rick Canales. Yeah, instead of making it like a slicker indoor, make it a hard concrete like you had at the old ballpark. And you're not going to slip on hard, coarse concrete. It's got that that layer on top. That so it was that a construction glaze. screw up. Hey, well, here's the thing. Uh, yeah, construction or the or the or the texture of the floor, perhaps. Yeah. One, one of two things. One, does this happen in other ballparks with the retractable roof? If yes, why did you not know that? Why yep. was that not something that was communicated? Two, if it doesn't happen in other ballparks, what did you screw up? I mean, it could just be the simple humidity temperature of the area. I, I have no idea. Either you're way, right. they screwed it. They up. They screwed it up. Now, next <laughs> next point. Everything regarding game presentation was on the table in the offseason. Everything. They almost eliminated the dot race. By the way, Chuck Morgan invented the dot race. Okay? You cannot eliminate that. You cannot eliminate the dot race. Can't. How am I going to bet? I need I need action. No <laughs> way. Action, please. Yeah. Do you even I know listen Chuck to says him? That. I, I listened to him a couple times, uh, but not then. I listened to him every other time. Uh, they're trying to appeal to younger fans. That's why we have... Uh, the sexy six shooters doing nightclub moves. No more Cotton Eye Joe because they think young people don't like country. We're in Texas. Everybody likes country. Yeah. Um, they want to evolve into the City Connect Rangers. Like the hipster City Connect type Rangers. Less cowboy, more hip. <laughs> they tried the Rednecks version of Cotton Eye Joe in the early 2000s. That is the, the sort of the dubstep <laughs> version of Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> Uh, the fans hated it, and they changed it back uh, quickly. So, uh, basically, but that means basically this, Chuck handed over the reins to a younger person this offseason. That means this is something they've screwed with before, though, and gotten poor response on. They mess it. They like they they tweaked a little bit. They played a different version, got bad pushback from fans, and had to change it back. So that does mean that people are aware of this and have complained about it before. Sandler, you are testing me. Don't be writing all these texts and paragraphs uh -oh. if you don't want them read. You're not supposed because, to read these uh, I mean, there's, there's one I'm not gonna read. I'm not gonna read any of them. But uh, <laughs> man, you're, you're coming. You're coming strong. I, I like I, I like to relay strong opinions if you're gonna text like this. But that was the Rangers DJ. Feeling the need to clarify. Not yeah, I wish I could remember decision. specifically what it was he said because, like we've mentioned, he deleted it. Um, and so it was uh, It was just generally like, 
quit coming at me. This isn't my decision, and my family see your calls for me to be fired. Basically. What, what are you, Mike McCarthy? <laughs> 877-881. Shut up, Bobby. I, Just shut up. I, I can had such see, a good joke. I had to stop. I can see your face. I have been censoring myself. This uh, this is not funny. I don't think. Tell me how this could... Tell me how I could be misreading this. Kobe Bryant gave his father, and he had a difficult relationship that got colder with Joe Jellybean Bryant, one of his championship rings from the 2000 NBA title. Joe Bryant gave that ring to an auction house. That auction house just sold that ring for $927,000. My brother, big time, big time Kobe fan. Uh, I can't I can't even sit there and talk to him about Kobe back in the day without him getting like emotional and tearing up like choppy at the end of a volunteer season. Uh, and he's like, this, this makes me physically ill. This made me sick that Kobe Bryant's dad took a gift from his son and gave it on over to an auction house and the auction house ended up selling it the other day that really sucks that 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 re that really sucks. you know what really really sucks they sold it for 173,000 to the auction house in 2013 the auction house just sold it for 800,000 more dollars so wow. there you go at least joe and pam got screwed over by their business sense uh because you could have almost made a million dollars off of it um, and by the way, the overall record paid for a sports championship ring. Does anyone know? Big time celebrity. One of the all time off the rail celebrities when he was going through his binges. Uh, Jim McMahon. Richard Branson. Jim McMahon. I don't know. Of real uh, big time like, celebrity. Oh, like, wait, you're talking about who bought Hollywood. it? Hollywood. Yeah, who oh, bought who it? bought it? I thought you meant who's Bill ring it was. You think someone paid big time money? Did I don't know. Does, Cra Jim crazy, McMahon's ring? Crazy Bears fan. Uh, Bears I don't fans, know. man. They're nuts. Charlie Sheen paid two mil for Babe Ruth's 1927 ring. Ooh. Wow. That'd be worth it, though, wouldn't it? If you had that much money to spend, wouldn't you spend on something like that? I mean, that's pretty cool. Murder, what, the, the what, what do the row? rings look like in 1927? That's a good idea. They even have diamonds question. on it. I mean, was it just like a a circular piece of gold? That's a good I question. Be, I could see uh, if you, had, if you yeah. had money to throw around. Sure. It's not. It's not that. It's not that attractive to be honest. But I mean, yeah. it's okay. Well, they all end up looking like that when you, and the Rangers one will be laughing at in, in 50 thirty years. years. Yeah. Oh my God! No, no, how that thing was. Like sooner or later, they're gonna have this goes across the entire hand. Yeah, that's right. They're they're too big now, right? They're they're they're. Let's ask very, Sandler. Very Sandler big. texts us that. Are they too big? That's right. Eight <laughs> o'clock. We'll have Jared on, and uh, yes! we'll see what he's willing to say about things. Man, what, 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 how, how's that ego gonna get out of control? With a World Series ring yeah. worth seventy five k. Oh, his egos are. I, I keep. Uh, I keep saying like, "Hey, when are we gonna get drinks in?" He's like, "It's so busy, so busy, bro." Oh, really? I don't feel pressure. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's, he's blowing me off, you know. Okay. So he's, he's got just, a long hair now. Slick back. He's got long hair. It's it's uh it's it's not it's not it's not the sh high and tight cut. It's, it's a li it's a little Pat Riley, but I thought it looked very good. Pat Riley. He was he he had it brushed back on opening day when I ran into him yeah. uh, on the elevator, and I, like I was it. like, it's it looks look. good. He he good he look. was he was trying to. Eh, he's like, I don't know that I like this look. It's fresh off, but it's right. uh you know it's, it, it, he's he's probably in the position where it's like in the middle. He wants to like he let it grow longer or cut it shorter. It's in that middle area. I like it though. You ready for our fight? Oh, oh baby! Fight. Yeah, so oh, baby! You ready, you ready for a battle? I'm ready for whatever. All right, it's going to happen. I'm next. gonna go downstairs and get a C4. <laughs> it's giving out free ads too. I'm ready to well, go, go, ahead. go ahead. Go get energized, <laughs> Bobby. Go ahead. Those. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you go ahead. Uh, thank. Thank. Go, go downstairs. Thanks for giving us your beverage update. Uh, Bobby and I get into it next, along with our Rangers four pack giveaway right here on the fan. Well, let's get you over to Boomer Jacks, your official. Game day headquarters and the place to watch all the action. You head on over to Boomer Jacks during lunch hour on a Monday.
Turn it on, leave it on. With Sean and RJ, right here on The Fan. 12 on the shot clock, hands off to Clark. As we approach five minutes, step back, right wing three. You've got to be kidding me. Caitlin Clark grabs her chest, looks to the crowd, matches a career high with nine threes. She's got 37. Man, that was a fun edition of the commercial break. If these walls could talk, <laughs> listening <laughs> to some of the uh, baseball discussions and arguments we just had here on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. I, uh, Bob Shepard sucks. I the, don't group know chat, the group chat. The group chat. Uh, if anybody's group chat gets exposed, they're all done. Everybody's done. In whatever they do. If Peyton was half as funny on the air as he is in the group chat, you'd have yeah. more segments. <laughs> I'd be yeah. fired. You'd, yeah, yeah. He'd be you fired be a fired. lot quicker. I would have no segments. You would be fired, but, you know. Yeah, they wouldn't just be life hacks getting canceled. I wonder what percentage of, I know all my buddies, it's 100%, but what percentage of group chats would everyone not want to be seen? Yeah, or, most or, or how many goody two shoes are like? No, I text just like I talk in public. No, uh, like my group chats and in, in like from my neighborhood, they're all like a lot of them are memes. But the memes are not something that you would ever put out there either. And yeah. the group chats I have with like other friends, that's not something that you would ever. Nobody texts more than you do. It's not even close. Like your computer has probably seen more text messages than show prep words or the way you pound away on that thing <laughs> good lord it's like it's like your friends your 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 your, 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 your social circle doesn't know you're on air from six to ten just texting away uh, not, knocking it all out uh but man that was a fun entertaining commercial break um but hopefully this is more entertaining than bob shepherd i don't know he's uh, so entertaining where it's how do we get on bob shepherd well, so pa we, guys yeah so bob why shepherd. were we talking about pa guys well, we just did the Cotton Eye Joe thing, and we were talking about the game presentation of the Rangers. Yep. Yeah. And how anything you do is better than... No, up, number two, Derek Jeter. <laughs> it you sucked. Gotta, you gotta sucked. Repeat, yeah, you got to repeat Jeter. Jeter. Yeah. Jeter. Yeah. Nah, you're, you're, you're just wrong on that one. That's a great... That's a great... The PA guy is not supposed to get you hype. It's supposed to tell you who's up. Well, good, because he was half dead for the entire he was. time. <laughs> he, was <laughs> half, he started in, like, 1940. Yes, he it, was half dead. It sounds like it. He was half dead and, for the last 30 years. And then Bobby attacked the whole New York Yankee broadcast team <laughs> with Michael <laughs> Kay and John Sterling. So that, uh, And then that carried on over to some DFW people that we're not going to talk about right now uh, or ever. Okay, so last night I wanted the Rangers to take care of business, so I could, which they did. So I can switch on over to LSU versus Iowa. Maybe the first time in the history of the program that we have led 7 o'clock with women's sports, but it was totally worth it. As Well, really, it was a little bit disappointing because LSU did not play their part, but Kim Mulkey and the Tigers get sent home, which brought me great satisfaction. But the greatest college basketball player in the history of her sport delivered as Caitlin Dennis Parker. <laughs> no, Caitlin Clark. Uh, Caitlin Clark went nuts, hitting nine threes, dropping 40 on LSU. She gets her Angel Reese revenge, 41, 12, and 7. They move on to the final four, and I was getting made fun of by Bobby and some others uh, on the group chat, on the, uh, on the group text messages. And I'm just here to tell you, if you can't watch her game, and be like, wow, that's freaking impressive. You have uh, you have you, you have some other issues. You, you're it's not, impressive. You're, you're, you're it's true, very you're impressive. You're not a true sports fan. It is impressive. It's very impressive. Yeah. Greatest women's basketball player ever? I I mean, you gotta win a title to be the greatest ever, I think. Oh, and, you and Mr. Mr. Titles are I, overrated. I, uh, I've I have never said that about basketball. You're doing the oh, you're saying about sports. Is but this... I've never said hang on, hang on. I have never said that about basketball. Basketball is the one sport where you, the greatest has to have titles because an individual player means so much more in basketball than anything else because there's only five people on the floor. All right, I'll amend my statement to easily the most watchable and entertaining female college basketball player I've ever seen. Yes. Fine. Yes. And that absolutely. Is, that is no uh, doubt. That's subjective. That's my opinion. No, I, I don't even think it's, I don't even know how subjective it she is. She can force me to watch some Dallas Wings games. I check in. I would check in if she played here. I'm not going to watch. Is she going to Indiana? The Fever. She's going to the Fever. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to go ahead unless only, it's like the yeah. final five minutes of a game and she's going nuts and I'm scrolling through the channels. But 
Last night, I wanted to see good versus evil. The whole Kim Mulkey thing. I wanted to see yeah. her eliminated. I mean, you can't say that. You can't say what? You can't call her evil, right? You can't call. Well, Kim Mulkey I can't evil. call her a debutante. I can call. I can call. You call them evil. The okay, feeling of the program, the evil empire. But that was a special performance. Just look how she's pulling up off the dribble. Yeah, after, what, after what? She threw away like four passes in the first quarter. Like she turned the ball over four times <laughs> in the first quarter. She had 12 quarter. assists. Yeah, I also saw there were also the four turnovers where she's just like, hey, Angel Reese, you want the ball? Here you go. I saw that too a lot. So, yeah, look, uh, great performance also. Like to see, see those turnovers uh, minimized a little bit. All right. You're going to run your daughter out of. A sport that she's interested. She was in. watching it last night. She was uh, she was actually commentating on Kim Mulkey when uh, there was a, a charging call and Kim Mulkey like aggressively like pantomimed it or something. And she was like, "Yeah, huh? she's like, what is she doing?" Yeah, I was like, "I don't know. She's a psycho. Don't don't worry about a Liberace over there." And then Angel Reese, what do they call her? Uh, basketball Barbie. Bayou uh, Bar. I think it's the Bayou Bar. Bayou right? Barbie. Barbie. She yeah. uh, she so, showed some emotion after her career ended last night. I just try to stand strong. Like, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things, and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and, like, not be there for them. So... I just want to always just know, like, I'm still a human, like, all this has happened since I won the national championship, and I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then, and it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything, and I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that, and hopefully the little girls that look up to me, and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you, but... Keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. Okay. And just be confident. And that is when Bobby, well, he would have slammed off the TV while his daughters are watching uh, 30 seconds before. But a lot of people <laughs> you, you are think like, I would have had it on? A lot, of, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are like, what are you crying for? Sexualizing yourself. You, you modeled. Uh, but look, they became a polarizing program. That was part of the reason I wanted to watch the, the end of this last night because... They, they were polarizing because of Mulkey, because of Angel Reese, and they became a team that people love to see eliminated. I loved watching Kim Mulkey's face whining and crying about calls last night. Now, they gave me a reason to tune in because they were the enemy, uh, but I took great satisfaction when they got taken out. <laughs> like, here's the thing. And I wish Caitlin Clark would have blown a kiss right back at Angel Reese. Well, that's thing. Objectively, well, that last year she did the yeah. like Angel Reese was doing the. She did the, the I the can't feel my face. That's yeah. a, in the you can't see me and everything. And so, like, you, if you if you do that, if you're gonna wipe your hand over your face, you're gonna in the middle of last night's game go throw me the effing ball, get me the effing ball to Kim Mulkey. You don't then get to stand up there and go like, I, I've just been so d d attacked, and yeah. uh, you know, it's it's the whole Lizzo energy. With the, the whole little, like, I'm quitting after, like, everybody talks about you the way you talk about you. Like, all of a sudden, that's bad. Man, you could finally get my wife to like you. You guys could bond over <laughs> Thank Lizzo. Thank God. That'd be wow. nice. You're a Lizzo that. fan? Oh, last night, I was reading Bobby's email out loud on the couch. I was like, listen to a Bobby. And she's like, who's saying that? It was, <laughs> you know, it was like butterflies in the air. She's like wow. looking around. And uh, I was like, this is Bobby's Lizzo take. My wife totally agrees. Good. And yeah. that's the, I just, I can't take it seriously whenever it's a... You can't be like like I'm trying to think of who's who's one of the most. In, it's similar to you know what the Angel Reese thing is. It's similar to Russ. Russ is Russ for forever, and then Russ gets mad when you like you push back at all. Yeah, but he doesn't like. They were more instigators, right? Russ didn't really instigate. He was he was kind of doing his dances and stuff, his pregame dances in front of you, and then remember he'd get mad when Charlie yeah. Villanueva walked in yeah. front of him. LSU and, played the undercard role last year. They, but you know, you, like Caitlin Clark was the darling of the tournament. LSU came in and was like, guys, like no let's let's not forget who we are too. And they went, and they beat the crap out of them, uh, and then that was it. Uh, this year, they had a little bit of turmoil, and they get Haley Van Lith in the off season uh, as a transfer from Louisville, uh, and she went there and she was tasked with guarding Caitlin Clark, and she didn't do a damn thing. I think Caitlin still scored on her again, and then and Kim didn't even make adjustments, not a single adjustment. Mavericks continue to try to stay hot tonight against the Golden State Warriors. This is a 9 o'clock tip on TNT. 
in California. And Bobby, a uh, little profile piece was done on Luca trying to now. People are still saying it's a long shot. That's the opening of this article. It's still a really, really, really long shot for Luca to win the MVP over Joker. Yeah, that's the word is that people are still saying. And obviously, I mean, Chop read the the numbers yesterday. What's Jokic like minus seven hundred yeah, or something? Yeah, one to seven. Big time favorite. But it, you know, it says there. It's uh, Sam Amick's article over at the Athletic, and it says, look, the, he's a a long shot, but the it's starting to get a little bit louder. So here's your opportunity, Luca. Tell me, like, use this opportunity to say why you deserve to be MVP. And he goes, I can't answer that. That's for the media. I'm happy we're winning, man. That's it. You know I'm not going to answer that question. And he told him, he said, well, some guys do. He says, I know some guys do, but you know I'm not. And I think that's the thing that whenever we talk about pouting or, you know, complaining or, or sulking about the, the results of games, I think there are two different types. There's the type that's sulking because of the results of the game, the how the team played, and sulking because of your own results. Luka's never been the guy, I don't think, who has been upset or bothered by his own personal numbers. I think he genuinely cares above all about winning. He's like an ultra competitor. And I think when you hear him talking throughout this article, it's clear he's just happy with where they're at right now and the way that they're playing basketball. I'm not buying. I'm not buying. You're not? I, don't buy, I, I read the whole I read the whole article. Totally disagree. Luca, well you've I, misread it. Uh you misinterpreted it. Luca is 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 but he's a he's a beat he's a reporter. Reporters have to take what the person says as gospel. You and I see through the BS. Go ahead. There's I, I don't I don't buy it. When, when, when a player speaks about how much of a teammate he is, I know he's not a good teammate. He's, That's just the way it is. If somebody tells you how smart they are, they're an idiot. When they tell you how religious they are, they're a charlatan. When they tell you how good of a teammate they are, they're really a selfish POS. He, he doesn't say it's how good of a teammate I am. It's he's not. Or how much they care about winning. Oh, I care about winning. He's so sa much. He's, he's savvy, but not savvy with the media. Yeah. He's not savvy in terms of like being uh, this advertisable face and personality. He, he probably could be. He shuts it down. He knows in all these interviews he gives, he's slick. He's slick with his answers with, with all that stuff, and you fell if, for if it. If he puts up 8, 5, and 4, and they win. He play, do you think Luka Doncic, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you think Luka Doncic is humble? No. And I'm not attacking him for it. No. But he comes across he as has, the he most. He has incredible confidence. He comes across as the most humble person ever in every single interview. But does. Oh, shucks. I'm slow. I'm terrible. I'm not that good. I lucked into 70 points. He's, and but, I'm not attacking him for it. That's his media game. But what do you like? Like my whole thing is, if he scores eight, six, and five in a Western Conference Conference clinching title game, okay, I think he's thrilled. I think if so, he's not Micah Parsons. I think if Micah puts up a zero stat line in an NFC title clinching game, he's upset. Okay, I mean, and I'm so not... that's all I'm saying is that I think he genuinely. So, I think I think when you see him frustrated, which at times has come across where he gets really irritated and agitated. I think in the end, his agitation, his frustration is all about what's in the W column. That's what he's worried about, and I think that's why he's where he's at right now. Now the problem I have right here, I mean, honestly, I don't know any player that's actually like that. Which one? Any superstar? And there's not a superstar in sports. That is cool with winning and looking and be and putting up eight, six, and five in an NBA game. Disagree. I think I think that is Luka, single I think one. CD Lamb. I think if they win the, a big game like that, if CD Lamb has zero catches in an NFC Championship game, he's on the sideline by the end of the first <laughs> quarter. Complain. He's writing. If they're an essay. losing for he sure. He's writing a letter to Mike McCarthy <laughs> in the middle of a game. I wouldn't use CD as the example right now. I know because I it always happens Lamb. when they're losing. I, I that you're, that's a complete. It was at the first drive. Bobby, he went it's nuts in the first drive. Yeah, you're Completely wrong. Completely off. Bobby, did you watch the Packer game? Yes, I did. Okay, where they were losing when he what was, was the score? Seven nothing. Oh and my god! Oh my god. Oh. With 58 minutes to go oh in the game, god. seven that's nothing. That's the tantrum. Oh, that's the temper tantrum. And CD admitted to that. I, I like that CD takes accountability for it. Uh, he did. He's like, I, I gotta, I gotta grow up. I gotta be a little bit more mature, which he admitted to uh, during the Micah podcast. All right. Mm -hmm, lamb. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Everything you need to know here on Sean and RJ. Thanks for being a total that stands for turn it on, leave it on. Let's hook you up with a Rangers four pack of tickets and let's draft a quarterback here to replace number four. <laughs> Commercial free expressway <laughs> is. Next. Let's get your carpet cleaned at Zerez with the RJ Choppy Fan Special. It's an amazing offer for you. You got to get them over every single year. Do the carpet, do the tile every year. Hardwoods upholstery. 
Yep, we got the dog uh, in September of last year, so it is about time to do the upholstery on the couch for the first time. We have not done that yet, so we're going to get zero res out there. And by the way, get three rooms pre-treated, clean, and sanitized for 109 bucks. They're also going to clean a hallway free and $75 of your air duct cleaning. Did you know all the bacteria and the mold spores are up there in the attic air duct unit? They fester there over the winter, and that's got kind of that funky smell when you turn your AC unit on. A lot of that is mold that you're, that you're breathing in. Bad air quality makes you sick. Get it taken care of at Zero Res with the RJ Choppy Fan Special. 214-37-CLEAN. 214-37-CLEAN. 214-372-5326 or ZeroResDallas.com. Spell backwards or forwards. It spells the same as Zero Res. I got, I got.
hook you up with a four pack of Rangers tickets here on your home of the world champs. Jared Sandler is going to join us at eight o'clock and respond to some of Bobby's shots that he's taking in the commercial break towards the Sandman. <laughs> uh, last week, just call me back for drinks, Jared. Jeez. When's the last time you invited us for drinks? Um, I don't know. When was it? Yeah, so shut weeks up. Back? Shut the hell up. Well, uh, you know what? I know the answer. I was going to invite you out. I knew you were moving, and I know better than to invite him out. He doesn't even tell me when he's in Flower Mount, except for one time. While you were gone, to be cre to give him credit, he gave uh, he texted me. He's like, this is my text to alert you that I'm in Flower Mound passing through to go to baseball. Oh, okay. So you weren't stopping <laughs> to socialize. You're passing through. But he was he was checking in. Was he was nice. he because because people know when they shoot when they show up in my city, they got to check in. You know? Right. I did. I had to. I had to. All right. I know you guys talked last week about Deion Sanders saying we're gonna pull an Eli for Shador. And I didn't realize Deion was representing Travis Hunter as well there in Colorado. But he said he, this is the cities where they'll play. Atlanta, Washington, Baltimore, San Francisco, and Dallas. Hmm. Don't want to play in the cold. Although, uh, I would think that Dion is aware that in Baltimore, it gets pretty cold since he played there. What are those? Yeah, what do all those cities have in common right there, Sean? He played for all of them. Oh, those are all his cities. That's yeah. where he has relationships where he feels he can dictate things. That makes sense. How do people react to Dion saying this? Like, so brash. Uh, this is such a big turnoff, right? Even though no one really holds it against Eli Manning like people still do against John Elway. Uh, it's like people forgot that Eli pulled this move. I can tell you how the NFL reacted to it because I was chatting with the people about it out at uh, Big 12 Combine. Well, and the whole idea was just like, he's just talking. He's he's not dictating anything. He's talking. And so, I mean, so you don't think a team would stay away? No. I also think the, the, the sense I got was, okay, as of right now, Shador getting out of the top four is that's happening. So he can sit there and say Shador is not going any lower than the top four, top five. And people are like, well, as of right now, he would, but but a know, first rounder probably. But yeah. yeah, he's he's not go. He's not like very top of the draft right now. And that's the thing: if you're not the overall number one pick, I don't know that you have a whole lot of legs to stand on in that situation, right? The Plus top you're pick, Matt Perk, and you want to tell the Rangers screw grew off and you're not going to sign there sure but like why can't you hold out at 20 like you can at one if you make life difficult enough maybe you can force the team to be like you know what screw this i'm out I, yeah i think the only difference is that you know at tw at, at one there's 31 other teams that that could go get you at 20 you're you're limited on the teams that are left in the first round they've also kind of constructed rules right to punish you for holdouts like that like yeah financially i don't know whether that's after you've signed when you get to training camp or how it is for draft picks once signing. But Ryan Clark took Dion's statement on the Pivot Pod and talked about where Shador Sanders should end up. If I'm Dion Sanders and I do believe I have the power to manipulate the draft, why wouldn't I want Shador Sanders to go to a team I won the Super Bowl with? Why wouldn't I say to myself, if I want my son to be the biggest star in the world, and I believe he has the talent to do so. Why wouldn't he play for a place that could make a star of anybody who plays that position? Go to Jerry World, become a Dallas Cowboy, make a boatload of money on the field, even more off the field, and forever be a legend in a place that your dad also continued to make himself one. If I'm Dion. I'm looking at Dak Prescott situation. I'm thinking about my relationship with Jerry Jones and the Cowboys ownership. This is where my son grew up. What better place to put your son than the place that's possibly going to lose their franchise quarterback? Yeah, if you if you're under the impression that you can put your son anywhere. Yeah. Like that's the problem and it's the This is why I hated LeVar. No, this is why I hated <laughs> cuz he willed it. He will. He, he spoke it into existence. This is not. there's a difference between name it and claim it, and uh, what what Dion's talking about, which is that's why I hated Eli his entire career. Like as a as a kid, it put a gross taste in my mouth what Eli was doing with the Chargers. Whereas like you're, this is not what the draft is about. You're like 
you're not supposed to be able to just will your way to wherever you want to go. But look, I think more and more in, America, this, free market. in this era of NIL where these guys are like basically free agents and they can do whatever they want in the college, they're going to start feeling like yeah. I have an entitlement to dictate where I'm going. Yeah, you're not going to tell they, me where I don't go. When do you're they right. eliminate the draft? In, in well, that's a good sports. question. I mean, what, sometime, sometime after the 40s? Uh, something like that. Thanks, Ali. Although there's, yeah, there's rumors that it may come back one day. We don't on know. the draft. Though, they had a draft of Vietnam, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So I don't 70s. know. It may come back. So anyway, um, I think the the belief that you can dictate where he goes or steer things any direction you want is just a reflection of massive ego, and it's why I always hated Eli, and it's why. Even as a kid, when I found out what Elway did to the Colts, I was like, oh, you're you're a baby. You're a giant baby, and you just you got to have yeah. everything your way and pitch a fit, and you're somehow more special than everybody else that's come through the draft and not done the same thing. Will the draft tell us if this Dak divorce is actually really happening? Oh, yeah. This but, yeah, yeah. They, no, they, if they don't draft one, though. Oh. I mean, they, yeah, because I was saying if they draft Michael Penix, then absolutely it tells us that. Yeah. But if they don't, oh, uh, no. Like if they don't like, no. Will the why not? Because Trey Lance, like that would be their fail safe. Like I mean, they did give up a fourth round pick for him. They had a high second round grade on him. So I think you're adding too many words to that. It would just be a fail. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they they would they would go that direction. No, like here's the thing: if they were sitting at the number one pick right now, I think they pick Caleb Williams. I think they would do that, but I mean, they're obviously not in the position to do that. So chop, you did some draft quarterback. Homework. Yeah. So last week we did this. I'll just reset this real quick because this is kind of the opposite of it. All right. So last week I was like, all right. Ask Reddit, by the way, coming up and our Rangers four pack ticket giveaway. So I've always said, and, it's, and, and studies show that if you take the, uh, there's no correlation between the top player on the board and success. So the top wide receiver taken doesn't always end their career as the best wide receiver in the draft. A lot of times it's not about 50 50. And the same with quarterback. And I just went and did the you know quarterbacks over the last decade or so. You know, Stroud was better than Bryce, or to this day is. Uh, Purdy is better than Pickett. And Trevor Lawrence, probably the best at his draft. Burrow was the best, but you would ta- absolutely take Tua, Herbert, Love, Hurts as your guy. If you were if you didn't have a quarterback, you would absolutely take them, even though Burrow's better. Kyler's probably the best. Allen and Lamar, better than Baker. Mahomes, Deshaun, better than Mitch. You know, you could easily say Goff uh, is is not as good as Dak. I mean, you could see say, say that Goff's had the best career. I mean, he's had a good career too. And then Carr better than Bortles. So that's the last decade. Wow. You know, and the, where the where the the top quarterback taken is not the best. Bobby, what did you say back to that? Which is you know, kind of, I'm trying to say it in a nice way. I'm we're not trying to start a Brian Broaddus fight here, but it's kind of calling into question scouting and saying no it's really a 50 50 proposition yeah i mean i i think to that's say, a lot of evidence yeah but to to throw one like for instance purdy over picket like nobody liked the draft class purdy was felt kind of fluky. okay nobody i know I'm, I'm giving i'm going by the ones that we have here i think that when you look at okay baker or guys who are like collectively it is ice cream right it's that line that everybody always uses it's about flavors like you identify Mm -hmm. who are the top talents in the draft and then what's your preference what's your flavor i think that it makes sense that the team at the very top of the draft that got there probably from poor roster building a lot of times would have a wrong evaluation than somebody a little bit further behind them who has probably got a better scouting staff than you do You've been mm. in a bad spot. Fair, and that's fair. You, so if you've got a collection of like four quarterbacks that are at the top, I'm not totally surprised that occasionally the team that was the worst in the NFL judged incorrectly about who to pick. Okay, so that was evidence for that study. Now, let me completely debunk all of that. Oh, <laughs> all right. I thought chopping it up was tomorrow. Yeah, I, I can I can RJ take, versus chop. I mean, I can, use, I can convince myself into anything. <laughs> so so I get it. Last week was the study about how the first quarterback taken isn't always the good, the best one. There's a good chance that somebody else is better. The reverse of that is, and I went back to 2011 with this one, and I looked at the quarterbacks taken second through 10th overall. So top 10 still, still should be top talents. I looked at five criteria. One, did they start 50 games? Two, did they have a winning record with the team that drafted them? Three, did they sign a second contract with the team? Longevity, were they still playing when they were 30 years old? And then 
did they win a playoff game? That's the fifth one. How many quarterbacks since 2011 so that were taken between number two and number 10 overall hit all five? You're going to have to repeat them because Bobby and I were... Bobby's- Sean's trying to take like photos of like graphics to explain how great Caitlin Clark is because I guess we're going to do a third segment right. on her at some point. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do a third segment. We, we, we are going to do a third segment a little bit later on. Sorry. So no, you're good. I was so, taking a picture. Bobby was rolling his eyes. So you're going to have to recap right, the categories. So 50 starts. <laughs> all right. 50 starts. 50 starts. Uh, winning record with the with the team that drafted you. Got it. Second contract with the team that drafted you. Yeah. Uh, are you still starting when you hit 30? Okay. And then did you win a playoff game? And this goes back how many? Till 2011. Till 2011. So how many quarterbacks? Years. How many quarterbacks hit all five that were picked second to 10th in the NFL draft? Um, Well, it's hard because Mahomes and Allen are not 30 yet. Yeah. So we can't count them. Um, Five. Zero. I was going to say like not one. Not a single <laughs> one. Now, if you include Mahomes and Allen... And then you got Stroud and Herbert and Tua, and they're probably going to hit one or two of them. But it gets even worse. Like So Cowboys are sitting pretty. We're yeah. not at 2 through 10. Those guys are bums anyway. List, list yeah, that mean, off again. What were the criteria? 50, 50 starts. Uh-huh. Uh, winning record with the team that drafted yep. you. Uh, second contract with the team that drafted yep. you. Still started when you turned 30 mm-hmm. and then uh, win a playoff So, game. I mean, that is Dak right now as a fourth-round yeah. pick. Yeah, Dak hit them all. Um, so like if you add the number one picks in, you get a little bit more like Cam, Goff, um, Andrew Luck, right? They they hit those, but only thirty three percent of the quarterbacks drafted in this time even hit one of those numbers. So not so not taking the first quarterback in the draft, you have about a fifty fifty chance of them actually being better than the overall number one quarterback. But if you pick two to ten and there's a quarterback taking number one overall, you, you're not going to hit any of these. I mean, the study shows that, that you just don't hit these. So since 2011, you've got Cam, Luck, Goff, Burrow, Kyler, and Trevor Lawrence. They all hit at least three of them. Cam and Goff hit all five of them. Uh, Goff be 29 this year, so it qualifies him for week one. So it's it's tough. Even if you take the number one pick of the draft, the chance you hit all five of these things. That's very, very slim. And if you're taking a quarterback number one, like you, you're looking for um, a, a legend. You, you really are. Bobby, will they draft a quarterback in the first three rounds? Probably not. But if they do, it'd be probably the third round, I would guess. Because, I mean, they sent, look, uh, Scott Tolzien, their quarterback's coach, went to Tulane to watch Michael Pratt throw recently. Um, Wasn't there some Ohio State kid in the tweets yesterday some former Ohio State quarterback or some some guy they worked out so they I I got tagged of ML football you don't have to tag me in everything bro I appreciate it like every single tweet that's put out Dallas related I have to untag myself because yeah. I'm in thousands of mentions yeah I uh I blocked him so I I, I don't get his tweets you block anymore. all the aggregators yep Yep, and they blocked me back, which I'm I'm happy. They blocked you back? Uh, not they didn't, but Ari and yeah, uh, Dove did. Ari and Dove blocked me because I talked enough trash about him over time. Still waiting on that Marcus Moser Moser block. Would appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but no, the uh, Michael Pratt at Tulane. I mean, how much do they do they like Spencer Rattler enough? Uh, if he's there in the third round, are they higher on some of these guys like Devin Leary out of Kentucky? Um, so, I mean, it just kind of depends. If they would do it, I would think it would be the third round because anybody you take in the first round, I don't think is going to be there for you. And they're not trading up, I don't believe. Corey Curtis, former Ohio State quarterback, Corey Curtis, apparently worked out oh, for good. the Cowboys. Yeah. No, nothing about him. Corey Mahors Curtis. I don't mean, know anything about him. He didn't even start, even play this year. Colin McCord was a quarterback at Ohio State. It's Tuesday. It's Expressway. We're commercial free. We have our Rangers four-pack giveaway coming up for you, turning it on, leaving it on after Ask Reddit. Do you have a question, Kelly? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? We want to hear from you on the Frankel and Frankel Injury Attorneys hotline, 877-881-1053, 877-881-1053. We also want to hear from you on the Twitch and on the YouTube, so get your answers ready for Ask Reddit, which we do 
every Tuesday during the expressway where we take the most viral. This is where I turn into the aggregator. Okay. I aggregate the, the top <laughs> questions on the 45 million member ask Reddit forum. Sean, we're going to lead off with you as we tend to do. And then, and I don't like it, but it's good. I've got the one banked up for you here that I know you're going to have an answer. For. Well, when, when you direct the first question at me, mm -hmm. What does the question or topic consist of that makes you do it that you have confidence I'll answer? I mean, this it, fits me why. At first, it's because I just, I go in this order. Yeah. That's what the, it was originally. Now, I just look for what's one that I'm confident Sean would have an answer for. And usually it's one of these ones where everybody would have an answer for it, okay. I would think. So, that's what I'm going with here because I know you'll have an answer. Sean Sharif, who was your celebrity crush when you were young? celebrity crush when maybe I, was, I was wrong maybe you don't have an answer um <laughs> I, 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 who are you like obsessed with it like who who were you sitting there and uh were, were you like oh my like, gosh like guy Jane, or girl Jane fonda she's so cute uh, like like when you Jane were like fonda yeah i mean you're that old right where jane fonda <laughs> would have been your, your gal you know i i loved i love tiffany amber Thiessen. Oh but, yeah, Kelly but, Kapowski. Uh, no, but she, the, not Kelly Kapowski. Nine hundred two one zero Tiffany Thiessen. Nine hundred two one zero Tiffany was, Thiessen. You know what I mean? Naughty, 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 very naughty. I wouldn't say obsessed though. Uh, I don't know if I had like a total <laughs> complete one seed. I look. I think. I think Tiffany Amber Thiessen is a great answer. I think for a lot of people, my age, the answer is either Tiffany Amber Thiessen or uh, the Pink Ranger. From Power Rangers. The Pink Ranger. Oh, Amy Jo Johnson. Oh, really? She was. Are you kidding? Oh, the 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 uh, the Frankel and Frankel injury attorneys fan text is about to light you up for even questioning. I mean, I'm not saying she's big ugly. Ranger. I no, just never. She was an all time crush for a lot of people. Really? And Toppy, are you aware of this? I knew Topanga, Whitney, uh, Topanga, off Wonder Topanga. Years. No, Topanga. I've never heard one person talk about the Pink Ranger ever. Uh, not once. This I'm not feels, lying. This feels like you're screwed. With I'm me. not lying. I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. I never I'm not saying she was, she's not attractive, yeah. but I wasn't like. I never heard someone be like, "Oh my god, that's it's probably, probably a superhero anime." It's probably a bunch kind of, of homeschool kids. Yeah, doing homeschool it. kids. Uh, Tiffany Thiessen. Uh, was, Tiffany Thiessen was absolutely one for me. Uh, Marissa Tomei uh, was oh, one for me. Oh yeah. Uh, you're gonna love this I one. Love you're probably Marissa gonna Tomei. hate it. When Marissa I was about, Tomei's 60, by the way. The when Marissa I, Tomei in Seinfeld? Yeah. When I was about 10 years old, I had a weird obsession with Jennifer Capriotti. Oh, oh bro. <laughs> they okay. Are, they right. are lighting up the fan text right now. 12-year-old boys, had every 12-year-old boy had a crush on the Pink Ranger. Pink Ranger's the number one seed since day one. Pink Ranger and Cindy Crawford. Pink Ranger is like one of the default answers. You okay. Have, you have missed this one. But my answer is the one that I was first like obsessed with was Britney Spears. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Brit. I mean, I was 10 when Britney was really <sighs> popping off. It was kind of uh, my awakening, you could say. Uh, and you know what? I was never... I know everybody's throwing out her name on, on the fan text right now. I was never... I never thought Topanga was cute. Ever. I, I think that's everybody yeah, just... I thought she was cute. She looks, she looks just the same. She hasn't changed. No, she, she hasn't at all. We uh, had Kat, we had Elle McPherson. We did. Cindy Crawford, of course. Cindy Kathy great. Ireland. Kathy Ireland. Kathy Christy Ireland. Brinkley. <laughs> I mean, Halle Berry. I love I love this. Uh, I'm just laughing at the, this Halle username Berry. on the Twitch. Uh, on the Twitch, uh, average, average sized Nick says uh olivia wilde for him mike x cowboy says jennifer love hewitt peyton who is your, your oh, crush? jennifer love hewitt mm -hmm. yeah so when i thought about this one i was thinking like before the age of like 12 you know when i was watching like disney channel all the time and so i thought of ashley tisdale of the sweet life of zach and cody in high school musical i was in love with her she was i mean blonde hair blue eyes oh my goodness my mom just wrote M michael or kobe for you so she's taking this to the guys for <laughs> wow no michael for, for you me. kobe for your brother we've we've yeah. established that that that's where you're goes um couple of the answers on the franklin frankel injury attorneys text line Phoebe. aunt becky and lola bunny oh from the aunt, aunt, aunt becky, aunt becky. Boy, she's in the new season of curb how she look just great just just the same she did all, all the years I ago think her daughter is like a felon a, too so it's even better and her daughter i think is identical looking to her phoebe cates and fast times made me a man from tolo chris she yeah phoebe cates was an early one she did not she didn't age well Old Phoebe. Wow. I'm just saying. 513 threw out an answer that I had. I, I totally forgot about this one. 
Dominique Mucciano. Oh, wow. I thought yeah. she was I don't get you guys huge. gymnast. Man. Dude, I loved all the gymnasts. I loved Dominique Mucciano was younger, and then it was Carly Patterson and Nasty Aluminum. I feel weird I talking about, about him now, but uh, back in the day, I was, you know. Who was the girl in Weird Science? A lot of people loved her. Oh. Is that Vanessa Angel? Uh, let's find out. Hey, Peg, go ahead. Yeah, we have a special guest from the G-Bag Nation on the that? hotline that wants to uh, join oh, in the Dean oh. Leasing hotline, Mr. Eric Chiafalo. Oh. Eric Chichi! Oh. I know who Zach's Good morning, is. fellas. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. Uh, I just want to say, Sean, uh, uh -oh. if you remember, Travis Jankowski is a champion when asked in the clubhouse during spring training who his favorite, you know, his cartoon crush was as a child. He asked about the Pink Ranger uh, if she counted Kimberly. Oh. So this is a thing. I just want to let you know this is a thing. She's a smoke show. Okay. She I, absolutely is. And who's yours, Eric? I think Carmen Electra. Is the oh! Oh, 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 how could we forget yeah. Carmen Electra? Carmen Electra. Probably because Dennis Rodman got there, yeah. and I was like, I'm not interested anymore. That, that's where <laughs> my... Yeah, the shine kind of fell off for me after the last dance. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um Okay, well, yeah, that's really all I got. Hey, Boy, hey, where you been recently? We we thought we thought you were a gym tolo. You'd always hit us up at six o'clock. Like, where where you been? We don't get the the messages anymore. The, the okay, so something happened to me at the new year. I was like, I was crushing so good. We had like Christmas family pictures. I was like hitting the gym so good, and then like I don't know. Everybody has these New Year's resolutions, and I guess subconsciously mine was I'm going to be lazier. So <laughs> up, until, up until last week. Uh, I hadn't really been getting up at the crack of dawn, but now I am. I'm back in the saddle, and I love being in the 6 a.m. club. Good All day. right, brother. Love you. Thank you. Love Eric, Chia Follow confirming uh, the Pink Ranger a hype uh, that apparently I was wrong about here during Ask Reddit. Carmen Electra. Yeah, Carmen Electra. Jenny McCarthy good. for everyone, too. Jenny McCarthy, Jenny McCarthy back in the day for us, she was probably thrown up there as a one September seat. of uh, 1997. And look, someone named Kimberly Fry is calling me right now. Oh, oh Kimberly. Well. well, you're showing off the phone number. Let's too. see. Hello? Are you the Pink Ranger? <laughs> you're not the Pink the Ranger. Male Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, All right. Uh, we're doing Ask Reddit here on 105 through the fan. Uh, Rangers ticket giveaway coming up here in just a few minutes. Frankel and Frankel, injury attorney, sex line 877 881 1053, as well as the Twitch and the YouTube will get your answers. RJ Choppy, what's something popular that you just refuse to get into? Because you like yours is the iPhone. Well, this is good because early Choppy, in my opinion, uh, early Choppy would kind of go against the grain. But now I feel like you're a little bit more of a follower of the grain. So you could have you could too old to be a rebel. Yeah. It's the, the iPhone is the easy answer for me. I get told all the time. I don't believe this, but I, I'm I'm certain just knowing you guys, you're going to go. Yes, absolutely. But I get told a lot by friends that I'm contrarian. That I just intentionally go against whatever anybody else is doing or whatever anybody I else finds and I, popular. And I hate contrarian. But I'm not. I think I just have like you, you like to you like to anything, no, is, you like to say no to so I this is my theory. You like to say no to some social situations in order to get the attention from it. I, and I hate that about you. No, it's I probably don't. my number one thing I hate about you. <laughs> no, like, I don't. Yeah, it's like, I'm not going to do it. So we all go, oh, please, Bobby, please come and participate. We'll never have as much fun without you. No. Like, oh, my God. So you have to, like, make it about you by not going to the buffet. You have to make it about you by not going to the Jerry party. Like, I just, no, I'm not going to participate. I'm not, I'm I not going to do I was talked into the Jerry party this week, by the way. By who? My Friday, uh, my Friday hangout. <laughs> Your so buddy. you're really tight friends who you work with every single day. Well, you I'll don't listen to us, but a, you go and we're hang not tight out. Friends, obviously. you go and hang. No, you're basic. No, you and no, Mike, no, you and Mike no, are no, such no. corporate suck ups. No, you, you corporate no. sellouts. Stop now. it. No. Would you bake this guy a carrot no, cake? No, no, no. As it as it was positioned me, and I've sort of God, heard this line before. I, no, this I is fair. This is fair. This is fair. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna explain why. As it was positioned to me was that Disgusting. that is a genuine, that is not any sort of a like attempt to like curry favor or anything else. They said that like that is a genuine like thank you to the media for coming out there and sacrificing the time to come hang out and like be away from your families and everything else. And so it's kind of like throwing a thank you back in their face when you don't show up. And so I felt like, okay, 
Sure, that comes off as probably you rude Steven, towards... You think Stephen Jones not, realizes that you're not there? No. I, you think Jerry Jones oh is sitting there this when Clarence Hill... This is why I don't, this is why I don't uh, talk when to Dave, you guys. When David Moore... This is why we when, don't... When yeah. David Moore and Clarence have Jerry cornered for 45 minutes, you think 45. Jerry's looking over the pile? So what that, I refuse uh, to is one of you guys is, out, is, uh, is intoxicated right Where's now. Where's that bell said? <laughs> uh, where, I don't see that big ball. No good hey, good head, morning, Bobby. Good morning, Bobby. I don't... Where's... Everybody. Yeah, look. Look, as everybody, I understand that you guys may not feel that yourselves, but as Bobby and everybody, I uh, yeah, I feel that okay. a little bit. Uh, Twelve Vader says sports betting that's everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna the by the ticket. way, I'm gonna humiliate you when you do show up with Jerry. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna break up that stupid media huddle. I I, I promise. Sorry, I will, Jerry. Here he is. He's I will. Drunk. I'm gonna walk him right over yeah. to Jerry. I'm gonna drag you by the arm, and I'm gonna be like, Jerry, he's so terrified to be in your presence. That's this, not what this it was. Is the, this is the first year, I can't Jerry. Believe this is like even a, a, even a thing. The answer is the iPhone uh, for me, by the way, since we're talking about what the actual topic What's was. What's the question what, again? What, uh, what do you popular. simply refuse to get into? That for me, it was the iPhone for years, but now I've... Like, I mean, for like, like it, my natural reaction to if everybody likes it and everybody is on something, my natural reaction is it's probably not... Like, it's not something I just go like, oh, I want to be on it too. Typically, my thought is like, it's probably mass produced and like, I would be put off by it what's yours Peyton? so mine is the apple watch i never i i'm a big apple product guy got the mac got the iphone everything the airpods but i never got into the digital clock on my wrist i always wanted to be just a regular clock guy do you call it a timepiece? uh no i do not i've never had an ipod i've never really? had earbuds you had a zoom no, I never had any portable listening device. You don't listen to as much music as like I feel like we do, though. No, I don't listen to like I don't really listen to music in my free time. Do you I'm listen to the watching car TV? Or yeah, I'll skip around like mm -hmm. you know different stations in the morning. Um, but if I'm not in my car, I'll listen to music at pool parties. That's it. I'm not gonna sit. In my, you. I'm not sitting in my house just listening uh, listening to music. But iPod, nope, Bluetooth. Not really. Uh, pods, whatever they are, I don't know how to work them. No, no, really, no idea. You can put a gun to my head. And AirPods, I'd be in AirPods is one I tried to get into, and then I was just like, "This is I don't like these. I, I really do prefer like uh, the wired headphones. Oh, I'm gosh, mad that really? I'm mad that I'm mad that they don't have the they don't have the jack. Yeah. Stupid iPhone, like." changed the game with the whole little like well no the the uh headphones have to plug into where the little charging port is and that's what that's what they ended up doing with the the samsung too pat Tony said ask bobby about taylor swift i refuse to get in. i hate what does taylor this swift. have to do they, they, to get they, what i refuse to get into that everybody else loves <laughs> is taylor swift and and he knows it pat by the way uh what was it pat was like uh, Tweeting out hashtag boiler up. I didn't know he was such a Purdue fan. He's Mr. USC. Mm. I saw him after Purdue one. He, he tweeted boiler up. Uh, but no, that was, yeah, I, I absolutely refuse to. There's a couple songs I like. They're okay. But I, I'm not going to acknowledge those. All right, we're doing Ask Reddit here. Peyton Russell, what is not a deal breaker, but would be greatly disappointing to find out about your partner? Ooh, man, so many good things. So one thing I thought of was like refusing to go to family events. No one wants to go to like your partner's, you know, relative's house or parent's house to hang out for a whole day. Oh. But if they refuse to get, they're just like, I will not go. You go by yourself. I'll, I'll talk to them on the phone or something. They refuse to go. It's a, it's a big red flag. It's that's not a, a deal breaker. Oh, that's think. a deal breaker really? for me. Oh, yeah. You got to go eventually. Yeah. You have to go. Yeah. Like, and is any of this having to do no, Mc with McKenzie you and Mackenzie no, no, and Easter? No, 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 Did you not want to go to Mackenzie's and no, vice no, no, versa? No, I do. I'm just saying, like, if it wasn't Mackenzie, someone else, like, this would be a, a, a problem. All right. So I assume, now maybe I'm just reading this, listening to this wrong. I assume. It would just bother you, but it wouldn't cause you to break up. But it yeah, would really bother you. But is it something I learned about their past? Either, like, if I found out I, that Sarah killed somebody, like that? Sure, about that. If, if you want to yeah, take that's that not way. a deal breaker. As long as it doesn't happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Would it disappoint you? Or would you be like, eh, I mean, oh, you probably be, had a reason. Disappointed. I would want to find out what the hell the guy did. Or the girl. <laughs> I don't care. As long as it doesn't happen to me. I'm very selfish, Bobby. You know this. If it doesn't happen to me, that'd really affect me. I don't care. So there's nothing that's a deal breaker. Amanda was pretty shocked yesterday. She listened to 530 and she goes, I was pretty shocked when you guys opened the show and RJ didn't ask you how you been. How was the week? How was the move? He went right into his basketball team. And I was like, yeah, that's uh, that's par for the course. That's that's pretty normal. Tennessee played. I, I yeah. assume that uh, it went well. 
Uh, I assumed. Uh, you're here. <laughs> like, you? I was going for a whole week. We opened the show at 5 30, and he's like, I'm down. I'm down at the dumps. Like, it wasn't like, hey, how you doing? How was the life? How was the week? How, how was the move? You all in? Da da da. No, nope, we go right to choppy. Yeah. Yeah. So how's, how's Sarah last? How's Sean and the new baby? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. No uh, idea. Twello Vader says, uh, found out who she voted for. Uh, oh. Not a fan. One oh five three says lots of hair on the arms. Uh, that's what I. Uh, oh, that's a deal breaker. It, yeah. Oh well. Especially with my people. <laughs> there was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll like I'm hoping my daughter. I'm just like uh, again. I don't care if she has nine fingers, nine toes. Don't don't, don't don't have back hair. Don't have back hair. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Don't have a don't, you messy. Don't you don't have braids already. Uh, and off your off your forearms. Uh oh, here we go. Uh five one two. Her wanting a uh another gentleman involved during our time uh would be concerning, but not a deal breaker. Uh for me, if I found out I like, know that was Choppy's text number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know you when did you live in Austin? Don't That's be wild. Insecure. <laughs> be insecure about it. It's uh I, I, mine is probably if I had knowing everything about Kristen that I do. If I found out that she had, like, previously, if she was telling me about, like, you know, her past or whatever, and she told me, like, she had cheated on somebody previously, that wouldn't be a deal break for us, but uh, it would be, like, a little, like, I would be, be in your head. I'd be a little, no, not even in my head. I'd be disappointed that it's, like, I would not have thought that was you. Like, mm. and so that would have, that would be a mm. little kind of just, like, oh, okay, that's that's okay. kind of disappointing a little bit. One more. But, all right. Um, and by the way, what were some of the answers people had for things that they did not get into that were popular? That could have even gone... TikTok was a big one on the fans. Yes, TikTok. TikTok. Crypto was one. Crypto. Uh, Sean, I don't want to talk about crypto. Mm. Some of the little tattletales may be listening. (laughs) Careful. What is something every teenager should know about the real world? Every teenager should know about the real world. Well, I I feel like my answers are now old and outdated. I I, I was ready to give some tough love and some hardcore statement, but... I don't think they apply anymore. Oh, I'll give it. I'll you give can you. get away with whatever you want. You just whine enough. You cry enough. You 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 sit there and come up with enough ailments and this and that, and you'll be able to get away with I, it. Probably I, I, my tough love. No, I genuinely still think you are ultimately, and you or you at least need to treat it this way because it's true most of the time. You're on your own. Like you need to. You, nobody's gonna necessarily like once you're an adult. It's like, well, you're an adult. Figure it out. Like nobody's bailing you out. Ultimately, you have to figure it out. That's something like. We, that's something we've really tried to impress upon Jacob as he's getting closer is like, hey, this is like you are you're not going to get bailed out at every turn here. He's trying to he's trying to depart early and before he graduates. And it's like, well, you're 18. Can't stop you. But if uh, if you bail before you graduate, you're not taking the dresser or the bed or anything else that we yeah. bought over I would, time. I, yeah. I would also say that 18 does not make you an adult. 18 does not make that you an adult. That is the dumbest age so dumb. rule in life it's that so we've stupid. always agreed on. I, uh, so dumb. 21 I, doesn't probably make you an no, adult. No, I mean, everybody, everybody's brain develops at a different point. Um, I would say paying your dues is not punishment. It's not mm, a punishment. There you go. That's a good one. You know, it's, look, life isn't fair. If you, the, the sooner you realize life isn't fair and some people have it easier... Uh, the better off you'll be because ultimately you're responsible for your own success and failure. Wow, how profound. I know. Well done. Uh, that's Ask Reddit. Commercial free. Expressway. Home of the Rangers Tolo giveaway. Sending you to Arlington with four tickets right now. All right, Tolos, that's right. Call a number 10 right now at 877-881-1053. We'll win a four-pack of tickets to see your World Series champion, Texas Rangers, take on the Oakland Athletics April 10th. You'll want to get the early Tolos because the first 10,000 fans in the gate will also receive a World Series replica trophy presented by T-Mobile. And it's also dollar hot dog night at the ballpark. Get tickets and information now at rangers.com slash tickets. That's call number 10 at 877-881-1053. Sean Treve here for Better help we were talking about a lot of life issues right there a lot of different decisions if you have been thinking about talking to someone about getting some help head on over to better help that's help.com slash sean and rj to get 10 percent off your first month give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge you're having that same old fight with the girlfriend or the wife or maybe both of them you need someone to go ahead and mediate that a lot of times the extra perspective is necessary so you don't keep banging your heads against the wall over and over over the exact same issue let 
better help. Come in after filling out the brief questionnaire to get matched and get started with 10% off your first month if you use our special show code Sean and RJ. So that's betterhelp.com slash Sean and RJ for 10% off. Betterhelp.com slash S H A N and RJ.
Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. There goes Evan. Here's the 3 2, and that's a line drive past Lau and out into center field. It scores Seeger. Carter races the third. He'll hold up there. A nice job by Josh Young hitting essentially behind the runner Carter to get Seeger home for a 4 0 Texas lead. Josh Young easily the offensive star of the game for the Rangers. My boy. Dane Dunning getting it done against the Rays in the Rangers victory last night on this radio station. They'll do it again today uh, with a 5:15 pregame first pitch at 5:50, and you will hear the Sandman, Jared Sandler, joining us on the DNM Leasing Hotline here on DFW Sports Station. Good morning, brother. How are you? What's up, guys? It was great being back in studio yesterday, watching uh, Rangers baseball and. Some college basketball. I, I saw the. I don't. Uh, I. So the the first ball that the first hit batter was Evan Carter, and that grazed him. Uh, Adolis got hit. Uh, obviously, you know, pretty flush on the hand. Thankfully, I, I think he's okay. Uh, and you know, with Josh, yeah, obviously went up and in. I. I was looking at numbers, and, and not that this can necessarily guarantee anything, but Phil Maton early in his career re- rarely hit anyone. And I don't know if it was going to Houston, and, 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 and this is not a shot at the Astros, but maybe it's a philosophy of, hey, uh, you don't throw hard, so we can't have people cheating you know, over the outer half. You've got to throw inside. Like The, the only way you're going to make it work with your 88-mile-an-hour fastball, and, and Phil Maton is a very soft tosser, especially as a righty, is you got to go inside. And his hit batter numbers really spiked the last couple of years. Mm. So I, I don't I don't know if it's that. I, if you were to ask me, like, take the, the emotion out of it, do I think it was intentional? Uh, I don't. I, I really don't think it was intentional. Now, that doesn't mean that the Rangers don't have every right to be absolutely fired up because he essentially hit three batters uh, in, a, what, a four-batter stretch. And – you know, I don't care, you know, what the circumstance is. Uh, you know, that's that that's just not big league pitching. And uh, and unfortunately, specific to yesterday, it's resulting in uh, an all-star player uh, getting hurt and, as you mentioned, going to likely miss significant time. Do you expect any type of retribution today or tomorrow? Yeah, I, so I posed this question on Twitter. We actually had – some interesting discourse on the post game show last night. We had some people call in and say that, you know, they absolutely have got to do something. And then other people call in and say, there's zero reason to do anything. Why just, just win the game. And uh, I, I've typically felt like the art of throwing to the guy, especially as guys throw harder and you hear, you know, guys from generations past in baseball say that, you know, there, there are fewer pitchers and more throwers these days or something along those lines, and guys don't have as good a control. I've always maintained that guys don't practice throwing at hitters, right? They practice throwing strikes over the corners and whatnot. And so a guy could step on the rubber with every intention of doing it the right way and hitting a guy on the butt or below the waist. But because you don't practice throwing at a guy, you don't always have that, that level of command. I, I so in general, I, I've always felt like there are better ways to do it. With that said, uh, I, I would be – I don't want to say I'd be surprised. My gut tells me that when you hit three guys, and those guys are Carter, Garcia, and Josh Young, and one of them gets hurt, uh, the way that you know these guys operate, uh, you do sign just to send a message to Tampa, but also to other teams around the league. Hey, you want to pitch inside on us? That's fine you better make sure that you don't miss too far inside mm-hmm. because your best player is going to have to watch out. Jared's, right? And yeah. oh, Go ahead. I was resetting. Go ahead. Oh, and so I, I think the answer to that question, though, is going to be determined by what happens, right? So if Andrew Heaney, who's a veteran, right, you're not putting a young guy in a bad spot. If he does throw at someone, then I think either the message was made clear or – he just decided this is how we're going to do things. If he doesn't throw at someone, though, uh, and there is no quote-unquote retaliation, then that means, in my opinion, that the, the veterans in that clubhouse got together and said, hey, it's over, it's done with, 
let's not worry about it. We're going to move forward. I tend to think it's going to be the former and not the latter, though. Jared Sandler here on The Fan. Chuck Cooperstein tweeted something last night and uh, got some uh, Ranger Tolo backlash. Uh, and he was suggesting, I'll, I'll rephrase it. Is it fair to start wondering whether Josh Young is a little injury prone? If it was constantly a muscle thing here, a muscle thing there, then maybe I, 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 I don't, I, I don't know the body well enough to tell you that uh, his last two injuries and forget the calf thing. You know, at the beginning of camp, guys deal with stuff early in camp all the time. Uh, he he had the thumb injury last year because of a line drive that right. you know was was hit right at him and he gets hit by a pitch. I mean I I, I don't I don't I mean I don't know uh, I I don't know how to stack Josh Young up against other guys and if if every other guy in Major League Baseball was uh, you know had that line drive hit at them or was hit by that pitch last night in that position. I mean I think the only way to know that answer is to then put every other guy in Major League Baseball in those situations and find out how many of them would suffer the same injury. I mean, I just call Coop an idiot. I, it's fine. Just call him a moron. No, I, I just I, I think that there are there are guys who are injury prone, and I think there's some guys who they go through stretches in their career where they're snake bitten, and I think that Josh Young is snake bitten, and and Rangers fans only know about the last couple of years or last year plus, but you know in the minors uh, he dealt with some things that were some bad luck injuries as well, so. Um, I would. I, I mean, this sounds weird to say. I'd much prefer this than like a guy who just his muscles are constantly giving out on yeah. him. But um, it, yeah, I mean, it definitely stinks, and it, I, I just feel so terribly for Josh. Uh, you know, because you're around this kid, like he is a. He's, he, you know, he's kind of like Marcus and Corey. There's not a lot of outward personality. Like he's not like Elvis and jumping around and whatnot. But this guy is a fierce competitor. Uh, and wants to be one of the best to ever play. Like, you, you hear him talk, he wants to be, like, a legendary player, and he puts in the work to do it, and then to have this get in the way of that, just it kind of stinks. All right, Sandler, let's replace him then. In the meantime, uh, where do they go? Who do they call up? Yeah, so I think they got to – the, the, the options that make the most sense to me, and there always are options – that you don't think about that, you know, usually end up happening. But the ones that make the most sense to me are, are these. One is you call up Justin Foscue, but not to play third base. Justin Foscue is not a third baseman. You would be working at a significant deficit defensively at third if Justin Foscue is your everyday third baseman. But you call him up to fill Ezekiel Duran's role as the first base platoon option. So Ezekiel Duran becomes your everyday third baseman. He probably plays about 80% of the time there. You get Josh Smith in there as well a few times. Uh, and then you have Justin Foscue up primarily to platoon with Jared Walsh at first base, be a bat off the bench, right? And, and I think the thought process there is Justin Foscue has done just about everything he can do in the minors. Let's see what he can do at the big league level. Uh, another option is... Jonathan Ornelas, who's on the 40-man roster. So there aren't a lot of hurdles you'd have to worry about there. And if you call up Jonathan Ornelas, you're basically just calling him up to be a, a utility guy off the bench. You're not concerned about getting him at bats. He fills in as needed. But third base goes primarily to Ezekiel Duran and Josh Smith. Uh, another option that uh, I think would be interesting is Davis Wenzel. Now, this one would require a 40-man move. However, if Josh Young's going to be out 60 days, then you put him on the 60-day IL, and that's your 40-man move. Uh, I don't know the extent of Josh Young's you know, recovery yet. I, I don't think we'll know until later. But if you bring up Davis Wenzel, uh, then now you've got a, a really good utility infielder, a guy who is really good defensively. And then in a platoon situation, either you keep Ezekiel Duran at third base no matter what because it's just not worth moving him off that position, or you have Davis Wenzel at third against lefties, Ezekiel Duran at first against lefties. If you keep Zeke at third, then Davis Wenzel could play first base against lefties. The other option is Matt Duffy. He's more the Jonathan Ornelas type, except instead of being a young guy, he's a veteran. He would require a 40-man move. You're not concerned about him getting at bats. He's there as a backup utility infielder. I, I'm sure there are other options out there. Those are the ones that just jump to mind for me. Sandler, bullpen, some of the new additions, Robertson, Yates. How do you think they've uh, – what's your impressions on them, early impressions over the first couple of games? 
Yeah, it looked really good. Uh, I, you know, obviously uh, the numbers certainly support that Yates. Uh, I thought it was interesting when he came out. Uh, uh, I guess his first outing against the Cubs, he was put in a situation where two of the three batters he faced were lefties. And we've talked about how even though he's a righty, uh, Kirby Yates is, is a guy who uh, has had a, a track record of, of dominating lefties, including last year. Lefties barely hit over 100 against him. Uh, you know, obviously in two outings, he's been really good, hasn't given up a run. We saw David Robertson last night, and one of the things that stood out about Robertson last night is his ability to get more than three outs, and that's valuable. That's necessary. You know, there, there's you you got multi-inning relievers, right? Jose Urania, Gary Rodriguez demonstrated that on Sunday. But you also want some of your high leverage guys to be able to get you more than three outs when needed. You don't necessarily want to abuse that, but you want to know that they've got that in the tank and, you know, David Robertson was able to do that, look good. And the value there, it's not getting more than three outs for the sake of getting more than three outs, but what if what if you need that guy to come in in the middle of an inning, maybe a little bit earlier than you thought, much like yesterday, right? Dane Dunning was cruising through six, ran into trouble in the seventh. You bring in David Robertson to be that stopper in the seventh, but maybe your intention was that he was also going to pitch the eighth. Well, now you don't have to worry about it. Bring him in for the seventh. Have him put out the fire, and then you know what? If he does it efficiently and effectively, bring him back out for the eighth because you have confidence that he can get you more than three outs. And I mean, it, it's just a sample size of one, but he did it very effectively yesterday, and that could be a, a really good weapon for the Rangers moving forward. Talking with the Rangers insider Jared Sandler here on 105 through the Fed. Jared, how long is the leash with Jose Leclerc in the ninth inning, uh, you know, with Robertson and Yates pitching well and guys who have closing experience? How long will will they they let him go if he starts or if he continues to struggle like he has the first two times? Yeah, and don't forget about Spores, too. Uh, Spores was the guy who was going to you know, get the save opportunity yesterday, I believe, before the Rangers made it out of hand. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Bobby, and, and the answer to that is different because of those guys versus maybe a situation like last year where you didn't have a ton of great options, although you had one. And we saw last year that Will Smith was, you know, he kind of got opportunities early. Now, a part of that was because Jose Leclerc was dealing with the neck thing. So I don't know that that's Bruce Bochy's playbook necessarily, but I don't think the leash is going to be as long for Jose Leclerc as it would be for someone else in a similar spot uh, with a track record, all right, a Josh Hader, obviously, uh, an Edwin Diaz, you know, one of these guys who's done it year and year and year and year and year, uh, you know, over and over. And and I don't think it would be the same as, you know, if the Rangers didn't have options. They do. And it's a great thing. And, you know, Jose LeClerc, maybe his best role isn't, you know, as, as a closer. Maybe his best role is, you know, in the, the seventh or eighth inning. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, he, you know, I, I don't think he's going to be lifted from that role right now. And here's the thing with Jose Leclerc. Last two seasons, he's had an ERA that started with two. Uh, last two seasons, he's held opposing hitters to a batting average under 200. He doesn't get hit. He gets into trouble when he walks, guys. And walks have been an issue for him, uh, and they've been an issue so far this year. But, you know, it would be one thing if he's getting hit around. Like when Will Smith started to struggle last year, he was just getting hit all over the place, right? Missiles left and right. Jose Leclerc just doesn't get hit. And so that's kind of, you know, the, the, the counter to, hey, we need to move him from the closer spot. Uh, but he's got to do a better job of throwing strikes, plain and simple. And I don't think Bruce Bochy after last year is going to have a ton of patience, uh, you know, in, in that role and inability to throw strikes, especially with the veteran options that the Rangers have who have proven they can do it. What are you going to do with your championship ring? Mm. I, I, you know, there are a few people, like my nephews, who want to see it and stuff, and I'll show them. I, you know, I, I might bring it up to the station one day. But, like, I, I'm not – guys, I'm not a, a, a big ring wearer. I'm surprised I wear my wedding ring every day. I mean, I, I didn't think I'd feel comfortable wearing that. But I, I no, if you I wore it, you'd be a douchebag. I'm just saying, where are you going to put it? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to get yeah, a safe? No, you going to display? I'm, gonna it, I'm not going to. I'm going to put it in a, a safe. I'm going to hide it away, uh, and I will. I will look at it. You know, whenever I don't know, I want to look at it. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> are there any? And it's the same one, right? Same one. The players got same exact one. No, so I, I think there are they're gonna there are minor differences between the ones the players got and the ones that everyone else gets. Uh, but I think effectively, like if you my understanding is if you see it, uh, you you wouldn't on this you know without like analyzing it notice any of the differences. Jared, 
We appreciate it. We have run out of time as always. We have so much more to talk about, though. So we'll do it again soon. See you guys. Jared Sandler on the DNM Leasing Hotline. Cotton Eye Jared, as we call him. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's he's gonna come he's up gonna here one day. Anyway. He's, he's gonna, gonna set the building on fire. Come up here one day uh for you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I love that man. I love him. Is he that's who you keep inviting for drinks or you're waiting for it to reverse? No, like we like I've been like, hey, we need to get drinks, and they'll be like, Yeah. Totally. One day, not today. <laughs> Can anyone match this Texas Legends late night snack? That and below the belt coming up. Let's get you over to Platinum Ford in Terrell. It is, of course, a Stephen Gilcrest owned store, Gilcrest Automotive. They are going to hook you up on that brand new Ford car.
you by Window Nation Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you have been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 or 817 333 With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. So many developments and commercial breaks mm. today. Man, I almost changed the entire segment. <laughs> almost did. Oh, no. But maybe we'll go ahead and save it for tomorrow, where at this time, we'll have on Matt Pittman. It'll be a Meat Church Hump Day. Hump Day. Hey. As he says, he's getting prepared to go cook at the Masters. Oh. oh. You think he's cooking? Uh, for white people? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a rule there, isn't it? <laughs> I was trying to think of the master winner's name who's coming up with that dinner. It's um uh John Rum. John Rum. John Rum. Hey, I saw you. You put some Blanco on some chicken this I week, did. didn't you? How'd you I think did. how'd it go? It, it went, I used it last night. It went very, very well. Did you? Mm -hmm. After talking trash about it in the text? I talked trash about it on <laughs> on uh, on spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Explain what happened. All right, so Bobby sends a text. Uh, it said, "I just put Blanco on." This is this is uh, Matt Pittman's new seasoning. He said, "I just put Blanco in the marinara," and I said, "Gross! I'm gonna make it. I'm, I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that." <laughs> and then I side text and said, "That was the group text that had Pittman in." It. <laughs> and I wrote back. Well, if you had an Android, and I wrote back and I said, "Get an iPhone so we can name the group chat, so I don't make that visit. because I don't look up at the top and see who's on." I know it's 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 one of the worst feelings you could ever yeah. get. It's a sickening feeling. It's a sickening feeling. And I was like, "Well, whatever." I mean, what the hell? I mean, I'm Italian. I mean, we use like we're very particular about what Dude, we put in our sauce. I've le I've legitimately started putting it in everything because it's, it's just it's garlic, it's salt, onion, pepper, garlic. It's, it's, gar yeah, it's garlic, salt, pepper, onion. Garlic. It's all the powders. MSG. Well, there's MSG in it, and so that that's it. That's going to be a big time flavor enhancer. So. Yeah. Krista made some mashed potatoes. Arena, but Krista made some mashed potatoes this weekend. She did like a big time spread for Easter. It knocked it out of the park. But the the mashed Whoa. potatoes, I put some of the the blanco and the mashed potatoes, turned them into basically garlic mashed potatoes. It was so good. I've yeah. been putting it in queso. I've been putting it in everything. So what, how did Matt respond on the group chat? He then, didn't respond at then, all. Then you guys canceled him last week. Well, no, he was on no, vacation. no, he canceled us. Oh, yeah, he was on vacation. We're, we're like we're ready to have him. He's like, oh, sorry, I was on vacation this week. I'll be back next week. We're like, oh, okay, well, okay, we're ready to have him. I was ready to. Yeah. I was ready to make it really uncomfortable. For chopping. Oh, we put it on broccoli, put it on uh, salmon. Yeah. You know, just uh, not, 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 I didn't put it on spaghetti yet. We'll do it tomorrow uh, with Matt Pittman. It'll be a Meat Church Wednesday brought to you by Mr. Electric. Thank you, Mr. Electric. Blanco was the first thing I cooked in my house, and Mr. Electric was the first repair to the house. <laughs> the As first of many. The first of many. I, I, I left out like nine different things that is making my move miserable yesterday. Was better, it was yesterday a better day? Um, yes. Good. It was a better day, but still, uh, my, uh, a part that I ordered, uh, is a month out. I got that bad news yesterday. Um, I don't really want to go into it all right now, um, <laughs> because I'll get started and I won't stop my, my internet. I'm not going to name different providers. What a complete nightmare. This has been, I mean, I got wires running everywhere. It looks like, it looks like a jump, jump rope center at my house oh man the wire here wire there not dug for this not dug for that uh different people i'm paying people 50 dollar tips just to come back out keeping them on retainer myself like we had an open bar it, it is yeah. it is it's a it's a disaster we uh, no, uh it's funny i i believe we have similar providers and last week i was like chop was saying like hey were you able to, to edit the song i was like peyton had to do it my internet's effed i like the last three days of last week i was having to like do all my prep on the phone like I couldn't get my I couldn't get my internet to work. That our it wasn't just mine either. It was our entire building. Like they had to come out there with the uh, the like encore looking trucks and work on the internet for like two three days to get it to work again. Yeah, I'm juggling two and I'm trying to make a decision. And I want to go with one for the customer service and really just say screw you to the other one who's put me through hell. But the one who put me through hell is probably better and has all your money already. They don't have all my money. No, they don't, they don't have all my money. But, you know, one of the things I've learned about, um, like, construction and people coming over to your house a lot of times, no one believes in those little footsie things anymore. Like, I want COVID, oh, to, really? I want COVID to come back just for that. I want COVID to come back just for people hair to, to be more cognizant of not making a mess inside your house. And then people do work on your house 
and they like don't clean up after themselves. Like, I'm sitting there bringing out the vacuum. I'm sitting there swiffering. I'm sitting there mopping up all the dust prints from people not wearing foot protection. Oh man! And uh, yeah, it bothers me. The cleanup factor with a lot of uh, with a, with huh. a lot of people in construction. Very okay. inconsiderate. Yeah, and then I, my builder, unfortunately, was listening yesterday. So I texted him a question, and he's like, "Yeah, you want to fix it with some blue tape, Ooh. capital letters." And I was like, "Damn." He was listening. Bluetape.com, promo oh, code Sean. Yeah. Um, don't, go, go, don't go against him. I've, I've heard stories. Oh, I know. <laughs> Old motorcycle Bill out there, man. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. He tried to play it off, too. Like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you mean? I, <laughs> I know. Uh, by the way, a quick shout out to Franklin Frankel. When we went and met the other day, the big man was wearing an SMU shirt. And I was like, oh, you got to be happy about the brand new hire y'all got for your basketball oh, squad. Oh, man. Dunk City. Andy Enfield. Old Gene Burkett. He was rocking. It was the day of the tournament starting. Uh -huh. And he had his SMU shirt on. And I'm like, oh, y'all got yourselves a new coach. Mm -hmm. Yep. No Caitlin uh, Clark, though. What's so, that? No Caitlin Clark, though. Yeah, Caitlin Clark would probably no. be the best player on their team. Hey, More on that coming up at 9. Sean's yeah. got a whole 15-minute uh, segment played I, for I you. I'm good at talk. I'm not. You're not going to. Mm. Go. So Andy Enfield is uh, is now the the head coach at SMU. Now he's the guy you might remember. He was at Florida Gulf Coast when they went to the Sweet Sixteen about a decade ago. Uh, they, they were called Dunk City. Yes, took over. Feeler, Comer, Sherwood. This is the Jeremy Lin of coaches. Flash the pan. Another. Uh, I mean, he went to Elite Eight with USC a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah. During Dunk City. Oh, no, no, with, with USC with okay. the Elite Eight. And then you know, he got Bronny there, uh, which, yeah, whatever. That's good. Um, I think O.J. Mayo was way before his time. Um, has to be, right? Yes. But, um, way, yeah, way, way before. Way before. <laughs> yeah, O.J. Mayo was, was like a highly talented prospect, yeah, cratered, like boomed with Dallas, got on drugs and everything else before he was So, there, But he is leaving USC. He didn't get fired from USC. He's leaving USC for SMU. And on first glance, it's like, okay, well, why? That's not a that's not a lateral move. That's a step. That's a, let's be fair. I mean, that's it's probably it's a step, step down. down. Not, I mean, it is yeah. a step down. USC is not a great program, but they're going to the Big Ten, and the Big Ten's a better conference than the ACC for basketball right now. The ACC doesn't know if it's going to be a conference in three years. For crying out loud, the Big Twelve is trying to get Duke. Okay, they're trying to get Duke. So that, that that goes to show you what the ACC is. And at Clemson and Florida State have already hired lawyers to try to get out. Carolina and Virginia and Duke are like, they're, they're taking offers. You have no idea what you're getting. But he did not like, apparently, I don't think he wanted any part of the travel that's going to be taking place. If you're USC and now you're in the Big Ten and you're going to have cross-country flights all over the place, it's a lot. Uh, the transfer portal, have to deal with that, convince kids to take six-hour flights three times a year or, you know, three times a month. I don't know if they want to get into that. Uh, but also, they also didn't want to give him an extension. They weren't. He wanted an extension, and he wasn't getting one. So it was kind of a lame duck. So he's like, all right, I'll get up and go. But now he's at SMU. And the interesting thing with SMU is, all right, they made a very curious firing this year. So they won 10 games, not this year, but the year before. Bad year. This year, they doubled. They went 20. 20-game 20 season is a pretty good year. So their coach is Rob Lanier. It's Bob's cousin. Really? Yeah. And he now is taking over. He got a job. Right? I think he's at Rice now. Um, but I was like, all right, why why'd they fire? You go from 10 wins to 20 wins. That's a lot of improvement. Like, there's obviously a forward trajectory here. I think the reason is they knew they can get Andy Enfield, and now they're going to bring him in, and we'll see what their ceiling is. We saw what their ceiling was with Larry Brown. All right, they had a really good team. They threw the hearts of the town for a little bit. I think that's when I went and took Jerry a beer. It is. Uh, it is. Um, like Bobby will do this year at the media party. Right. Now, the <laughs> issue with SMU is they're going into a much tougher conference. Carrying the water over for <laughs> Yeah, <him>. this is <laughs> a... Fanboy. <laughs> This is a complete step up in weight class that they're going to right now. They're going from the American, the AAC, to the ACC. It's a huge step up in weight class. So, But they're going to sell out. Look, when Duke and um, and, and Carolina come to town, that's a sold out. That's a sold out place. There's no doubt they're going to sell that out. Uh, I've always thought they were a sleeping football giant. Maybe they are a sleeping basketball one, too. Who knows? A lot of talent here. All right. Let's compare your late night snack to the great legend of Patrick Mahomes. There was not audio with this, right, Chop? 
No, it was uh, like a... It's a picture. Picture. Pat Mahomes says he eats 10 ice cream cones a night. A night. Okay. This is... This is... I, I think you're... There, there's a little bit of a misunderstanding. These are not the giant drumsticks. Yeah. These are like the little me. These yes. are these are the mini. My ones. wife has all of them, and they're so good. They are really good. Yeah, they are really they're, good. They're like the snack size versions, like when you get the the fun size candy bars yeah. or whatever. It's like the fun size version yeah. of one of those. Yeah. Because I think Chop was under the impression this was a full ice cream cone that he was eating ten of these a night. But there's still ten of them. But yeah, that adds up to. One three? and a half. And what? The, what? One and a half. And the. I uh, mean, a drumstick is not eight feet long. And the, I mean, three of these. It's probably, <laughs> a, ten, a ten of these is probably three and a half drumsticks. And no. that's the. Uh, but that. Yes. No way. Not the amount of ice cream that's in it. No see way. If you can measure this, add this up, or someone, you know, maybe Ryan, more intelligent. Look, at that, like, Look that is Brittany Mahomes' thumb. It's the size of Sean's okay, hand. It's, that's it, not that it, big. Bro, three. three ten of those, those is at least three, three. Yeah, regulars. No. Three. But yeah. that begs the question why does it eat two regulars? Did anyone ask that? Why isn't he eating two or three Not regulars versus ten those, smalls? Those big ones, they can get a little messy. They can get messy for sure. Look at those. That's why Pat has the dad bod. Because he's eating ten of those yeah. a night like uh, like, like uh, he, mac and cheese used yeah, to. Yeah, he's the I new, he's the new uh, Pillsbury throw boy. What was that? I saw a belly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, on the Mahomes picture. So what is the late night snack weakness or go-to? Cereal. Damn, oh. it is. Big bowl of cereal. Big bowl of cereal. Yeah. Okay. And what's the cereal been lately? Uh, usually like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Honey Bunches of Oat. Um, you get, uh, you'll, you'll sometimes get Life okay. mixed in there. Hey, Pay, I, I can see you yeah. with, with something. So it's the Cinnamon Raisin Bagel with Cream Cheese. Who the hell has a cinnamon raisin bagel at 8 p.m.? <laughs> Dude. What, what, are you, what are you carving what are you up for? Would you run out of locks? You carve it up for, for sleep? Cinnamon? It's good flavor. And then you put where, the, the thick cream cheese on there. Where, not are you the your, where are you getting your bagels from? Kroger. Okay. <laughs> cinnamon? At 9 o'clock at night, you're I'm, having a cinnamon raisin bagel. <laughs> flowers and bagels. Hey, we're Kroger just built different, right. Chop. We're different people, okay? Wow. okay. <laughs> Interesting. Try it. Just try it. Try it one night. What's oh. Mackenzie have? Fruit roll-ups? Go uh, along with her dino nuggets? <laughs> hey, hey, sweet is cereal, by the way. Savory, though, is like you get the uh, like the pizza rolls. If those are in the freezer. That's a weakness. You have uh, one before soda? Popcorn. Big that's time. Amanda's. Big time missing popcorn right now. Really? Big no, time. Hey, smart popcorn? Uh, we'll go to we'll get the uh, the Costco the Kirkland one uh, or uh, if you go to Trader Joe's they get the bag the red bag popcorn's fantastic wow. but yeah popcorn the for us cinnamon raisin bagel interesting what's yours uh, like whiskey <laughs> yeah, buddy. It has to, uh, yeah it has to have a nightcap uh, not not really a, not really a sweet uh, in terms of the go to but my wife oh she loves ice cream oh she just she good. Rolls. what kind flavor any. It doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. matter. Oh, okay. There's a, uh, like I'm waking up and there's a pint to the side of the bed. I'm like, and it's not even because she's pregnant. It's otherwise, oh, she got. And a then snack. you have an actual pint by your bed. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right for the drink. All right, uh, below the belt, let's get to know the five names with the best shot at being the Cowboys pick at number 24 later on this month. That's next right here on the fan. But I need to have you get to know via scan and this is the stop that you need to make for you and the family it is the full body scan that's taking place in irving stop by tell them sean for the fans sent you this is the most invested and passionate physician that i have met in dfw head on over there
than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. The great Bobby Belt. You ruined the morning show. Don't make me take off my belt. Don't make me no, take no, off my belt. We're not. Does Sean think Gabby Marshall from the Iowa Hawkeyes could start for an NBA team? Probably. <laughs> uh, more on that at 9 o'clock, I would guess. It not is now, gonna, during below the belt. It is going to be 9 o'clock. <laughs> 9 o'clock. I can't. What, what, what I'm going to get so many women's groups after you today. That's my goal. For the rest of the show. Uh, there, does, does True Law or. Or who, no, oh, you're gonna you said Jay Tuck after yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was well, at Jay Tuck. Jay Tuck after you. Ah, well, nine o'clock. We got uh we 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 got women's basketball coming up. Nine o'clock. <laughs> Tune in. I will. Uh, I will for sure. Uh, <laughs> the we are getting closer and closer to the NFL draft. We're just about now, any ladies. If you want to say something to Bobby over the phone lines you can at nine i'll open it up <laughs> i'll open i'll open it up for the ladies if you want to say you will. if you want to say something towards roberto at nine it will be just for y'all that's a look i i, Daddy. I, I, no, no, I just wait till nine Daddy. just wait till nine <laughs> all right we'll wait till nine then uh the NFL draft is coming up here in just over three weeks, actually. Kind of came, it feels like it it's, got to us really okay. quickly this year. So we're back to April now. It was May for a while, right? Now we're yeah. back to April? Yep, April 25th. So what happened to the whole May thing? They didn't like it? I don't know. I guess not. But it's April 25th now. That's when we're doing the draft. If you go back and look, like there were times where the draft used to be in like January or February, like back in like the 60s and. Like things have shifted a bunch over time, where they've kind of tried out a couple different times. Annual really, it's player last, selection meeting. last week of April. Just makes, wait till Dion tells us when it is. Yeah, and and who we can take and where and everything else. Who gets the number one pick? Uh, there are five names that I think are worth paying attention to right now for the Cowboys when it comes to pick twenty four. And the reality is, is that I would say ninety five percent right now they're going to take an offensive line. That's that's the direction they'll go. 5% somebody insane slides to So them. where's Tyler Smith playing now? <laughs> I lost track of this last week, and then I saw your boy uh, Duke Manyweather saying he should play guard. Saying do not move him away from guard, the offensive line coach to a lot of these beasts. Yeah, and Mike McCarthy said, yeah, I don't know. Kind of kind of depends. Steven Jones said, I don't know. He can play guard. He can play tackle. I think ultimately where this ends is he plays tackle is my guess. Um, and I think that they... Probably my, my guess would be he plays tackle. They address center in the draft and they let TJ Bass play left guard would be my best okay. guess at this point. So we can actually start with the two centers that I have on my list because 5% chance somebody just slides to them and they take a position other than offensive line. But the reality is don't we all feel like heading into this draft? It's like, that's what you got to shore up right now. You need an offensive lineman because nothing else is going to come together for you. If you don't get that handled, the first name that I think is worth talking about is Graham Barton, and he played for Duke the last couple of years. It's the four five forty guy. This is, this is the guy that was uh, working out shirtless a couple of weeks ago that everybody was talking about at Duke, and he was doing the insane like agility drills, and it's like, wow, that guy he he moves so fluidly. That's who you were fawning so over doing the shirtless drills the other day on Twitter. I was being sarcastic. I was mocking the thirty third team, who they're like, what a flex. Shirt doing drills shirtless. It's like, oh, guess who's never been to a pro day? Whoever runs social media for the 33rd team, where almost every offensive lineman does their drills shirtless, or a uh, lot of them do. That's kind of common. It's not necessarily common at the combine, but at pro day, guys <laughs> will be working out. They're sweaty. They toss their shirts and they do their their agility drills. It's not a big deal. <laughs> My so, buddies are texting me right now about uh, Caitlin Clark. The, uh, yes. Oh, good. Saying Sean is doing a full segment on women's basketball on his show. <laughs> They're like reporting it to all the like, college friends. <laughs> Like it's starting in this group chat. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hold calls. On. Female calls at nine. The power of the ladies. Ladies my only. Randy Galloway. He's he, he's the lady. He's the Tim Meadows ladies man for <laughs> SNL. That's shot. <laughs> Hello, ladies. So Graham Barton at Duke, who has played tackle in recent years, has some really impressive tape at, at times at tackle. He played center as a freshman. Most NFL teams view him as a center in the NFL. I think the Cowboys view him as a center in the NFL. Um, but they would have to, you'd essentially be banking on starting a guy who has not played that position in four years uh, to be your starting center. But I mean, this is a guy who thick, like 
really strong anchor, low center of gravity, good core strength. I think that you see the quickness that he shows on tape is impressive. Shows he can get up to the second level. That, to me, is one of the biggest things about interior players. I don't want the, at center and guard in this day and age, I don't want the slow-footed, like, heavy plotting, like, just power guard. Because if you can't get up to the second level and reach linebackers, you're not very useful to me in today's NFL. So, yes, but, like, is it, wouldn't, isn't the trend that the offensive linemen are getting bigger and bigger and the linebackers are getting smaller and smaller? Or They've started developing that way, but you still want guys who can move. Yeah, like, Larry Allen sure. could move, even yeah, though he was yeah. giant. Um, like, I mean, I think there are guys that you see that you can get up to the second level and show good movement skills while still being a power for bi bigger build guys. I just don't want concrete shoes. There was a guy uh, last year that everybody was fawning over here uh, during the draft was Osiris Torrance, the guard out of Florida. That was a guy who... He was slow. He just he couldn't get up to the second level. And to me, if a linebacker can just run around you, it doesn't matter how powerful you are. So uh, I, I think that Graham Barton is a guy who absolutely can get up to the second level, is an impressive run blocker, would help this team a great deal. It's just a matter of you, you'd have to be projecting a little bit because he hasn't played center recently. Uh, the other center in this draft that everybody's taking note of is Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon. That's a guy that uh, Daniel Jeremiah most recently mocked to the Cowboys. Some others have him. Initially, it was thought he was going to be a top 20 pick. He's starting to fall a little in some of these mock drafts, and you're starting to hear whispers about maybe, maybe there's just some injury concerns with him. Maybe teams came out of combine and felt like, uh, see, see everything medically that we want right now. But if you're picking at 24 and you're getting a value guy to slide you a little bit, maybe you're more willing to take that sort of a gamble. You're willing to take that sort of risk. But this is a guy with really good athletic ability, really good initial quickness, really, really smart, fast mental processor, like high IQ type of center. He's, he really doesn't have many flaws at all. I think the biggest thing at times is like he plays a little upright. Guys get into, get into his chest sometimes. But it's technique stuff that you can generally fix. But those are the top two centers that you'd be looking at. Graham Barton and Jackson Powers Johnson as options for the Cowboys if you're talking about drafting a center. Uh, I guess it just depends at that point. Would you rather invest in center or tackle at this point if you're the Cowboys? Well, you think well. tackle... I mean, that's the it's higher premium one, position. Yeah. Do you feel more comfortable with Brock Hoffman starting center, though, for you next year? I have if, if no the question is, freaking clue who Brock Hoffman is. Exactly. I'll tell you this. That's, that's kind of the point. I'll tell you this. If Tyler plays guard. Guard. Being sandwiched between two all-pro guards, that center's going to be fine. That center will be fine. You would hope, but a lot of people thought Biotis yeah. wasn't fine well, with it. He, but he wasn't, I mean, look. Two years ago, yeah. Last year's, no. No, but I mean, it's not like, I mean, the whole reason the Cowboys didn't keep is because they couldn't afford him, right? So Part somebody thinks he was good. Partially, but I think they also felt like they could get better at seven. Maybe you can get better. That doesn't mean you're, he wasn't a, he's not a minus league. Like, is he below league average? Um, No, I, I, I don't think he's below league average, but I think that the Cowboys thought he was yeah. about an average seven. Sure, but I think the point of saying is, even if you don't think he's any good, if you have two All Pro guards to your side, like I, I think you got a pretty good chance of being a, a successful center. The the, the tackle is going to be on an island. I think you got to get yourself a tackle, and then you no know, Zeke's going to be back here to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's going to be chipping. Play center. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, he, he can go back to his natural position of center for the Cowboys. <laughs> uh, a couple of the names that I think are worth watching in terms of guys who could play. By the way, Biotis's grade last year PFF sixty seven point eight sixty eight point six. Not bad. In the green. Pretty yeah. good for guessing a made-up number chop. Very good. Good job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that they're... I'm trying to drop off sides. It's not working. Did you guys go back and forth at each other last week? Or no. Or you kumbaya? We, we don't... We, when it's just two of us, we don't have time for that. We, we've got... We're just like, get through 15 minutes. Come on. Get, See, get we're, this we're like this. Our whole thing is just to draw you off sides. Right. But yeah. We're, we're teaming yeah. up. It's it's like when we try and... And you still lose. Collectively. Two on one. Yeah. <laughs> eh, I don't know. We'll see it at 9 o'clock. You will. It'll be... 30 we will a thousand percent win this fight. I don't even know what your take is. Wait, wait for the phones. I, <laughs> wait for the phones. Oh. I have a whole city of of, of women behind me. <laughs> All right. Even the women see. here won't even be on your side. Right. Talise Fuaga, Oregon State, a guy who a lot of people project as right tackle, potentially could play some guard. That's another name to know. These are some giant offensive linemen in this draft, and Talise Fuag is another one of them. 6'6", 324 pounds. That's basically Tyler Smith's size. A little bit shorter arms. There are some people who think he's going to eventually need to play inside at guard. 
But if you want to play him at tackle, you could have the flexibility of playing him at tackle or guard. <laughs> Another one like that is. I, I was, <laughs> what what the hell to, was that? Don't skip over that. <laughs> I was trying to get to the next one in one breath, and it did what it is. He saw all the phone lines lighting up with the ladies with the hate coming. Hello, ladies. Yeah, I believe it's. Uh, there's literally no one on hold. Oh, right I haven't now. Called, put uh, out the number yet. Yeah, sure. Troy Fatanu, Washington. That is the dream scenario to me right now. Is Troy Fatanu at Washington? That is a guy with fantastic athletic ability. There's quickness. There's power. There's length. I think that when you see the way that he plays with his hands, it's jarring. Like, you see him shock defensive linemen pretty consistently. That's a guy with power, quickness, technique, everything you want. In a offensive line heavy draft, there's a chance he slides back to you a little bit. And so if you're able to get him there, I think that's somebody that they would be incredibly interested in who could play tackle or guard for them, give them flexibility with what they want to do with Tyler Smith. And then the last name that I think Bears watch right now, Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Now, that's a guy who's played right tackle specifically. You'd have to project out a little bit. But Broadus' projection for him or his comp for him has been Flozell Adams, that he thinks that's oh. the kind of player that he can be. Okay. Big guy, 6'7", 340 pounds. He's a massive player. It's just a question of can you project him playing off to the left side when he's played right pretty consistently throughout his career. Have you watched enough prospects who satisfy Broadus up to this point? I don't know. I got I to gotta see how many Aisha's done, but we'll find out. Eight... <laughs> What, prospects. I gotta make sure we're on the same. I gotta make sure we've seen the same number. Below the belt, right here on your home of the Cowboys on DFW Sports Station 105.3 The Fan. If you have a problem, specifically ladies, with Bobby and Hello, Choppy ladies. tearing down Caitlin Clark, no not no a, tearing, not no tearing. Rolling Love her. Their, she's great. Rolling their eyes at her greatness. Please call at 877-881-1053. 877-881-1053. Let's get all of the females in DFW against No Ma'am next on the fan. Uh, and let's get you over to a brand new career with that brand new salary you deserve at mycomputercareer.edu where you could become job ready in just a few months. Make this your year. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today my cc they have a school in dallas a campus that i've been to one in arlington or you can take the classes live online just a couple times a week and in in a matter of months you're trained you're qualified you're certified and you're hired probably by a tolo employer and if you're outside the metroplex we're national baby so see if it's for you and financial aid is available to those who qualify including the gi bill it's not rocket science it's mycomputercareer.edu we have you covered, Stars fans, with exclusive content from two-time Stanley Cup champion Greg Ludwig and NHL reporter Sean Shapiro. It's Spits and Suds, three times weekly on the Odyssey app or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. This Odyssey Sports Minute is sponsored by Bosch Power Tools, what hard workers deserve. This is Boomer Science with an Odyssey Sports Minute. As the late great announcer Keith Jackson used to say, Whoa, Nelly! A 25-year-old Nelly Corda was dominant Sunday with a bogey-free final round of 65 to win the Ford Championship in Gilbert, Arizona by two strokes. It was the world number one's third consecutive LPGA victory, making her the first American golfer to do that since the great Nancy Lopez did it in 1978. A Boomer Science. Planning for spring at Lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment. And Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Buy one select Ego string trimmer, leaf blower, or mower kit. Get one select 56-volt battery free. That's up to a $299 value. Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 4-3 while supplies last. Selection varies by location eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hey, Texas fans. Celebrate your reigning big league champs with a new gold collection at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop the iconic jerseys, tees, and caps in-store or order online at academy.com. And hurry, limited stock available. 
Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Kroger app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. Plus, you can earn fuel points to save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. So it's easy to save big. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Fuel restrictions apply. Save big on 12 packs of Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper, or Pepsi. Select varieties or buy two, get three free with your card. Limit 10. Kroger, fresh for everyone. You got a service dog? Actually, he's a... Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. Bob on the shot clock, hands off the clock. As we approach five minutes, step back right wing three. You've got to be kidding me. Caitlin Clark grabs her chest, looks to the crowd, matches a career high with nine threes. She's got 37. Oh, yeah. It's time for the ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Bobby going in there and saying, play this. Tim Meadows, the ladies, play man. this. Sean will get mad. Play <laughs> this. So <laughs> what, what, but what is the point of playing it? Now that this is the ladies man segment, we're ready. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. All right. Well done. Well um, done. So some would call this talk radio. It's perfect that Reggie just walked in too. I should get Reggie. Got in that here. Reggie. It should be two on two. He's smirking. And get Reggie in here uh, to have my back as I'm catching some heat. Reginald, come in here. I'm uh, I'm I'm catching some heat. Well, you don't need to log in. Come in here. And I'm oh. getting criticized. Work. My now. friends are making fun of me. My coworkers are making fun of me for wanting to switch on over. That some would call this talk radio. Many would call this talk radio suicide. A third segment <laughs> on women's. Basketball. Right here, Reggie. But I don't know how, as a sports fan, you could not watch this girl play and be in awe. And Reggie, I'm catching heat from Bobby and others for being in awe and wanting to appreciate Caitlin Clark. Yeah. So, I, 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 what do you say to that? I think that's stupid. Gentlemen, <laughs> like, why? I, the, look, the question I'll ask. The I, question I, I, I'll I ask. switched over a little bit. I, I switched Reggie, back I enjoy UFL quickly, football but... too. The question I'll ask, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, did you appreciate and enjoy college basketball in the 80s 90s that that feeling um like in what sense like yeah Basically, what he's saying is yeah. women's basketball today is as good as yeah men's basketball we've, was we've the restored 80s. the feeling right this this was a game in which you came in and you knew the players involved 
they had had a matchup, a big time primetime matchup last, last year. year. And you had like that doesn't happen in NCAA basketball on the men's side anymore. It's one and done, right? Like you don't have you don't know the players unless you're choppy following Tennessee in the same way, right? Like you don't have I guess the average viewer doesn't have that same connection. Women's basketball has that now. You can you can watch a game and know the storyline as it, the arc has gone over years, and I feel like that's what made this an entertaining game. Um, and I I enjoyed it quite a bit myself. You big Kim Mulkey guy. No, no, <laughs> not a fan. No, I mean she's she's a great coach. She's got the bona fides as a coach. Uh, as a, as a human being, she's an interesting one. <laughs> let, let me ask you this, because this is going to be the big debate and the big argument. Ice Cube offered Caitlin Clark was it five million dollars? I think that was yes. some yeah, offer five, that's out yeah. there. And Gilbert Arenas and Kenyon Martin had a debate over what would happen if Caitlin Clark joined Ice Cube's Big Three League. What's it's a step under with? prison ball. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, prison ball, you got big three. Shout Especially out Jake the first Shuttlesworth. few years. <laughs> like, I was telling my partner earlier, MG, me and MG was talking. I'm like, could you imagine her getting stuck down on Reggie Evans? Just, <laughs> just take for shits and giggles if this was a real thing and she was able to participate and he put her out there. Could you imagine her being matched up and Reggie guarding her for one? Mm -hmm. For two, them her being it's three on three. She can't hide nowhere. Guarding Reggie Evans out there, mother. Right. She's gonna score. Huh? No, she ain't. I'm no, not, she's not. No, she's you don't think she's gonna score a point? No, she will not oh, score. score. I think she would she score. She would not score I think one. She would score. That's, Lexi. That's brute basketball. Lexi. Okay, so my hot take today. Brute basketball. Brute basketball. My hot take today is if Caitlin Clark played in three on three, she would definitely score. And she would not get locked down. I don't think that's a hot take because I've seen the defense they play in yeah. the big three. Period. She, They're making it solid. The defense of the big three is like pretty like she's physical. she's getting looks any from defense the in the NBA. In the NBA. Okay. Let me think about saying this, Reggie. Think of the, <laughs> you, 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 you can correct me here. If Caitlin Clark played in an NBA game, mm -hmm. she would definitely at least score three points. Agreed. No yes. doubt about it. Yeah. I think she could get maybe five. Regular season? Regular season. She, I mean, she would definitely, I, th I think she could score five points a game in an NBA game. Yeah, she could She could score. She can shoot. Yeah. She can shoot from because the of, logo. Be so, yeah, she could shoot. Yeah, I think yes. a lot of it depends on does her man care enough to like go balls of the wall, which half of them don't if they in don't, general. If, but if that, if that, if, if whoever's guarding her said, she ain't getting a point on me tonight. She ain't getting a point. On I don't. Me. I disagree. She has too much range, and I think she's not. She's she not can like create her own shot. If you watched last night, which I know you guys didn't, I did. I watched a little bit. Okay. She how did I know that? She, how did I know she turned the ball over so much in the first quarter? I was watching. Yeah, no. she has a ton of range. She would never get the ball. <laughs> Just thrown it right into Angel Reese. Well, well, Anyone can get the ball. Oh my god! This whole, her this whole ball the tonight. You guys don't watch the NBA either. They don't play. They don't play. Score. They don't play defense. There wouldn't be some she's glued got, she's lockdown. Got, she's anyone can get, anyone can get the basketball. And she's six. I mean, she is six feet tall. She's not like it's not like she's towered over by every single guard in the NBA. Like I mean, she's tall enough to get a shot off. What do you think, Reggie? I think it honestly depends on how invested her team would be in getting her involved in actions. If they if they call actions for her, she'll get open. She'll knock down shots. Now she does still have like flaws in her game, like. One thing that's very evident, if you let her go, if she goes right, she's driving. If she goes left, she's pulling up. Those types of indicators and keys, defense will seize on, absolutely. But, like, she'll work on those, right? When you reach that that point of a wall, you have to work on it to get better, and she has the capability to get better. I would rather have Caitlin Clark on the Mavericks than Tim Hardaway Jr. All right. Okay. Thank you, Reggie. I'd rather done. have that than the – here, We're love done. Love you. 877-881-1053 to hit us up on the Franco and Franco Injury Attorneys text line. If you would like to say anything to Bobby in particular. Um, about anything or about this? About this. Oh, okay. I was going to say, the about lines this. may blow up. And you're a female Tolo. This is your opportunity and your chance at 877-881-1053. We had a couple of guys, I think, try to impersonate being females who called up. Uh, <laughs> one of them, my buddy. Peyton, what happened with the phone calls in the commercial break that I saw? Just impersonators. You know, we had Stephanie there, apparently, uh, Laura calling in, you know, and they, 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 the, the that, voices were great. The Stephanie was great. Tolo Steve, apparently. Uh, yeah, the, other Steve one was Steve the, the other one I know was Brian trying to get through. <laughs> so, um, look, it, here's a thing that I've, that I've found about 
the majority of our female Tolos, they kind of have the same sense of humor that we have. So this is not going to be like, I'm outraged by Bobby. I'm offended. Like when, when some of the female Tolos show up to our events or the firehouse tour, and I'm like, yeah, you know, like when we're joking about the kitchen or the laundry, like we're uh, joking, yeah. right? They are all like, oh yeah, we know you're joking. Like they have like, they're not getting offended here. I so I don't. I right, was not no, anticipating the phone lines that light up calling Bobby. I, a I, I have a I have a friend who I know uh, would not call in on the segment, and not because she agrees. It's because she so angrily disagrees with me, and she listens, and she's heard me do this bit before, and it like it pisses her off. She hates when I do it. She's like, if you're if you're gonna just ignore it, like don't even don't even sit there. You don't have to like fake talk about it or whatever. If you're not interested in it, if you're gonna put it down if you're gonna make a mockery of it just don't even talk about it because she is a big she covered the wings for a little bit and so to her it's like you're you're not doing anything productive with this <laughs> and so that, that's well, you know great laughs out. with it too yeah. great laughs yeah yeah so. it's, it's tough i mean it's like um i'm largely you'll never know you'll never know the answer because it's never going to happen is this my wife uh, um, oh my gosh this could be uh, it says amanda on here let's see if it's hello <laughs> No, this is not your wife. Oh, <laughs> she would never call to talk to Bobby. She hates Bobby. That's I, true. You, the only reason that I like you now, Sean, is because you married someone with Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Hey. Wait, 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 right. whoa, 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 whoa. Why didn't you like me before? Okay. Why didn't you like me before? Okay. So I've been listening to y'all since you've been on the radio. So what's that, 12 years? Okay. And you came out here from and you were a washington fan weren't yeah. you yes yes, yes yeah, yeah i didn't like you Good. all <laughs> right well you stuck around i give yeah. you props okay, that's so, understandable you know what now all of my aggravation and disappointment is now in bobby oh <laughs> that's what i had to say okay i'm not gonna say that bobby ruined the morning show but <laughs> that's jimmy's line he's definitely brought some like i scream at the radio almost every morning <laughs> be bobby. that's that's I fair want you to know that that's fair. Yeah. That's fair, Amanda. Amanda. And one of these days, I'm going to meet your wife. I'm all set her straight. <laughs> okay. okay. Let me tell you. Oh, my gosh. If I've been married almost 30 years. If my husband did that to me, oh, you would be gone. <laughs> <laughs> it, wait, did gone. what? Did, did what? what? Just that uh, I do real work. You oh, do yeah, the housework. Work. Thing. Uh, yeah. 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 Technically, that wasn't my yeah. line. That was my daughter's line. Daddy, well, but, there's work when you, like, you just do housework. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And why did she say that? Maybe she heard it from her dad. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah. She does Maybe tell so. her. Amanda, you have an awesome name. Thank you for being patient with us. And thank you for listening. You're appreciated. You're right. appreciated. There's Amanda. Okay. Um, let's see if we have some pranksters uh, that are <laughs> Peyton's calling. vetting that right now. Yeah, he's vetting a spittle. Can you imagine Spittle's like, that was not a female you let through. <laughs> Are you a producer or not? Yeah. Need to go back to uh to journalism school. Don't, oh, don't assume anything. Aubrey is up next on the DNM leasing hotline. Aubrey, you have something you like to say to Bobby? Okay, I agree with Bobby. Yes. I, you Texas I women. I enjoy watching Caitlin. Uh, she made it way more fun, but I can't pretend that women's basketball is as good as the NBA or that I watch it regularly. It's just not as good and so I, I agree and i don't think she could play in the nba and i think five points would be generous wow Whoa, aubrey yeah. coming in hot look at that uh, thank aubrey. you so much aubrey you're appreciated if you listen to like women like female athletes they'll tell you they can't compete on the men's side they just they know like there's a there's a biological well, no. that they just know Other than megan rapino she'll tell you all day she could compete well in what me. sport I, I again the basketball is so free-flowing there are openings. There are there are there are gaps. Like no one is acting like uh, Pat Bev out here nowadays. No, 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 no. They're not. But like if if uh, the Duncanville basketball team played Iowa, yeah, I mean, what would they win by? Here's what I'll say. I don't think Caitlin Clark and half court. Answer, like, no, no, <laughs> no. I'm this, trying to think this, of a score. This, this is the real answer though, because I mean I don't know. I haven't followed Duncanville basketball, so I don't know. Like I mean I know the under 14 men's team beat Megan Rapinoe. What was the scrimmage. high school you creepily went out there and just watched by yourself? I didn't you follow that team. No, I didn't. I didn't. I just went out there and watched. So I, I watch high school football all the time. Oh. It's normal. This okay. is Texas, after all. We do that here. Uh, oh, but oh, I'm, I'm saying yeah. it's different. It's it's not the same as watching uh, the 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 you know Maryland the lacrosse over in Maryland. Hopkins. Where, yeah, I mean, I mean, the Sean, you want to stay title of Maryland athletics? That tells you all we need to know. Well, I so. went to school, Bobby. You didn't. So <laughs> Ouch. <shut up>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got your, uh, got your leftist indoctrination. 877-881-1053. <laughs> uh, so, Let the devil get to you. Uh, so, 
so far, we're uh, we're one on one with going at Bobby and supporting. Bobby. Like, no, but here's the thing: in a half court offense, do I think Caitlin Clark could score? Probably not. Like, like not easily. But like, I mean, if you're talking about the normal flow of an NBA game and how things go, she's putting up a shot and she's making it. Yeah, and That's it was happening. brilliant. I don't know why people were getting worked up. People were mad that Ice Cube made this offer. No one oh, gives let a let him make crap the about the give her five million. No, no one, one gives a crap about the big three. No. no one cares. I'm I'm surprised that it's still alive. Props to Ice Cube for that. Yeah, but, I mean, I, they've gotten guys. They've gotten names. Look, you know, like Allen Iverson was in it for a minute, and he was like, "Oh no, I'm out of this thing." Because that's what they talked about in that in that interview. He was like, "It was too physical for Allen Iverson." Look, he's like, "I'm getting out of this." There, there is something there. There's something enjoyable about watching Iowa and LSU. There's something definitely enjoyable about watching Caitlin Clark. LSU is I, really boring to me, by the way. Like, but I mean, I, the, the, the tension that exists yeah. between them is entertaining. Like, they're, Kim Mulkey made me watch them. That that's fun. That's entertaining. Whatever else, I, where where I start. Becoming the the troll in me comes out a little bit is when it's like, it, it, it's the same Try effect to me put as, it on exact equal footing. It's the same effect to me as the World Cup. Like whenever the World Cup rolls around, I'm like, y'all can't all of a sudden all be soccer fans right now. I can pretend like you love this all the time. It's when you it rolls around and then you're like, whoa, what are you doing? You're a sexist. You're not into this. It's like you haven't been into it either until right now. And I'm not talking about you, but I mean in yeah, general, when yeah. somebody pushes that, that's where I start going, okay, if we're going to operate on this ridiculous footing, I'm going to lean into a character too because you are. You're leaning into this character that pretends like you've supported this all year <laughs> and you've watched every game, including the ones where Caitlin Clark's going up against Valdosta State. You were watching those. <laughs> it's a good school, that. man. Don't, I like, am not going to have you impute the Valdosta don't, State program. Don't come after with like that's what I like is don't insinuate that I'm awful because I'm not going to watch what I haven't watched all year. We have to talk about the most impressive play of the Rangers game last night. This is not any home runs. It was actually an out committed by a Texas Ranger and Chop and I have to talk about how impressive it was next on 105.3 The Fan. But I got to talk about how impressive Franklin and Frankel are. I already talked about my guy, Gene, who has to be happy about his brand new head coach over at SMU. Uh, I met with the guys a couple of weeks ago. We had a big sit-down lunch. And what one of the things that I really came away with is the investment that they make in their Tolo clients. You call up, pretty good odds you're going to talk to Mark, Scott, or Gene themselves and then they talked about some cases that really connected close to home with them visiting some of their clients in the hospital going the extra step of making sure they get experts for that car accident to fly in and examine what really happened and even when a nice settlement was offered they would sit there and say no let's go ahead and wait and let's make sure we get you even more because this is the right thing to do you are entitled to more that's the type of commitment you get from local and that's what the frankles are over at truckwreck.com they've been with us for the longest time so if you or a loved one get involved in an accident and it's not your fault do what everyone else does especially us up here at the fan hit up the frankles at 214 or 817 all threes 214 or 817 333 33 franklin frankel principal office dallas texas
Be the fan segment here brought to you by State of the R Weight Loss. That's soda by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there's never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Singing at third, Carter at second. Here's the pitch. Young swings and blasts one. Deep left field. That is on its way, and that ball is history. To the back of the lower deck. A tremendous three-run Jimmy Jack for Josh Young. And the Rangers grab a 3-0 first inning lead. Nate Dell with the call here on 105.3 The Fan. Man, you just made Bobby's day with that. Who loaded that bumper, that comeback music? Um, I'm not sure who it was, either I, Tim or Gavin. I have not heard that song in Def Leppard. 10 years. Animal by Def Leppard. I literally, as that was played, I just went to my music and added it so I didn't forget about it. I love that song. I hadn't heard that in a decade. Wow. It's a great song. Bobby jamming out to it. Uh, the awesome start to the season for Josh Young is interrupted as he has a fractured wrist. One of three Rangers hit by the same Rays pitcher last night. Hopefully, Adolis Garcia is okay, uh, but Josh Young leaves the game, and Bruce Bochy gave the update afterwards on their third baseman. Yeah, well, uh, bad news uh, with Josh. He, he's got a fractured wrist, and I just feel horrible. Uh, he's had such tough luck on this end uh, as far as injuries, and kind of puts a damper on this one, uh, especially the way he was playing. He, he was carrying the mail today. Um, he'll be back. Yeah, I talked to him briefly, and you know, now this hurts. Uh, and, you know, I feel for the kid because he's had to deal with so much. Uh, so anyway, um, it's going to be a little while, but he'll be back. Right after he moved into second place in Rangers history for the most home runs by a player through their first 150 games. Gallo hit 35. And there was Josh Young surpassing Chris Davis. It's really disappointing because, I mean, that was something we had talked about yesterday. We, I know Chop and I brought it up on Friday, just the marveling at, man, we forget how good he is because of the conversation that surrounds Carter and Wyatt Langford and stuff. You forget like, oh no, he's, he's one of these bright stars that you have up and coming to. He started third base at the all-star game last year and was playing really well until he Got an injury last year. He got the fractured thumb, kind of, you know, threw him off at the end of the year. But it's it sucks because he was off to such a hot start for them. And I was I was really looking forward to, you know, what a full, healthy season of Josh Young could be like. And now we gotta wait and see, okay, well, how long are you gonna be out with this now? He's been great. He's been great. And now that you lose him um for an extended period of time, you're gonna have a hole in the lineup. That's the same thing that happened at the end of last year when he wasn't there. The lineup gets extended when you have a really, really good player in that lineup to to hit in the fourth hole, fifth hole, sixth hole. Everybody bounces up a batter, and now you're you're left a little bit more exposed. The good news is this team overcame his injury last year and Seegers with guys like Durant, who were able to sit get in the lineup and really. I, mean, I think Zeke hit like three hundred. In Seager's absence last year. His OPS was like 890. It's tremendous. During it's that a time. tremendous situation. So you got guys, and that's why depth is important. You're going to have injuries at the course of the year. This is not the only injury they're going to have. Josh Young missing four, six, eight weeks is not the only four, six, eight week injury you're going to have on the in the lineup this year. And if it is, then that's super lucky and you're really, really fortunate. Yeah, and it depends on obviously how bad the injury is. So Danny Jansen, the Blue Jays catcher, he had a wrist fracture during spring training, but it was a small bone, so he was out two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Trout last year, when he fractured his wrist last summer, he was out four to eight. And so, I mean, it he just... heals like a grandpa. It, it just, it, it kind of depends on what the the scope of the injury is. You see what he hit last night? Yes, I did. Was that 473? 473 over what used to be that little thing they had out there. They had that artwork yeah. that they got rid of. Um, he's a monster again. Over, over the first couple of games of the season, Trout. I don't know what his. Uh, I tried to bet him last night for the MVP. I could not find it. Wyatt Langford has motivated him. He heard all the Wyatt Langford talk about this yeah. is the new Mike Trout, and he said, "All right, I'm uh, I'm up in my game. I'll show you the old Mike. Tr Mike Trout is still the old Mike Trout." We'll get to Langford in a second, but I got to give a shout out to my guy, the glue, Dane Dunning. I never want people to forget he was the glue that held it together last year. He induced 15 swings and misses yesterday at one point. 
He topped that number just one time last year. Just one time. Sinker, slider, changeup, cutter working for Dane Dunning in the Rangers' victory over the Rays. They'll try to get another one today with a 5:15 pregame on this radio station. First pitch at 5:50. But Choppy reminded me of this and was kicking myself for not bringing this up hours ago. The most impressive play and the most impressive moment of the game last night came in and out. Here's the pitch. There goes Langford again. There's a ground ball hit slowly to short. No play to second. The throw goes to first. Nobody's covering third. Langford keeps on running. The catcher's covering third. Langford's gone for home. Here's the throw. He's out as the pitcher takes the throw. It looked like a Little League game where Langford just kept on running. I was blown away. Captivated by this. Yeah, it did look like a Little League game. That was a mistake on um, on Tampa's part. With their, they, they messed their, their coverage up, and Lankford saw that. He took advantage. We saw this in the World Series. Uh, Phillies, Yankees, Damon steals second, and then no one's covering third. And he gets up, and he like the tag is there, and he just outruns the guy to third. We've seen this a few times. So Wyatt's stealing. He's going on the play. There's a grounder to short, but it was the third baseman play. They were, they were shifting. So the second baseman was kind of up the middle. Remember, you can't shift. But you can play guys over. So the shortstop was playing almost right behind the bag. Third baseman is now near the shortstop. Third baseman feels the ball. Throws to first. Langford recognizes there's nobody covering third. Bolts for third. The catcher sees there's nobody but, on but, third. But, but, when he ma- but how he made that decision was so impressive to me. Because he timed out the shortstop's throw perfectly. Yeah. Like he knew the shortstop was committing. As soon as he was going to throw. Oh my God. It was like. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. And he's gone. He's gone. He's he's wrecked because he sees that there's nobody at third. The catcher race is over there. And And why it's like, I can beat the catcher home. I think think that's what he was reading. Right. So they screwed something up. So every team has a different coverage on this. Like for for my kid's team, the pitcher would cover third. Basic's in here just listening, wishing he could break this down like this. He can't. He (laughs) can't. So for my kid's team, the pitcher would cover third in that situation. But sometimes, you know, you got to keep the pitcher st- st- uh, where he is because he may have to cover first and a ground ball to the right side. So I don't know if the Rays intended the catcher to go to third or he went on his own and the pitcher was supposed to cover home. But they left themselves exposed there and why it took advantage of it. Well, they, he didn't take that much of advantage. He was out. That's a heady play. It was bang, bang. He made them make a play. Yes, the timing. The, that's an out you're not mad at no, ever. Because you're 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 forcing. Well, sometimes you might be. You know, yeah, like out. if the catcher was still at home, obviously he's not going. But you're forcing a player to make an athletic play. Yes. And no offense to pitchers, but they're not like known as the best athletes of the team. Now, let's face it. I'll be fair. Almost every pitcher in Major League Baseball is probably their team's best shortstop in high school. Sure, like they're they are good athletes, but at the major league yeah. level, compared to you know Wyatt yeah, like, Langford, they may not be the the, the 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 athletic guys that they used to be. Like Caitlin Clark going to the NBA. You're now. make yeah, you're <laughs> making the pitcher make an athletic play. Yes. So, but the timing, the instinct, all of it, the speed, I'll, they they reported. Over in the Rangers dugout, people are like, man, that would have been awesome. Dave Raymond on TV was like, I've never seen anything like that before. Choppy just referenced it happening before. But that that makes him that makes him must see right now, in my opinion. I was I was giddy over that 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 I mean that it was great. That that's that's what you pay to see. That that's, type of excitement. That you know, that that's that's what Dele Cruz did for the Reds last year. Just these yeah, these types yeah. of moments. That's what the sport has missed. Yeah. It has missed the athleticism, and Wyatt Langford is like he's a he's a baseball player and like a linebacker all rolled into one. Yes, it's the athleticism, and it's like like we talk about it's the awareness and the IQ and just being aware of of what's happening. I remember what it reminds me of honestly a little bit, and, and it's not first to home, but the Rangers in Game Five of the 2010 AL. DS uh, when they played in Tampa 
there were they had two instances of David Price going to cover first base and not totally paying attention, and somebody scored from second. First time was Andrews. Elvis Andrews scored from second on a ground out to first, and then Vladimir Guerrero did it like three innings later. Same sort of thing where it's just having that awareness. It's it's funny that it happened in Tampa all three times, but that's that's having that awareness and being heads up and engaged and being the type of athlete that could even make that close like it was. Shout out to Tolo Eric. He's listening on the Odyssey app in Tampa as he was watching the Rangers get the win last night at a bar. I wonder what time that happy hour is in Tampa. I wonder if he was watching FS1 and their screwed up TV broadcast. Okay, what were you talking about? Oh so my God, FS1, so bad. You, you flipped over just to see what it was. First inning, something happened on FS1's broadcast. Their truck went down, whatever else. They just had a static shot of the pitcher. That's all they could get. They all only their, followed the pitch. There was no other cameras you, working. So you would see the you'd see the ball get hit, and then it just it would zoom in on the pitcher a little bit and go nowhere they else. would not follow the ball. You follow the ball. And so what they had to do is they had that. So their other and cameras then, are broken. Then yeah. they took the Rays radio broadcast audio too. Their TV bro- audio broadcast broke. So it was Rays radio broadcast with static shot of the pick pitcher. So you'd see the ball get hit and then nothing else. And it was like that for two innings, something like that. I hope their broadcast wasn't overmodulated like ours. What's going on? <laughs> What's that, Ruben? Who, who, who's my TMP replacement? Uh, well, they have a road engineer, so whoever's out in Tampa Bay, I don't know who it is. Mm. Okay, so none of our own. I didn't no, throw any of our own. Yeah, okay. Ruben would never. Yeah. yeah, Ruben would never. Yeah, he'd be too busy watching Thunder games uh, <laughs> while trying to broadcast. Hey, he was he was dunking on me in the hallway as we were leaving. So he's like, "Bro, I told y'all about Gafford, didn't I? I told y'all." I know about we gave Gafford. you we gave you credit, <laughs> Ruben. We gave you multiple. We were the only show that probably gives you that type of praise and credit because he's the uh, he he honestly is he's the MVP of our road trips. He goes out there he parties so yeah we 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 always show ruben his love don't don't take advantage of it ruben Unfo- yeah you take be happy with it be happy you know, you take your morsels uh be happy <laughs> your uh, morsels. unfortunately the houston astros got their first win of the season in historic fashion ground ball dubon throws the first no hitter run up Blanco. it is eighth career start the 30-year-old makes magic on April Fool's Day. Yeah, that's awesome. One win. Good job, Astros. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> You're now one and four, you effing losers. They have 17 no-hitters in that franchise. That and Nolan Ryan only has one of them. And only one by a lefty. Of all the of all the no-hitters, only one of them by a left-handed pitcher. I I it's I can't believe the Astros have the market cornered on no-hitters. Yeah, because I mean, it's four since the start of 2026. It's been a bunch because they had the one in the World Series, and then they had that was a, that was a combined no hitter too. Yeah, yeah, and then they had uh, didn't they have a couple last year? They had two in 2022. I think one of them was the World Series. They had like yeah, one or two last year. Yeah, so I mean, they like yeah, when when they can pitch when the, when the trash cans are banging, they're yeah. on it, man. Are the new Mavericks owners going to be thrilled with RJ Choppy? That's part of crosstalk with a KMC masterpiece. Next, well, let's get you over to Platinum Chrysler Dodge Ram Jeep. It is of course. A-
It's back to Sean and RJ right here on 105.3 The Fan segment here brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. <laughs> Sean, since I, uh, I Tolo oh, and I no. listen to this show all the time, I wanted to discuss... Here are five segments on Caitlin Clark. Uh... <laughs> That's all you did? You should have done more. It was fantastic drama last night. Yeah. That, was, that was the best thing on TV last night, except until the, what, eighth, ninth inning last night? Until um, Josh Young broke his wrist. So wait, yeah. The best thing on TV was when Josh Young broke his wrist. That what you're <laughs> the next Are best you thing was the drama there. No, I'm not embarrassed about that damn thing that I just said, Peyton oh. <laughs> and Corey. Um, what? Two, two ice cream sandwiches. Mm-hmm. That's the mid. That's the late night snack. Mm. The uh, the other thing though is, you ever is it, are there them? are there regular sandwiches or the Mississippi mud pie? They're just the regular ice cream sandwiches from Target. Some I don't like taste good brand or something. They're fantastic. Ice cream sandwiches are amazing. They're, I think they're, they're undefeated. They're, they're very cleaned good. out in the house. They have one problem with them: the stickiness. They get stuck on your fingers yeah. and under your the tube, top this tube. Target brand. It's a light blue box. Does not stick to your fingers. Really? I uh, and now I do have the warmest mouth I think on the planet. Oh, I've heard uh, that about you. Because very interesting. I eat ice cream very <laughs> fast. <Michael Douglas. laughs> as fast as Chop eats a pudding pack, I can eat an ice cream. All right, like I I just put ice cream down. Um, How fast can you eat a pudding pack? Can't tell you the last time I had a pudding. I pack. saw a video when they that were like yogurt. Super Bowl week. Or something. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, he just grrr, gone. The would you like a pudding pack? We could bring some. You up know here, what? I'm not a pudding guy. Okay. Friday night. Mm-hmm. I, I had, actually, this story goes back a little further. My kid was talking to me about Jack in the Box. And I was like, Jack in the Box tacos, greatest thing ever invented. You only eat them when you're drunk, though. And I was explaining to him, look, we, and he was like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, you drive through, I have somebody else drive you through, you eat them when you're drunk. Me and my wife's first makeup meal. There you go. Jack in the Box tacos. Oh, mm. that's nice. nice. Soda cereal. Never had them before. Friday night, I had not think? eaten dinner, and my son was getting off of work, and I was like, hey, bring me a sandwich, because he works at a place where they make sandwiches. And he was leaving work already, so I said, get me two tacos from Jack in the Box. <laughs> and he texted, and then I went, make it four. And so he brings home a bag of 12 tacos, and he was like, I just I just said, go ahead and just, just splurge on it. Yeah. And I was like, dude. And he looked at me and goes, Dad, are you drunk right now? And I was like, no! Not drunk Fair and question. And that dinner one exactly. Fair question. He took what I said literal, but the Jack of the Box tacos. As much as I love taquitos from Whataburger and all that stuff, that is the ultimate late night. I've been drinking. Okay. I got to stop and get some. We're, Jack we're talking about this real quick because Pat Mahomes said he eats. Ryan, can you put it up on the fan cam? Uh, Ten mini ice cream cones at night, Kevin Hagelin. That ten what? mini. The little mini like uh, drumsticks. Those ones that are like fun size. Candy I don't know bars. if I've seen a miniature drum. I mean, when he throws oh, yeah. the picture up, you'll okay, see. Okay, okay. But mm-hmm. d- to back real quick on the taco thing, that is in an era of the value meal and the dollar menu sure. getting killed. The taco from Jack in the Box may be the best deal that exists on a fast food menu today. I, I remember their egg roll many, is better. I remember how many people texted us when they were mad that it went up from ninety nine cents to a dollar nineteen. People were like <laughs> okay. genuinely outraged. So, hey, so folks, inflation. So <laughs> ten of those. Those are big. So and this Sunday, we're observing. That's the mini cone. And we were like, no. okay, why are you eating 10 instead of just like three? And Bobby's like, they don't add, 10 wouldn't add up to three. It's like two and a half, two, two and a half. Super producer Ryan went and did the homework. One of those mini ice creams are 1.75 inches tall. Sorry, Peyton. Super, uh, what are we calling video it? Guy. Video guy. Video guy. Yeah. You're I'm, the producer. I'm the producer. Yeah. Super not video Ruben. guy. Super, not, but for okay. now. Super video guy, Ryan. One of the mini ice creams, 1.75 inches tall. A medium cone at DQ is four inches. So Mahomes is eating about four, four and, and a half, half. medium yeah. no. ice cream cones from DQ. Kevin Hagelin did the math too. More narrow. More yeah. narrow. Yeah, but and so the bigger, circumference, the amount of ice cream is not the same. It like this. No. It doesn't go up in a funnel But it doesn't silo. matter. It, it like doesn't this. matter. Those last, like, the amount of ice cream you can pack in, the wider that thing gets compared to it's those. It's going to get not, wider as it gets it's taller, It's more like Roberto. two, two and a half. It goes I, like this. <laughs> I'm going to mash Bobby, these up. I'm going to mash them. I'm going to buy them. Mash them up in the studio. It goes out. I swear Bobby, to Bobby, I see your point. I think you might be scaling it down too far, though. So you it's go from four and a half to... 
what? What do you think is appropriate? Three I would and max a half? at three. Three and three. I don't. Th I, I think if we cry, I, if I go buy drumsticks today, are you willing to, to jeopardize ones? soda to prove the point? I will bring them up here just to crush them up I and show you the you amount of ice cream that's in there. I would like to see that experiment. I think, I think that I I'm going to do that during crosstalk tomorrow. Have D bag bring like a weed scale so we can like. <laughs> put I'm gonna. The, I'm put, going put, to. I'm going it. to crush them up and ten of them. The amount of ice cream. Weigh the ice cream. The amount of ice cream and ten of those will equal up to. Because yeah. you got to remember, it's not just at the end of the cone. It's also underneath that little chocolate yeah. cap. There's all that I, ice cream. I do want to bet the three of those is one full drumstick in the box. The DQ differently. Three of those, I bet you, is one full drumstick. So you're still eating three drumsticks a night. Do they come like 10 minis to a box? How did he arrive at 10? Is this an OC? It's like, a, it's like a, to a box. It's like a, uh, a lot of times they can come in like a, a like a plastic container with a bunch of them just like okay, dropped yeah, in there. And yeah. then you pop them open and you just snack on them. Where okay. the hell is Mike? I have no idea. Well, I just saw him. He's I, here. I saw him earlier. He's talking to Turkey Boy and Draymond's friend. He's uh, on in Cal Francisco. He's doing no Cali Radio? Day. Yeah. He, what are we previewing the Warriors tonight? Yes. I don't know. That is, they they wanted to talk Mavs Warriors with him. And so he was like, I all right, I guess. Do you think they're wearing 49ers jerseys right now while they're talking to him? Bonte. The, the leeway in this building is oh, Oliver it's, Twist. It's, it's mind boggling. Here we go. Here, 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 here he comes. You, oh, baby. You booked, oh, baby. You booked oh, an baby. interview during our cross talk. I was on with, with you guys, man. Jerks. Your guys, Bonte Hill. Your guys in San Salami Francisco. Joe. What are the to, to preview tonight's game? Yeah. Oh, San dances. Francisco. Well, I say San Francisco, Golden State, and Dallas. Oh. Yeah, man. What, the city? No, just like, I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine going and like living in a city where you have to go pr preview the next night's yeah. NBA game with some out of towner. No offense. Yeah. Like you do that for football, like a real sport. Oh my yeah. gosh! But he's like a character. Yeah, but what's on their the show? point? Like we already know Dallas is going to lose to the 49ers. Like what's the preview? Hey, how many is it going to be by? <laughs> like I don't like what's the preview? Speaking are you, are you going to be here for tomorrow's crosstalk? I am not. Okay, I just wanted everybody to be prepared I have therapy. for this. Yeah. Remember a couple weeks ago when you oh, like, lost your damn mind? Yeah, yeah I oh, remember. Man. Yeah. Is this all about to get litigated just, right here? I just want to go ahead and like get it, get yeah. it, like everybody on the same on page the air, now. Guess what? Let me expose my whole life. Oh, I have God. therapy tomorrow from at nine a.m. That's the time I can get it in. That the therapist has time for us. How Mark long is your that therapy thing? session? That feels Till short. Fifty. Yeah. Nine, okay, nine yeah. to nine fifty. Mm. Do you do you zoom it then? Yes. Oh, okay. Does it help? What I do you think? Know. You should be able to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Bobby doesn't. Bobby I, quit. I think Mike has been fantastic of late. So whatever he's doing, it's working. Agreed. You know what I like? I like the Hollow app. I know. That's through, with Marky Mark Jesus. and people that play Jesus on yeah. movies and yeah, television. television shows. Speaking of the Mavericks, mm -hmm. a what? while back, we were doing it a while back. Yeah. Talk about your reporting that the new ownership oh. could be happy with. So remember about a month or so ago, I had said that I heard that the state, is, they don't have the votes to get gambling yes. legalized here. Tell your buddy Ted Cruz to listen up. Um, and that was pretty much proven Texting. yesterday when the Adelson family and their group put a petition out yep. to get and sway the state government, the House and the Senate of the of the state of Texas. They need two-thirds in order to get it to ballot. It won't, it won't get to ballot. That's the problem. They can't get it. They know they can't get it. To the ballot right now. Do you think if it got to ballot, it passes? Seventy-five percent. It would pass Ooh. easily. It'd be one of the one of the biggest landslides. People don't agree on ending, except for most people think that gambling and marijuana are they, awesome. they, it would pass legally oh. easily. Do you think that'd marijuana be a bigger landslide than Fleetwood Mac song? Good, good question. Isn't that good a Dixie question. chick would it be a song? State, I thought it was Smashing Pumpkins. It would be a state vote, a, right? Not state a vote. Yeah, state vote. Not, uh, of or the, the chicks. Sorry. I also of the think people. it will pass. I just or don't know. People. That number's really high. Tie. Tie. I would vote no. On gambling? Yeah. Why? I just... I. You gamble. I know. But I do <laughs> think that it would ruin a lot of people's lives. That's I, I think that that would be... To protect. The reason I would say no, and look, I know that you can travel... Two hours to Oklahoma right. City, or not Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, or and I guess you can go three hours to Louisiana. I get it, and I just the more I think about it, and I do think it would pass. I'm with you, Choppy. I think yeah. it would pass, but I do think it would ruin. Tolo's listening right now. When it passes, I do think at some point in our life it will. I do think there will be Tolos that go broke, 
or or do some really bad things Peyton, because Peyton. of it. Yeah. Yeah, Peyton for sure. But Hey, that it's it's a freedom. It would it wouldn't be like you have to gamble. It'd be the freedom to choose it. But I think people would get addicted to it, lose everything. I do think it can bring bad people around your area that have the casinos. That is different now than I think. It, I think that's an old um, thought. Like Vegas doesn't have the same bad people it used to. There's no mob that runs it. No, anymore. I guess I'm not even saying There's mob. Drugs just here. kind of I don't know. Kind of your solution. Yeah, and seedy no. characters. Yes, yeah. Did you feel that in Vegas? No, but I I think Vegas is different. You feel it in like Detroit. I think that's just Detroit. Okay, though. AC. <laughs> I think that's just AC. So, AC oh, is, we're saying a AC is just New like, Orleans. Again, that's just New Orleans. Like, New Orleans is <laughs> a vermin-filled city anyway. Oh, Atlantic yeah. City. Hey, yeah, 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 we're people, going there in a couple yeah, months. People, oh, careful. Okay. Yeah, people tweaking an AC left and right. Okay, it it's just for me. I I yeah. I, I think a lot of that is like who was already there. Mm. Um, because yeah, my you know, Florida has it, you know, Miami has it. Miami's not doesn't have that reputation as being like New Orleans or Atlantic City. Or yeah, anything. the only thing that rattled Mike about Vegas was all the topless women handing out cards on the streets. <laughs> you totally all you gotta do is wear what are those pasties? All you gotta do <laughs> yes. is put pasties right? <laughs> yes. over your, you run your Ola, Ola. I guess. <laughs> Areola, areola. Are you covered? Was that, <laughs> was that the end of your report? No. So now it's like, <laughs> sorry, they're, they're, really, they're doing yeah. this petition, and they're like, they they know they need to get a couple of more people to sway votes and switch yeah. votes, and I don't know that they're going to get it. They know they have to, and I think Bobby brought up a good point. Like, if they don't get it, what is what is the end game? Like, is this their threat to move? Like if they don't get it, what's the point? Like the whole, the whole most of the state of, of Texas them, wouldn't care, right? It'd be only our Metroplex that would care. What would Houston, right, Austin? They wouldn't they care. Would care. Like, oh, no, the Mavericks are care. leaving. Who PJ cares? Tucker called out the excessive heckling from fans over gambling, saying, "Quote: It's getting outrageous." It is, and like you'll see it. Like you're talking about, you know, JB Bickerstaff talked about this. Like people are talking about yeah, threatening him, yeah, threatening him, and then you have uh, you have players betting on prop bets. All the Jante Slovenians betting on prop bets. You have college players betting on. <laughs> I mean, was it, uh, who was it? Oh, it was Temple. The Temple game this year. Oh. The game switched. Two games they this. had. But this is, was... this is the era we're in right here. We're watching MLB Network. They're throwing up a whole segment trying to, like, yeah. give you over-unders on strikeouts there, tonight. There, there were two Temple games this year where the, the, the line switched six points. No injuries. Switched six points from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And they found out that somebody got into one of the players yeah. and had a shave points. Like, was that it was... the Alabama baseball coach last yeah. year? Yes. So that's a problem because everything is done by your phone now. Who, and who brings us breaking news? Uh, Beck UL. Yeah. And who, who do you do shows for Beck and stuff? UL. Right. And so that is weird that that's like such a huge part of even the station. Yeah. But in the state, they're like, you can't. I mean, it's like the NFL. Whenever they're like, you can't be. Sorry, Tony Romo. You cannot yeah. do this fantasy football thing in Las Vegas. And they're like. Yeah, Las Vegas. If we can get some of that money's from yeah, you, Tony. If you could happy. now read the Caesar's injury report for us, really <laughs> yeah. Tony. That, same thing with Shohei. That's what they were saying. It's like DraftKings brings you everything. Shohei Otani. Uh, well, he's not going to get the other thing too. Is we're oh, shocked. Yeah. I was thinking about this too. Shohei really can't have a life outside of his house and at and at the ballpark, right? Like Shohei no. can't go anywhere. He so literally can't go anywhere. So he's he literally like six five too. He's either he's, he's, he's either at his house or he's at the ballpark. There's no other or like, you know, the gym, but he can't go to the local gym. So I'm just wondering how many times he's just like on his phone at home going, I can't just go out somewhere. Did you guys decide as a show that Shohei was doing the gambling? As a guest? I don't think he was doing the gambling, but I think he was paying the he was helping you hear? pay the bill. They finally arrested the interpreter. Oh, I, really? I didn't hear that either. For what? I didn't hear that either. For bits? You didn't hear it? And no. Aren't they it's trying? Funny. To... It's funny how there hasn't been an arrest made yeah. in this wire fraud. It's funny. Isn't it? Maybe there wasn't any wire fraud to well, begin with. Also, they denied comment when yeah. they said, who did you file these charges with? And they're yeah. like, no comment. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you could just say the police. Why, why wouldn't there be wire fraud? Because there's no didn't charges. Because Shohei was in on it. He just paid the guy. That's why. Isn't the guy in trouble for running an illegally? Yeah. Uh, an Ill yeah that's the, the person the, the there. Camp, the uh, uh, the bookie. Right? His name is Matt Bauer, I think. Oh, I thought you throwing Trevor. Trevor under the bus yeah. again. No, no. Matt. It's, but it's spelled differently. Uh, he's the guy that's in trouble. Uh, there's wow. a casino in Vegas that's in trouble. It's all part of this too. 
and they're like losing like 50 grand a day um that casino is but it's it's it's, it's and and nothing's happened to the interpreter he's sitting in tokyo right now i saw breaking news this morning on uh, brought, brought to you by hell bet ql i guess you know? <laughs> yes I was watching Get Up on ESPN, Thanks. and on the bottom line, I had Bonte. no clue he had time left, but it said, Will Clark. I saw Iowa that. I did see that. To the championship. And you're oh, thinking, Will Clark. Clark. Will Clark. Will wow. Clark. He that came. was the top of our segment for us all day today. Him and Eric Burns on a podcast. Only three Caitlin Clark segments here on the show. You can go great, listen man. to them all on the Rewind. That's Thank awesome. you, Corey great Majors. Game. Great game. I'll bring you I was watching sandwich. Josh Young. Oh, yeah. Dang it. The KMC Masterpiece next on the fan. Houston fan. Uh, Houston. We're giving you your morning sports fix.
Odyssey app. You're about to be masterpieced. KNC style right here on 105.3 The Fan. KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. You got me, Kevin Hagland, Corey Majors, Hello. Mike Bassick, and Reginald Atatula. He said he had fun yesterday. He would be back. I don't know if he'll come back again after today, but we will just have to wait you and had fun see. Yesterday? Yeah, we'll see how much more Caitlin Clark we talk. <laughs> we talked about it a lot off air, actually. All right. My headphones weren't plugged. I didn't hear what he said. He said he, said he wants to talk about Will Clark. Oh, yeah, let's go. Do you want to hear the good part about the game or just get right to the bad part about the Rangers game yesterday? You can start in the first inning. Let's play awesome. cut number one. Simeon at third, Carter at second. Here's the pitch. Young swings and blasts one. Deep left field. That is on its way, and that ball is history. To the back of the lower deck. A tremendous three-run Jimmy Jack for Josh Young. And the Rangers grab a 3 nothing first-inning lead. All right. All right. And the Rangers would go on to win 9-3. to It was a nice win. We'll talk about Dane Dunning a little bit later. But then... Unfortunately, we have to skip ahead to cut number six. When the game is the game's over in terms of competitiveness, it feels like. I realize there's been historic comebacks. Mike, I realize you're involved in one of those where you could come back from multiple runs like this. But it felt like the game was over when this took place. After one out, uh-oh, and that one came in and it got young. It's looking like it didn't even get him in the hand. Oh, it no. looked like it got him in the forearm. This isn't a good sign that he's coming off. Oh, oh got him in the wrist, right in the tape. Oof. Definitely not what you want to see in back-to-back -back at bats. Good adjustment call right there. It did get him in the wrist. We are going to talk with Bruce Bochy at 12:20. He said Josh Young. <laughs> no, it's not just a cram. A plus. But that is well done. It is a fractured wrist for Josh Young. And there's a lot of different directions that we can go with this, but I want to start with just the most basic. This sucks for the person and the player who had a monster game and clearly had a great season last year. Yeah, he's leading the team right now in hits, tied in RBIs, leading the team in total bases. I know it's four games, but batting 412 with a 1.4 OPS, and that wasn't going to keep up, but Josh Young, a lot of people had him as a breakout candidate this year that they thought, and it looked like they were early on going to be right that, hey, yeah, he made the all-star team last year, had a chance to win rookie of the year oh. until he got hurt with a broken thumb. And this is just so unlucky because he looked like a guy who people were saying, hey, I think he's going to hit over 30 home runs. I think he can be a guy who bats in the high 200s, a guy who has an OPS that's maybe at nine. Uh, maybe a hair higher than that, but all of those things after four games, you're like, dang, he's looking good and yeah. a good defensive third baseman. How many double plays has he turned this year? I don't know. It's felt like three or four where he's he's done a good job of turning double plays and sure-handed over there, and now I'm assuming with a broken wrist, I'm just going off of history, you're looking at probably the start of June Yeah, when he's ready. It's his right wrist, Two too. Two is what immediately jumps so to mind. So he can't play catch at all. So there is also, he's not a pitcher, but you do have to start building arm strength. Not only do you have to build hand strength, grip strength, get in your swings, but now he's not going to be able to throw a ball for six weeks or yeah. four, at least four weeks. So this is really tough. The Rangers still have a really good team, but this is... This is bad. We have to hope that Ezekiel Duran, who I think is going to be their everyday third baseman now, has the same, I don't know, first half might not, that's too big, the same injury situation when Seager had it last year where he comes in and you're like, hey, is he's hitting about as good as Corey Seager is. I can't believe this. So I'm hoping that Zeke gets back to the guy he was last year when he had to fill in for Seager on an everyday basis. And I don't want anybody on the fan text to think we're missing the fact that, yes, this was a former Astros pitcher. I, I did not necessarily yeah. view this as... It was it, all accidental. Yeah. He had three guys in a row. He shouldn't have been... A, after Adolis, he shouldn't have been on the field anymore. Yeah, He should have been... The umpire should have taken control of that before it even got to Josh Young. 
when he hit Adolis in the hand, same like same area, throws high and underneath the dude's chin. That pissed me off for one. Uh, he shouldn't have been on the field at that point. And then and you saw how pissed off Adolis was about this whole thing too. He knew what was going on. He understood what who was on the mound at that point. Josh Young gets up there, the whole swing part of it. Like I I was furious about the the call. I was still mad about the call too because I was like, it hit him. I understand the law and everything, but it looked like it even hit him before he got it into a full swing there too. It doesn't so, matter when it hits you. If you swing, you swing. But even still, I was I was so furious Ooh. about the the fact that this dude did that and was even still allowed on the field after he hits Evan Carter, then Adolis, and then he hits Josh Young. Yeah. And just the, the whole loss in general of this. I didn't that's want why, to your point, I did not want Wyatt Lankford hitting in the inning when Josh Smith had to come up like just hit into a double play and get this over with because I don't want this guy to peg another dude. He he didn't have it, and there's a lot of pitchers now. This is going. This is happening more in Major League Baseball because you have guys that throw hard but can't pitch, and that's where we've gone with the game, not completely and totally, but a lot of guys, when you talk to people, I'm asking about targets and stuff the other day before the season. They're like, well, we do have got guys that just throw to areas now because they're just in there to throw it as hard as they can, not to put a ball in a particular spot. And so when a guy's off, I mean, we have Jose LeClerc. He didn't hit anybody. Jose LeClerc is off. And he's not yeah. throwing balls that are just missing by an inch or two. He's missing by feet. And last night, Matten, if I'm saying his last name right, he was missing by feet and almost injured two guys, and he did injure one for two months. And one of the one of the things that Jared Sandler speculated right here on the fan yesterday, it looks like at least the first step of that is playing out. Is Jared Sandler threw out three different options, and I know Evan Grant talked about Duffy as being a potential, but for the time being, the Rangers have called up Justin Foscu. So I think the line of thinking here is, could he use a different word? You put Zeke, like you were saying, at third base and then go Foscu and Walsh platoon at first base until Nate Lowe gets back. That would be my guess. That was one of the things that Jared yesterday, you could have heard him on the post game right here on 105.3. The fan had speculated, but Jeff Passan is saying that Foscu is being called up and this makes logical sense to me in terms of how the pieces could fit. It doesn't mean this doesn't absolutely suck mm -hmm. because it does, especially for Josh Young. But this is a logical move for me. I would like to get into more of that in a moment, Kevin. I would still want to be ticked off about this a little bit. Fair. That's all right. Fair. I haven't vented enough about Fair. this. Because, Mike, here's the, here's the next thought on this. This is a dude who is a former Astro. Chaz McCormick gets hit in the thigh butt area by Raldis Chapman, who's no longer with us. And we know that Houston's going to try and make the Rangers wear it at some point. That's the way the sport goes. We understand that part of it. To get it from a dude that's on another team doesn't make any sense. To he me, didn't Mike. do it intentionally at Three all. Three guys in a row, he's that bad? Then he yes. doesn't need to be playing baseball. Well, a breaking ball, the first one, barely nicked him. But then he didn't have it. He just... He, if it was intentional, you're you're going to get a lot closer to the guy. The guys were swinging; their hands were away from their body. I'm not I'm not giving him an excuse. It stunk. He didn't have his stuff. He was wild. I wanted him out of the game too. I didn't even want Wyatt Langford to hit. He couldn't throw it where he wanted to throw it. So you're telling me you're telling oh, me no. that this dude throw hits three Rangers batters in a row. Yeah. And that none of it had anything to do with what with what went on no. in Houston last year. No. He didn't have an, enough of a connection to Jazz McCormick. You're telling me yeah. that this bad. guy had zero zero feelings towards the Rangers. If that's what you're telling me, Mike, I'll believe you, and I won't be that mad about that part anymore. Yes, that's what I'm telling you. We making him wear something, make, making somebody wear it today. In old baseball, 100%. Randy Rosarina is getting hit very hard, but in today's game, I would say no. <sighs> what we have we do have Boach Kevin uh, er, yeah. later today, and I that's I that's I'm gonna tell him how pissed off I am about this, and I need to I need to know what I can do if he needs to talk okay. me off a ledge or something because he can't come out and say we're hitting oh yeah dude. we are because then Major League Baseball <laughs> yeah. is gonna be like on an interview earlier on the KNC masterpiece like and that's that's gonna be problematic I I, I know you're right Mike but I, I'm hoping you can. Just dip back in real quick. You said in old baseball. Yeah. Was there a specific like year time frame when it changed and why not anymore? Um I I, I no, know. That's you're a good right. question. I would say it it's evolved. 
I would say in the mid to late nineties, it started evolving and I don't know what year I'm going to just throw out a year around 2010. It got to the point where we never, I won't say never, we rarely protect our own and it's just part of the game now where you don't do it. A lot of the things that would stop are how McCray would take guys out at second. I was talking to Mark McLemore about this and Eric Nadell the other day, how McCray was a kind of a dirty slider at second base. And so my dad was telling me and the Rangers hated the Royals in the seventies. So Toby took a double play ball. He was at shortstop and Toby Hara took it. And he was one of the hardest throwers in all of baseball from shortstop and smoked him right in the head as he was sliding late into second base knocked Hal McCray down. He's down. It hit his helmet, bounced off, kind of dead ball. And Toby said, you want to get up and do something about it? And Hal McCray walked back to the dugout. That's how, and then guess what? Now Hal McCray knew against the Rangers, I'm not going in to take out guys because Toby Harris is going to throw it right at my face at 95 miles an hour and he might kill me. And then it stops it. But they decided... Whether you agree it's right or wrong, I'm not making that statement. Whether you agree it's right or wrong, they decided that we're going to take it out of the players' hands. We're not going to allow the players to police the game and stop that from happening. So now it's up to baseball, and baseball has decided, let's just say Andrew Heaney's starting tonight. Let's just say in the first inning, two outs, nobody on. Randy or Rosarina wears one in the ribs. They're going to throw Andrew Heaney out of the game. Because they're probably already sent a warning to the Rangers just through like an email. Hey, it's it stunk. We feel for you. But if you go out and our umpires are on notice here, if you intentionally hit somebody early in this game, we're going to eject them and suspend them. And I think the Rangers he look needs at his it. his work right now. Right. And also you kill your bullpen. Yeah. You're about to play 17 games in a row. You have tonight and then you have tomorrow at noon. And if you're suspending a guy and you have to pitch eight innings tonight with your pen, and it could happen, like Andrew Heaney could have a bad game. That happens in baseball. But you really need your bullpen feeling pretty good, at least when you go into that Houston Astros series that everybody's feeling healthy. I guess I guess then for, for Boach, the, the line stupid. is instead of getting our revenge now, yeah, we'll just get it whenever we win our second World Series in a row. Which is probably really hard to say, even <laughs> if that's what you're thinking. To your thinking. point of policing the game, and Corey, I don't think they w- sh- they would do this, but I'm saying if if you want to take it out of the players' hands, to your point, they should have thrown Matten out of the game. Yeah, They should have just said, hey, we're sorry to protect the players. You're so bad at pitching today yes. that you can't pitch anymore. Like we're we're sorry. That's what they do in if, little league. If you walk everybody, you walk everybody. But when you hit three guys in a row, and they were all unintentional, but if you hit three guys in a row, there should be a, a rule, almost like a law. Yeah. If you hit three guys in a row or three guys in an inning, we have to eject you from the game because you are not yeah. good enough to pitch today. And guys throw too hard to pitch if they don't know where the ball is going. Yeah, they do that in Little League, dude. You hit it. You hit two. Actually, I think they have it at two. Yeah, you know what? If you hit two guys in one inning, then it should be an automatic ejection because you're not, you don't have the command to be pitching in this game. That would be a and six fascinating runs for the opponent turn of event. In the well, next game. Wow. To start the game off. <laughs> okay. But well, it's, it's not a bad rule that you yeah. don't allow, like the Rangers just can't. They can't. Maybe they will. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, obviously, Adolis Gar- or sorry, Raldis Chapman decided in Game Seven. Yeah. Hey, you hit my guy Garcia. <laughs> yeah. Chaz, this game's over. You're wearing 102 in the back of the leg here. That was Game Seven, by the way, Kevin. Which uh, I think you should keep your ears out for a potential we'll have a special game seven about conversation that on Thursday. Now, in the meantime, if you missed the news that we were talking about at the top of the show, I, I know what Boach is you're going to get essentially like you feel really bad for the guy, but you have to move on. That's just the nature of sport, the nature of life. Corey Seager seemed like a devastating injury last year, early in the year. You have to, I mean, your only other choice is, well, well, might as well have no third baseman. Yeah. And I, the white Sox might try that with their coach, but I know that was first base coach. In the meantime, the Rangers are calling up Justin Foscue. So the thought, and we can ask Boach at 1220 would be Lankford at third. (laughs) Yeah. I Tavares, don't, Leone, I don't believe, Leone, and then we can have our outfield that we want. I don't yeah. believe that is what I would guess. My you try guess to trade Le- to Leone Ezekiel anyway. Durant. So. That's true. That segment got pushed. <laughs> I've done it on that major league the show. You can put players wherever you want. Fair. My guess would be Nolan that Ezekiel Duran would go to third base, and then maybe you would see a platoon 
between Walsh and Foskey at first, which is one of the three options that Jared suggested could be the case last night. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, has Jason Kidd changed her mind? Ooh. We'll do it next right here. That's on the a fan. tease, man. I'll tell you what. Hopefully, I'm changing your mind. If you're a man that's lacking energy, lacking stamina, lacking focus, well,
See Masterpiece is also brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. It's brought to you by State of the Art Weight Loss, that soda, and it's brought to you by Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first. 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. That's Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. His one legged fadeaway off the post up was missed. Nobody stops the ball here until lively at the end. Somebody stopped it. Stopped it with a big block. And Kyrie pulls up and he drills a three pointer. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Somebody stopped it. Somebody stopped it. <laughs> now, Corey, this is your intriguing idea. Okay. And I think it is a fair question. Time to fire, kid. Ha well, I don't... What? Okay, I might have interpreted the point of this... Misinterpreted the point of this segment then. Has kid changed your mind? I assumed mm. that meant people were displeased with him. Have... The most has the most recent stretch of basketball and the way this team looks to be coming together and the pieces look like they could fit very well change your mind. I think this is a very reasonable question at this moment, uh, especially considering we were all in the same boat, what, a month ago? Uh, I, maybe just a little bit I didn't more think than a he was month doing ago. A good job. I think all of us were like, what's he even doing, man? Like he's he's Mike was pointing out he doesn't call timeouts the strategy part of it it doesn't look like any of it exists he got Daniel Gafford and he's like let's not play centers yeah and so like, what's we, the point we were kind of you know we, we uh I kept hearing brought us have the conversation out loud uh, on their show on G bag about I think they're trying they play in too many guys and they need to start Pairing yep. that down, and it looks like they have. It looks like they've found whatever rotations they like. Mike, you pointed out yesterday that it looks like their final five is thrown out there, and you can see it every game over the last uh, you know six games or so. It feels like that's their group they're going to have out there. But it also felt like Kevin there there was there was a part of the Mavericks that Jason Kidd needed to figure out first, and that was the locker room and how he could get those guys to grow together. You know, like you look at that Rangers club last year, Kevin, they were so tight. And even hearing the stories right now of Simeon and Seeger saying they're going to get together every 10 years to celebrate. Yes. Like, that's yes. something awesome. And I, I don't know if you have that more. I did want to talk with Boach about but that. Like, that's yeah, that's sure. a really cool thing. And whenever I, whenever I was looking at this Mavs team, I was like, they just look so disjointed. They just look like they're completely falling apart at the seams everywhere. And now... I don't know if it's Jason Kidd got Kyrie connected with Luca, and then they all connected with the rest of the guys. I don't know what it is, and I don't know how much credit to give Jason Kidd on this front either, but they all look like they're doing their jobs correctly. I, I will just say this, and then we can get into more nuanced conversation about it. I, I think the bottom line has to be some credit. If you, Because I already see some people texting and said, no, 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 he gets no credit for this, or he's still holding the team back. I just fundamentally do not believe that. I think he's doing a much better job in, in a weird way. He Is seems, he coaching much? He seems more engaged. Okay. All he right. seems to, one thing, and I don't know who to give credit to, I have to give credit to Jason Kidd and his coaching staff. All of a sudden, everybody cares about defense? Everybody on the team. Like, this is amazing. Even Luka. Luca cares about Hardaway. it. Yeah. Hardaway. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hardaway. All he's out there to yeah. do is like, when do I get the ball? This game's miserable unless I have the ball and shooting it. And you're like, dude, he's even, even trying on defense and the rotations and the help are, are tremendous. I did see a moment, Mike, on Sunday where I thought he got a steal. And I was like, he's going to pass it for a la easy layup. And he shot a three. And I was like, no, he's still there. Yeah. Like, he's still him. Yeah. <laughs> but the I do give him credit. But... If this team loses in the first round and it doesn't look great, then I do think you have to think about it. Okay, so you're reserving playoffs. Before. Because that's how it always okay. is, right? Like, Avery Johnson was the greatest coach ever until he accidentally right. calls a timeout and gives us a no timeouts left to advance the ball in the 06 finals. And maybe that was Josh Howard's mistake, too, because maybe they misread each other, but... Avery was a panic attacker on the sideline. I mean, he was having panic attacks in big situations. He was like the opposite of Jason Kidd. You're like, Jason, can you engage? And Avery, you're like, you need to calm the F down, dude. You are the basketball coach you right just now. just slipped on the, in front yeah. of Phoenix's bench. But then you get to the next year, and then he totally screws up the 1-8 series 
uh, and starts Devin George as our center. Like he, like you're like, what are you doing? And then you could, then they trade for Jason Kidd. And he's like, Jason Kidd isn't good. I wish I had Devin Harris back. You're like, oh, you can't say that at this yeah. point. You, we can't, we can't redo the trade. Yeah. You, you have Jason Kidd, and I think he's good at basketball. You might want to play him and trust him a little bit. So, and Rick Carlisle was like this perfect uh, combination of calm fire. You know, like yeah. he, he, you knew he was a jerk, but he, you knew that so, he was going to be. He had a plan, and he was going to, you know, call those timeouts. That was the part that I think you were most frustrated by. Is I think the line kept being Kyrie and Luca like him, so we have no, we're we're stuck. And it and it still might be that way. It still might be, and hopefully we don't have to go through this. I think if the if the Mavericks win a playoff series, hell, they might give him. I have no clue what his contract is. They might give Lifetime. him like a two year extension. I don't know. Lifetime. But but uh, are you starting to get to the point where? This is probably too unfair. Maybe we can dive into this after the Warriors game where just a playoff series might not be enough. No, not, I think not it, for him. Oh. For fans. For fans. Not, not for him. I think you're You'll right. You'll be He's disappointed in the end because if you win a playoff series, our expectations go up because you're like, we just saw them win a seven-game series, right? So why can't they do it again? Yeah. And, in, and then if they don't... Like, what the crap's happening? Because after you beat Phoenix in seven games and you took three or four from Golden State in the regular season, I'm like, dude, this is the matchup. Like, for some reason, we have their number. And then they just destroyed us in four out of five games. So you never, you know, absolutely know how matchups are going to work out based off of regular season games. But I I have been impressed with Jason Kidd. I don't know if he's a great coach. But I do think that reputations in this league – are completely made in the playoffs. Nobody cares about what you do in the regular seasons. Hell, hasn't Doc Rivers had a really good regular season record in his yeah, career? And we're like, he's a crap right. coach, right? And it's based Ooh. off of what he does in the playoffs. So I do think that Jason Kidd has done a great job after the losing five out of six to figure out how do I get this team to sacrifice for one another and, and he's done it. And he's taken two trades and he's been able to work in P.J. Washington and... Uh, Gafford, and then get the most out of Exum and Derek Jones Jr. While Josh Green is hurt, and that's another topic maybe for another day, I don't know where you fit in Josh Green for one minute of play. To yeah. be honest, I don't know when he comes back. He might have just got hurt at the wrong time where you're like, we're coming down the stretch and you'll play when things are going wrong, when I'm just trying to change the momentum of a game, but I don't know where he fits in anymore on this team, the way they're playing. The other part of, of that is... <sighs> He's still too inconsistent for me to to force him on the court. And when I say inconsistent, I'm not just talking about game to game. I'm talking about play to play. There are moments where I'm just like, I don't know what to expect out of him. And whenever you get into playoff time, you can't have any of those moments happen because that turns into big problems. Hell, I was looking at this, Kevin. The Rangers in their World Series run in 17 games had five errors. That was it. Five errors the entire run throughout the entire playoffs. Baseball is soft, Corey. And, and that's why, like, like you can't have those mental errors whenever you're playing, whenever you're in the playoffs, because that's the difference between a win and a loss right there if you're playing closer games, which the Mavericks probably will be will be playing a lot closer games because it's gonna possessions aren't going to be as easy as they have been you, throughout the regular season would think. for them and for their opponents. Their opponents, like, you got to face it now. The Mavericks are going to play defense against you, and they're trying to stop you. They're trying to stuff you, and they have bigs that can that can force you away from the basket. But they also have perimeter players that can force you into those bigs. So they're they're presenting a lot of problems, and that's where I think it is the combination of Nico and Jason Kidd. I think Jason Kidd was imploring, very much like Mike was. I can't do it with these big guys. I have Derek Lively, and he's good, but I got to have another there. But I also have to have somebody that can do something on the perimeter defensively. And so they so Nico goes out and gets it. So I kid I wasn't that far, Kevin, to yeah. fire him. Sure. But I was very kind of like lost and I don't know what this team is. They've changed their identity this in the last month. I, and Mike, I think I think so Corey and Mike, I think else points kind of go together because I'm just looking at some feedback, though this doesn't have to be the end all be all, is people are still very divided. On Jason Kidd from the 940. Kidd is locked in again from the 817. Jason Kidd is an idiot from the 682. Kidd finally got Luca to stop acting like a petulant child, and now everyone is following along. 
But all of those narratives can be built up, destroyed, or completely changed depending on the playoffs. Yeah. If you play the Clippers again, like I'm, that I just, looks like a possible, and you fall, people are going to be like, okay, new year, new coach, based on some of the last series. You still end the exact same way, and they'll be out on him. If you win that, you win another series or whatever. People might love Jason. But do you Kidd. expect this team a month ago, if they had made the playoffs, or even the play-in game. We were concerned about play-in. I thought they would be in the play-in, and that was it. And you thought that they would get blown out by 30, and we would be like, well, crap, what are we even doing here? Yes. Because it's all on Luka to carry this team. I don't expect this team to go in, if let's say they do play the Clippers, and lose four straight by 30. I, I, there's just no chance that I see that happening. I would be stunned if they got smoked in the first round of the playoffs. Other, I could see, I guess, a scenario match up with Denver and I still that's not my favorite matchup in the world but I would be stunned if the Mavericks like really got run off the court in the, the first round the only thing that we don't know yet is how healthy you're going to go into the playoffs that's a fair point. so if Kyrie I hate saying this but if Kyrie is hurt or obviously Luca's hurt you could get blown out that's where Minnesota has to really worry with Carl Anthony Towns and then Rudy Gobert's complete and total Dak Prescott disappearance in the playoffs. Like, how can this guy be defensive player of the year and a candidate every year and then be so crappy yeah. for Utah in the playoffs? It's not just Dak that disappears like other great players yep. do. And so there's question marks on all the top teams up there, except for Denver. When Denver's healthy, I think, or Danny Green, you'll hear anybody say, they have Jokic, the best player in the NBA. Yeah. That's the one team that if you match up against, you hope to be very competitive against, but everybody's going to pick Denver against Dallas in a playoff series. And, and I'm not saying this is going to be the case, but you've seen some seeds of it throughout the season, and hopefully the Mavericks are like, don't care about any of this, and this is just a fan talking point, which is fun. If it's a fan talking point, like as in we fans. The fans. No, so not I'm our cool station, that. but I, I just mean general Dallas Maverick fans squabbling about Kyrie or Luka getting the more credit or what the breakdown is. I get the distinct sense from listening to both of them talk that they think that is completely irrelevant because they have the exact same goal, which I love, 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 because I did not necessarily always feel like that was the case in previous seasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, and as far as Kyrie down the stretch, I think we've seen a different version of him than we've gotten over the time but you still got to keep the part that everybody likes when they trade for him is yeah. that he could be clutch as yeah. hell and and somehow i'll give kid a lot of credit on this too somehow he got that version of him uh to work with what this group's doing so yeah at, at the moment i am back in on this idea of hey jason kid is he's he got what he needed uh he he needed pieces it took Almost looking like he was going to throw a season to get somebody convinced that he could get the pieces that he needed, but he was able to get that. And we can surely we'll dive into the Warriors game tomorrow, but the starting five of Gafford, Washington, Derek Jones, Irving, and Doncic has a plus 22 net rating with a defensive rating of 95.5. Is that good? Yes. Okay. That would lead the league by. I want to say a mile. I don't know how that quant is quantified. And Sacramento is one of the better, faster teams. Like, it's not like it was against San Antonio and Memphis. Yes. You know, like, this is this is kind of real. I, absolutely. And just for comparison, you had seen a defensive rating hovering around, like, 115. So what you're seeing with this starting group in particular, and I know there's more that goes into it than just that, has been... Freaking tremendous. Point differential was like negative 1.7 before the Gafford-Washington trade. And it, now it's two point, plus 2.4. I've been watching that number every month. This late every in the season, week. that is an astonishing flip. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Coming up next, it's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassick. All right, so let's look at the Texas Rangers and what they do next. Coming up the next G-Bag.
this segment of the KNC Masterpiece on 105 Through the Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. They've got more Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Relax and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 Through the Fan. Got Bruce Bochy coming up at 1220. But right now... We got Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassett. Baseball Nuggets brought to you by Twin Peaks, Eats, Drinks, and Scenic Views. And guys, not only did we get bad news on Josh Young, if you're just tuning in, he did break his wrist last night in the top of the ninth inning. He will be out a while, uh, somewhere between, I'm guessing, somewhere between four and eight weeks. I, I think four weeks would probably be being too optimistic. Maybe eight weeks is, is as long as it would take. But it's his right wrist, so he's obviously not going to be able to swing a bat or throw a baseball for a while. But let me go to this story, which is also good news and bad news. Ronel Blanco, somewhat of a career minor leaguer. The Houston Astros won a game yesterday. Yes, they did. And it's pretty pretty spectacular fashion to win a finally win a game after going 0-4, right? So this game was on MLB Network as they went to it because of the no-hit situation. Ronel Blanco has had 25 games pitched in the major leagues. My son asked me this. He's like, man, is this one of their prospects or something? No, he's 30 years old. In his whole professional career, all minor leagues, all major leagues, Six innings was his longest appearance ever of his life wow. because he's been a lot of the time a reliever, but he's worked on a changeup. The Houston Astros felt like because of their injuries in their staff with Justin Verlander, and I always forget his name. He's hurt every second, it feels like. the McCullers? The, yeah, he throws like 70, more, 70 million curveballs in a game or whatever, but he's always hurt. I don't really worry about him like ever being healthy against the Rangers. Is... He went out and threw nine innings of no-hit ball, and he walked George Springer to start the game, and he walked George Springer in the ninth inning, and that was it. And Jose Abreu made a really nice play in the ninth inning with one out to secure or at least save the no-hit bid. That and some dude away. who probably – I kind of get this. I was watching MLB Network, and they're like, you got to watch his pitches. He has to pitch like another four or five starts until yeah. possibly you're healthy enough – and, and, you know, you can really hurt a guy who doesn't do this and not hurt him in the game, but hurt him his next start or yeah. the next start. We've seen this before. You know, one that comes to mind is Reed Detmers in his rookie year through a no-hitter for the Angels. And then he wasn't the same the rest of the season. And I don't know if it was because he threw too many pitches in that game, but Houston gets their first win, a very dramatic win and a really cool watching it. It wasn't a – like, if they would have brought in a relief pitcher for the eighth and ninth inning, I'd be like, I don't care. It's a no-hitter, yes. good for them. Who cares? I don't think – those. I just don't feel like those are historic. I just think, all right, the other team didn't get a hit. Who cares? Three guys combined for a right. no-hitter. I don't care about it. Um, but this one was so unexpected because it's from a guy – who, I'll be honest, yesterday I was looking on my fantasy baseball team and like, I need a guy who's going to double start, who's going to start two games this week. Uh, I kind of play in a weekly fantasy sure. league instead of like daily. And I was like, who could I get to start on Monday and then also start on Saturday or Sunday? And Blanco wasn't picked up by anybody. And I'm like, I'm not picking up this dude. Like I researched him a little bit and I was uh. just like, he's, first of all, Toronto's a great offensive team. Houston is stinking it up to start the year. And so, no, I'm not picking up this dude to throw possibly four innings and give up like four runs. Like, that's, I'm not putting him in my rotation. So, I picked up this dude, Ryan Nelson, who gave up seven million runs against the Yankees yesterday in Arizona. <laughs> oh, Luckily, I didn't start him either, but uh, this morning I dropped him off my team after he had negative 10 points. So, he got one day on my roster. But that being said, Fair. Houston wins, Rangers win, and we're headed towards that showdown here Friday through Monday without Josh Young and I look at the Rangers and I'll now give you a good sign hey David Robertson looked really good yeah, last did. night like as as Dane Dunning which we'll get to in a minute like not in this segment but next segment ran out of gas David Robertson came in and just looked awesome yes. and I was like I we have this cut and I'm going to go to this cut here Reggie this is Chris Young 
uh, on the G Bag Nation. They asked him about Leclerc after his two appearances against the Cubs. You know, yeah, I don't think you can judge it off one bad outing. I mean, he did pitch well opening night. Um, you know, got in a little trouble, but he got out of it. And then, you know, ran into a little trouble again. And uh, really just the walks. If he gets the ball in the zone, his stuff is good enough. It'll play. And, you know, I, I, it's early in the season, and this is part of it. Um, Hosey's a champion. Um, he's done it in the biggest moments, and he'll figure it out. Um, guys go through ups and downs. And, you know, ultimately, I think our bullpen did a great job of giving us a chance to win that game. Sure did. What Jose Arana did and then Yeri Rodriguez. And uh, they really kept us in the game, gave us a chance. And um, we just came up a little short. And Jose is going to be a huge part of our team this year. And I know that he'll, you know, he'll have a lot more good games than he will bad. So if tonight, if you're wondering, a one to three run game in the ninth inning, I'm not expecting Andrew Heaney to throw a complete game tonight. I'd love for him to. But – I think that LeClerc's going to be the closer. Yeah. Uh, and because yesterday, in a way, you did so well offensively and Dane Dunning did so well. I know he gave up three runs after he ran out of gas, but you do have Yates very healthy for today. You do have Spores very healthy for today. And then LeClerc didn't have to pitch yesterday or get up at all. So I would expect in some order, if you're winning or in a tight game, I would expect those three guys in – However they want to do Yates and Spores in whatever order they want to do them, that'll be based off of matchups. But I do think LeClerc could get his next opportunity either tonight or tomorrow to close out a game. And is this something that just perpetually gets monitored? Like, I know you're monitoring your closer, but are you watching, like, Robertson and Yates along the way and you're like, hey, they're doing really, really well. If we need to make the switch, one of them is ready. Yes, unless you sign Josh Hader in the offseason. And then you're like, or, you know, Edwin Diaz. And yeah. you're just like, well, we're paying him $20 million. He's That's what he's yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. right? But in this situation, LeClerc's on a one-year deal. And it's not like for a lot of money. So right. you can make changes. But other teams that kind of have a more established, we know what he does, we know what he can do, then you kind of say, this is our guy. It has to go bad for like, a long you. time. Like yeah. you have to go five in a row where it's right. like, dude, what We're going to put you on the injured list just so you can throw bullpens and figure this out. Yeah. But, uh, you know, because that's what Houston's issue's been. They were actually really close and had winnable situations against the New York Yankees when they lost some of those games. But Presley got beat up. Hayter gave up a big hit to Juan Soto to lose a game. So I'm not giving Jose LeClerc an excuse. But the Houston Astros, who on paper have a much better looking pen at the end of games, they also struggled against the Yankees. And I'm excited to see. Will I be nervous? Yes. To be honest, I will be nervous when Jose LeClerc gets his next save opportunity. And I hope it's tonight. Maybe I hope that the Rangers are up by five and it doesn't matter. But I'm excited to see and nervous to see LeClerc take the ball in a save situation. Do you feel do you feel like you have more guys in your bullpen that can go extended innings if needed to? Not not necessarily like 5 6 innings, right. but one, like Robertson last night one and two thirds, uh over one and a half. I wonder out. if you have to watch mm -hmm. Yates and Robertson because of their age. Okay, doing Does that, that make too sense? often? Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously you have Urania and Rodriguez who can, but they just pitched on Sunday multiple yeah. innings. So they had the day off yesterday. They weren't going to pitch yesterday unless emergency. Today, I would say they're one inning guys at best because you don't want to, you can't just give them a day off and then extend them two or three innings. Unless like you're playing Little League Baseball, then you throw two innings on Saturday and six innings on Sunday. That's perfectly normal for. Isn't that funny how you wouldn't do it to an adult who's You'll fully to, grown, but yeah. you do it to like kids who are 13 years old. You're like, two innings on Saturday, six innings on Sunday. That's normal. And you're like, that is not normal and not good for the for the development of an arm. The, the other thing I too, like this is a, a full season kind of question here, but by the end of last year, when you got into the playoffs, you knew who was crunch time guys and you knew who were blowout guys. Yeah. And I'm just kind of curious if like, we're going to need to watch, observe that all season, right? That's not, yeah. We don't have just a whole bunch of crunch time guys right now. Yeah, and you know what, Maybe Brock Burke, like so far, it hasn't been perfect. It hasn't been dominant. But Brock Burke, and look, it was he gave up a double yesterday. What a weird stat. Like, you give up a pop-up in the infield as long as nobody touches it, it's a double. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so dumb. the other day, they did change it. Jared Walsh hits 110-mile-an-hour two-hopper to Swanson, and he – 
it might have taken a bad hop, but it was 110 miles an hour. And at first they gave it an error. And I get it. It was a two hopper hit right at him, but then they changed it to yeah. a hit. And I think rightfully so. But if you hit a pop up and guys just can't see it, by the way, can't we just, can somebody go up there? Who decided that ceilings need to be white in baseball buildings? Who, yeah, that building's I just would, go. I would like to know. That is confusing. They, they, and I know that that was not built for baseball. It was never built for baseball. It was built for circuses. And so I'm just wondering That's at any true. point in Tampa, and I know they're building a new one now, but they're like, hey, should we like make it sky blue? Should we make it the exact color of a baseball? Does that make sense? No. So somebody paint it. Okay. How? But it's too late now, right? It's never too late. Are they doing it I'm like Jerry saying, Jones did? Do it in, you remember Jerry do Jones it at Texas season? Stadium? Do you remember the load of crap Jerry turned Texas Stadium into the last five years just to make sure it was as crappy as possible? How long would it take to just paint the roof? We got painters. It would take to listen to the show, dude. This this thing was built in 1986 in hopes that it would eventually lure a team. A 1986, by the way, Kevin, that it would eventually lure a team. Uh -huh. It was originally built as the Florida Suncoast Dome, and it was first used as an attempt to entice the White Sox to relocate to a new ballpark. Was not built to replace the aging Comiskey. So they were like, mm. maybe we can get somebody to come play here. And then a team was like, "Yeah, we'll build a we'll build a franchise there." And they said, "This is a stupid stadium. This is the dumbest design ever." We're the KNC masterpiece right here on one hundred and five three. The fans needs a B ring and a Look, C ring on their roofs. I I really believed you for a second that this might have been a circus build venue. Well, I was right really now. intrigued to go down that path. <laughs> Coming up next, though, Rangers pitchers on fire at both the MLB and minor league level. So we gave you the bad news. Here's some good news. Next on the fan.
about to be masterpieced. KNC style, right here on 105.3 The Fan. KNC masterpiece, right here on 105.3 The Fan. Rangers pitchers on fire at both the MLB and the minor league level. Now, I want to start with Major League Baseball, if that's okay. Unless you really want to talk about Jack Leiter first. Fine. Okay. You, I hope you'd be excited. He looked good most of the way. Let's go to cut number four, if we can, because Mike made reference to it. The first six innings of Dane Dunning yesterday were freaking awesome. Thunderdome from 93 to 96. Tampa Bay Lightning were playing here. The payoff pitch. Struck him out swinging. A foul tip into the mitt of catcher Jonah Heim on a changeup. And Dane records his sixth strikeout. Now, there were, he ran into problems, as you said, Mike, when he ran out of gas in the seventh inning. But there were some super positive things that I wanted to bring up. He faced the minimum number of batters over the first four innings. No raise hitter got past second base until the seventh. And through six innings, he gave up one hit and struck out seven. Now that last part, Jared had this stat that I thought was I it was very illuminating. Dane Dunning had seven swings and misses on his changeup. That's the second most in a start in his career. Here's what's weird. I felt like he talked about eliminating that pitch with us to throw more splits. Yeah. But then he Maybe threw the, the split just up. wasn't working. Well, he threw it one as, time as well for it him. Went out of the ballpark. <laughs> well, that would lead no, to that it wasn't working. <laughs> it reminded me of the movie Major League where he comes up with the new pitch. Yes. And then it gets called the... The, the Terminator, bat. right? Yeah, yeah but, but he changes it to, let's just but then say, the, the solo mode. But then the guy who hit it out, his teammate, called it the m Vader. Yes. Oh! See? Okay, I thought you he gonna... said if you can hit it, you can name it. Yeah. And then he, and then he did hit it. smashed it over the fence. And then he got traded. But we don't need to rehash oh. the plot of Major League well, 2 right the, now. What happened in the playoffs against him? I think, didn't Willie Mays Hayes jump over him? It's and... different yeah. Willie May, Mays Hayes actor, though. Mm, yeah. Different guy. It wasn't you just West... said that we don't need to redo Good this. Good point. Here you are. Yeah, Good we point. Wesley Snipes. Thank you. Wasn't in anymore. Was Omar Epps? No, we're not doing this. We're not doing this right now. But Dane Dunning with seven swings and misses on his changeup. First of all, that's encouraging for that pitch. But also when you see the strikeout numbers, I'm not saying Dane Dunning can't strike people out, but I don't view him as a, I'm going to get a strikeout and inning kind of guy. Right. Well, the great thing was, is during that time, he was still so efficient. He was. Now, obviously, nobody else was reaching base. He wasn't getting deep into counts. He had through... I feel like through four innings, he was still in the, the 40s with his pitches. Yeah. So and he had hit the minimum, or he had gone through right. the minimum number of batters. So that's the thing that Dane Dunning is, I'm sure he would love strikeouts. Everybody loves strikeouts. But to be that efficient and not have to show as many pitches as possible, if you're Nolan Ryan, I know it's a long time ago. I'm, let's say Jacob deGrom. Jacob deGrom isn't a guy who usually will pitch deep into games because he's striking so many yeah. people out. He doesn't care if they see his fastball and curveball. He's like, I don't care. You can see it as much as you want. You still can't hit it when I throw right. it well. But for other pitchers, the majority of pitchers in major leagues, the more pitches you see in an at-bat, and I know it hasn't worked out perfectly for Evan Carter, but the more pitches you see in an at-bat, the better chance you have of hitting the ball hard because you're timing the guy. You're getting your timing down. You're seeing the way it's moving. You're seeing the shape of the pitch. You're seeing it out of the hand more. You're seeing that slot he's releasing it from. And so uh, I look at it and go, like, for a guy like Dane Dunning tonight, for a guy like Andrew Heaney, and I know that he can sometimes throw more pitches, obviously, right. than you'd like per inning. And he even knows it, too. You know, he's not the most efficient pitcher on the mound. But – those guys, the less a hitter sees in that, especially first at bat, the more ways you have to attack them that second time through and possibly even a third time through. I, I, I just, I, you're right, spot on about all of that. You've seen Dane around, like, in terms of Ks per nine. A couple of years ago, about eight. Last year, 7.3. It's just one start. But if you start to see that changeup becoming a problem pitch, for other hitters, and you can get to your nine, nine point five strikeouts per nine innings. I that would be tremendous. I was I was watching the FS one um 
game last night, the, that, their version of it, it was bad. They went into battery mode at some point, and this only, game was on. It was on FS1. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and they were they only had a center field camera on the pitcher. There were times there was a play at third base where Jonah Heim throws down. I didn't even see what happened. So there were it was for a, a, I don't know, like four innings, maybe two innings, something like that. And and I heard them say he said he wanted to bulk up because he felt that late in the season he kind of faded. And I was like, oh, wow, they're talking about Dunning. And they were actually talking about a Rosarina. But okay. because, you know how whenever they go, they pan to a guy and you're like, oh, well, that's who they're talking about right, right now. So I had that moment. But it did look like Dunning had a little more legs in him. And that's why in that seventh inning, I wanted him to go deeper in that. I was like, I think he has, this is his chance to prove what I've been saying all offseason. Kevin, I know he's your guy. Yeah. But whenever we would bring up the, hey, why aren't you getting Jordan Montgomery? I kept going, we have Dane Dunning. We have guys that helped us get through. Sure, John Gray gave us four inning games all year last year, and those things happen. Like it happened again this year. Right. It'll happen. Uh, but it, like I feel like Dane Dunning can is still on a trajectory of he's growing into a good pitcher rather than he's maxed out and plateaued. Isn't this weird too? Not watching a game, and I watched last night. But if you didn't watch. And you just go to, right now, you're a fan of the Houston Astros. And you go and you look up uh, his stats. And you go six and a third, four walks, two home runs. And you'd go, eh, what are you guys talking about, yeah. Dane Dunning? But if you watch the game, you're like, all of that happened in the seventh, seventh inning. inning. And, and you're just like, he lost it. And then, I love what you guys are saying, but I wonder this. One, I do know this. No matter how hard you work in spring training, no matter how hard you work in the offseason, the intensity of a regular season game, the getting up and getting down for the seventh time for getting into that seventh yeah. inning. And I get that the Astros guy was able to do it for nine innings yesterday. That was like a push that he hasn't had yet. Yeah. Also the intensity of a real game. He, that was his first intensity of a real game for the season. Can he extend into a seventh inning? This is something to watch. This is where Bruce Bochy, he's going to have to go, Hey, maybe he is just a six inning guy. I'm not saying he is, but this is where a manager has to really pay attention and go, maybe when he gets to kind of that sixth, seventh inning, that third time through the lineup, I just take him out. Yeah. Analytically, maybe it's just like this is where he really struggles. Maybe it was just fatigue yesterday, and he's gonna be able to have better stamina later on in the season, a few more starts into the season. I don't know. This is something to watch with Dane Dunning. Now, on the minor league front, because there's one thing in particular that I want to focus in on this. I want to talk about Jack Leiter, because Jack Leiter over the weekend was phenomenal. He didn't actually start because he came in, essentially, Michael Lorenzen was right. like the opener. Michael Lorenzen got rocked. <sighs> He's Just saying. It's his first fake spring training. Start. Okay, all right. Jack Leiter threw five innings of relief. He struck out nine batters, and that's great. That's one short of his career high, and that's fantastic, and we can talk about that if you want. What I really want to talk about is the fact that he walked nobody. Zero. Because that has been the thing that we've talked about is his control and placement issues in the minor leagues. And five innings, he retired the first 13 batters he faced. Again, that's great. But the fact that he didn't walk anybody, that feels like one of the most telltale signs on his potential ascension. It's not, he pitched good for five innings. He didn't walk anybody. Yeah, I have two thoughts here. One, he saw his cousin Mark Leiter come into Texas and throw, and he was like, dang, he's out there before me. I got to... I gotta, I gotta hustle up here, uh, because that's his cousin, Kevin. Mark Leiter is his cousin. So you his don't dad think is he would support Mark Leiter Senior. His cousin. No, he wants to compete with okay. his cousin. He wants yeah, to beat him. Could be right. The other, the other thing though is you're dead on there, man. He, he, his biggest issue was controlling and locating his fastball. And I know Mike's can, Mike can go into so much more depth on this. But when we saw him at spring training, when we've had eyes on him, it's been locate your fastball, throw it for a strike. And that sets up everything else, and you can't just say I can only go high uh, with a with with a fastball and try and get guys out. There's so much more to it, and it's from from what we saw with those numbers. I didn't get to actually watch him pitch in this game, so I don't know exactly what it was. But not walking guys means to me that he had that he was in control of his fastball, and it just adds to potential depth for the big club. Like we talked about at the be at the beginning of the show, Josh Young. 
it sucks that Josh Young got hurt. It sucks for him personally, physically, mentally, but it also sucks for the team. Yes. But the pivot that we talked about is you had a plethora of pivot options, and it looks like with Foscu getting called up, we, and we'll ask Boach, but that you would see Duran at third, and then maybe the combo of Walsh and Foscu at first until Nate Lowe comes back, and then you can figure out what you're going to do from there. But pitching-wise, we have been concerned about where's your depth there starting pitching-wise. Well, hopefully now, Lorenzen's on the way in, and, you know, Bradford is your next option, but now maybe Jack Leiter could be a viable option. I'm not saying you will need these, but it is good to be able to look at the minors or look at your bench and say, if and when you get injuries, you can use this person or this person or this person. And I love that about this team. Right like now. I have a really like this is a very unique question to what Jack Leiter did over the weekend. He came in for relief as opposed to starting. But he was exceptional in that relief appearance. It was really good. Does that is that different to you? Do you go well? I need now. I need him to start. Like do you? And I need to see that more. If he comes in, let's say he pitches six games in a row just like that in relief. Do you go well? I can't start him because I haven't seen him start. I've only seen him as a reliever. I'm assuming he only did that because Michael Lorenzen, right? Because he threw five innings and 66 pitches, so that's not really relieving. He probably also threw long toss right before the game, like warmed up kind of as and a they starter. Told him, okay. Like, all right. And so this he just had to go. like, hey, you know exactly what inning you're coming in. So he probably threw his 35 to 45 pitches, like. You have a sequence. You're not just throwing down there to throw. Like I would go opposite arm side for two. Then I'd go middle two. Then I'd go opposite arm side for three. Then I'd do two seamers for three. Then I'd do three change-ups. Then I'd go fastball in four seam. Then I'd do three curveballs. Then I would go to my windup. And then I would go three in, three away, three change-ups, one fastball, three curveballs. Then I would go, okay, so now I've gone through my whole routine now, how do I want to go through a sequence? Do I want to go through the sequence that I think I'm going to face the first hitter with and go through a sequence there? Because now I need to make sure that I can throw two-seamer down and away for a strike, then throw curveball for a strike, then go fastball in for a strike, then go change up, then go curveball, kind of then go fastball okay. away, and I'm like, all right, now I'm ready. So the only thing that might be random in warming up as a starting pitcher is maybe your last five to ten pitches are random. But for the most part... Your first 30 to 35 pitches are all in your head exactly what you do. And you do it every time you take the mound down in the bullpen. And then you might mess with how do I want to go through a sequence here at the end. And sometimes you'll even ask a guy, hey, will you just stand in there for me? So I see a hitter. Now I'm not just throwing to a catcher. I want a hitter in the batter's box. So I'm working off of that guy being in there. Obviously, if you're Maton, you might. Peg your own teammate and yeah. then take him out for the season. Need one right. of those, what was it, the cutout they had in Major League, Kevin, where he knocked his head off? Like yeah. Those are still there. I don't know if you saw that in spring training. Do you? When we, I didn't see it. Oh, I didn't either. Yeah, so when you walk by the bullpen in spring training, you'll see that that random dummy thing uh, there. That, awesome. If you need a dummy hitter, they have it. How many times do you think Major League is going to come up this season? 75. I'll take we, the over. Oh, okay. Wow. Good job, Rich. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Did I like we start that. to count now. Did well, we no, because I, I know it's come up at least six times stop? already before uh, since the season started. What's that? Nothing. Want to start right now? Nope. All right. What about now? Can I tell you one more positive thing? <laughs> yeah. It's going to pull at your heartstrings. Did you see that since they're playing the Rays low and low, did you see that Nathaniel Lowe got to show off his World Series ring to his mom? She's been battling a brain tumor. They got to sit down, have breakfast together, show off the ring. I just thought that was nice. That is nice. I feel like there's another part of this that you're like, and his brother didn't have a ring and oh, laughed at him or something. Oh, I mean, we can bring that okay. up. I was just trying to tell you the nice part oh, okay. that he got to show. I never had a little brother, so I don't know how I would treat it if I would be like, hey, this is awesome, isn't it? Good luck getting okay. yours. Well, then you probably won't like this next know. turn. Josh also asked Nate to be the best man at his wedding. That's awesome. So Josh he did, Young? Yeah. No, no Josh, Josh, Josh really, Lowe. really threw it into his brother's face. You can you can be the uh, usher. <laughs> no. Josh Young, my third baseman Josh over there. Josh Lowe asked Nate Lowe. That's why Maton hit him. Uh, because I was like, yeah, he's like, corners stick together. <laughs> Because they don't get the signs. Man, I really thought we had some heartwarming pieces there, and it just... 
It didn't go the way I thought it would. Do at you all. know this show? Fair point. Hey, Cole went through two innings and didn't give up any runs and struck yeah. out three. How many walk? I don't know. I don't want to look. <laughs> I just saw like 2024 stats, zero ERA, one game, two innings, three Ks. Nice. He had a whip of one. So does that mean he walked two guys? I think he did. I mean, theoretically, Probably. I would assume. Well, I didn't see hits. Maybe he gave up hits. I'd ra- In a weird way, I'd rather him give up hits than walks. <laughs> I agree. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Which is interesting because this morning Jared was yeah. like, hey, look, LeClerc's not getting hit. He just has no control. He's like, Will Smith, whenever he threw, he got hit all over the place. And we're like, yeah, we don't want that. But then I mean, Mike's you did like, kind of hear, yeah, Chris Young said this, <laughs> yes. Coming up next, what is the most annoying? I won't tell you on white stats. Oh, my God. What is the most annoying or irritating phrase in sports? <laughs> and why is it whatever Mike says <laughs> next right here on The Fan? Thanks to our Tolos, those are our...
of the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan is brought to you by State of the Art Weight Loss, that's soda. It's also brought to you by carsforkids.com. Donate today at carsforkids.org, rather. Uh, window Nation, and it's brought to you by Franklin & Frankel. If you've been injured in a car truck wreck, call Franklin & Frankel first. 214 or 817-333-3333. With Franklin & Frankel, there is never an out-of-pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Franklin & Frankel, the go-to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan. This actually spawns from a conversation I was having with my son over Easter weekend. We were we were driving back from the in-laws. Wait, no one can talk? <laughs> yes. We we were no, I'm sorry, my older son. Oh, okay. No. Well, I mean the, Noah can talk. He just can't have like complex conversations. Would you trust him to drive? Brandon or Noah? Noah. No. Brandon, yes, because he drives like a grandma. So I like that. I do. But during the conversation, he was lamenting about the Chicago Bulls. Uh, he likes to talk about the Chicago Bulls a lot. And we're actually having an in-depth conversation about Arsenal. And he talks about like how all the teams that he loves perpetually like fail. Underperform. Or, yes, exactly. And so one of the things he was talking about Chicago in the offseason is going to be like, oh, we like our guys. And oh that's God. that's the phrase Steven. that I think r I really dislike when you haven't really accomplished anything and you continually say, we like our guys. And so I was curious for you guys and for franklfirm.com text line 877-881-1053, what is the most annoying or irritating phrase in sports? At the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All, <laughs> that's that that's become the most frustrating over one the last right now. several months it's definitely all in yeah um we go. that that <laughs> one definitely is is soul crushing uh execution kevin there was a, about a, a full season of steven saying we just didn't execute and it doesn't just Why have it to all be about steven the jones, jones family yeah it's all <laughs> steven jones all things. things that can be that can be whoever you want but you're right one, somebody just brought this up, and this is a great one from the 682, the GOAT. I am not entirely sure if people know what that phrase actually means. Greatest of all time. Because way too many people are goaded. Yeah, everybody's goaded. And then you'll hear like, oh, that's another GOAT in the same sport. And I'm like, but that doesn't work. And I get it. It's just now been become part of the like... It's it's a it's a nice way to describe an excellent player, but I think I do get kind of beat down by that. And it was changed. It used to be a horrible thing. Oh yeah, you're the goat of that, and you're like you blew it. Yeah, you're, it's you your lost fault. the game, and then you He's ate a tin can <laughs> in a bad way. The um, there was the line from LeBron where he was like, "You guys, you're gonna drive your little Miatas or Toyotas or cells back to your little garages and park them, and I'm gonna go back wrong. to my yacht and." Hang out and love life. Y'all suck. The Mavericks. Okay, the Mavericks won. Was it that President? many words? So it felt like And I don't that. feel like you hear that a lot, right? <laughs> From my buddy Jeff Fry, he put, it is what it is. I just saw that pop up on the fan text. But Good it job. is what it is, It though. is what it is. It does or trust trick. the process. Well, that's that's real, though. If you've ever just said, How's I'm going to put complete Working faith in the process... Though. It's just you have to, you do have to transcend beyond the process. Okay, but how long is the window for the process? Well, for Philadelphia, it's still going on. Yeah. In the 76 I know years. Joel Embiid's coming back, and that's great. And, mm -hmm. You know, maybe they'll lose in the Eastern Conference Finals. With or the something. broken snake logo. Wasn't that what it was? Is that what it is? You guys not remember yeah. Philadelphia having some sort of like snake that was like broken mm -hmm. into three? I guess not. Yep. I mean, none. Is it just three, or is it more? I mean, it's obviously harkens back to colonial times, but that's a whole like history lesson. Nobody want to hear it. It was on their court. They used it as like a symbol for their like team. Okay, I'm not. I have to look this up. Oh, I see what you're saying. I yeah. I guess I don't remember that, or I don't. I don't like think of that immediately. They wanted it more. Oh yeah. It's not that good like, answer. It can be true. Thank you, Reggie. They it can be true that that team did want it more. But it's irritating uh, whenever you hear like your own player say they wanted it more today. You're like, then why didn't you want it at all? You look like you didn't even want it. 
because we were burnt out. Okay. <laughs> that phrase in particular comes up a lot in MMA. You used to, hopefully we are evolving past this, but you used to hear this, like you get to the fifth round of a championship fight. It's like, it's going to come down to who wants it more. And I was like, maybe, or maybe it's going to come down to the fact that the guy in the red corner has taken an immense amount of damage and does not have the same level to put into this fifth round as the guy coming out of the blue corner. Yeah. Work gal. And so, yeah, I always thought that was dumb. I'm like, I'm sure that they person- They color the corners? Yeah, they're just the red corner and the blue corner. That, that oh. just <laughs> symbolic. They're not necessarily like- It's like that game where you have to remember what corner they went to. Is that Simon? Simon? I yeah. think that is what or he's bop talking it. about. <laughs> yeah. Bop it. Um, pull it. <laughs> Why would you go with pull it? it. You know why. Okay. I think you do have to pull it at some point. I think on that, that game, doesn't it tell you to pull it at it some does. point? It does. That yeah. is correct. And as we know, technically correct. But that's kind of correct. Um, Kevin, this oh, is, are we done with that part <laughs> yes, of the conversation? Yes. Okay. This has become a pet peeve of mine because of Mickey Spagnola. And we'll find out. No, no, yeah, that is. no. Well, we will find out though. The <laughs> he's right. when I was working at the Cowboys website, I said he's seen a lot of playing time, Were and he there? was like, "You don't see playing time." You either get playing time or you don't. You don't see it. Okay. And so whenever I see that in stories or I hear people say it, I'm like, well, I like it was ingrained into my brain that you don't see playing time. I have a tough time with that because that was one beauty part about working in the sports section for the newspaper. You do not necessarily have all the same rules applied to you because I remember when I was in college, I wanted to smash uh, one of our editors faces into a oh, desk. Okay. All right. Because, no, you, you can just take that one uh -huh. section. No. And Kevin Ooh, wanted yeah. to smash. Yeah. No, no, no. That worked out. Unfortunately <laughs> for me, because it was a basketball story and he goes, he drove down the lane. Really? He got in a car and drove the car down. And I, I was like, I, I went to our faculty advisor and I said, can you please never have that person edit any of my stuff again? <laughs> And he said, why? And I showed him multiple examples and he goes, okay, so he just doesn't know anything about sports. Yeah, sports is more satire, I, is what you're saying. From the 469. Or descriptive writing. No one's dying, but from the 817, this is one for me, not to be trite. Now, I, again, I get that that's focusing it. It is what it is. I know people might think Belichick, but it goes to a lot of people. Not to be trite, I only know Jerry Jones to say that. And usually when he says not to be tried, it actually spirals like into a longer story. And I'm like, I don't feel like you're being tried. I know I do sound tried here, but I'm not to be tried. Um, that is, I don't, here's the problem with not to be tried. And, and you guys are great wordsmiths, Reggie and, and Kevin. A lot of times when he says it, that's when I'm trying to figure out what that means. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't even it's know that I know the what the phrase. And that's tripe exactly means so can you explain what not to be trite means he's saying i'm not trying to be so i i think it's tongue your, in cheek what it was not necessarily i think you're kind of using like a sort of generic phrase or a commonly used expression okay that breaks de that like people are like yeah, yeah i've heard that before okay so he's saying i'm not trying to be just generic with this okay yeah. I got, i'm not trying to be cliche um, just but but basically in a conversation where we all are talking about cliches. Here's another one after games. God was on our side today. Okay. He doesn't pick sides, guys. Okay. There, Unless you're on the Blue Devil side, which he definitely he picks against, against the Blue Devil. There is a great I don't know if anybody the show's still on, but the TV show, the cartoon American Dad, they have a Christmas episode where main character thinks his entire family is going to die he gets to talk with god and he goes why are you taking my family and he goes stan i'm gonna be honest with you if your family lives then stanford's tennis team will go oh and ten in conference play <laughs> and he just stares at him he's like i'm just kidding <laughs> like i i do always funny. think that i was like just the law of statistics there's probably like some jesus and god loving folks on both teams or whatever and they'd be like well, God was on our side today. I, I was like, hey, he might have been on your side individually in terms of keeping you safe or something like that. I don't think that God has like a vested interest in 
the outcome of sporting events. I could be wrong. He could be listening and be like, oh, you're so off about that. From the 469, it just wasn't his day today. No kidding. It's never the loser's day. Sure. That is that is a very good point. Yeah. From the 940, well, we are, and we do, and we will. That's I don't know who that's in reference to. And there's a lot. It, it bounces back and forth. Kevin, Corey, Every other Matt. text is directly about the Jones family. And then the next text is like a broader one because the next one I see is from the 940 player acquisition is the 365 24-7. <laughs> so like uh -huh. it rotates between Jones family, other cliche, Jones family, other cliche. Except for spring break. <laughs> he, yeah. There was, oh, there's another one. Give me he a minute, all, Kevin. Go he ahead. He has all the intangibles. Uh, I like that. Okay. I mean, like, I, it kind of wears you out whenever that's all he has. Yeah, I because I was just going to say, I agree with the importance of an intangible. Sometimes I feel like it's a crutch for, hey, he's not very good, but... We got to say something nice. We always have to say something nice about folks. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Remember, on every play that happens in uh -huh. a Rangers game while you're announcing it, something bad may have happened, but something good happened as well. What about just not for you? Sometimes. Okay. What about playing with a chip on your shoulder? Shout out to Anthony Brown. I am yeah, he okay. Tatted it. I'm he okay did. with that phrase. Okay. I and I can understand how people don't like it though, but it is it means that you have people have underestimated you and that's like you've decided I, I'm playing this way because I'm playing in spite of all of you people out there that think this way about me. These two teams don't like each other. Do you feel like that's as prevalent? It used to feel like it had more meaning to it yeah. when the outcome would be Bill Lambeer would punch you in the face and you're like, I get it. Yeah, no, they really don't like each other at I all. I kind of feel that way about the Rangers and the Astros, but I don't know how many actual rivalries are just for so we can advance versus, you know what? I really hate the people on that team or that franchise in general. I just don't know if Kevin, it's like that. Do we? I think we've done this before. In a way, I think we did your like top 10 list of hate, but should we do an all time hate list? Oh, like people or like phrases at, like, like or all time hate team. Like oh. you put put them on this team. That's the team that I actually am going it's, to hate. It's coached by Urban Meyer. Well, yeah, yeah. They're coached by Urban Meyer. Tom Brady's the quarterback. Oh, Art Bryles. Oh, that's a tough call. Yeah, Art Bryles is the offensive coordinator uh, in this situation. So, yeah, you can put uh, this all time hate team together. I don't know if you want to do a baseball team or a basketball team. Seems like you probably want a football team since you have so much hate, but 53, uh, 53 points of hate you can go to. From the 817 and another person from the 214, this is just for you, Reggie. Momentum. The momentum has changed. Not doing it. Not doing it with y'all. Mark yourself saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, just, I, I, haven't, I, I haven't heard this phrase a lot. From the 561, we're a championship team. We just haven't won one yet. I will admit, McCarthy. I will. Mike but McCarthy the, said that. That infuriated people. But the thing that Mike McCarthy says that bothers me is he's like, it's just like anything. What's wrong with that? It's just, he says it a lot. It's just like anything. It's just like anything. <laughs> okay, so everything is like everything else. I saw one that just came through. Oh, here it is, Kevin. Best shape of his life. Best shape of my life. Best shape of, yeah. That's the one where you're just like, why are you saying this? Yeah. You, you feel like you're in good shape this from year. the past. You're like, oh yeah, last three years, he maybe at best mildly gave a crap. Do you do you hate the misuse of must win game? Because I I, I I think there are must win games, and there are moments where you're like, for you for the men mentally, they need to win this game, but it's not must win. I have tried to like start to put the caveat on there and i said it feels like a must win maybe not mathematically but because that's the idea is will you be mathematically eliminated or whatever but yes i i have also been guilty of misusing a must win for like an abstract situation versus a by the number from the 817 we added by subtracting and then from the 817 as well the surgery was a success okay we hey that is a great that is great bit of information they are alive Yes. <laughs> what if we, they change it to that? Well, I think they are alive. They're they alive. Are alive. I think they woke up. Corey, I no think doctors ever come out and been like, "Hey, we couldn't put the ligament back together, guys. It just wouldn't go. Wasn't going to work." Except for, I thought the example you might have given at one point was maybe initially with Alex Smith when they're like, 
look, <laughs> it did not go well. Yeah. It was far more complex than we anticipated. We're going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure this out. But yes, the Serge is Teddy Bridgewater, was, it felt like that was the same Teddy kind of Bridgewater feeling. is a great one as well to be like, oh, this was way more complex than I anticipated. Our fan text, our Tolos are amazing. And it, yes. This is a great list. So you don't get let, so you don't get let down. We see all the all-ins as well. We talked about that more at the front half of the segment. I feel like that phrase has now been hijacked. If I ever hear anybody say that now, I'm going to be like, all right, so you're not really going to try. You're just going to be like, yeah, we're fine the way it is. What about we can't say enough about him? Oh, then keep talking. Can't say enough about that okay. guy. Okay, next time we have a guest on, I dare you. If somebody says they can't say enough about that guy, just leave a pause. Boach is going to say it today okay. about Young. Okay, why don't you just I leave a pause you he's and be like, you it. said you can't say enough about him. What else? I'm not doing that to Boach. Oh, that would be I'll awesome. I'll let Mike do that to Boach. That might be our last interview with Boach of the season. <laughs> We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, it's time for Gridiron Gravy, the top NFL revenge games for 2024. We'll do that next right here on The Fan. Coming up the next...
Peace on 105 through the fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. They've got more Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan right now. It's time to go around the entire NFL and dip into some gridiron gravy. If I guess. Hey, it looks like Dan Orlovsky on this ESPN show is living out of his car. Yeah, I said it looked like he had a bunch of dry cleaning back there. I think he does have one of those racks across, like across his uh, back seat, and he just puts all his suits in there. And then the problem, though, Mike, is if you look at it, whole thing's full. How's he seeing out of his rear view? Can't. Yeah, it's dangerous, Dan Orlovsky. What are we doing here? I don't hate you like Bobby does. Right. But I think that you need to be taking care of the community out there while you're driving around. Now, if we could fire off cut number 17. I wonder if Bobby likes anybody who doesn't love Dak Prescott. Does he like you? He doesn't love my Dak Prescott takes. I know that. I think he loves you, though. Yeah. Like, like he's a, adopted the knuckleballs and everything. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, he, he tried knuckleballs and Reggie this morning, and Reggie was like, the hell are you doing right now? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And th- that just made sense because he wasn't a, Reggie wasn't around whenever we, we kind of got that off the ground. But now Bobby's doing it all the time. And Reggie, did you ever actually knuckle balls him back? Nope. I just don't like doing what Bobby wants me to do. Okay. He needs right. that energy reflected to him as he often gives it off to the world. <laughs> Will you do what I would like you to do? Right I'll now? do my best. Okay. I often fail, as you know. There's Parker. A 32 yard run. And this one's going for longer than that. Inside the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, 6 for Stoke Adam Rank put a story up on NFL.com that was undoubtedly edited by Caitlin Editor and then was published by Stephen Publisher. I think those are made up last names. Adam Rank is a real name. He put up the best revenge games and one of them was the Cowboys against the Commanders. And I get it because they're like, we're going to take several of your defensive players and your defensive coordinator that some people wanted to leave, wanted to leave anyway. Do you view that as a revenge game? Or are you like, eh, beat up on a not good team, hopefully? Is it a revenge game for the not good team? Oh, is it a revenge game for Dan Quinn? Maybe so. Oh. Yeah, maybe it's a revenge game for them now. Okay. Now they get, get their that. revenge. But the reason why I played the Saquon Barkley one... I. Are y'all intrigued to see how he does in Philadelphia? Or I guess the better question I have is, how do you think he will do in Philadelphia? Because I'm sure we want the Eagles to fail. They were very good at running the ball in previous in the previous two years. That was one of the reasons they got to the Super Bowl. That was one of the things they hung their hat on last year. DeAndre Swift steps in and just looks phenomenal. And you're like, whoa, what's going on here? I think he's going to be just fine. I don't. I'm curious if they use him to the max of his ability. And that is, like, he can do so many different things. I also am curious if he's still that guy. Because the injuries have started. I mean, they've taken a little bit of a toll on him. The guy that I watched in college could do everything, you know? And so I'm, I am kind of curious if they could take full advantage of that. The other thing that really I have no clue about is, what kind of locker room guy is he? Didn't seem like there were too many problems in the Giants locker room. But that locker room in Philadelphia looked like it was falling apart. What? They said it was fine. It, Kevin. A.J. Brown said it was they fine. They can say what they want. We watched the whole thing happen right before our eyes. So I I just don't know if he can help bring that locker room back together. It's going to take some work. I think they're in trouble because they haven't said they're all in. Um, <laughs> that being said. How did I not know that's what you were about to say? How's uh, the replacement going for Jason Kelsey? Help me out. Remind me on what their offensive line is going to be to help Saquon Barkley be great. So you're thinking that could be a huge yeah, potential if, detriment. To if him. it sounds, you know, listening to Broadus, when you have a center like Kelsey, there's a lot of positive things you can do in the middle in the of draft, the field. You would assume. And so, yeah, so they're ahead of the Cowboys. I guess they'll try to take the top center in the draft. It doesn't mean that that center out of college is going to immediately be good. Maybe he will. Then, was it two years ago the Chiefs took a center and it was just, he was great? Was it only start? two years ago? Was it last year he was a rookie or the young Creed Humphrey? Yeah. Is he? Was two he years his, ago. Two years ago. So he's, maybe they get the next Creed Humphrey and they just keep rolling. 
I don't know how many years he's been. I thought it was more than two, but sorry. But I, I get but your point. They need to draft a Creed Humphrey. They do have. You're you're probably right. They do have Cam Jurgens. Uh, lotion. We all look, no. It's not lotion. Um, he might be an art, lotion air. You don't know. Maybe yeah. You're right. Uh, he was a third, fourth round kind of guy, I believe. And so like, and he's been with them for about three years. So that might be their option to go there. But you're right, Mike. Replacing him is different. He was the brain of that whole offensive line, very much like Travis Frederick. When Travis Frederick was gone, you had a guy that was the hub of all the information across the line, and now everything had to go and be averted to Dak Prescott. Now he's in charge of everything again, whereas you had uh, Travis Frederick calling things at the line saying, hey, you got to check this, got to check that. This is something that's going to be new, and they're going to have to make sure that dude's up to speed for everything. Let's go to the Arizona Cardinals where... Uh, what a fine franchise they're running. Terry McDonough is being awarded $3 million. And it's for the statements the Arizona Cardinals made about Terry McDonough. And they were false and defamatory statements that the team had made to the media about McDonough per the federal court. There's a weird little twist in there because there was another part of the case that they were going through where McDonough also has to pay $45,000 in legal fees back to the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. But I figure if you got awarded $3 million and like depending on how much of that actually comes through, you're like, that's fine. It's kind of like when you pay, when you buy a house and you sell a house and you never really see the money. Yeah. It just kind of is moved around a little bit. There's, and they're like, don't forget about the fees and yeah. all that stuff. And you're like, what? There was a glorious 15 minutes in my life years ago where I was completely debt free. How'd that go? Well, then I signed on to buy the new house and then... Did you feel relieved for 15 yes. minutes? Yes, I did. You knew that you, the debt was coming. You're like, I should just be But you lived in but the for moment. That, for that 15 minutes. Wow. That's was, called living in the moment for real, bro. I'm not usually good at that. But yeah, so good job, Cardinals, by running down somebody in the media with statements that the judge determined, whoops. None of that was true. Or they're saying most of that was true. Let's go to the performance-based pay bumps. Deron Bland is on the list. He got $759,756 in bonus payments nice. this past year. Led the Leading the way, John Simpson, the guard for... The Simpsons. For Baltimore... Got $974,163. He got the most performance bonus pay in the NFL this past That's season. awesome to get bonuses based on your performance. It, I, like, that is a really is. cool thing that they do in the NFL. It is. Let's go from that to... Yeah, it took me a minute to figure it out, Mike. I, I, I definitely eventually what's, figured it what's out. What's crazy is how many touchdowns did he score compared? Wasn't he like the second leading uh, touchdown receiver for you last year, and he only got that much of a bonus? Touchdown receiver. I uh -huh. like that. Mike, how excited are you about the Carson Wentz signing with the Kansas City Chiefs? First, they signed a rugby player. Now they signed Carson Wentz. No, oh, I want Boo back. Shane's oh, Bouchel, Shane's yeah. Shane's in Buffalo, I think. So are you just holding out hope that that was just going to come back together somehow? Yeah. Carson Wentz. I, I didn't make the signing. I think Carson Wentz is just complete proof that you never know the mentality of a quarterback that you're trying to draft. Like, you can't figure that out. You can't figure out the intangibles that that guy has until you see it actually take place on the field. And then, Corey, I hope this is not going to upset you. Because it's going to bring up one specific memory, I know. Uh oh. But did you see Dion? Uh, did you see Jerry Rice talking with Keyshawn? Said that Dion Sanders was the best matchup, the toughest matchup he ever had in his Hall of Fame career. He said the battles we had back in the day, even when he was with Atlanta and then also with Dallas, and it was mano a mano. Okay, listen, I do remember seeing. Was it? It was Deion Sanders went over to the sideline and picked up the bleacher and threw it down and everything. I can't remember. I think it was Michael Irvin that ticked him off. Yeah, go watch. Go back and watch that video. He picked up, not the bleachers, the bench. 
He picked it up and like threw it. The strongest. It bent. <laughs> like what's that movie with Wolverine where the guy picks up RFK? <laughs> yeah, Wolverine. the whole scene. The mind dude. X Men. Yeah, no, it class? wasn't like that. Yeah. No, yeah. But go find that video because it's fun. But and I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to draw me off sides here. But trying Kevin, to make sure you don't get drawn off sides. You just said I know this is gonna make you mad. That's why I'm gonna say it. Warning. And so, but that has nothing to do. Deion Sanders was a was the best cornerback ever. That's a reality. On one play, did he did he hold? On one play, did he pass interfere? Yes. Did the NFL miss it completely? Yes. Did that keep the Cowboys from having three consecutive, maybe four consecutive Super Bowls? Absolutely, it did. It was their fault. They would have wiped the Chargers off the planet in that next in that next game. Fact. Do you think there was part of a problem that Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson couldn't get along, so he just hired a friend who would watch the football games for four years? Do you think that was an issue with those? I mean, they teams? got back to that game. Yeah, by themselves. Yeah, and then somehow by themselves they didn't win it. It goes to show. Give the hey, take the hey, blame them too for losing that game. Then the players, yeah, yeah, if they're going to only give them the credit for winning that next Super Bowl. They had to coach the team and everything. Then they, then they should have put together their own practice schedule. Should have been better. Make sure the extra help that watched the games on the side didn't bring guns onto the plane. <laughs> We're the KNC that's, masterpiece. That's not, that's not not true. Right that here. Is, that's one of them, Kevin. I don't disagree. I hate that one. <laughs> then I agree. Just say, just say I, agree. I agree. God. <laughs> Maybe they don't agree. They just don't disagree. Well, there's always next year. Coming up now. Oh, no. Coming up next. It appears the NBA MVP oh. race is down to two. That's the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> Shut up, Mike. Oh. <laughs> Who has the better resume? I love the Cowboys. Luka... Or Jokic. We'll do that next right here on the fan. Sports.
About to be masterpieced, K and C style, right here on 105.3 The Fan. 105.3 The Fan. It appears as though the NBA MVP is down to two people. You have candidate number one, Shea. Cut, cut number twelve here. Ooh, I think he might be. Oh, good. Let's go to cut number twelve. Here is candidate number one. Right side Porter, head fake on the three, back over to Jokic. Jokic hands it off to Holiday, back over to Jokic, and a deep three. Yes! Oh, Nikola Jokic from way downtown. Finally giving Michael Porter Jr. his credit, Kevin. I like it. Yeah, he's up for MVP. Jamal Murray. So you're saying it was the other guy in the highlight? I heard him say Porter. Nikola, Nikola, Jokic. So Giannis is five. Tatum's four, Shea's three, but there's starting to be a big gap between one and two. And that would mean it's down to Jokic and cut number 13, Luka. But not the Lone Ranger in that regard. Luka has done this to many teams this year. What? I'm doing what? to leave, man. <laughs> no, you got to stay. <laughs> you need to stay. You don't want to leave. Was that, you, the, was that the 20 yeah. foot? Finger roll what? thing. When you make Mark Followell do what he just did what? when he screams what what like that, like you've done something, you've done something good because he doesn't act shocked for no reason. What? Yeah, um, that is like that is a genuine, like I can't believe what just happened before my eyes. From the seven one five, you mean Ann Shagel, just Alexander Luka <laughs> in this list? Well, I don't make the betting odds. Yet. Have you looked, by the way, I saw a thing on Twitter yesterday where somebody showed a video of uh, Shea's three-pointer to win the game in New York. It was awesome. And it was it was great in a, like a 19-point effort by him. And he's played a lot of good defense, His but his like assist and rebound numbers are a lot lower than these than the other two candidates. But then I went and I don't do this typically, but I went to read the comments. And every okay. comment, because it the the tweet said something along the lines of Shea's MVP, you know it. And then everything under there was it's like... Mostly just Kendrick Perkins. It, no, it, but it was like, it can, he can't be. Because Luka and, and Jokic are there. Like Every yeah. person was like, are you forgetting about Luka? Are you forgetting about this? And I was very surprised to see how many people were all about Luka on this too. Like They're starting to see it. Last week, Kevin, during the combo platter, I said, Luka's winning the MVP. Ooh. That was my that was I my remember statement. that. And you should put some money down on that. I should have put money on it then because right now I think it's five to one. Yeah. Uh, sorry to, to break your. I no, no, no. But you uh, have to put eight down to win one dollar on Jokic. Is that right? It's it, it's closer to about seven, seven now, okay. but still it's minus seven hundred for Jokic plus five hundred give or take. Uh-huh. There's a little variances along the way for Luca. So what Scoot's odds right now? <laughs> Did he score his hundred last night or no? I, you know what? I didn't look at that box score. Okay, I assume I'll go, I'll we would have heard out. about it <laughs> if that was, in fact, the case. I don't know. You had women's basketball, Rangers. There's a lot going on. Do you think they would have just left out the two Henderson game. scored 100? There was a, or a, there was there was no a hitter thrown last night. Yeah, the earliest yeah. no hitter ever. There's no way. Yeah. So there was two. It was Nobody too knows what old Scooty did. All right. I'm going to assume he did not <laughs> score 100 points. So Jokic is still a very sizable favorite. Over Luca, I wanted to kind of dive into the numbers and the circumstances and see if you guys think that is justified or if you think perhaps Luca should be the favorite. Now, the biggest thing that I think is working in Luca's favor, you look at where the team was at this point last year. Compared to last year, the Nuggets are one game better than they were last year at this point. Wow. The Mavericks actually impressive. are nine games better really? than they were In at your this face, point. They stunk at this point last year. They, abso- like they, absolutely. they had given up. Did they lose their last 20 straight? I feel like they did. But they 
they looked like they had just said, okay, we don't know how to play basketball anymore. I was on radio this morning in San Francisco. What? Big time. Um, And they're like, how surprised are you that Kyrie and Luka are working together? And I said, surprise is maybe too strong of a word, but they really are working great together. And I still think for a lot of the national media or following your own team, they're like, this can't work and it won't work. It is working. I don't know if it's going to work the whole three-year yeah. contract of Kyrie. I, I don't know. But it's really working right now. And it's been working really most of all season. And that's – sometimes I wonder – and I, I know Jamal Murray is an excellent, excellent basketball player. I do kind of wonder sometimes if Kyrie and his greatness siphons off some folks from saying, Luke is the MVP as opposed to, I think he's he like shouldn't. top five. I don't think he should. Well, I will say this, which can be tough. Kyrie's making some really big fourth quarter clutch. That is up. true. And, and and so I don't know. So I don't know if like, let's just say tonight's game. I don't think it's nationally televised, is it? Because it's a makeup game because of the death of yeah, the I, Golden State Warriors. It is on TNT, I believe. Oh, it's on, okay. So that being said, if let's just say Kyrie, the last two minutes, hits two big shots to win this game. I do think that people won't dog on Luca, but Luca kind of—I don't want him to. I don't care who makes it, to be honest. But it kind of for MVP on a nationally televised game would have to be like Luca. Really, the last two major possessions did these awesome things, if that makes sense, yeah, yeah, to no, try to catch saying. Jokic. Because obviously, there is a big discrepancy in the two guys and where their odds are at. And some people we just need, like you said, Kendrick Perkins to go on and say, Jokic doesn't deserve it. This dude does, but he, that, wouldn't, they he, don't. he wouldn't think, be voting for Luca. I think yeah. he would. I actually do think he would. Root for, he loves Luca. So I mean, he, changed, he really legitimately he does his from last year. I don't know. All right. Let's go to some of the other numbers. Cause people might be like, well, how's Luca not first. He's had an incredible season. Absolutely. He's averaging 34 points a game. Jokic. 26 points a game. So advantage Luca in a pretty big way. Assists per game, 9.8 for Luca, 9 for Jokic. So still advantage Luca, though really close. But this oddly in a way feels like an advantage for Jokic just because a Luca's razzle dazzle passer. Everybody knows how great he is. And then you're like, oh, but Jokic is third in the league in assists and Luca's second. That. Mm-hmm. That Which is feels behind, like an odd advantage for Jokic. It's behind Luka, though. That is true. Yeah, so. It's so tough because I think before the trades, for the most part, Luka's not in this conversation at all. And so how much, I would wonder, if you're voting, this is my question to you, Kevin and Corey, how much do you give that for about the first 45 games, there wasn't really a contest between Jokic yeah. and Luka? And now for the last, I don't know, 30 games, uh-huh. you would say Luka has maybe outplayed Jokic. I'm just throwing it out there. So how much do you take a whole season and go for the first half approximately this wasn't competitive? So you're you're telling me, and I don't mean it as the joke you're telling me, but you're basically saying the team that was the championship team last year was playing like a better team than Luka's team this year. Because Luka's numbers were still there. He All his numbers were there, but they weren't winning. So you're saying that the championship team was a better team. And that's the truth. But then finally, Luca gets a better team and he's playing better. I guess so that, like it, it's the yeah. it is that point of you have to admit that you, that Jokic had a better team from the championship all the way to this point until Luca got a, got better players around him. I, I agree with that. Luca was dragging players with him to get to things. I guess the counter would then still be the Nuggets are still way better than the Mavericks. I right? guess what, what I would look at real quick or that Jamal Murray was out. There's a few things. Luca was still complaining a lot. Luca was not trying on defense quite a bit. And now he is. Like all of those things, like this is what makes him now the MVP of the NBA right now, I think. Yep. And and it's tough Look to say better than Jokic. But I'm like, man, like if he does this for a whole season, yeah. he'll blow away the competition. Like it won't even be it'll get to I hate saying this, it'll kind of get to the LeBron Michael Jordan status. If he engages for approximately, let's say, 70 of the 82 games, I guess he, he's going to miss some games. There's going to be sit-out, injury, whatever. But like, if he was like this, these last about 
15 games. If he did this for a whole season, and I'm not saying has to put up these exact numbers, but like this engaged defensively, this engaged as a teammate, uh-huh. it's a blowout. It's he would be minus 1500 right now to win the MVP if he takes this energy, this attitude, this focus throughout a season. Yeah, and I, I, and I don't win know. 60 games. I don't know how difficult it was to have that energy and all that whenever he knew he had inferior players with him. I mean, like... I could see that. His frustration goes up a lot very quickly, When Danny Green was telling... Yes, because he was like, I can't play with this. Uh, When Danny Green's telling us, look, uh, Cleaver and uh, and Dwight Powell, those are good players. We all were like, all right, we are being nice. I appreciate that and everything, but like, you don't have to say that. We know what we see. And we see the difference right now. I mean, when Derek Lively stepped on the court, we saw the difference immediately. But Derek Lively, A, wasn't on the court long enough uh, because of minutes and fouls. And he got injured frequently. So there were lots of problems there. I will also go to this. When the last time that Denver and Dallas matched up, what was the outcome of that game? Mavericks it was a win. win, yeah. Great Sunday win, yeah. right? And after the game, and I think both teams were trying in that game. For sure. It didn't look like a game where D- Denver was just like, we just rolled the ball out there, guys. After that game, Luka, or uh, Jokic looks into the microphone and says, he's the MVP. I mean, like, he he said that dude right there is. He's, he probably just doesn't want a press conference and have to deal <laughs> probably, with it. Probably I can doesn't. see that, he too. Probably doesn't. Yeah. I just, I, and, and I'm homering the crap out of this for sure. I don't but think I also so, though. Think that I also think there are plenty of legit, there's plenty of legitimacy behind this. And, and first of all, I just want to, anybody who says that, I don't think you're homering it up because he would finish at worst third mm-hmm. and probably second for MVP. So I think that discounts any idea of homering it up. I just think I'm surprised in my mind, the odds should be closer to, let's say, even Jokic minus 300 and Luka plus 250. Like, kind of cut them in half for both sides because I keep thinking about it in terms of a race where Luka has definitely gained ground, but like you were saying, that lead was so overwhelming mm-hmm. that he is going to finish with a crazy like backstretch time or whatever if you're using the race idea, but he's still going to lose. And I know if you want to go to player efficiency rating, Luka is fourth in the league with a 28-3, whereas Jokic is number one with a 30.9. And Giannis, Shea, the usual suspects are all in the mix. So you get a good idea of like where these candidates come from. In the 806, watching Jokic play is like watching a Golden Girls marathon. It's entertaining, but they move so slow, it seems like you're watching it at half speed. <laughs> I think that's, I like, I know this is going to sound weird because I'm not saying that Jokic is consistently trick effing people, like Mike's coach said, but there are times when he moves at a pace and then all of a sudden does this thing really quick that you're like, well, crap, I didn't know he could do yeah, that. Yeah, no, it happens. We're the KNC masterpiece. Yeah, these two MVP candidates are really proving speed is necessary in the <laughs> NBA wrong. <laughs> like, uh, Burnsy is like, hey, you don't have to be fast or be able to jump to it's be like, good in this league. Yeah, be a good passer. You make it happen. Coming Pass around up the next, room. we will talk with Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochi right here on 105 Through the Fan.
this segment of the KNC Masterpiece is the Expressway, brought to you by On Time Experts. 12 on the shot clock, hands off to Clark. As we approach five minutes, step back, right wing three. You've got to be kidding me. Caitlin Clark grabs her chest, looks to the crowd, matches a career high with nine threes. She's got 37. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan, hoping to talk with Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochy momentarily. But last night, I'm really excited to see what the ratings come out with. You had Elite Eight games for the women, Iowa against LSU. Look, it got billed as Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese. I know there is far more that goes into it than just that, but those two were the clear focal points of this thing. And early on, it looked like Iowa might be able to run away with this thing. Clearly, LSU made a massive push before the first quarter was even over. But this turned out to be an entertaining game. And Corey, I know it caught your attention. Yeah, I I was I was interested because it was an entertaining game last year. There was a lot of drama after the game last year, right? Like after that game was over with, there was the conversation about Angel Reese and her uh you can't see me and all that stuff. How good is Caitlin Clark? How good is this LSU team? Looked like this LSU team reloaded or loaded up more whenever they added Haley uh to the to the roster and you're like, "Oh, all right, so this is the rematch. So last night, getting involved and watching that, you said it earlier to me, and I agreed with you. I thought that LSU was done right out of the gate because Kaitlyn Clark looked like she had, and the rest of the team all looked like they were ready for the moment too. An abused defense, and they went after it, man. And the Reese goes to the sideline, and she's talking to uh, to Mulkey, and she yells at her, "Stop taking bad shots." And they were. Good LSU literally, they were really legitimately taking poor shots early in that game. And they said, well, let's feed it to, to Reese. And they started doing that. And they mounted a comeback. Now, Kevin, when you talk about what I know of the physicality of women's sport, they were very lenient when it came to fouls uh, oh, last night. A slow whistle there. Huh? Was, I felt like they were just like, hey, get after it, baby. <laughs> just go ahead and just do your thing. And and Reese was after it. I thought both sides got very physical throughout the game. My question was, because of the frenetic pace that both teams were running at, I was curious if Caitlin Clark would fade late in that game because of it. But I thought they did a pretty good job, and she did a pretty good job of, hey, we're going to go fast, get our points, and once they establish a lead, then they said, all right, we're going to walk it up the court. Caitlin Clark set a career record for most three-pointers uh, for your career. I guess I already said that. In the NCAA tournament, UConn won in the other game against USC. I kind of want to know, I, I get it, these are big games, and, and I think the rating for that LSU-Iowa game in particular is going to be a monster, but... Are we all just having fun watching this, knowing that they're all playing for second place? Because on the other side, and Iowa and UConn are going to play each other Friday night in the Final Four. But then there's South Carolina. Uh huh. South Carolina is thirty six and zero. Is that good? I yes. Yeah. Okay. If you like to win in the last two years, they have just been on a freaking roll. They're eleven and a half point favorites over NC State in their Final Four game. Are we all just hyping this up and you're like, well, it's for a second place. I don't know how good they are. Like, comparatively. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I haven't watched this. I'm not going to act I, like I've watched a single game this year. All right. The only, South Carolina? You haven't seen South Carolina play? Women's basketball? Not a single time, oh, Mike. Well, neither have I. Okay. And so I'm not going to act like I know better, Kevin. Sure. The only person, the only person in. This building in this world, this world that knows is not Reggie, and he's currently world. on the he's currently working the phones right now, so he's very busy. I'm, I'm not going to say the world. Are they are they that much better? Because I, th I think so. It seems like LSU, Iowa, and UConn get all the love. Yeah, I mean, just every drop I, of love that I there think is that's changed. They get all South that. Carolina has really become like one of those top contending okay. teams. Okay, I again have I not been paying attention, attention enough yeah, to even have a I clue do. about that. It just feels like the names that I hear are Paige, uh, Caitlin, 
Angel and Haley. Like those are the only names I know. From the, and and now after last night, because I thought she was really good, was Juju Watkins. Well, is it Van Lith? Since you mentioned Haley, she's uh, gotten a lot of meme treatment over the last twenty four hours. From the six eight two, my men's bracket sucked, but the first women's bracket I ever filled out was in the top zero point seven percentile in the country. Is that that seems impressive? That is freaking. Awesome. That is that is pretty impressive for sure. Absolutely, that is very impressive. Also, if you like, if you wanted drama though, Kevin, I thought you got good drama out of last night. I, like that, I think that that's that's something you're looking for for entertainment. Right now on the line, we bring to you Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochi. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are we doing, fellas? We're doing pretty well. I know the big win last night, but is it fair to say that felt overshadowed? by the Josh Young injury, or is that a too dramatic way to put it? Yeah, it was uh, really tough to lose Josh. I mean, it's hard to enjoy a win when you lose one of your guys, and especially Josh with all he's been through. Now he's going to have to go through it again, but he'll be back. Yeah, we talked to him after the game and say, yeah, you'll be back. It's just no bump in the road, unfortunately. Meanwhile, uh, we got a whole ground. Uh, you know, we got some guys that can fill in and until he gets back, and that's how we have to look at it. We did it all last year. No reason why we can't this year. Is it too early to say, hey, we think it's going to be eight weeks, or do you guys have a general time frame of return for Josh Young? <clears throat> I'd say closer to six weeks is what we're kind of looking at. When you don't know, no, don't know exactly. It is his throwing arm, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing six weeks. You mentioned talking to Josh Young last night after the injury. How down was he? Because I'm, I'm sure last year I remember the thumb and and then the calf to start spring training. It just seems like he's just really unlucky with these things lately. Yeah, well, we call it buzzard luck. That's how bad it's been, and I, I think, uh, you know, he. He was probably as good as he uh, could be. I mean, he, he didn't say anything. That's how down he was. He was just so quiet. He's a guy that talks all the time. And, uh, you know, just uh, he's got so much energy. But this one got him, I think. And I think mainly because he, he got hurt the first day of spring training. And he just got back here. He's got to go through another rehab. But like I said, you you got to put it behind you. There's nothing uh, we can do about it. Nothing he can do about it. Just. Uh, keep working, and uh, he'll be back here uh, six in six weeks or so. It's a long season, and knock on wood, he'll stay healthy uh, the rest of the way. Hey, Boach, I'm I'm pretty pissed off about this Josh Young thing still, uh, oh. and I kind of might need a little guidance from you here because I felt after hitting two guys, you don't need the the opportunity to hit a third guy in a row. But do I do do I need to be talked off the ledge, or should I still be kind of ticked off about how things went last night? Well, I mean, one guy was hit with a breaking ball in the foot. Uh, uh, he was trying to throw a two-seamer, and, uh, you know, Josh did swing at the pitch. So, yeah, I know everybody's going to look at, well, you know, is this done on purpose? Uh, do you like it? No, nobody likes it. Uh, Base is loaded. There's still somewhat in the game uh, when Dolly got hit. Um, but, hey. Fortunately, uh, you know we're we're going to hit guys too. It's not always on purpose. Uh, uh, do do you uh, uh, like to see it? No, well, no, nobody does. But uh, you know, it's it's a case where you try to read everything by what the situation is. And uh, I don't think Josh thought he was thrown at him. I think Dolly was. Dolly was upset. Nobody likes to get hit, but. You know, Smitty got hit in the foot with bases loaded. Uh, not Smitty, but uh, Carter. So, you know, you take that. Well, thank you. You did You did talk me off the ledge there, Bochi. Thank you very much. I, I was kind of curious your thought on the play last night from Wyatt Langford wheeling around second base, uh, second base, wheeling around third and saying, hey, nobody's there. I'm going for it right now. What, are your, what do you think about that? I loved it. I loved it. It's an exciting play. They, they just got him. He's a good base runner, and plus he's got speed to go with that. And he's had great instincts, uh, and he read it right. You know, pitcher did a good job of rebounding because he should have been there originally. Kind of reminded me of the play where 
they scored on the run where Leclerc wasn't covering home plate. He just couldn't get there in time, but their guy did. And, uh, we, you know, looked at it uh, in case we had to review it, but they got him. Uh, but you, you have to love how aggressive he was. It seems like, Boach, you've been aggressive. It's only four games, but Carter yesterday was able to steal second base. We saw Dolis uh, at home steal. It looks like you guys are going to be a little bit more aggressive on the bases. And I remember last year you talking to us in late August when we asked about You said, well, my team isn't maybe constructed to run as much as, you know, possibly you, you'd want them to run. Yeah, and, and what I'm talking about as much as anything is, you don't want the diminishing return effect where you're getting thrown out in a big situation uh, or with a really good hitter up, but they're going to give it to you. And one thing uh, we've talked about is, hey, we're going to run if you know if it makes sense. Uh, uh, now, the guy out there is he's throwing the ball to home plate in 1.1 seconds. Well, we're, we're not going to run, uh, but you know we we do uh, pick our spots. Uh, we do have speed. Uh, Including Langford, he can still a base. Uh, he's taken off two or three times uh, already this season. Uh, Carter can get you a base. Uh, uh, so it's all about being smart. And you look at them last night, they tried to still third there. We threw them out. That's a huge play. I mean, big out there. Uh, the guy walked. It, it would it would, uh, it would, have been first and third. And uh, But Jonah made a great throw, threw him out. That's what I'd like to stay away from. Now, since Evan Carter got brought up, I know early in the season you'll see all kinds of wacky numbers and everything, but his really stands out to me, and it shows his amazing plate discipline. He hasn't got a hit yet, but his on-base percentage is almost 400. That is wild to me. really is. It just shows you his discipline at the plate. I think he's getting a little tired of walking once a few hits. So, <laughs> uh, when, you know, and it's going to be human nature, especially for a young kid like this, to start getting a little uh, antsy to get that first hit. So I think uh, as long as he stays uh, within himself, draws his walk, that works. He's getting on base. He's, uh, he's giving the speed. He's you know, still a base. Keeps the, you know, the rallies going. So I, I don't want him to start pressing to the point where he feels like he's got to start getting hits. They will come to stay uh, you know, with the game plan going up there and lay off the bad pitches, get a good pitch to hit, and uh, the hits will come. But sometimes when you don't have one to start the season, it's just magnified. You just, you know, you're looking up there and a bat average is zero. But, you know, if you look at our park, though, they go more on base. So that, that's got to make them feel a little bit better. This was a very well-disciplined lineup last year, third in the American League, or excuse me, third in Major League Baseball in walks. And early, y'all have been drawing a bunch of walks. What have you thought about the early look of plate discipline from the lineup? I love it. Love it. Uh, you know, these guys are not going out, uh, outside the strike zone. They're doing what we want them to do. Uh, you know, try to get a good pitch, but not, you know, just take the walk. You know, the guy next to you, you got to believe in him and, uh, you know, he'll do something. If not, he walks. And you saw what happened last night. The first two guys, uh, we get uh, we get on base uh, via walk and they make a mistake. Josh hits a three-run homer. So uh, we had three runs with one hit. That works. So uh, let's stay with this approach and uh, take our bases when they give them to us. The uh, Dayton Dunning, I, I was I had really high hopes for him this year, Boach, and he looked really good last night. That seventh inning, kind of, I'm I'm trying to figure out what your thoughts are uh, into a seventh inning with him or where he is there. But what were you feeling from Dunning's uh, Dunning's outing last night? Yeah, he was good, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, lost his command a little bit at times, but uh, but they had good movement, good sink. Uh, uh, really, uh, I thought he had good breaking ball too. Seventh inning, probably running out of bullets there. Uh, went pretty quick on him, but uh, you know we were trying to get him as far as we could because of our uh, bullpen situation. You tried to, we're trying to stay away from using all our guys there late in the ball game. So it was good that Robertson went in there, went inning plus, and then when we broke the game open, Berkey finished it. So we're getting our bullpen back in order, and that's because of Dane Dunning. Do you think? Do you think with Dane that there is more room for growth there, and there is more of a of a distance to go with that with him? Like he can be able to finish those games out. 
Oh, I think there's always room for growth. Uh, uh, you know, especially with the stamina part of it early in the season. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty good that he got us in the seventh inning. Uh, I did get a couple of balls up, but uh, the you know second home run actually, uh, you know, that he wanted to try to beat him there, but uh, you give him credit. But I think Dane's a guy uh, eventually can give you 200 innings. I, that's how good I think he can be, which is a rare deal. But it's something you need from, uh, I usually say, at least from one starter, if not two, <clears throat> you know, to keep the bullpen in order. And I think he can be one of those guys. Boch, LeClerc hasn't been able to execute his pitches consistently yet in his just two appearances. Is it a mechanical thing? Was it Was it something mechanical that's causing him to be a little bit erratic to start the year? Yeah, we've been talking about him, I think, a little bit, especially on the arm side. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you try to make that perfect pitch too much. So that's that's a mindset. And, you know, I, I'd like to see him just attack the zone a little bit more. But when you're missing, uh, like he was on, on the arm side now, you could be uh, just opening up a little too much. But ironically, uh, you know, he's fine on the other side. And so these are things that uh, – you know, Mike and I are talking about, and I think it's only going to get better with him. But, you know, we've got to stay behind him. Uh, he's going to be one of our guys, and um, it's good that he had the day off yesterday. So he should be fine to go today. And, you know, he's a pro, and he's got to adjust now. He's, he's seen what happened. The, you know, what gets him in trouble is I, sometimes I think he drops his guard with two outs. And, you, end up, you know, he ends up walking a guy or two, you know, to, to stay on the attack here. Do you watch the body language then too? Because sometimes it seems like that really hurts him. Yeah, you know, he's pretty calm out there, but uh, I think sometimes he does get frustrated when he doesn't hit a spot, and he, he's tough on himself. I'll say that, and uh, so that that is an area I think he's he's got to get a little better, at, which we all do when things aren't sure. going right, sure. and don't start uh, compounding the problem. Marcus Simeon told Emily Jones the other day that he could see the Rangers potentially getting together every 10 years to celebrate the World Series. And I know you guys are no doubt going to focus on the Rays and focus on the season and try to put last year in the past. But I, I was hoping you could give us a little something. What do you think when you hear something like that, that, hey, 10 years from then and then 10 more years, they all want to keep getting together? I tell you, that's that's what you love about you know what you know what just happened is you know these are lifetime memories and you get to get back together and have that reunion and uh, talk about the season and you know catching up with everybody uh uh you know 10 years from now i'll, I'll be up there pretty good knock on wood i i get to make that one <laughs> uh, but oh but to be serious yeah that's what you you love is how close these guys are and uh and what a tight knit group and and for Marcus to mention that, I think it shows you, uh, uh, yeah, this this is a team, and uh, these guys care about each other, and and they uh, are looking forward to down the road, you know, having that celebration. Uh, uh, Boach, last question for you: Did we screw up your fishing today? And when you're in Tampa, what are we fishing for? Yeah, I, I didn't go out. I did walk around the docks. I was hoping to find a little uh, a little boat with the captain that. Where to make uh, some money, you know, just run me out there for a couple hours. But yeah, it's mostly sailboats. I uh, did find one, but he was taking his family out. Uh, uh, so I told Mike Maddox if I find somebody, I'd give him a call. And, uh, but I, I did walk around uh, two days in a row early in the morning and uh, I started to get some bait and fish. Uh, I, I was going to fish on the pier last night, but we had to huddle up after uh, Young's uh, injury. And, so I got back late. And, uh, I couldn't do it. But what you catch here: struggle trout, snook, uh, redfish. It's it's uh, really great fishing in this area, especially this time of year. It's not too hot yet. It's enjoyable to be out there. Uh, I actually wish we had a day off here, or I, I would have hired a guide. That's the way to do it. Dude. That is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. I hope Josh Young knows that all the Metroplex is uh, rooting for him to get back ASAP and that mentally he feels good as well. So thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you. Yeah, he's back there. And uh, I don't know if he's listening, but uh, that's you know very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, he, it's, it's tough for the kid, but he'll 
and yeah, you know, I keep saying it. He'll he'll be back helping us before long. Thank you very much, good sir. We'll catch you next week. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye, Boach. There you go, Bruce Bye. Bochi, right here on 105.3 The Fan. One of the big things that he said, obviously, we got Fishing, at the very yeah. beginning. It, yes. Okay. But Josh Young maybe being closer to six weeks yeah. of a recovery as opposed to maybe, I was thinking, eight or nine weeks. Yeah, last night somebody asked me, and I was like, I don't know, two to three months. And uh, uh, that was kind of where yeah. I gauged that because I was looking, and it said anywhere from six to 12 weeks for this injury to go. And I was like, that seems about kind of the same, the right span there, but man, I'd love to be on a boat fishing with Bochi. That would be the best fishing experience I could possibly think of, except for maybe with Lucius. Like that'd be awesome. That's too. a good point. And then we will transition with that into Mike likes it. Okay. So my first Mike likes it, Jared Sandler's here. I'm going to bring him in in a minute. Cause I just remembered what I was looking at last night. So if you go to the NBA schedule right now, Yes, the Mavericks play tonight against Golden State. That's a big game. But I had this question for you as soon as this pulls up because I was looking at this one going, who am I supposed to root for tonight? Here it is. The Clippers at Sacramento. So I want to ask this question to you guys. Do you want Sacramento to lose so it pushes them further away and they're in the play-in a little bit more, and it helps you out a little bit. Or do you want the Clippers to lose, Sacramento to win, and it pushes you maybe closer to the four seed? I want I, a I home game. Like, I want the Clippers to lose. I want home okay, series. Okay, so that's, it's easy for you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was just thinking about that's that That's probably going, the tougher path, but I it's still choose it. It's not easy, and that's weird because you always like the road of least you resistance. Know, the in tougher the... path to jump over oh, okay. the Clippers than to stave off Sacramento, but I think you got a real shot. It's not an easy uh, answer for me, though, Mike, because I do yeah. want to see Sacramento go further away. Yeah, because if obviously the Clippers win, and let's just the Ma this is a tough game for the Mavericks tonight. Mm -hmm. The schedule did them no favors. It's unfortunate that they're in Golden State tonight. This was not scheduled yeah, to do right. it this way. But this is one where if the Mavericks look tired tonight, I totally get it. And then, in fact, they play Thursday here. So after going from Sacramento to Houston to San Francisco, then they're going to Dallas with just a day off and then playing Atlanta. Hopefully Atlanta. On a back to back against Golden State after that. Yeah. On so, Friday. So this is a really tough part of the schedule based off of having to have this extra game thrown in there. So I was just wondering, I was looking at that non-Dallas game going, gosh, would it be better for just Sacramento to lose and you get pushed a little bit further away from that play-in situation? And I do get that. Like, I, I won't argue against that. I just, I'm going to go okay. with Clippers. So here's my next topic. And this is me in somewhat collecting cards. And to be honest, I don't have any Corey Seager rookie cards. And I'm just, I'm loving watching him play. Obviously, he will will be in love with Corey Seager the rest of our lives yes. because of what he did in 2023 for the Texas Rangers. And he's off to a great start this year. And he's not even supposed to really be playing. He wasn't supposed to be back until like mid to late April. And at this point now with Josh Young's injury, thank yeah. God he is back and, and playing at such a high level. My question to you is, is Corey Seager a future Hall of Famer? I think he I, is. I think and so. So I was looking at this. So yeah, two World Series under and, his belt. And Sandler's here too, so he can he can talk about this. And I'll tell you a conversation me and Jared had very it was like at the start of Bannister's career. So we're looking at 2015. So before 2015, I believe Sandler and I had a conversation about Adrian Beltre. And I, I might have been a little bit before that, but I just remember I didn't really think, and maybe it was 2011 when Beltre was coming here, and I was like, I don't think Beltre's a Hall of Famer. And Sandler was like, "You're de he's definitely a Hall of Famer. And then through his Ranger career, obviously it became very easy that yeah. he was a Hall of Famer. Right. But I just remember at some point, either early in his Ranger career or right before he signed here, I was like, I don't think Beltre's a Hall of Famer. And now it's obviously without question he was, but... I'm looking at Corey Seager. I'm going to bring this up and then let you guys discuss. To me, and I love Barry Larkin. He was part of the Nationals organization when I was there. Great person. Great guy. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a 12-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove winner, nine-time nine time Silver Slugger. He won an MVP in 1995. 
and he won the World Series in 1990. And that's like, to me, I hate saying this, that's the bottom line shortstop in the Hall of Fame. Is like Barry Larkin out of all the shortstops in the Hall of Fame. I hate saying it, at least in recent times. I'm like, that's that's the line. Are you better than Barry Larkin? So I'm going to throw this out to you guys on your thoughts on Corey Seager. Almost 30 years old, hopefully another 6 to 10 years left in his career. I would say that as long as he can stay healthy that he is going to be a Hall of Famer. And I think a part of it is if he can stay healthy, do we consider Alex Rodriguez a shortstop? Yes. And 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 do we even really consider Alex Rodriguez when comparing statistically to players within the position? Because if the answer is yes, then Corey Seager's got a chance to be third all time in home runs by shortstop. If the answer is no... He could be second, if not first. And home runs, obviously, super important. Uh, But I just think that if he can stay healthy uh, and... What? Yeah, you said six more years? Yeah, I, I think it'd be really I mean, really I think tough. he'll play more than six years, but he's turning 30 at the end of this month. And no, I think he has six like, more good, yeah. Yeah, I think he has at least four really good years left in him as long as he doesn't have any major injuries. And I do think that... Guys who play in the playoffs get extra consideration, and he is on a team that, as we sit here right now, appears like a team that is going to have more opportunities in the postseason, not just last year. Even if he doesn't win another World Series MVP, I think performing well in the playoffs is like, you know, that that's uh, not a it's a two two to one conversion rate. Okay, I guess, in the current that was going to be my question outside of the bottom line stats. It's Koufax, Gibson, Reggie, and Seager right. as the only players to win multiple World Series MVPs. That feels like that carries a, not that he doesn't still have work to do, that feels like that carries a considerable amount of weight. Top three for MVP twice already. That, it's it's yeah. a heck of a start. Did you say, I know he he answered the question yes to A-Rod. I say no because he played more of his career at third than short. Were you saying yeah. that would you I, were you saying that he would be third including A-Rod on that list? Third including A-Rod. And then I guess you also have to consider if you want to just look at it objectively, how many home runs a player hit while playing shortstop, then Cal Ripken Jr., who's second on that list, he hit some home runs as a third baseman, yeah. right? I mean, I, I really only remember Cal Ripken as a third baseman just because of my age. Right. So Uh, There's a chance that if you want to look at how many home runs a player hit while playing uh, shortstop, I'm looking it up right now. Because I know that happened with Piazza. When I was with Piazza, he was getting really close to the home run record Mm -hmm. as a catcher. And then there were like Carlton Fisk because he DH some in the American League. He's probably not going to finish his career short, though. That's another Corey? Corey. Corey. Right. No, that's a a fair point. So as we have this conversation, it could be a, a Cal Ripken type thing where, you know, he ends his career elsewhere. But yeah, I. He could play third or first and have a long, a, a lot longer to add sure. to it to stack that up. Well, hey, I, Jason Stark wrote an article. We've talked about this over time uh, with some of the, the the benchmark milestones that we grew up with, right? Five hundred home runs, uh, three hundred wins, you know that 3, sort of thing. Three thousand hits. Three thousand hits. They're really the, those numbers. Like we almost need to recalibrate. But what's the home run number now? Where if a guy hits X home runs in his career. You're like, wow, how do we leave this guy out of the hall? As of fame? a shortstop, 300 to and, me. And he's at 170 in his career. Which I mean, which would mean he's on pace at yeah. 300. Now, will they all be, to Corey's point, will they all be at shortstop? Probably not. Who knows? But he has 1,000 hits, so he probably will get to 2,000 hits. If I look at his career, like he's probably going to be around 2,000 hits, a little over 300 home runs. Right now, he has a 293 career batting average, and he does have to. Your point, he does have the two World Series MVPs. He has the uh, finishes of second place and third third place in MVP as Rookie of the Year. Mike, look, there is a lot more time for Corey Seager's career, but I was just thinking, gosh, he... He's maybe more of a Hall of Famer than I think he is, but he does have to have a a solid five more years of baseball in him. The the thing that hurts him... Oh, I'm sorry, Corey. I'm just looking at his career. 
2018, 26 games. 2021, 95 games. 2020, he was healthy, yeah, but that's a short it. season. So, yeah. so I think, you know, if you just take one of those years and make him healthy for 150 games, I think it might even be a totally different conversation. Kevin, I just want to make sure of something. Do you think Bryce Harper's a Hall of Famer? Because you don't think he's lived up to the hype. Yeah. You don't? Do no, you really not? No. He Bryce, just thinks Bryce the hype Harper was so... absolutely not lived up to the hype. He was described as he was going to be the greatest or one of the greatest players in baseball history. I don't think he's even close. Man. He, he won his two MVPs, but outside of that, he he's not in the top 10 of he, any of those MVP votes. He's probably going to finish with 500 home runs, and he's got a career OPS over 900. Uh, you're right. If, then if how the come standard every was, single year nobody thought he was if the that standard great? Was Babe Ruth. Then. I I don't know who's everybody though. I mean, MVP I, voters. A part of it was he was playing. He played on some really bad teams, and that didn't that so, didn't help. So did A Rod and Trout. I I'm just saying, if we're using that as an example, he has been top ten in MVP twice. Now he happened to win those two. Well, Dale Murphy won two MVPs. No other season. He's been top 10 for MVP. Can I, can I re, let me reestablish where the reason I asked that uh, was because Seeker doesn't have a season MVP. Does that matter? Like he doesn't have a regular season MVP. I, it Does would obviously matter? help tremendously. I don't think it's required. Let me ask okay. you this right. real quick because I know I'm out of time. Because I think you do look at like top threes and top fives. We can carry this over if we want to in well, the C block. Thinking of this question, when it comes to this generation, Mike Trout is going to be a major part of this generation. When we think of, let's say, Frank Thomas, yes. Ken Griffey wow, Jr., yeah. like, and we will start, like, if you get to 10, is Corey Seager, and I'm hoping he does, is Corey Seager going to be one of the 10 names of this generation of baseball? Keep doing what he, keep doing. When he gets his, he's going to get an ALCS uh, MVP this year because Adolis is getting the wow. World okay. Series MVP this year. They're going to alternate yeah. the next two yeah. years. Uh, so he's going to get add another one of those to to the rack. I think you know, a he does have the Dodgers fan base to draw from too. He has lots of people cheering for him there. I don't know if that's going to happen if we beat the Dodgers in the World Series this year. But, they won't get there. Uh, but the um, that, the Dodgers, by the yes, way. Yes, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I should make that clear. The that Dodgers being, will not get there. But that being said, I I I think he ha he does stand a chance to do it, if, especially if he continues to do what he did last year. If that carries over, and as Jared said. Continues it's to stay weird because he was never it. the face of the Dodgers. As the Dodgers, he did win that MVP in the World Series here. But it's like, I'm really hoping that he gets a bigger name. It'd be weird that you get a bigger name playing for the Rangers than the Dodgers. For the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, it's time for the C-Block starring Corey Majors. Kevin, we can carry that over. We can carry more conversation of baseball over if we want to. Or we can talk about why the Florida parking lot is full of $60,000 cars. Next in the fan.
did you and Jared, did y'all hug it out? Did y'all finish up? How this We're, how this go? I know there's been a long a fight. There's we a long history of hatred something. between can the I, two of you. Can I say one thing that I'm curious your thoughts, and then I'll. I'll I love whenever Duke gets eliminated from the tournament to look and, and, yeah. and talk about how overrated they were and how much they underachieved. It's a good time. Kevin, I actually think... No, I'm dead serious. Are you going to say I, they overachieved? I think year? that they either achieved appropriately or overachieved because I was so underwhelmed with them all year long. Fair. Uh, and I was really impressed. I thought they got the most out of out of their roster, and I just wanted to let you know. Okay. I appreciate that. That is usually not the Duke-based conversation that nope. we have. Nope. Look, we don't agree, but I think I'm probably in the minority... When it comes to the Bryce Harper, the thing. Bryce Harper thing. Yeah. And again, I, I was bringing up your point, which I think is a very like unique point to the rest of everybody. Uh, but I was trying to get to the simple fact that the, the regular season MVP stands for something. Sure. So if Bryce Harper has two MVPs on his career, that's huge. It should, that should be something that gets him into the hall of fame. Sure. Like being, I don't know how many dudes have that. Jared probably has that right there in his Jared brain, but how many people have two hall of fames in their, on their, uh, resume? Two MVPs. Well, Chris Arnold's yeah, got two, two hall of fames. Well, yeah, right? well he's or got three. Like three at this point. Two MVPs. Dale Murphy. Yeah, not many. It's, it's not many. Dale Murphy and he's Bryce Harper. And that's it. Pretty much. I think maybe Otani at some point, depending on th how things go. But that's really why I wanted to get that discussion okay. point out. But I think Mike brought up a freaking awesome topic in in the Corey Seager conversation. As we're watching this guy, we didn't. It's not like he was our Dirk. It's not like he was our Tony Romo, where we were watching this dude from the beginning. He was somebody else's. True. And then we got him, but we, I mean, we embraced the crap out of him because we're ho holding on to hope, man. As a Rangers fan base, like, please give us some. We we had this taste of how high it can be, and then it, it just fell off the map for a while. Corey, then, 33 players have had multiple MVPs. But remember, this goes back more than, like, we're including guys like Walter Johnson and Rogers Hornsby, stuff well, like course, that. Of Walter Johnson and Rogers. You'd have to include those Right, guys. but I'm saying, like, it was a different climate then. There were, like, six teams and yeah, five good players. Like, eight players, yeah. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Is, it, kidding. is that the, uh, they were uh, firemen and plumbers yeah, kind of yeah. situation? They were out to, there. I watch Ken Burns' documentaries. It gets some interesting stories. Posing as baseball players. Mike, if you had played in the, the Walter Johnson era, how many careers? You had a heater going. Did you have hit a 74-mile-an-hour fastball? I hope so. <laughs> but Would you have been a hitter and a pitcher I mean, at the same time? First, I was white, so I could have played in the major leagues. Okay. Right? I mean, that's part that's of it. Is, no, is a, that's that fair. Is part of it is, is you fair. you eliminated oh, man. a lot of players at that time <gasps> by the color of their skin. Thank you, Reggie. Um, but yeah, I always you always wonder that. I mean, right now, let's. I could have never played in today's era. It would have been they would have been like, dude, you top off at ninety one occasionally. And you throw at 86. Like, no. Mm -hmm. So I would have definitely had to have been a first baseman. And then in high school as a college prospect, yes, I was really wanted as a first baseman. But my power wasn't there. I was a doubles guy. So then, but then the technology, the weights, the weights that guys, you know, the, the, the pro, the training that guys get now. Like, I don't know. Maybe I could have with, with some weighted ball exercises and different technologies. Maybe I could have been able to, maybe, maybe I could have been able to throw like on average 90, 91 with the training that guys get from, let's just say age 12 years old to 22 years old. I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right. So I saw this note speaking of Duke. Thanks to Jared here, Kevin. Oh, no. NC State is your favorite team. It is not. Because they beat your team, so you have to take on whatever team just beat your team. You have to root for them from there on. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. how it, that's how it will goes. Not. Yeah, they're in the same state and oh, conference. That's, well, actually, yeah. Okay, Reggie, did you were you rooting for Duke against NC State? No comment. <laughs> All right. So I did see this note, though. The improbability of what NC State has done. To go on a run that they're on right now. They had a, before uh, everything started, they had a point zero zero nine seven percent chance of winning nine straight games to make it to the final four. Wow. Point zero zero 
Nine seven. Yeah, because they were not in the tournament until they won the ACC tournament. They weren't going to make it. That's less than one percent. By uh, quite a bit. If you round up, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's less than one percent by a lot. If you round up, it's still not even close. So, like, this is this is a True. wild thing that we're seeing happen right now. And I just, I know you're still frustrated by I your know. team's loss, Kevin. I know you're still hurt uh, by the fact that Coach K is not there anymore, and you got to deal with that oh. guy. Uh, yeah. That's there. What's his name? John John, John Cryer. Uh, that's the actor. He. Uh, but but can you take a little solace in that it's DJ Burns? What are you supposed to? Why do? don't they hire no. Hurley? There's there's a good coach. Bobby Hurley. No, I think it's they're related. Danny, right? Yeah. That being said, Kevin, I don't know if you saw this too. Everybody's so excited about this NC State thing that's going on right now. They're even taking gifts to Jimmy Valvano's grave right now. I saw that with the flowers. Isn't that right? wild? That like was people cool. are just so they're that so emotionally cool. into it. They're just like, hey, there's a little basketball here. There's a foam finger. We've seen bits with foam fingers before. That's not a bit. That's love right there. And you won't find too many more like emotional coaches than Jimmy V. Yes. Like even when he oh, was coaching, sure. he'll he's like wearing his heart on his sleeve. It yeah. was fun. So I just I, I I saw that and thought that it was uh thought it was pretty fun. Uh so I wanted to kind of bring that up. But oh, and I think he hated Dean Smith too. Okay. I, in, I didn't hate Dean Smith. In Coach I, K's book, I think that Dean Smith would always show up to the ACC like coaches meeting and everything. He'd always show up last to yeah. kind of be like, "I'm the king of this conference. I show up last." And Coach K and Jimmy V were like, "Hey, let's let's just hang out." Let's wait and wait and wait. And then when Dean Smith walks in, let's walk in behind him to be like, you didn't get to walk in last nobody this could, meeting. Nobody could outlast Dean Smith. He was like, no, you won't defeat me. I'm going to be in there last. I don't know if they accomplished it. I forget that part of the book that I was listening to. Jared, do you still think Bill Self is a better coach than Coach K? Yes. All right. So that was uh, the conversation that took place <laughs> at, at a time. I and Jared it. still feels that way. <laughs> I love it. All right. So I wanted to... to Ask that this question now. Is the, that how you feel about my Harper opinion? That's probably how you feel about my Bryce Harper opinion. Uh, how I feel about your Bill yeah. Self opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fair. Sorry, Corey. Over the weekend, went to went to Dad's house, and we're out there. Your dad, my dad. Yeah. All right, that's what I call him, his dad. Um, and so we're out there <laughs> hanging out. He's. I don't know. Do, do you call your father in law dad? No, I call him Travis. Not very close. What's to his him. name? Is his he, name Travis? His name's Travis. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> That's probably. Do you call your in-laws mom and dad? No comment. <laughs> I think I think at one point her mom said, "Call me mom," and I was like, "All right," but it, we never established that. I never went, "Thanks, dad," and just waited to see the look on his face. I've just always called him Travis, so yeah. I just figured I'd stick with that for a while. So that's how it is. Uh, but we're out at my dad's house, and the football shows up. Now, we're not playing tackle football. We're older people. We do have kids in the family, though. Sure. And they're out there. They want to throw the football around. And Carter goes, my Carter, he goes and gets a soccer ball. And he's like, Dad, let's go kick the soccer ball. And then I notice we have the entire the entire families out there playing some sort of sport. And I love, there's, you'll never, if you have a football and you say, hey, you want to throw? I'll never say no. There's just no yeah. way. I, I love to throw the football. It's a It's one of my favorite things. But we're out there playing basketball and playing football and throwing the football around, kicking the ball. What is the thing that your family, do y'all just, just hang out? Does everybody have a game? Because Lucy now, she got a, a deck of Uno cards. Cool. And she kicked my ass at Uno three times. And I was like, how is this happening right now? Uh, and so I think she now has decided that in the new family venture is we are going to be playing Uno from now on. My wife loves to play board games. So okay. board games is usually... Is, it, is there a specific one? Well, we brought Risk. this... Uh, oh, man, there's some game... This is like you describing food now at this point. Is this going to be the, <laughs> the round shrimp thing? The cones of Dunshire? Well, I was thinking about... It's going to be the sweet potatoes that are real <laughs> potatoes that are scalloped? You're is putting this me a, in a really tough position. You don't know what your wife's oh, favorite game is? No, I do. Shoots and ladders? No, I just... Something against Candyland. humanity or something? No, cards not cards against humanity. It was... If you say Monopoly, I'm going to punch you. Yeah, Monopoly is like, the stupidest game one. ever, and I can't remember what baseball player on the Rangers like, that's my favorite game. I'm like, you have way too much free time to play that stupid game. You're putting me in a really bad spot We've given here. you plenty of time. 
time to think Her, of it. No, I know the, the game name of, of it. Life. Sorry. No, it's called Secret Hitler. Ah. Was. I would have admitted well, that, man. My wife's favorite game. That's what I said. You guys are asses. You wow. just said it. Jared, your thoughts on yeah. Kevin. Come on. What, how does this? Do? I have no. Been giving me a look with like. I have no. I it's not my game. Years. I didn't even ever heard of that game until I've we never heard of date. secret thing you just said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't even know how this is played. This is. Yeah, me either. Dude. Well, I can tell you how it's played. We learned about it in Sunday it's school, Hebrew school, growing up. Oh, there! You guys learned how to play this game? No, we learned He's stories. Did you really miss what he was saying He's there? About real life. Okay. So, Kevin, please. I don't know if I want to know please, now. Please, Twitch people, YouTube folks, FranklFirm.com text line, help me out. I didn't recommend this game. I just know that was a game that her and all of her friends played. All of her friends, huh? Uh huh. Wow. All I of her you friends went love to this game. Saturday. Yes. The you first time Sunday? it was. Never mind. Okay, all right. Apparently it was Josh Young who liked Monopoly. Yes, it was. Yes, it was Josh Young. So, well, Cones of Dunshot, of Sunshine, not the game that you like the most. Mike, what do you and your family like to play when y'all get to... Y'all play board games? Y'all go out and throw the ball? Y'all have a catch? We just got ping pong. Nice. That was fun. That's been fun. We play basketball. That's a game everybody can get behind, Kevin. <laughs> That's right. Yours hey, is different. Hey, there's people texting and now saying it's a real game and it's enjoyable. <laughs> uh -huh. We play front toss. What? That's where I have the L screen in front of me and I front toss the baseball and we hit the baseball. So y'all are practicing when y'all get together as a family. It sound like you're having recreational Y'all are running drills together out yeah. there. Yeah, I'm not doing stupid things that are worthless. We play push-ups and sit-ups and jumping yeah. jacks. In fact, the other day we did a we did a deal where uh, you do ten push-ups and then you do fifteen sit-ups and then you do four squat uh, you do ten squats and you do uh, four to five sets of those. From That's the real family bonding. Yes, from the eight one seven cornhole for days. Uh, somebody did say they play dominoes with their family, or some people play Farkle. I don't know if you ever played Farkle before. I don't know what Farkle. It's a fantastic is. game. My grandma made a board for it. Uh, pa pass the pigs. I don't know that. You ever play left center, center right? I get a new net for my L screen. It's falling apart. I remember when I was a kid, we used to have a, a tether ball pole, and so we would go out there and just play tether ball. My sister was short, so I would just hit it down, and it would go over her head the whole time. I just laugh. Do you ever play left center right? My family likes to do that a lot too. With the quarters and the dice. Sounds like a political game. No, it's not a political game. Okay. Well, you it just, sounds like you love political games. It's just, you just roll these three dice. Will Wheaton, the actor, does the intro for that game for the record. So I hope he hasn't done anything bad or else I'm going to be like really concerned about all of this. From the 817, left, set, right, left, right, center has taken over my family get togethers for the last See? couple of years. There you go. So I will keep an eye out for that one for sure. Man, some of these questions are really hurtful. Kevin, do you also play Secret Famine oh, or gosh. Secret Mussolini? I, no. Jared, do you guys, when y'all, your family's together, y'all play <sighs> some games? Your dad was, wasn't he like a uh, uh, a cricket player, or does he know a lot about cricket? Was it soccer? I grew up in South Africa, played soccer. Okay, soccer. Yeah, yeah. You just said, hey, if you ever want to know anything about cricket, my dad will teach you. And I was yeah. like, okay, sweet. Uh, we didn't play a lot. Of, my parents hated each other, and it took them a while to get divorced. So there really wasn't a lot of interaction when Same. I was younger. One finally, real life blur. Yeah, finally they got divorced, and everyone could breathe. Uh, I, I. I played with games with my brothers a lot, but they were 11 and 13 years older than me. All right. And Reggie, back to you for <laughs> to wrap this one up because it's a hell Parcheesi. of an awkward. We like to play a lot of parcheese. Parcheesi. Oh. You guys play cribbage? I've never played cribbage. I've never played. I've seen it being played on Letterkenny or something. I've played cribbage. I, I played cribbage. Yeah, Mar Marcus fun. Simeon plays it, and it looks like a fun, easy it's, game to learn. Yes. Uh, because I'm Jewish, if that wasn't made clear by the Hitler mm, comment yeah. earlier by uh -huh. Kevin. Uh, and Mahjong's Hold big on. in the it, Jewish no, no, community. No, no. It's a Kevin, game, not Kevin, a Hitler comment. Kevin, let Jared what was the game called again? Yeah. I forget. Yeah. Uh, and Mahjong's really big in the for like old Jewish ladies. Okay. Is it now? Yeah. Oh, okay. What is what is that game? It's like a tile game, but mm -hmm. there's I don't know how to explain it. It's, I it looks they should fun. just do front toss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like side toss. <laughs> Pool and darts. Uh, spin the bottle with your family. All right, Kevin, take it away, buddy. <sighs> We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan.
Coming up next. We're a good tight family here. Too. Whoever replaced me. You came up me. with this. Who came up with this? Did you <laughs> Not come up me. with this? That was definitely me. Oh, I definitely right. would have remembered the names of the other right. games, and I was like, crap, Kevin that's the one I know. It, Kevin made it awkward. And so. Coming up next, whoever replaces me will go through <laughs> power ranking the MLB power rankings. We'll do it next right here on The Fan. The Fan continues to grow because of you.
KCRW.com. This segment of the KNC Masterpiece is also brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org, and it's brought to you by Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Devensky works this entire inning as huh, Garcia may change that equation. Goodness! That's the 100th career home run for Adolis Garcia. And a monster shot at that. Rangers are back up by four. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan. We're going to power ranking. We're going to power rank the MLB power rankings, but I'm also thrown off not only because of the last segment, but because Mike is now actively wishing injury on somebody that we no, work with. I don't want him to get hurt. I just want him to fall. Because those are different things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, yeah. You, you don't said always fall get and hurt crush fall. the boards. So yes. you think yeah. he could fall, crush the boards, yeah. and walk away unscathed? Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I've, I mean, I've seen it happen before, dude. It's not a long fall. He's just standing next to the board. He falls on it. It ruins everything, and we have to get new equipment. My buddy sent me a video of a dude. There was a gym that the car just runs through the front of the gym. Yeah, that happened locally, right? Yeah. And, and his, his, like, his workout friend is on the couch. The dude on the couch, the car hits him. Wait, oh workout friend? Gosh. Yeah, workout friend. And his the guy we worked out with. And his Is that friend, a euphemism? No. They okay. literally they lift weights together. Roommates. No. No. They're not roommates. But he he get he's on the couch when the car comes through. Mm -hmm. The couch that he's on gets pushed. He gets up just fine. So he didn't get hurt. <laughs> Friends with workout benefits. No, that's not. No, that he <laughs> he just said a workout right. buddy. <laughs> sure. A bench buddy, if you will. Hold because on. they bench press Hold together. On. Just real quick, did these people actually work out, or did he just say that's my workout? Buddy? Do you want me to show and you the you text? Extrapolated the rest. Of he the story. said work. I'll go look at the text from last. All right. It was literally from last night. Would you like to go with CBS, or would you like to go with the Bleacher Report? Those workout are... friend is what it said. Mm -hmm. So, um, CBS. Okay. Who I still think is dumb. Just in general. We go with them on the quarterback rankings because they're the only ones that consistently rate the quarterbacks. I, this Our show did an interview a while back, and they said it was G-Bag. And I, listen, I appreciate oh, yeah. the station love. Oh, I did appreciate them putting G-Bag. I just felt one. like they, should, they needed to get that one right. Now, these power rankings were released yesterday. Who do you think is the worst team in all of baseball? Astros. <laughs> yeah. They were 0-4 at that time. Yeah, they are getting destroyed. The Oakland Athletics. Astros are 14. Colorado. Colorado, 28. Oakland, oh. 29. Oh, crap. Who played worse? I don't have the standings. White up. Sox. The Chicago White Sox came in dead last in the power rankings. All right. Then I, I, can I take a guess on the next two up? Yes. Marlins. Correct. Mets. Correct. Man. I'm just looking at standings right now. And then if you want to continue the Mike Bassick Invitational, the Nationals are 25th on that. Mike, was that all the teams that you played for? The Rangers? No. Never mind. The in the well, I did play for the Indians. The Guardians. There. Yeah. Uh and then yeah. The okay. Mets so and the Nationals. The teams. I played for two. Philly and I played for who else did I play for? <laughs> the Diamondbacks, but I didn't play in the majors. I just played triple A. I, it's a long time ago. <laughs> Who gives say, a crap? Hold on, but if I asked you your Sidewinders record in ERA, you could get that pretty close. It was 11 and 0, dog. What was your ERA? Oh, you was it 281 or 279? Something like that. I think it was even lower than I that. I guess it was too good to be in the majors. Well, I guess that. I'll have to look into that. All right. Where do you think the Rangers should rank? <sighs> Man, I feel like. A lot of love is going to be given to the Yankees. For sure. For their Deservedly start. so. They went yeah. on the road to Houston and They're swept. they like crazy. Uh, I feel like a lot of love will still be given to the Dodgers. And the Tigers, man. And are the Pirates getting any love Oh, right the now? Pirates and, the, and, and the Tigers. So I feel like the Rangers are a good fourth place. The Buckos. <clears throat> Pirates are horrible people. I guess they should change their name, too. The Texas Rangers 
are number five on the list. What the crap is that? I just said four. Hold on, Corey. What? Corey. Thank you, Reggie and Mark Followell. Corey, you're going to have to trust me on this one, all right? Need you to tone down your anger just a little bit because it's about to go way up. And if you're at this level already, you have no place to go and you're going to pass out. All right, so tone down your anger just a little bit because it's going to get much, much worse. Did you tell me to second. settle down. Did you yes. tell me to calm down? Yes, I did. And I know that's usually not Luckily, what you Luckily, I'm say. a man, so that's okay. <laughs> Oh, man. The top four beyond the Rangers, the Orioles, the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Braves. So you can at least wrap your head around how this is a credible power ranking. Yes? Yeah. All right. Keep that in mind. Let's now pivot to the athletic. All right. And the Atlanta Braves, number one. Los Angeles Dodgers, number two. The Baltimore Orioles, three. And the New York Yankees, four. Can you live with that? Yeah. Number five. Corey, just remember, I didn't make this list. Reggie, get that Mark Follow drop ready. Oh, I think you should get the John Smoltz one. Oh, yeah. This is the most ridiculous <laughs> opinion in this the history of baseball. This is going to be a tough one to go find. All right. Well, don't worry. There's a couple in here. Number five is the Houston Astros. And I know you might be like, I'll do what? <laughs> <laughs> number six. This came out today. Today. Number six, the Tampa Bay Rays. We just whoop, we just yes. beat them last night. Yes, you did. Yeah, but in baseball, they where by took the way, out one of our guys. I wanted to make this note, and I do. I feel, I feel like I'm correct on this. Adolis's 100th home run was hit last night in Tampa. Yes. His first home run of his career was hit in Tampa, April really? 15th, 2021. Oh. So he owns Tampa. For the Rangers. Yeah. And yes, it, you're right. It yeah, was for the Rangers. It wasn't for the Cardinals. No, it wasn't. It was not. I know that they mentioned this the other day, but it has to be bad and weird for them that they look at Randy Arozarena and Adolis Garcia and go, what the crap were we thinking? It's like us losing Dave Stewart, right? <clears throat> yeah, and Dave Rigetti. We traded him because he wasn't drinking buddies with the owner at the time. Oh, no. Well, like other I'm guys I'm not disputing were. that. That just feels like a terrible decision. Not not what you know. It's who you know. So the Tampa Bay Rays are six. The Seattle Mariners are seven. The Mariners? Arizona Diamondbacks are eight. The Philadelphia Phillies are nine. What? Toronto Blue Jays are ten. Hold on. Did you say the Phillies? Correct. Who are one and three right now? Correct. Okay. The Texas Rangers are number 11. They dropped from nine to 11 by going three and one. One of the teams that they just absolutely smoked is sixth. And the Astros, who didn't win a game till yesterday, are fifth. What are your thoughts, Corey? about the athletics baseball power rankings i don't it happens i don't want to read that they anymore. just rank them yeah do they if they Good point Mike. maybe they're maybe they're rank you know like stank that was a good effort mike Thanks. Isn't, it, isn't it isn't rank like another yeah. way of saying smelly yeah or adam rank yes earlier that you just made up names about jim publisher um, That's what I think. And Susie Editor or whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't like Reggie this. Reggie, my phone used to be called Reggie Bordoff. I have things like that in my phone. I say used to be. Not Reggie Producer, huh? That's where you're going <sighs> to... Now it should be Reggie Host. It is. Really? It's, it's not Anna Tula? That's now, his name. Now in my phone, hey. it's Reggie Get Right. Let's Reggie Part-Time Host. You I'm, get paid as a Bordoff. I'm pretty... <laughs> Sure God, that my, Mike. I'm pretty Come sure on. that I have him as Reginald. Yeah. Well, it's like I asked. Yeah. I think I asked Jess to change my name in her phone because it just had my whole name. I was like, Do I not? Can I not at least be the number one Kevin in your phone? That you're like, if you think of Kevin, you're Only like Kevin. Yeah. There's another Kevin. I don't. I don't Is there know. a just a Kevin in there? Wait, hold on. I'd like to go back real quick. Kevin, did you? Are you a per you're not a person that puts full names in their phone? Because I would have completely Fair. said that you were the guy who puts full names, occupations, I, addresses. Sandler I, is that guy. I am not. I know that for a fact. 
I, I am not. Surprising. I know that you you make a very fair point. All right. So are you banishing the athletic from future power rankings? If or? they had a print version of the athletic, which they don't, I don't believe. I would rip this up in their face okay. into little pieces and mm -hmm. then throw it around their office mm -hmm. and say, now you deal with this crap. Because that's what it is. So you need some positivity is what I'm hearing. Yes. All right, Corey. Let's talk about the different levels of Texas Rangers World Series rings you can buy. Yesterday, yes. I told you how you could enter the drawing to try to win one. Oh, are we talking like the, about the cufflinks and belt and yes, everything? Yes, you the can. Belt buckle? Now, yeah. through a program I'll with Mike's favorite, Jason of Beverly Hills, there's going to be three different rings that will be available for purchase of the Texas Rangers replica World Series Name ring. Name one. The $895 standard championship ring, which is clad in cubic zirconium. This, I heard what in the world is that? It's glass. It's plastic? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't, what is... Is that what my kids get when they win a perfect game tournament or whatever? Yep. Probably. I don't. Yeah. Much. I'm not sure. That's a fancy league if they're getting cubic zirconia. It's better than plastic? Yeah. Which I don't know. Where is it Honestly, from? Honestly, is it? Cuba. They just made... Did they just make up a cubic. word to, all, like... All words are made up. Is it not? you more... more? I don't know. Well, God gave us that ability. He said, you name it. That's true. He did. He's like, here's all the animals. You name it. Yes. Adam. Or. If that's his real name. Or did he make up his own name? It's a synthesized material. It's a good it's, question. It's it? hard. And usually colorless. Mm -hmm. You name yourself. But may be made in a variety of different colors. It does not say that it was made in Cuba, though, Reggie. <laughs> That's it's not Cuba zirconia. It was made in Germany, which is interesting. You can buy that's that country just keeps coming up today, doesn't it? Cuba? Russia was involved too. <sighs> is there something else I need to know about Cuba? No, he's making reference to a different country that came up just a little bit ago. You can also Israel? No. <laughs> like, stop <laughs> stop naming countries, Mike. Just stop that. Just please. You can buy the <laughs> Super fan championship ring, which goes for about eleven thousand mm. dollars. You can get the World Series title via earrings, ID tags, cufflinks, all the way up to the thirteen hundred dollar belt buckle. Texas Rangers. I'm thinking World about getting Series. the cufflinks. I'm gonna be honest. I got the you email wear, that every you do wear a tuxedo every, every yes. once in a while. And with the tuxedo, it's the cufflink tuxedo, you know, I think most tuxedo shirts or cufflinks sure. i think so yeah and so i'm like dude how how good would that look with those cufflinks that i wear that tuxedo maybe once a year at best and, and nobody I, else is gonna have and those i cufflinks. randomly wore it to a restaurant where some people were wearing just like jeans and a collared shirt you can get the cufflinks for 700 dollars. you think choppy wants that belt buckle only 695 why did you add five bucks to it just fair enough yes I do think choppy. I'm gonna go get a it. cheeseburger with that five extra dollars, man. I'm at waiting. Certain places. I'm waiting for this for the Kevin. I'm waiting mm -hmm. for the ring for whenever we get our fourth ring. Okay. Because then I can have a flight of rings, and I can have all all the rings on my like little board, my cheese board, or my flight board. Mm -hmm. and I can have all the rings right there, just served up to. You're me just right charcutering this thing. Yes, I am definitely charcutering it. I love. I love these he has rings. No bro. clue what a charcuterie board I is. I know exactly what a charcuterie board is. Ooh. I'm not entirely sure what you were saying, but I got it. Charcuterie. Mm -hmm. Am I it saying it wrong? It sounds pretty yes, close. Yes, you are saying it wrong. How do you say it? Charcuterie. How do you say it? Charcuterie. Sounds the same. Reggie? I don't think I'm allowed to say the way I like saying it. I think I think you can say it differently in different parts of the country. Reggie's mysterious. It's like how a Boston person has an accent and a Texas person has an accent. Yeah, and what do you do with the Boston people every time you play that commercial? From you just Boston. From Boston. <laughs> from Boston. <laughs> Come on, shake, shake it. That's a good commercial. We're still oh. on the air for the love of God. Eh, we shouldn't be. It's one coming up. I am aware. Coming up next. <laughs> Let's chit chat with those fellas we gotta do, we gotta from do the G-Bag Nation. Late. Shut up! Next in the fan. <laughs> Coming up Wednesday morning on Sean and RJ.
This segment of the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. They've got more Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Relax and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan right now. Courtesy of DM Leasing, it is time for our chit chat with those fellas from the G Bag Nation. Gentlemen, how is you today? Awesome, Heggy. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Did y'all see the situation yesterday after the rain delay where the Chicago White Sox first base coach just wasn't ready yeah. to come back out? Maybe he just thought the game was over because <laughs> it was a blowout and he's like, forget it. Nobody told me. He gave yeah. up. Yeah. He gave up. He says, I've had enough already. And then they were like, well, now we have to wait. Because they don't have their guy ready, and the broadcasters were so perturbed. They were like, I've, "We've never seen this before. How dumb are the White Sox?" Well, and then the game ended in the. I exact think it was CJ Nikowski. I think it was the Braves broadcasters oh, that were calling him out. CJ was letting him know. CJ's like, "I've never seen this before," and and they couldn't find a like they have to wear the batting helmet out there now, and they couldn't find a batting helmet for somebody to run out there and. and that was the biggest. It should be issue. optional. Well, you they know, might I don't not think have you need to be out there. You know, you have to, to wear like the protective oh. <laughs> helmet to be one of the coaches. It's well, they, like a rule. They might not. They might not have given the first base coach enough notice. I'm sure CJ is familiar with that concept. That's because I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm forgetting. I know it's cool ball. I just. I think it was. I don't think it was Scott. It might have been Scott, but he died. Wait a minute. Did they have Peggy? What did you just do? Did they have like a Mike Bassett <laughs> come swoop in to save the day in that moment? No. For the White Sox? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> in his pitching jacket? Yes, exactly. His hey, pitching jacket. I got the jacket for it. Yeah. We, we talked about this a little earlier. He needs to wear that jacket more often. Brandon brought this up when we were in the car coming back from our in-laws during Easter. He goes, you know what phrase I hate is we like our guys? I, I was curious. <laughs> is oh, there, no. And this turned into a Cowboy-centric yeah. kind of thing, but is there a phrase that is the most annoying or irritating to you in sports? It doesn't have to be from the Cowboys organization. I know that is kind of what it turned into. Cowboys irritate us, bro. It that happens. is fair. All in clearly got a lot of I, I do think we have started to use the generational talent too much. Sure. Like, there's not that many generational yeah. talents. Is Wyatt Langford, do you think he is? Yes. He's definitely in so consideration for a generational right? a talent. Can I That's ask good. Mike a question? Does that pitcher make the play if he throws the ball with the opposite hand just because of the way the glove... You know, when he was rounded, the fact that he was able to make the tag with the glove, he's maybe oh, the gosh, opposite. I didn't, I didn't think about that. I think um, if he's, if he's, uh, if it's opposite hand, across. I don't think he, I don't think he makes the play. I think Wyatt Langford is you, safe. You might be right. I guess I never thought of, of that. I mean, I know the that, throw took yeah. him to the plate with yeah. the glove hand. So I was just curious if, cause you, you taught me the other day that sometimes they scratch the dirt behind the, behind the batter's foot. To make yeah, him to think like, like, oh, I hear something behind me. Maybe yeah. they're coming inside. See, that's the kind of stuff, really. That's 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 broadcasting right there. I'm learning something watching a baseball game. I love game it. Doing that's that. broadcasting. Yeah. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's you it. know, I, I got to the point where I think Dave Raymond was asking you questions because he was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I see. Okay. And, you know, yeah. you guys had an inner, it, it's like he stopped broadcasting the game. He was interested in asking questions like, okay, expand on what you just said. Because yeah. it was kind of a teaching moment there. Yeah, I thought it was good. Yeah, I like watching the catchers because they'll give you information from like I can't remember who it was. Oh, I'll tell you who it was. I was watching last night. I was watching the Houston Astros uh, guy Blanco throw his no hitter and yeah. overthrew one of the pitches. And Diaz gave his hands just like yeah. settled. It. Like yeah. you're you're a little Palms bit down. Too excited. Yeah. Like calm down. Yeah. You know, adrenaline's flowing. Deal. So he's just letting them know like you're overthrowing right now. Calm down. Yeah. Is Caleb Williams a generational talent. Caleb Williams, I think, probably is like, all right, yes, we can talk about him as the only quarterback. I don't think we're throwing Jaden Daniels in there or Drake May. Okay. I think Caleb Williams has a chance to be a generational talent. J.J. McCarthy. Luca? No, definitely no J.J. Luca generational talent? Luca definitely is. Okay. Yes. All right. I think Jaden Daniels has a generational elbow. That is a weird elbow. That is definitely... I'll tell you what, a geriatric elbow. I you're talking about generational... <laughs> In my generation, I've never seen a person like Kyrie Irving make that game-winning shot. Even 
yeah. make that shot the in s- general, that s- one over scoop. Jokic. Yeah. And then Luka yeah. Yeah. doing the 20-foot yeah. underhand swish. Like, layup. He, he laid it up from 20 yeah, feet out. Yeah. I've seen 20, two things happen finger from roll. our team that I've never seen happen in the history of the NBA. I think all of Luka's horsing around pregame is finally paying off, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about that, Mike? All the times we complained about pregame warm-up, he yeah. knew exactly what At he was doing. At some point, if he ever uses his left or right shoulder to make yes. a shot, I'll be like, well, that's why he practices that before games. Just wait until they let him kick it in. You know, then you're going to see oh, a whole new uh, we're bag of dominate tricks from this league. Yeah. Was there anything from Jason of Beverly Hills that is standing out to you guys in terms of the $1,300 belt buckle, the $700 <laughs> championship cufflinks that y'all are thinking about going after? Um, no, not particularly. They, there was like a hundred dollar item, wasn't there? Or like an $80 item, Let's something affordable. Yeah. Like a little oh, pendant or something. Championship bar pendant for one fifty, yeah. or a championship keychain. There it was for yeah. $80. Yes. The keychain is what I was eyeballing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. $80 keychain? It's a yeah. championship. It's from keychain. Beverly Hills, keychain. dude. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Get your sideburns out. <laughs> Mike, would you ever have to wear a shirt where you have to wear cufflinks when you're doing broadcasting, you think? Because that'd he be worth it for you. That's yeah, what I'm I saying. It, it I'm was, thinking about the only cufflink shirt I have right now, but you can get cufflink shirts, is a yeah. tuxedo. He frequently right, wears right. his tuxedo, though. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's a you tuxedo. just the top yeah. half if he, nice and like party on the other half? No, or? I went all the way because huh. our, our friend had his wife was having a birthday party and we were going out to dinner and he said hey there's a dress code so i ended up just going tuxedo dude i love just that to, just to, like you said there was a dress code so i wanted to make sure i was i was dressed up definitely not underdressed yeah i was I, the only person in a tuxedo at this italian restaurant but it was cool see he just he or did somebody ask you for like a wine list or something like that? no i thought that people were <laughs> probably thinking call. people are probably like oh man they let, their, get a li- table. They let their limousine driver eat with them tonight that's cool like you should like have hung around by the door and like set people down like table how yeah. many what, reservation yeah, yeah. get some more parmesan sir would you got say <laughs> when if you walked say in when mike did and you're like oh crap i'm underdressed look at this yeah. tuxedo dude right here yeah what do you yeah. You guys got coming up on the Part program the today okay first of all uh the phrase glow up is particularly annoying oh, to me yeah uh <laughs> second of all speaking of beverly hills uh not brandon jared walsh 320 you nice. like that Mike? nice yeah. that's a transition right thank there. you so you think it's gonna be good pure show? gold as always thanks for asking <laughs> Roll home with the G-Bag Nation. We've been the KNC Masterpiece. Make your way back with us tomorrow. Remember, short show leading into Rangers, 10 a.m. to 11.30 right here on 105 Through the Fan. Say the name of your favorite game, Kevin, or your wife's. I will not. Take it out, Kevin. What? I'm the what? DFW's number one.
in with the G Bag Nation right here on 105.3 The Fan. Welcome to the nation. nation. Yeah, baby. It's hour one of the G Bag Nation Let's on 105.3 awesome. The Fan. Hope Woo! you're having a good one. Boy, the guys are fired up today. Let's yeah. talk sports for three hours and 15 minutes. What do you say? There's Broadus, former Cowboy Scout and NFL executive. You have Chris Strong and for Lucius over there in the Pimp Cup. Of course, Wolchuk and Chia follow your nosebleed brothers are here. So is Carter Freeman. Coordinating your video, 105 at thefan.com, Twitch, and YouTube. And I'm Gavin Dawson. Along with you, we are the G-Back Nation here on 105 through the fan. Yeah, uh, what a night in sports once again as uh, we're heading for some action, boys. We're heading back to Rangers baseball coming up at 515, sitting at 3-1 to one to open up the season as we seemingly are in a DFW sports alternate reality. It's something that I'm not used to, but it's uh, it could only be described as paradise for a second day in a row here as we open up the show. Except for the injury to Josh Young, but man, yes, the injury to Josh Young uh, that that really uh, ruined a little bit of the sports paradise for a second there. Now I have no doubt Josh is going to be back and, and better than ever because he is and he hates this. But gosh, has he been on a streak of just unluckiness right now? And Phil Mayton, you go bleep yourself. Yeah, that was. I, I know. Play. I was listening to Boach earlier with KMC, and I, I don't believe it was intentional. He made me calm down a little bit about it. I thought Corey asked a good question there, but. Man, Phil Maton, when you look at, of course, the the Astros history, I'm thinking to myself, gosh, I want to punch you right in the face right now. I like what KNC suggested where, hey, if you are if you are hitting more than one batter in an inning, get out. You're done. Done. Whether you did it on purpose or you just suck today. You just lost control. Yeah. Fine. Don't need you here. Yeah, we need some uh, control or, or you're a risk to the game. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, a, a pretty serious injury. Yes, you know, and I, I, I would, I'd appreciate that if they'd look into it. But I, I do like to know that, uh, you know, Zeke Durant's going to step up, and Justin Fossey is getting called up for depth. And Exciting to see that. You yes. know, no disrespect to Josh Young, but it's entirely possible that Zeke goes out and performs in a way that you don't miss Young much. Yeah, I mean that that's what that's what happened uh April when, through May last year. When you had Zeke in for, for, for Seeger. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it did not work out that way when you were platooning Josh Smith and Ezekiel Duran for Josh Young later on in the season, and those two guys were combined hitting like one fifty right. and it was embarrassing. Yeah, it was not uh, good. but as long as you're getting the Ezekiel Duran or some version of the Ezekiel Duran that you saw for a good chunk of last season to start it off then yeah, you're absolutely in a great place. And that's that's part of the reason why when we start discussing trading and okay, Foscu and everybody's ready to trade him or Ezekiel Duran ready to trade him, the, having the depth in your infield is so dang important. And you see it with Seager has been banged up. Josh Young, I'm not going to go injury prone with him yet because I do think there's so much just misfortune. It's been very unlucky. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but having having guys like Foskey and Duran, and then at times you know guys like Josh Smith, it's like, hey, that that's that's important to you have. Still have a Davis Wenzel who hasn't even got an opportunity to come up there, and probably, I mean, Foskey's limited as a defensive guy. We've talked about that, but as a DH, he can help you out there maybe at first base until Nathaniel Lowe comes back and platoon with Jared Walsh, who we'll have on uh, in a little yeah. over an hour. Yeah, looking forward to talking with Jared coming up three twenty, uh, getting to know his story just a little bit more. Uh, Having a great start. He was an all-star in 2021. Last year, dude gets neurological issues, crazy. is suffering from insomnia, uh, is just terrible, hitting below a buck fifty for the Angels. They had to let him go. Rangers get it figured out. They get him signed, and then his medical situation kind of clears up. He goes one year, two and a half mil. You might have just got like an all-star level player uh, for the cheap because of uh, a situation that he needs to prove this year to the market that he's put behind him, and then he could go uh, back on the market for significantly more money. But I, I think just uh, it's great to have him here. And, you know, as um, as a fan of this baseball team, I, I feel like it's, it's going to be a, a great run for him and the team, and we look forward to talking more about that coming up at uh, at 320. I think you have to talk about the not-so-good here with Young as well, though. And that is the number of injuries that he's had in, like, less than 150 games. He's been injured four times, including the first day of spring training, mm -hmm. the second series of the year. Um, you know, I hope I, I, I hope that this doesn't be remain a trend for him. Because right now, you know how I overreact to injuries. Yeah. And you know how amazing I think it is to have him and Carter and Bangford coming up at the same time as like a 
But I, I'm, you know, I'm already thinking about the second contract. I'm already thinking about what's going to happen over the next three or four years. And I'm looking at him like maybe uh, the Astros, uh, you know, looked at George Springer. Like, man, we, we sure do like you. But we're not going to marry a, a guy that can't stay healthy. And it, it pains me to say that. But that's the conversation I'd be having at the Rangers front office today. Like, guys, we got to take Young out of clearly a big part of the future to, holy crap, we love this guy, but he can't stay healthy, Box. I just, oh, man, I think the thumb was a line drive last year. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, certainly had the the hammy. I mean, this was this yep. this, this was a toughie. Hammy, man. calf. <laughs> I can't, the, so, the, soft the ball's flying at me. Here, I'm yeah. like, oh, wrist, just stay in there. Yeah. I, 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 he took a swing at it, right? Yeah. He did, yeah. yeah. He took a swing. That, that That's was how it hit him. insult to injury there. Yeah. It was like, gosh, dang it. Yeah. You're not even going to get a bag out of this. I, you know what? I, I, think there's, I think there's certain players that have bad luck because of injury. I can remember Tyron Smith getting hurt several times. Getting because, out of bed in the morning. No, just somebody falling in the back of his legs. Like, yeah. you know, somebody getting a, you know, one of these guards, uh, uh, you know, getting just destroyed and all of a sudden he's on the ground and Connor Williams is on the ground and now, now Tyron Smith is, you know, is doing his pass set and Connor Williams is or, or McGovern is laying in the back of his legs, his ankle, <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking like out of your control. Yeah. Is that, is that Tyron Smith's fault or is that like the guy next to him's fault, you yeah. know? And I, I, but Dawson, I when you start to you wonder because you don't want to be tagged as a player, yeah, that's always getting hurt. I mean, I mean you don't want to be that guy. You he know? broke and, his bleeping wrist, you idiot! I know he got hit by a pitch. It's not yeah. like he did it himself. He swung at a pitch coming to him. Okay, yeah. this is four injuries in less than 150 games. I love the guy. You don't think I hate having to say this? You know, you don't. You, you you think I enjoy saying the things that that fans want to deny with their most homeristic instincts? I, yeah. I, I I don't enjoy it, but I I think it's legitimate. Okay, I I I also think you got to talk about Max Scherzer here through a fifty five pitch bullpen session, third since returning to the mound last week. Scherzer said he threw his full array of pitches during the session, has four more sessions to go before he faces some hitter. Hitters. Uh, Scherzer said he's about a week or ten days away from starting his true ramp up to a season, baby. It's amazing. Yeah. He's just a freak show. At his Dog. age, what he's doing, yeah. and he's always coming back ahead of schedule. I mean, we talked about this with Colby Lewis at the ballpark yeah. last week. Like he's probably one of those guys you've got to save from himself because he's gonna try and go a little too hard, try and push it, and you don't want to see any type of uh negative come out from this, but that's exciting to hear. It is. If you get Scherzer back on the bump sooner rather than later, let's go. Sounds like Bochi uh, would be um, a guy that you'd like to spend a little time with on the road, Broadus. Why do I say that? Say it. He joined the KMC Masterpiece today. They were talking to him about fishing. Yes. And uh, on these roadies, he, he likes to go wet a line either before the game or sometimes after the game. Said he would have been fishing off the pier last night, I guess, for some speckled trout and redfish. Yeah. Except uh, the injury made him powwow as a as an organization last right. night. The leadership had to get together. Yeah, see why was it sounded like when we were interviewing see why so he was standing by the cage, right? Did you guys yeah, hear did. batting hear yeah. batting practice kind of going on there? Uh, something either, was going on. Something was going on, but uh, yeah, it, you know what? If uh, there's some of these places that you can go, like if your hotel is kind of convenient, yeah, you know, and you've got a really good like a good uh, traveling secretary on your on your team. And I mean, somebody that handles all the traveling can kind of get you like, hey, where's, can you get me out on a boat early this morning? Or can you get me out on a, yeah. can you get me with a guide to do some, you know, some fishing? That's what he was trying to do. Yeah, that's, yeah. if you got one of those, I mean, the really good traveling secretaries know exactly who to contact to get everybody set up for what they need to go do. And so I'm sure Boach is, you know, I think he's like, hey, listen, if you can set me up on some of these fishing trips, you know, some of these stops that we're going to go to, yeah. let's go do that if we can. You know, good for him to get out and, and maybe wet a line or two if he can. Hopefully, hopefully he has some luck doing that. Sounds like a passionate fisherman. You I'll know? tell you what, man. If he, if he, he could get the guy that he was willing to go off the shore. I, yeah. It, it is something that I, I look forward to every single day, That just to stand out there. And I, I love the challenge of it because, you know, it's, it's, called, it's called fishing for a reason. It ain't called catching. Yeah. Sometimes you don't catch, mm -hmm. but it's to me to be out there and being a part of that. 
I could see where he likes doing that. I think you need a good ratio of fish into catching. If you're over catching, it's exhausting and doesn't seem like enough of a challenge to me. I'll tell you, I've been in some deals where we've caught like 70 fish in a day. Yeah. And like Gosh, to amazing. the point where your thumb. Yeah, you're blistered your, up. Your, your thumb gets because you're grabbing the lip of the fish and all their little teeth are just, and your, th- th- your thumb is tore up. Yeah. And that's when you're having dinner, you look down and you knew you had a good day. <laughs> When when your when your thumb, <laughs> when your thumb is just, just wrecked. your thumb is just wrecked, you, you know. Need, and sometimes we're like, ah, oh, what happened to your thumb? And I'm like, we had a great day. Know. We had a great so day a fishing day on the water. We had a great day fishing yesterday. Still, still can't go toe to toe with Boozy. I mean, it's you and all your buddies catching seventy. Boozy's by himself putting up Luca numbers. I'll tell you what, Boozy, bro. I need to get on the Boozy plan. <laughs> Luca, you do. Man, he, it, those were some good looking <laughs> fish that he had too up on that uh, up on that table. Yeah. The text is in a combative mood today. They say it's wet a hook, not a line. Yeah, you know the line gets wet too. I just, I think you wet a line. Yeah, I you like know, the line goes into the water with the. Doesn't hook. matter. I just whatever throw in the hook, throw in the line. It, that, when you said it, it's fine with me. Don't worry about it. Eight one seven says let's keep it a hundred. The women's game is not that exciting. It's entertainment that's not very entertaining. Other than one to two players really don't shoot great. Now congratulations to Iowa. Both those games last night were yeah. awesome. Congratulations to Iowa. They were they were outstanding. You know that that Caitlin Clark she could play. LSU didn't have an answer for her at all. No, you know, and LSU's got some good players, but like we talked about, they, they when LSU doesn't play as a team and they don't shoot well, it's a it's a problem. And they took some really some 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 poor shots, but Iowa just is a, a really really good team, and they're number one in the the country for a reason. Looks like a great women's Final Four though for the yeah, teams that are yeah. all set up in it. Yeah, Clark almost went full goalkey on us. She went 9 of 20 from yeah. the three-point line. Oh, she's the second 10, time she's made nine shots she from set, three. She can set it up. Game. When she gets the ball, I mean, she can set up her shot very well. Yeah, yeah. Her ability to yeah. create some distance yeah, for herself, it's pretty incredible. Plays Watching a, Van Lith just like shoulder shrug, like she threw her hands up like, I don't know. There's nothing I can do. I don't know yeah. what you want from me, coach. Yeah, Mulkey you know, wasn't going to do anything different. She wasn't going to start yes. forcing the ball out of her hands. Like, I don't understand this. No. These coaches... Yeah. You know who the player is. Yeah. But you have, like, Calipari's not going to just make sure Golki doesn't beat him that night. You go into this night knowing it's Clark or Bust for them. Yeah. And you're still not going to just make sure somebody else has to do that? Give me a break, dude. I would have I would have tried a double, and they, they the commentators were talking about it. You should have tried uh, Johnson on her, like uh, yeah, that would have made some sense. I I I you know maybe you're looking at the the wagon that Van Lith is dragging, and you're thinking yeah. there is a great athlete. She's surely the best perimeter defender that I have. But you got to try the longer player in Johnson yeah. at that point, um, you know, to try to frustrate her. But you know, Mulkey said it after the game. They couldn't guard her last year. You can't guard her now. She plays a lot like Luca, where or Steph Curry, where she's looking to pass if you mess up or get out of position, and that plays games with you. And you're like, "Am I playing the passing lane or trying to block it?" And then she steps back and lets that thing fly. But I thought the biggest difference from this year's game to last year's game was the supporting cast that Iowa managed to put together around yes. her. Yeah, they had girls that could really take it to the hoop, and um, as a result, you could you couldn't just you know sell out to defend. Clark. Well, Kate Martin was a good player for Iowa last night. I mean, I think yeah. she was fifty percent shooting last. And you're kind of thinking it's they're kind of just one gal, you know, with Clark. But no, they have, they have others. Gabby that, Marshall's a good player. Yeah, uh, was it Alter or some Alter? I don't know how to say Alter. Yeah. yeah, I mean another. You're, you're, you're close. Keep. I, I'm away. trying, man. I'm I like know. this is an Iowa women's basketball player that's a killer. Yeah, you know, I mean, and a killer in a sports w- in a sports way. The the assassin, awful killer, awful I think you say the pillar. Do you know how to say it? I don't know how to say it. it. it Sounded out a little bit more, Brian. Oh, you know what? We're trying. <laughs> yeah. You're anyway, trying. all right. I know. Awful Latour. Yeah. Awful is this tour. final answer. I'm ready for the uh, for the ratings numbers. All I all I know is congratulations, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Wait, Wait, were you crying last night? Yeah, you no, had to. Have been. No, no, I wasn't. You shedding crying. a tear. You You're definitely right. felt bad for old Angel Reese, though. I mean, once she went out of the game, it was like, all right. and Angel Reese got a great start too. Yeah, she she was dominating last night early. Why are you so excited for the ratings to come out? Because uh, I was watching the game, and I think that we've already got a little bit of a tease that 10 million, I mean, is what wow. they're, they're expecting. The game will top 10 million viewers, said one inside source with ESPN. So this could be uh, is- historic. Ratings. I mean, what does a non-Cowboys NFL game get? I guess if it's if it's blue chip, but that's that's way more than Thursday night games. You know, 10 million is a, a, lot a of rather people. healthy number. That's got to be more than they get for any NBA game. I think the Final Four will actually draw more. Well, the yeah. UConn-Iowa game is going to be, yeah. be a fun one. Yeah. Paige Beckers. 
Yes, yes, a, 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 a lot of great storylines going on with this thing. Mavs and Dubs tonight in San Francisco. We'll talk more about that. Stars are off tonight. Host McDavid and the Oilers tomorrow. Um, and that'll, a tough one. That'll, that'll set the scene for you here. We got th- three hours of sports remaining. Rangers pregame's coming up at 515 Tomorrow's game starts at noon, so we'll be on like at, at 3.30 or something. G-Bag of the Day is coming at 2.30. Sports hodgepodge is next, Chief. Where are you taking us? Last night we found out what happens when you mix a Hall of Famer with a Phenom Super Beast. That's next year in the nation. One of the G-Bag's hottest segments, L.A. Live with Lucius. Every day at 5.40 right here on G-Bag Nation on The Fan. Hey, Tolos, RJ Choppy here for the best Ford dealership on the east side of the Metroplex. In Terrell, it's Platinum Ford, owner Stephen Gilchrist, GM Adam Vinci. They're both Tolos, taking care of the Tolos each and every day when it comes to the purchase of your brand new Ford truck or SUV. Adam's got everything from super duties on the ground to full-size Broncos, Raptor F-150s, the all-new Ford Lightning. All you need to do is get over to Terrell to see him right between I-20 and Highway 80. You can start the process online at PlatinumFord.com and drive a little further to save a lot more at Platinum Ford. Odyssey presents a joint venture with Hulu's High Hopes. Yo, what's up? This is Jared from the Dirty Heads. A secret 420 Dirty Head show. Win a trip for two to L.A. for your chance to win at odyssey.com slash high hopes this month reality tv hits a new high high hopes premieres 420 streaming only on hulu pluto tv is as easy as it is free
all of a sudden you have something even more special on your hands. And what he did last year, being the MVP on that pitching staff, filling in for Degrom was huge. And now it seems like he he might have leveled himself up a little bit, which is super super exciting. You still uh, you saw Heim uh, remains with the uh, with the hose as he rips a throw to third base at one point in that game. That was beautiful. So Rangers continue to get it done. Unfortunately, the the, the jungle cat gets banged up. And gosh dang it, what a what a start to the season he was having too. Josh Young. Yeah, yeah like in that just, game. I mean, he was tearing it up yesterday. Yes, too. last night, amazing game. Great start to the season. Hate to see what's happening with Josh Young right now, but we look forward to getting him back. Now, um, I saw as well, and, and this makes like this makes all the sense in the world to me that we are having a referee shortage. I am like, of course we are. Why wouldn't we be? I've been wondering for a long time why anybody would want to put the the zebra stripes on and go get yelled at and go get blamed and go get put in very, very difficult positions at any level. Uh, and apparently the Jumbotron here uh, at the AAC during the Elite Eight, uh, the NCAA was encouraging people to become referees. And they noted that officials are retiring, uh, retiring at a much higher rate than they're coming in. So it's apparently a growing problem across all of sports and we need people to become officials. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I, listen, I this is this is definitely a problem. I think we can acknowledge that, and it maybe be, becomes more of a problem over the years. But this is not a problem I'm willing to be a solution for. Yeah, you know, I'm not putting the hat on. I think we got to call our our best and our brightest. You know, you need people that are fit, that that <laughs> that, are, that are sharp, um, uh, that are fair, uh, uh, and are willing to you know take a level of uh, 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 you know verbal abuse. I think the what it comes down to, we just got to pay more. Because there are people like this that could get the job done, but the money's not right. You know, sure. they know they it's know what they're job. in for. You know, you go out there and you ref eight or nine games, you're going to have to throw at least one parent out. That parent's going to stand about forty feet away from you and threaten you. Yeah. You know, so you're, you're you're taking a lot into consideration, and I just don't think like forty or fifty bucks a game's enough. So, you know, I I think there's a lot of room to be critical of officials. I, I think it's a joke. I'm not making excuses for you know. Their egos and their pee poor performances from time to time, their lack of caring, their lack of ability to keep the players safe. I think all those criticisms are valid. But if we want better, we just got to pay more. You guys are all going to click on this headline when you see it, right? Violent monkey gangs have taken over a town in Thailand and yeah. police are out of answers. Yeah. You're clicking on that. Yeah, I've seen this story. Yeah, yeah. Are these the ones yeah, where we put the bananas out and they go nuts? No, no, those are the macaques. No, the, they, no, these are also the macaques. Oh my gosh, they're yes, back at it? They are back they're in organized a huge now. way. They're not in Bangkok this time. They're in Laburi or L O P B U R I. Keep saying it. La <laughs> Lot Burry, Keep it. Thailand. There, I believe it's east of Bangkok. Well, Chuck, you can confirm that for me. But basically it's a, it's a, it's traditionally a tourist town. Monkeys typically yeah. a feature of the tourism. Like they're just running mm -hmm. around. It's kind of fun. Like you're yeah. surrounded by monkeys we're all the time, there whatever. To see the monkeys. Cute, fun. Yeah, absolutely. But now they've they're they've gotten like a little bit brave, I guess, and just just violent. And so <laughs> yeah. These uh, the the police in the city have had to arm themselves with slingshots and tranquilizer guns to fend off violent macaques. "Quote: I'm aware of the potential danger from monkeys. They have started to pose a threat to tourists and locals. The slingshots now being carried by our officers will help to threaten the monkeys when necessary. But as it turns out, the slingshots are are mostly an attempt to just shoo them away. They're not like really. <laughs> they're not." really getting these monkeys and, and like like injuring them in a way or perhaps even killing them you need to go to the wrist rocket for that you know, okay experience. I, yeah. okay because i'm trying to figure out like what do you do here because now like these these monkeys they're they're highly intelligent we know that so now every time they see one of these tranquilizer guns they all just scram there you go and so now they're trying to figure out but but not scram in a good way they're just like running they're they're fleeing for a second and then boom they're oh. right back like they, they can now sense when these tranquilizer guns are out and the monkeys are oh. able to avoid them. So I'm yeah. thinking, like, you go your wrist rocket thing it might be a pretty good idea. Yeah, I was thinking like a like a flamethrower blowtorch situation. You know, uh, you got to do something because there's no <laughs> doubt that after generations, these, these things of are no, no joke. No consequences. They're taking advantage of it now. They don't what, know where the line is. So you got to reestablish the line. And what, they, are, yeah. what are the monkeys taking from us, though? What are we? What are we dealing with? Probably are, cameras. Are they grabbing? Are they? Are they grabbing phones? our hats? What are we doing Probably. here? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're. Our I think they're, they're slapping Probably. folks. You know, they're they're thinking that oh, it's a cute little monkey are we, here. Are we, I'm on my are trip are we, to are we Thailand. Biting, and, are we biting tourists or something? Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of poop being okay. thrown. There's some smacking. There's some poop being thrown. Oh. Okay, if that's the case, I like your flamethrower idea. Um, but apparently with these with these things, they have like a Don. 
like an Italian mafia money. Oh, yeah. You know, so they have like one stud badass yeah. monkey. And Caesar's I, his name. Icreo is his name. Oh, Icreo. He's particularly I aggressive Creo. towards local drivers and vendors. Officers put the monkey to sleep with a sedative dart. Uh, before locking it away in a cage. So they have captured what apparently is sort of like the queen bee of the okay. macaques running around. So they're hopeful that that will help things. But no. if you're going, if no, you're going on. It's going to make a matter, I yeah, think. I think that's, yeah. that's, that's just not. They're gonna know, maybe that rattles the cage him. even more. I, I don't think know. They're going to break him out. But they're if you're going tour, you know, touristing in Thailand, why? Lotbury is not the place you want to go right now. A lot more humane than I'd be right about now if my tourism's on the line. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. Uh, Thank you. Gonna bring Wrist out rockets, flamethrowers. Yeah. It's you time. Know, even trucks. Let's just round them all up and move them. You know, we're, we're doing something, though, rather in a hurry. It's time now for the G-Bag of the day. Into the Pimp Cup we go for Chris Strong. Dude, I like the idea of uh, escalation at that point. I'm flamethrower, yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. If a monkey takes my phone, like, yeah, it's, it's on. on. It's, it's on, on site. Yeah. It's on site. All right. We have a three-time winner looking for four times today. Looking for the four, Pete. Peyton Russell... Morning producer of Sean and RJ. He wrote this song for the Texas Rangers for opening day. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Rangers back in action. Not again. <laughs> yeah, I love the game from Bruce Bochy. You can never check me. Back to back for the Astros. I didn't get the message. Whoa. Back to back like I'm on the cover with a different weapon. Back to back like I'm making 93 and 94. I mean, whoa. <laughs> we got Seager if I forgot to mention. When I look back, I might get mad that I gave the bullpen this much attention. <laughs> yeah, but the injuries are weighing on my conscience. Yeah, you left the pitching staff with no options. I want to see the Rangers go insane. You're going to make Evaldi throw outside the frame. Wyatt Langford definitely brings the fame. You're going to make Chris Young go out of his way. I waited all season for the chance. I drove here listening to Creed on the ramps. I'm not sure what it was that oh, made stick on that beat, mad, but I guess this is what I got to do to make y'all stop. I mean, whoa. Ooh. Yeah, Jonah's fingers turned to dinger fingers. Yeah, Henderson got thrown out by Himes' fingers. I'm not the type of dude to believe in witches. Shout out to all the Astros fans, you stupid bitches. Yeah. Dude. It's fantastic, dude. It gets that better awesome. every time. In the sense that it's so awesome. a masterpiece so of dog bad. It's good. I love it. I heard uh, Wonder Bread Russell uh, as as a new rapper name for him. Wonder Bread. That's I good. like that. That's good. I like I like offbeat still instead of offset. Yeah, does offset. make you wonder. All right, this I, I'm trying to challenge Peyton today. I really want to beat him, so I'm giving you my best guys. Dan Orlovsky this morning on the Pat McAfee show, he ripped a fart. Yes, and he tried to claim he allegedly. Claim, allegedly, allegedly. Oh, this was not alleged. I know a fart when I hear one. Dude, let me know your guys' thoughts. He he says there's the windshield. I don't think that's the case. Hey, this guy's not only scoring, he's helping his teammates out. That's what you were. The hockey community is wrong. It's it's impossible to be at the top at both of those, essentially. Like, it's... (laughs) Another farting Dan Orlovsky situation. (laughs) Danny Dump. Danny Dump. What do you mean? It's, It's... it's unbelievable. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah, but your butt, your butt just that talking. Back. We heard it. We're your butt just farted into the phone again like you <laughs> oh, and Monday Night Football. Oh, no. That's what just happened. What do you mean? We're oh, oh, the second you remember Monday Night Football yeah. when you had your microphone and you went to sneeze and you banked down yeah, what and what it caught your fart? Said? Like, what do you, no, what do you, no, what do you, it's what not what you said. Your asshole just farted. pooped your pants, Dad. We heard you fart, brother. We heard you fart. We heard you fart, brother. Methane or gas. I did not. It's two times now, Dan. This is the Orlovsky thing. Fool me once, Dan. <laughs> are you guys being serious right now or are you messing with me? Dan. No. Dan. Oh, Dan. Come on, Dan. Are you being serious, Dan? Are you messing with me? I mean, it sounded like you pushed that one out, Dan. I mean, I hate to say it, but I'm siding with Orlovsky on this one. You think it was he's, the, he's blaming it on his windshield wiper? The windshield wiper. Can you play? Can you, when it goes dry, that's, that's the alleged brrr. fart right there. Yeah. I just don't. It's, that yeah. your windshield? Yeah. Ooh. Picking up on a mic like that? Just some it's bad it's dried. It's dried, okay? So it's dragging across. Uh but yes, um I, I don't think I don't think the microphone would have been close enough to the butt to pick up audio that good. But you know what would be? You know where the mic is? It's up there by the sunglasses holder when you're talking on Bluetooth while driving. Sure. That would get the windshield wiper. But why oh. would it only why would it only happen once? 
Like he just accidentally hit it one time. Okay. I mean, well, you're never fair. having when just it, a one rebuttal. wipe. Sometimes when you're not paying attention, that sound is what lets you know, oh, it's time to turn my windshield wipers off. Now, did we see him, Chris, in the middle of this video after the alleged fart? Did we see him reach for something to be like, oh, I need to turn my windshield wiper off? Dude, he he didn't reach for anything. He smiled a little bit too. That's yeah. that's kind of like it was, me, it, was a, it was a bleep eating grin. Yeah, to me, yeah. I think this was uh, this well, was a fart. This, isolate that alleged fart one more time. Yeah, let me let me go back to that. Right, this is not a windshield. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, I mean, that's a cheek flapper. If you I've guys know, heard. I've done my share of flatulence in the room here with all, everyone. Yeah, you're talking to a fart expert it. here in Walter. And I you're right. gonna... That is one where, and he was embarrassed about it clearly because he keeps trying to just talk it through. Like, what are you guys doing? What are you trying to say? I respect Taylor that Clark. move, though. I respect that move. You just like but we you heard just power it. through and you hope that no one heard the we loudest heard fart it. they've ever heard. And at that point, you just got to own it. Yeah. It happens. We all do this. Everybody toots. All right, let, let's go uh, to truck, truck wreck. Not the truckwreck.com text line. The Frankel text line. Let's keep this controversy going during this clip right here. Aries Spurs, or Spears, pardon me, his stand-up. This was a crazy laugh in the crowd. That's what y'all gonna try to repeat tonight. Nobody's gonna believe you. What you mean? It was a girl that sounded like a fire truck. She keeps going. <laughs> it sounds like she needs some oil. <laughs> Remember the wind? Slide some oil to me. The Wiz was a black version of. <laughs> Hilarious. What's your name, brother? Lee. Where, 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 did, where did you meet her? Playing basketball. Playing basketball? Yeah. Was she the horn? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Good. good improv there from Aries Spears. Does a heck of a Shaq impression as well. All right, is it our three-time champ, Peyton Russell, looking for four right here? Is it Dan Orlovsky and the greatest truth or fart in the history of the nation, which is saying a lot? Amen. Or is it that uh, that Aries Spears stand-up? I'll, uh, I'll vote Orlovsky. Uh, Chief, how about you? Yeah, yeah, I want to... I want to get to the bottom of this fart, man. I do too. <laughs> Alleged fart. Dude, shout out Orlovsky. I'm voting him too. <laughs> Bully? <laughs> like the two on four. I'm driving and I just turned my windshield wiper on to listen to it and it didn't sound anything like that. <laughs> then a follow up. <laughs> I just turned my windshield wiper on and it sounded just like that from the 469. So yeah, I'm going Orlovsky. Everybody turn your windshield wipers on. Yeah. Brian? I'll give a vote to Peyton. Yeah, salute to Peyton. Uh, an honorary five-time G-Bag of the yeah. Day champion. I'll put that in the calendar and make sure he is eligible for the G-Bag of the Year. It's only fitting. Okay, uh, Krusty's Corner's coming up next. Where are you taking us? Yeah, the Cowboys released uh, some of their names to their 30 visits. Let's go through those guys. We'll do that next. Coming up Wednesday morning on Sean and
tackles in the draft. What's their the strategy with the Cowboys here to potentially bring in the best? Are we talking about a trade up here? Yeah, I mean, he would have Due to diligence. be, he would have to be a, a trade up guy. I mean, it's also just you never know. Weird things happen during the draft. I don't think anybody expected C.D. Lamb to be there. I'd be stunned if Fuaga made it to 24. But yeah, you bring him in, you talk to him. I mean, certainly you look at the athletics, the athleticism he has. He is unbelievable. He I is. think he's the best run blocking lineman in the draft. Line, run yeah. blocking tackle for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, the dude, I, I'd be surprised if he made it out of the top 10. I, I've kind of always had him go into the Jets at 10 is where I've I've kind of, that's his the resting place that I feel like that he would be. When you have these 30 visits, do, you, do your doctors, do you get the, your own medical look at these Absolutely. guys? Absolutely. You, you, yep. you can circle back from the combine because we're going to get to another guy. The Cowboys said that Jackson Powers Johnson, the center from Oregon, we talked sure. about him. You know, there's uh, I, there's been some medical questions about him that need to be addressed. We talked about Daniel Jeremiah keeping him out of a mock, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, well, dropping him down in a mock. We talked about Mel Kiper had him completely out of the Who's first Who's our guy round? down in Houston that does the uh, the Zerline? Zerline yeah, didn't even have him in the first round. Which is uh, interesting. Uh, his Zerline, mock. Zerline's pretty plugged in. That's a medical Zer red flag. Yeah. If I've, if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Zerline and Zerline usually has a really good handle on all these offensive linemen. Dallas is bringing in Jackson uh, Powers Johnson from Oregon. They're also bringing in Trey Benson, the running back from Florida State. I love that. Kind of a, uh, the type of back that can do everything, never come off the field. Tough, hard nosed runner, yeah, my catches the ball back. well. Yeah. He's your top guy. He's my right? number one guy. Number one guy. How'd you have Bucky Irving from Oregon? The I think running. I've got Bucky like RB5, but Bucky Irving's a fun player. He's just a little bit small, a little undersized, but he's dependable, smart runner. Uh, it's hard not to love that dude's tape. I yeah. got it at brisket sandwich number three, by the way, Brian. Bucky. Bucky? Not bad. Not bad for a gas station. And I got to stop every time to get yeah. that Bucky Irving. I, I tell you what, though, to me, I've kind of fallen in love with the sausage sandwiches they have at Ooh. Bucky's now. Okay, I'm glad you guys are bringing this up because I just saw Trayvon Diggs tweet out something a, 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 about an hour ago oh, about how there's no good cheesesteaks in Dallas. And I'm like, dude, go get the, the Texas Philly from Bucky's, dog. Yeah. Hey, Jersey that? Mike's. That thing's yeah. delicious. Hey, Jersey Mike's Jersey is Mike's dominant is a great as well. Philly. Yeah. yeah. And there's, some, there's some good places here. He's just missing out. Uh,. <laughs> Junior Colston, linebacker from Michigan. Yeah, big dude. Is in, and there's going to be, I have a feeling when we start to get all these names or hear more of these names, the Cowboys are going to be in a run where they're going to interview, probably bring in, I'd say, four to five of these linebackers. I well, and a be, lot of these guys have some medical concerns too, like Peyton Wilson, NC yeah, State. Yeah, Peyton Wilson, probably a name. Uh, Cooper from Texas A&M will be a clean player for them. I'm sure he's a guy that they'll probably bring in. How about Darius Robinson, the edge from Missouri? Yeah, Robinson's an interesting player. Played basketball in high school. He was all SEC. Battled through some injuries in two of his five seasons. But he's a guy, you look at him, I think his best football is probably ahead of him. He's got strength, athleticism. Uh, he's got some bend, can set the edge, play the run. I think he's him and verse, two very complete ends. Right. I totally agree with you on that. Uh, Braylon Allen. The running back from Wisconsin. Not my flavor of ice cream there as a yeah, running back. For, for his size, 
He's just not physical enough for me. Yeah, if, I think, he, if he was actually an ice cream flavor, what flavor would it be? Uh, vanilla. Yeah, vanilla. Just bland. If yeah. it's blocked up, he gets it. Yeah. Otherwise, he's not creating for you. Very straight ahead type he of He needs guy. a little chocolate syrup or, needs a, or needs something. needs a little, hard, a little shell, hot fudge there, little you know? hard shell, Ooh. something like that to spice things up. Underrated. And in the last 30 seconds or so here, Wolchek, I want you to, they're going to bring in, they, they said that they're going to bring in Graham Barton, the center from. from <laughs> you teed me up? I'm teeing you up. Yeah, I'm the president of the Graham Barton fan club. I think I've made that very, very clear. He's my guy. He is who I want the Cowboys to have at 24. I love him. Mean, nasty. Obviously, we're projecting. He kicks inside the center. He has played it before. Yes. It's not like he hasn't taken snaps at center. Uh, and he is coming off of that shoulder surgery, but it all seems like he's going to be fine. But I love me some Graham Barton. Yeah. He will absolutely help you in the run game, and he's going to add some attitude to that offensive line. I totally agree with you on I'm that. In. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you, Brian. Uh, the Corner brought to you by Reliant Air Conditioning, gimmick-free AC repair and replacement. You know, maybe my palate just isn't developed, but I've been to Philly. I had the Genos and the Pats, mm -hmm. and I thought, yeah, it's a pretty good cheesesteak, but when I get a good one around DFW, to me, it stacks up. Yeah. Now, may maybe, I maybe I'm doing the out-of-towner thing where I think the gas station barbecue is just as good as as uh, Hurtado, but I, I don't think so, Brian. Now, you're more of a Philly guy. You worked yeah. there for a year. What I do you say? I do. I think that, you know, to me, the, the two, the, 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 there's, I think you have to go outside the city to get the best cheesesteaks. There's really? certain, yeah, there's certain areas that are much better than being in. My, me personally, I think you could do a Philly cheesesteak at home. I, I really do. You take the, you know, you take your, your, oh, your sure. steak, you know, you chop it thin, especially if you got some type of ability to cook on a flat top. You kill the cow first, well, and then you go make, ahead no, and milk I, it I'm first gonna, before yeah. you kill the cow so you nah. can get the cheese. No, no, yeah, the cheese, but it. you could buy Cheese Whiz. Mm -hmm. You could go out and physically buy Cheese Whiz, and that's what they use. They so just, the best Sandos are, frustrating. are outside of downtown Philadelphia? I think so. Isn't it like Angelo's? Oh, yeah, there, there's another there's, place. There's, there's, I know it's not Ishkabibbles. No. That's what Bobby Bell Bobby went to Ishkabibbles. But Bobby's got a terrible palate. We all know that. Right. That's but true. no, I think outside the city or, you know, Gino you and trust Pat, a place called Ishka Bibbles. They're fine. But I, to me, <laughs> around here in town, I, I think I can make a better one than those. All right. Lenny's makes really good cheese steaks and grapevine. Fat Shack and Denton has a good cheese steak. But Fat Shack and Plano now, too. A lot of people weighing in with some of the top cheese steaks. Uh, Trayvon, if you're listening, the peppered sandwich from Cheese Steak House, says uh, a 469 participant. Okay, uh, it's time for the NFL news of the day. Uh, we'll check where we're going. Yeah, we got Deron Bland cashing in. The Honey Badgers talking Bijan. You might need to change your underwear here in a second, mm -hmm. Brian. <laughs> uh, how about Herbie sharing some info on the new NCAA football game? That's exciting. That's next on the fan. I don't know, Wolchuk. I heard cashing in, and all I could think about was prize picks. Of course, America's number one fantasy sports app. Over three million active members, including me and Wolchuk, and all the uh, the real sports fans here in the DFW Metroplex. They're all over that prize picks. I'm serious. This is the only app that I absolutely have to have on my smartphone. Uh, the Prize Picks is the number one, and I got a promo code for you. You need to pull that phone out right now and download the app today. Prize Picks. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps, on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers, man. All you do is you pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and then you watch the winnings roll in. For example, I'm going more on 29 and a half points for Luka tonight, more on 19 and a half points for Kyrie Irving tonight, and I'm going more than four and a half half rebounds for Aaron Gordon of the Denver Nuggets tonight. That's what I'm doing all throughout the basketball playoffs. The biggest moments in college basketball happening right now as well on the men's and women's side. There's no point in watching your favorite players play your favorite sport and not cashing in on it. And Price Picks is the best way to get in on the action when it comes to sports in more than 30 states across the country, including right here in the great state of Texas. So it's time to capitalize, ladies and gentlemen. The only app that I must have on my phone. Download the app today. Use code TOLO for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code TOLO on prize picks for a deposit match up to $100. Don't forget, baseball's back. You know, Bombie's hitting the donk ski tonight. Cash in on prize picks, and uh, you must be present in certain states, including Texas. Visit prizepicks.com for details. Miss any show segments? Disc, disc, disc. But fear not. You can go back and listen to our bad shows, and it's easier than ever on the Odyssey app. Check it out. This is Jim Rome with an Odyssey Sports Minute. We already talked about Caitlin Clark getting hers last night. And you
the G-Bag Nation, right here on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. It's hour two. G-Bag Nation, 105.3 The Fan. Firehouse subs getting some love. Philly Shack in Watauga. That's off. the one. Really? That's the one. Nice. A big Philly Shack. Philly yeah. Shack in Watauga right there, 377. Me and my wife stopped in there randomly a couple months ago, and she talks about it almost weekly. What's that place you had me stop by your old place? There was a, there was a, a I brought Philly cheesesteaks in one day that we, there was a place over by where you used to live when I was dropping you off one day. Oh. Can you not, I'm sorry, I didn't mean Is that to put the pizza you, spot? Uh, but they had Philly cheesesteaks and we got a bunch of them and brought they them They had back. the muffaletta too? Did they have the Mark Cuban? Yeah, they had, they had all the that. the Mark Cuban yeah, sandwich. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what that place is okay. called, but it's in Grapevine. Okay. That was fire though. Okay. It was. Yeah. 903 says Fred's downtown yeah. Philly, absolutely the best cheese We got steak. one in Plano. It's pretty good. It says the owners are from Philly. Here's Wolchuk with your NFL Yeah, news it's also like today. an Eagles den, so I can never go in there. I went in there one time, picked up a Philly in high school. I will never go back, but it yeah. was a good sandwich. And shout out to you. I, I hope other people are, are bringing you business that aren't diehard Cowboy fans like myself speaking of those cowboys <laughs> deron bland has earned a performance-based pay raise after his record setting 2023 uh, now the nfl announced yesterday that players would receive i think it's just roughly under 400 million dollars in performance-based pay cowboys corner deron bland among the top 25 earners he's cashing in with 759,000. Seven hundred and fifty-six dollars to his twenty twenty-three salary, which is quite a bit. I mean, that's a lot of money for Deron Bland, who I believe was a fifth round pick. He was. So his salary's not exactly uh, huge. Number one uh, ended up being John Simpson, the guard yeah. from uh, Baltimore. Reed Blankenship was on here. Um, you had Osiris Torrance from mm-hmm. Buffalo, who we were considering the Cowboys maybe looking into in the second round. But shout out to Deron Bland. Brock Purdy also cashed in, made himself an extra seven hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. But good for Deron; he deserves it. You know who was last on that list? I do. Go for it. Was it Aaron Rodgers? Aaron yes. Rodgers. Like he got $781 like bucks or something? Yeah. No, yeah, it was $81.14. It was $81. And 14 cents. Yeah. Yeah, he, well, I mean, he doesn't need that. Well, I, I don't even understand how he could have gotten that. Like, for playing three seconds? Yeah. Yeah, three snaps. I mean, what was So it? he makes every play, he makes $81. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> That, that is, makes that is more nuts. Than that, of course. Uh, we do have Ian Rappaport that the Chiefs have agreed to terms with former first round pick Clyde Edwards Hilaire on a one year deal. So he's going to go back to Kansas City. That was a name uh, that was thrown out there. I thought he was going to be really good, and he hasn't been. Man, Brian Westbrook comps, you yeah. know, with him coming out. I thought out of LSU. Andy. I thought Andy and those guys would. You you you, you watched the the year that LSU won the national championship in 2019. He won the Alabama game for LSU that day. He was really good. The in way college. he played against all those those fine Alabama defensive players. He he Joe Burrow and Jay, those guys played well. It was Clyde Edwards who won that game for you though. Hey, I'm surprised he didn't have. It's not had the type of career that I thought he would. Yeah, me too. Shout out to the 469 and the 817 and the 512. Is it Weinberger's Deli? Yes. And Grapevine? Yeah, that Weinberger's. I, Weinberger's. Used to, I, I, brought, I brought food up here from them before. Yes. Shout out to Weinberger's they're Deli. They're very good. They got a lot of different variety of sandwiches, by the way. It Come sounds like it. They've got, they're really, their sandwiches are excellent. Now, we had uh, Sirius XM was talking with Coach Mike McCarthy, and this, this might be from last week, of course, during the uh, meetings in Orlando, but coach talking about doing a little bit more with less some internal growth and uh well he might be the best man for the job if you go back to his track record with green bay here's coach mccarthy well i think just like uh every season you know in in, in our league you know there's there's things that come out of it and, and the big thing is from a business perspective you know you're, you're always going to lose guys that you you really like to hold on to i mean there's you know especially as a coach you never want to lose your guys um but uh, but you know the guys that have moved on for for good business decisions for them personally i mean you you applaud that but you know i i frankly have a lot of experience in this area you know i've been a draft and develop program uh coach since 2006 so I, I just think you just learn patience and there is a process we got some young players that you know no one's talking about right now in house you know coming off IR and things like that so I've always focused on the guys I know are going to be there because um, you're always going to be adding players you're always trying to add players so I, I get what it what it you know the reality of what free agency brings and uh, but you know I, I think you can improve your team in the offseason through player acquisition, but it's uh, I think it, the most important is player development. And that's that's where we have always focused on. And uh, we have a great facility. We've got a lot of guys that, you know, live 
right there in Dallas. So our participation is top notch, and we are improving as we speak right now. He's, he could be the best guy for the job, huh? Yeah. Draft and develop. That's yeah. been his thing going back to Green Bay. And, well, and this team wants that, to draft and develop with the best of them. That's what Green Bay does. He was. He was. He was. Uh, that's. He had no choice. You know, Teddy. Teddy picked the players. Teddy signed the players. Teddy found the players. Mike coached him up. He's in that situation right now. Here. Damn right. You know, he's he's that's what he's dealing with here with the uh, you know, and, and he's comfortable with that. That's fine. You know, even though he's probably in the last year of his deal, uh, you know, maybe this could be the final campaign for him. You know, he's gonna sit there, he's gonna he's gonna die on that hill. Yeah, and it sucks because I, I think you can do a lot worse than Mike McCarthy. I think he's a program builder. I think you just gotta put great coordinators with him. <clears throat> and if somebody can get this message through to the thick skulls of the Jones boys. Mike's your guy. Find coordinators that have worked with McVeigh or Shanahan, and I, I think you'll uh, you'll have it cracked. Because what Mike is doing, keeping guys healthy, like developing players and troubleshooting both sides of the ball, what we've seen in his four years, it's like ten times greater than what they thought was awesome with Jason Garrett. Agreed. That's what you're risking is going back to a situation like that. Yeah, I mean, this was a team that hadn't made the postseason in back-to-back -back years since the '90s. And now they've won three games in 12 years. And the unfortunate thing is we are so frustrated uh, that it's really just all about the postseason success. Like winning three game, or 12 games in three years just doesn't matter. It's hollow because you've just flamed out in the postseason. But he has done a good job being a consistent winner. And you better hope that you get that internal growth, man, and nail these draft picks. She now, said. The Vikings uh, and Wes Phillips. Wes Phillips actually spent some time here with the Cowboys. Uh, Wade's son. He's been yeah. suspended after a careless driving, and that happened a while back, but they, I guess they came to a resolution. I think it's going to be three games for Wes Phillips. He's with the Minnesota Vikings. One of their He's their offensive coordinator there, so him and Kevin O'Connell came to an understanding, so he will get punished internally by Minnesota. And then Eric, the Cardinals have been ordered to pay their ex-vice president, Terry McDonough, $3 million yeah. for defamation. This wow. is quite interesting. So an NFL arbitrator has ordered the Cardinals to pay that $3 million for false and defamatory statements the team made about him to the media, according to a decision filed in federal court yesterday. It's a 62-page decision uh, that you can go through and read if you want to. We are not going to do that here. But big win. Be a good segment. Big win for Terry. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's amazing. And I, I think it's just another L for Arizona, which is a dysfunctional, poorly run organization. It really is, man. That is yeah. just a, that is a gross team. Now, C.J. Goodwin, uh, Cowboys re-signed him. He's their special team's ace. He was talking with DallasCowboys.com. He's pumped about the rule changes. He says, I like him. I know Bones is extra excited about getting this rule change. We actually ran drills in training camp in anticipation of this getting changed at some point. And speed is one thing, running down the field, but there was a lot of dead time when you kick the ball out of the end zone, so it adds a lot of action to the game. He said they're exciting and, and they're expecting more returns this year, which is more plays for everybody. We're looking forward to it. And I hope that it means good news for Kevontae Turpin as well. But it's going to be, it'll probably take some getting used to for all of us. But I am excited to see hopefully this does add a, a fun new wrinkle to the game. A couple of, I was watching, was it, uh, what's our le new league called? U the U the USFL? UFL. UFL. No it's just the UFL. UFL. I, they, you know, Dallas makes a, or Dallas, Arlington makes a field goal. They kick off. Next thing you know, the ball's at the 50. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what they're hoping you're going to see from, uh, from this, the kickoff rule and the, uh, in the NFL, that that somehow that you know you kick the ball, you let these returners have a chance, you block it up. They you know there's really you get through that first touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. You, touchdowns. you get through that first line, you got a chance to get the ball out to midfield. Brian, who was your favorite player in the draft last year? Will Levis. Oh, I liked Will Levis. We know, we know. But who that, was that who was my favorite, favorite player? This B. John Robinson. Of course, it was. You loved yourselves. And B. I, did, John. I just didn't want to go there. As did a lot I, of people. I know Eric was just going to jump on me about it being a running back. And Barry Sanders. Who cares? He's a hell of a player. Uh, now Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, was talking and giving some real high praise for Bijan, and I thought of you when I heard this. Here's what the Honey Badger had to say about uh, his division rival with the Atlanta Falcons and Bijan Robinson. Well, when I say Bijan Robinson, what do you think? Man, he's going to be special. Marshall Falk. You know, Ezra and James, you know what I mean? Like, like LaDainian Tomlinson, you know? And I didn't think the Falcons really used him as good as they should have last year, but man, he's going to be good. He's going to be real good. It's on the green light with Chris Long. You yeah. Gotta, you got to go change your undies there, Brian. 
Oh, you know, I, 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 I agree. I, the, the thing about it, what's amazing about it's a n- nice way of calling his diaper something that it's not. The uh, yeah, we can change those too. Just throw those away. It's okay. The uh, the thing about it is the though, pens. Atlanta, what a what a wasted opportunity oh. for them. It, their Arthur coach Smith, got fired because Ar- of it. Yeah, Arthur Smith, you know, I mean, you talk about you want to follow like sports criminal charges against a guy for. <laughs> yeah. A top 10. Atlanta never has a top 10 defense. They finally got one. And they have all those skilled players. And again, I get the quarterback situation. Maybe it should address that. But my gosh, the fact that what they did they, that what they did with the players that they had there, he deserved to get fired. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, Drake London wasted. Kyle Pitts wasted. Hopefully now with the new offensive staff and Zach Robinson, they'll be in good shape. The Chiefs are signing Carson Wentz to back up Patrick Mahomes. Carson Wentz still getting jobs. Well, now okay, now see what he's done. He's gone from our guy out there with the Rams, mm-hmm. learned from McVay. Yep. Now he's going to go learn from Andy Reid. This is going to benefit for him. Maybe this will long- resurrect his career. Well, I think in the somebody long- will give him another starting in opportunity. The, well, in the long run, though, he's been in a couple of different systems that that everybody seems to like. We when we when we talk about the Rams and the Chiefs, like okay, what kind of guys you want? Well, let's give me the guys who've been in the Rams and Chiefs system. That's true. So, that's a smart move on his part. Maybe he'll end up being an awesome offensive coordinator. Maybe so. That could be the case. Maybe so. But, uh, yeah, as a backup, eh, I could see a team taking a flyer there. He won a game for the Rams last year, didn't he? He started a did game. He? I think he I started. Think he did start week, a game. I think he started week uh, week 18. That Was it week 18? They did. They benched their starters yeah. against San Francisco. And they won. And they ended up winning. Yeah. All right. Maybe this could be, uh, this could be something here for Carson Wentz. Commanders are uh, going to sign a veteran quarterback to help mentor. Maybe you should have signed Carson Wentz. They decided to bring in Jeff Driscoll. Oh, yeah. He's Jeff Driscoll, who's also been a bit of a journeyman. Uh, he played a good game with the Lions against the Cowboys a few years ago, but Jeff Driscoll is going to end up going to the Commanders so he can mentor Jaden Daniels or Drake May or whoever the hell they end up taking. John Harbaugh has also welcomed uh, Lamar Jackson weighing in on some of these college prospects ahead of the draft. I don't know how well this ends up working. Like when you have your quarterback that – has some say. Troy Aikman did that. I, I think David Romo, LaFleur. I think Romo, didn't we hear Romo did? And then you ended up with like a Gavin Escobar kind of thing. Gavin Escobar. Yeah. Yeah. What did I say? Escobar. Did I? Yeah. Keep trying. Mm. Uh, that was a Freudian God slip. Dead. It was just an accident. Oh, I did you say it on purpose? Accident. I'm saying, did you say it on purpose? No, no. It was Gavin he's Escobar. No, he's no longer with us. I know. I, know. I used to That's say that on purpose, and I've since refrained doing that oh. since the story. I'm sorry. I thought you were trying That's, to say that. That's me, unfortunately, rubbing off on Wolchuk. That was unintentional there on Wolchuk's Not part. Not intentional. Oh, I've never heard you I, say it that way. Well, I, I haven't ever said it that way. I just did that time, and it was... Uh, there was a time where I was going to get an Ascobar jersey where it was spelled like <laughs> it sounds. Yeah. You were going to do that? I was, mm-hmm. but no, I'm not, I'm not going to move forward But he forward was a sweet, sweet man. He was. Uh, Kirk Herbstreit on with Pat McAfee, giving us a little bit of updates on this EA Sports College Football 25 game. Now, Herbie didn't fart like Dan Orlovsky did earlier, and he didn't have his dog with him either, Eric, so I'm sure you'll be excited oh, to that's hear that. Oh, that's Eric. Eric, that's the first thing he was that's, watching. He's watching the biggest surprise watch of dog his day. And a dog. Yeah. Yeah, I'll watch dog and Herbie over here. Where's, right, the, where's the puppy? Did Herbstreit have the dog with him and have a credential around but his no, neck? no, this is exciting. Was everybody petting the dog? <laughs> Nobody was petting the dog. The dog was nowhere was to be seen. Was the dog kicking field goals? For money, he might have been. He might have been. Is and the dog what? on the headset. He's the new Air <laughs> Bud. He's going to be featured in the new Bud franchise. But here's uh, Kirk Herbstreit giving us a insight on that uh, game. Okay, how much have you been working on that? Is that already done? Hey, in the barn? Or are we still? Yeah, yeah, a lot. We're still banging around on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's uh, something that it's uh, like a little bit. It, it's yeah. tedious work, but I enjoy it because once the finished product comes out, it'll be a lot of fun. You know, there's a, a variety of voices. In the past, there's always just the, the same two or three people call every game. Now I think there's going to be different uh, different broadcast booths for different types of games that, that you play in. So that, that'll be kind of a different wrinkle. Uh, but, yeah, I think it comes out in July. But, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's work that we do usually two or three hours at a time. And I, I've, got, uh, I've got a bunch still to go. This is going to be awesome. One, we're thinking July release. He kind of tossed that in there. But now we're going to have multiple announcers. I mean, this game, I cannot wait for this game to come out. I've been waiting eagerly like the rest of America for the last decade. Is it like Joe Tessitore now doing it's your games here. for you? 
Joe, maybe, maybe we get a little. I think Joe's good at college football. Wasn't great at Monday night. I think he's best at boxing. Joe's like a, every like every like a four yard gain is like the best play ever. Yes, he's a screamer on a four yard play. He is. But I think uh, this is going to be fantastic work here by EA Sports, and I hope it's an absolutely fantastic game, and everybody loves playing it. I was kind of hoping we'd get the McAfee crew doing how they do their little sideline you know, for big, yeah, yeah, for big games. Like, yeah. could we get that? The McAfee cast, maybe. Maybe we go ahead and just uh, if it's a Longhorns expand. game, can I get McConaughey on headset? All right, all right, know? all right. Yeah, let's do this. We get Will Why Ferrell. Can you do anything USC? other McConaughey beside the one you just did? Well, that's the thing. That's what everyone does. Okay, there's no no this booger in my finger. For, yeah. you know. Something about a car, like you know, this cotton. Oh, look, look at this. Look at this whiskey. Uh, yeah, something like that. Oh, dude. I think he's more of a tequila guy. Chiefs also have strong interest in former Bengals standout slot receiver Tyler Boyd. So maybe uh, that ends up being another addition for Pat Mahomes in that KC offense. Shoot, yeah, Boyd. Thank you, Wolchuk. Shoot, yeah, Boyd. <laughs> we will uh, be back with uh, some sports, and it's a Rangers interview. Jared Walsh. Yes. The man filling in for Nathaniel Lowe admirably at first base has a hell of a backstory. We saved him from the Angels, brought him to Ranger Country, and he joins you next right here on 105.3 The Fan. I want to chat with you about my friends at Window.
Welcome back, Nation. Hope you're having a good one. It is time now for the Rangers Player Show. Segment of the Nation is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate your vehicle at carsforkids.org. And it's uh, brought to you by the Frankels. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Franklin and Frankel, the go-to attorneys for car, truck, wrecks, and DFW. If you or a loved one's been in an accident, contact the Frankels for a free consultation. It's 214 or 817 333 Go to truckwreck.com. Joining us now here on your home of the Rangers is the man holding it down at first base, hitting a clean 357 with a three ribbies in the bomb ski and 14 plate appearances so far. OPS 1,000. It's uh, Jared Walsh here with you on 105.3 The Fan. And a good afternoon, sir. How the heck are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're doing we're doing awesome, man. Congrats on on the start and and, uh, and the success you're having there. How how are you getting settled in? You enjoying this? I'm loving it, honestly. Uh, it's early, but one of the best baseball experiences I've ever had. So very happy to be here and uh, enjoying every day. And I hear you're sleeping good again. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, I am sleeping pretty good. That's a um, getting like eight or nine hours now, so that's exciting. That wasn't happening for a while. So, when did you get clear of that? And 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 tell our audience that might not be familiar a little bit of your journey through it. Yeah, just um, you know, towards the end of the 2021 season, I started dealing with some neurological issues, kind of affected my sleep, my recovery, vision, headaches, the whole nine yards. wasn't really too much fun. So. Um, you know, battled that the last few years, and then it seemed like kind of towards the end of last season and into this off season, I started to feel a little bit more like myself. So, um, you know, I think it's just keep that good momentum rolling and see how this season shakes out. Man, that's got to be incredibly exciting for you that, you you know, you can resume what was, you know, just a brilliant 2021 season uh, up until there at the end, right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, and I think, you know, hitting in a lineup like this makes it a lot easier because there's so many studs that, uh, you know, it's kind of a pass the baton mentality. If Corey doesn't do it, then Marcus will and Adolis and obviously, you know, Josh is out, but he had a great night last night. So there's just so many guys in this lineup that pick up the slack that it's fun to add a little depth. How has that relationship with Tim Hires been for you to to rejoin him with the Rangers, but also now help get to you back that All Star form where you were as a hitter in 2021? Yeah, the entire hitting staff here is just unbelievable, uh, and that was I knew that going into it, and uh, you know I hope to work with hitters after my playing career is done as well. So being able to learn from these guys, both uh, for my own swing, but other people's swings, was something that was really appealing to me. So. I think when they reached out, it got me really excited, and my agent and I kind of felt like this was a good spot for me. Has there been anything different, or has it been just what you imagine? Like outside looking in, you see they're the champions, you know, Bochi, Chris Young, all the guys on this team, but has it been exactly what you sort of imagined it was going to be? Uh, yeah, I think just when you play in the division against teams, you kind of get a feel for – uh, what you at least think the clubhouse is like, what the guys are like. And, you know, I've been in this division since 2019. And then guys like Seeger, you know, if, when I'm with the Angels, he's with the Dodgers, you play against them a good bit as well. So I felt like I kind of had a good feel, and it's been exactly what I had hoped it would be. So, um, yeah, they've welcomed me with open arms. It's been a blast. Brand new Texas Ranger Jared Walsh with us here in the nation. H- have you been granted any sort of uh, ox cord? Uh, privileges in the clubhouse you get to throw on your playlist yet? I leave that to guy, my guy Nathaniel Lowe. He does an <laughs> outstanding job on all the flights, but we have pretty similar tastes in music, so I'm not going to complain about anything he puts on. Okay, I didn't know if you were filling in for him on the diamond, like you get to also fill in for him <laughs> no. on the ox cord. No, no, he's great at his job. Hey, Jared, you played uh, baseball in Cape Cod in, in the summertime? I did. Did did you enjoy that experience? Because we talk about there's a lot of players that go up there and all that, and you you live with families and stuff like that. It, it, how does that how does that all transpire? Yeah. Um, so when I was at the University of Georgia, I went up after my sophomore year to Cape Cod. Um, I lived with the Casey family in, yeah. uh, I believe it was Sandwich where they live, Catuit area, Massachusetts. And played a summer. It was great. Uh, I got to see parts of the Northeast that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. So, yeah, I mean, definitely played against a lot of big leaguers when I was there uh, or guys that ended up playing in the big league. So um, I think it's I think it's probably the best uh, summer collegiate baseball league there is. Were you bummed when Georgia got left out of the college football playoff? 
I was bummed, but you know how it goes. If you're going to lose, you got to lose early. Yeah. Because once you pick up that momentum at the end of the year, like Alabama did, that's really more important than going undefeated and losing when everybody's eyes are on you. Are you a big you big college football guy then? I am. Yeah, I am a big college football guy. Um, I watch a little bit of NFL. I'm a huge Steeler fan as well. So okay. uh, it's been, you know, the Steelers have been a little rough, but Georgia winning back-to-back national championships. I don't really have too much room to complain. <laughs> no, sir. No, it's it's been a good ride for us as well here, uh, uh, Jared. Now, from my understanding, you you kind of grew up in Wisconsin, and then Georgia. How the Steelers come into play for you? Yeah, both of my parents are actually from Pittsburgh. So oh. when I was a kid, uh, we had season tickets. We lived in right outside of Atlanta, but eight times a year we were flying to Pittsburgh to wow. go to every home game for the Steelers, and then I was fortunate enough to go to Super Bowl Forty. So I, I was a spoiled brat when I was a kid. I got to watch sporting events people would kill to go to, so I'm very thankful, and you know, my family and I really cherish those moments. Did, was there a jersey? Because everybody, when you go to a Pittsburgh game, everybody's got a jersey on. Did you have a jersey as a kid that you were always wearing, uh, supporting when you, were, when you were going to those games? I had a, when I was really young, it was a Plexico Burris jersey, yeah. blast from the past, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> Literally. Moved, on, moved on to Heinz Ward. He was, he was one of my favorites. It was always... A you know, Georgia guy, blocker. right? Yeah, reliable, uh, yeah. great hands. Yeah, Georgia, great Georgia smile. alum. So he was, he was my guy. Now at six foot two ten, I got to imagine the football coaches were trying to get a young Jared Walsh on that field. Well, I, yeah, that's that's the thing. I played defensive end when I was younger. I've never hit anybody hard in my entire life. <laughs> I was an arm tackle, and you got right by me. But I could throw the football a little bit, so. They would try to get me to go out for the football team, but I was playing baseball every day in at East Cobb um, in the summers, and I was always kind of a baseball guy. Football, my mom had to drag me to football practice. I'd fake sick and do whatever I could to not go to practice. And baseball, I was running out the door, so I think that's why I'm still playing. So were you a, like a, a Pirates fan or a Braves fan or, or Brewers? How, how, did you have an elite, a strong allegiance as a kid? Uh, so my my parents are from Pittsburgh, so we did watch the pirates, but I'm sure as you guys know, the early two thousands were not the pirates heyday. Um, and then in my childhood, my parents bought me these, I think they're HBO documentaries, like when it was a game, uh, baseball, old school baseball documentaries. And it was pretty much just like Yankees propaganda. So I'm like, hey, guys, I'm a Yankee fan now. And they're like, what are you talking about? You can't be a Yankee fan. Uh, and so, yeah, that that wasn't a good thing for them. But I grew up, I loved the Yankees. So um, that was my team when I was younger. What's it like for you as you've gotten some experience pitching out of the bullpen? I always think it's interesting when we get some of the, uh, you know, your infielders or an outfielder goes out there and you got to pitch late in the game. What do you have in your arsenal there? Yeah, I wanted to kind of compete. I was a, a pitcher in college, so when I would get on the mound, I was trying, which, you know, guys, like, they'd see me and they were assumed I was going to throw it like 78, and I'm like, no, I'm going to, like, treat it like a reel at bat. So um, for me, it was just uh, consistently trying to throw strikes because when you're down 15 to nothing, nobody yeah. wants to see somebody walk in the house. So it was get the fastball over the plate and let the defense work a little bit. How long uh, into your career were you thinking – you know, pitching was still an option. Well, I pitched in the major leagues in 2019. So, um, and then until you got hurt, you were you going to be like an Otani, like an American Otani? Uh, I think it was. Kind of, I think it kind of depended on what my role was going to be. If I was a first baseman playing 150 games, I doubt they'd want me pitching too much. But you know, in 2019, I probably got 10 to 12 extra days of service time as being a mop up guy when we were. Yeah up by a lot or down by a lot. So, you know, I think that had I not gotten injured, that could have been something, maybe take a little heat off the bullpen, but I guess we'll never know. Is that part of why Boach likes having you? Can you, can you still give us some innings if uh, if we have the need around here? Maybe. He hasn't mentioned anything. Maybe Mad Dog might have me throwing a bullpen out there pretty soon. <laughs> that would be a it's, – it's always fun to see a position player get in there. Can you feel the yeah. excitement? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jared Walsh here with you on the fan. Is it weird uh, coming onto a new team when they're all getting rings and, and you're sitting there like, man, I want one too, guys? 
Oh, I, I mean, I guess I would just say it was a little inspiring. You know, yeah. you watch the video yeah. and you see all the clutch moments from the postseason. It just gets you really excited. Um, you know, they, like I said, team full of stars, guys who have been there and done that. They got the slowest heartbeats when the game's on the line. So I think it was more inspiring. Obviously, I'm jealous. Um, you know, my dream is to play in the playoffs, eventually win a World Series. But I feel like I came to a good place to do that. Yeah, you certainly did. Hopefully we can run it back here. I like the, uh, I guess we'll never know, line that you dropped as well. That certainly <laughs> resonates nice. here with Ranger fans and Corey Seager. What about the cards in the clubhouse? After the Rangers won the World Series, everyone was talking about the cards. Have you gotten to mix it up at all? Well, in terms of like playing the cards. Playing the games, cards, yeah. No, I leave that to Jacob deGrom, Josh Smith, Travis Jankowski, and Corey Seager. I made the joke. I'm like, I'm convinced I could come in here on Christmas Eve at midnight, and those four would be sitting around a table playing a game of pluck. So it's, uh, no, I leave it to them. So are you crossword puzzle guy? Are you ping pong guy? Okay. Yeah, crossword puzzle. Crossword puzzle and just talking. I would assume I talk more than most of the other guys. In the Dude, the, so. the intensity, just at spring training going in the clubhouse, the intensity in which every player in that clubhouse attacks those crossword puzzles yeah. is, is amazing. But you think you're probably yeah, the best. Yeah, no, gosh, no. I've seen Josh Spores just annihilate one in about five minutes. So I just kind of picked the crosswords back up. But we got guys that are much sharper than me working on those. Do, do you guys have the same one that you're competing uh, against each other on? Or is it just yeah. – yeah? yeah, it's the USA Today. That's pretty much a staple in every big league clubhouse as far as I know. Jared Walsh with us here in the G-Bag Nation. So it's National uh, Peanut Butter and Jelly Day, Jared. One, I mean, I, I wonder where that ranks on your sandwich hierarchy, but what do you think is the best flavor combo for food? Well, I interesting fact, I nor any of my siblings have ever eaten a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Not one. What? Of course, because you were flying to Pittsburgh every week what to watch games. Is it a peanut <laughs> allergy? No, no, it was peanut butter and honey, oh. peanut butter and marshmallow fluff. Okay. Yeah, it's it was good. Just okay. never peanut butter yeah. and jelly. I mean, I've eaten probably thousands of peanut butter sandwiches. It's just that combo just never really resonated with any of us. Respect the fluff, though, dude. The, the, the peanut yeah. butter and fluff sandwiches, really, really fantastic. Yeah, very good. And you throw a little honey on there. You get that humongous blood sugar spike, but it tastes Ooh. delicious. I <laughs> yeah. mean, it's a good sandwich. Is that a, is that a, like a, is that a pregame meal for you? Do you have like a, a no. game day routine eating-wise? Yeah. That's like late night. I don't have a ton of food at the house, so that's what I'm going to make. With all the Pittsburgh runs, do you do you respect the Pitts burger that they seem to always talk about and love, the Permanti style burger with the fries on it and everything? Yeah, we were a big Permanti Bros family. We we there's one in the strip district not too far from the stadium that we used to go to a lot. Okay. Now, uh, how how much eating are you doing on a game day? Like before before the game, not after, but before. Oh, man. I try to just go – I don't really know portion size. It's more so just cleaner. You don't want to be running around with a stomach full of donuts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, we broadcast like that every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if I weren't out there tracking down baseballs, I would be. But, you know, I'm like, I don't need that sloshing around. <laughs> Okay, so you do you do a lot of the talking. I uh, you said who who do you believe to be the funniest guy on in the clubhouse thus far? Oh, that's tough. I don't know. I think Nathaniel Lowe, and once he and I start going, it's it's pretty funny. We have very similar sense of humor. So, you know, and we're from roughly the same area too. We know a lot of the same people. So once we start okay. going, we're cracking up. Who's more impressive to watch in the weight room, uh, Adolis or Wyatt Langford? Oh, well, that's what I said. Wyatt weighed in and he's 20 pounds heavier than me. I'm like, it upsets me that he's 20 or 20 pounds heavier than me and he's that much faster than I am. Like, I, I think the speed surprised all of us, dude. He's like, he's a, he's a brig bleep house and you can see it from a mile away, but then the speed and you're like, holy crap, dude, what can he not do? Yeah, he's, I mean, you guys have, he's a treat. You, you're going to enjoy watching him play for a very long time, hopefully only in a Rangers uniform. Hopefully. Yes, amen to that. All right, before we let you out of here, I do want to, uh, I have some analysis from Jared Sandler, uh, the second best Jared in the Rangers organization, and uh, he is describing one of your teammates. Can you can you guess your Rangers teammate? You know, what he's got working there between the knee and the waist is pretty impressive. That that's it. That was that's it. it. That's all you got there. 
It's a small hint. Or a big one. Do you want to hear it again? Kisner. Kisner? Yeah. Andrew Kisner. Okay, it, what what makes you guess Kisner? He's he's got a catcher's lower body. Yeah. Oh, that that's good. It's a hell of an answer. I think it's a ball of oatmeal. I like yeah, the guess. That's good call. Yeah. It's a it's a damn good guess by you, Jared. I'm sorry to inform you that you are incorrect on that, but it was a really really good call. If we get you back here this year, we'll play we'll play this game with you again, and then we'll re, we'll do the big reveal. We'll also get you a PB and J. All right, I'm in on that. Unfortunately, I have to go as well because I got a meeting in two minutes that Cheers, I'm not buddy. trying to be late. You to. go Don't crazy. You sir. freaking Love killed you. it. You're, You're the man. Talking. All right. There he goes. Thank you, guys. Jared Walsh. Rangers player show is off and running here in their defending championship season on 105.3 The Fan. And, and that guy was exceptional, man. Yeah. That, that's a Good future start. broadcaster. I if like he it. wants it. If he wants it. And yes, by the way, Never had I think the Rangers got a hell of a team-friendly deal because that neurological thing he was going through. Ooh. Yes. You know? Certainly. Th- th- this guy at two and a half million bucks might absolutely go off and have an all-star level year at the plate. It's just like you look around and there's so much talent on this team. You can't help but get excited. You heard him. And he said we have the best hitting uh, coach staff in, in the entire league is what it sounded like. Mm-hmm. Okay, where are we going next, Chief? We got ourselves a good old-fashioned rim sesh featuring Luca, LeBron, and Wimby. That's next year in the nation. But let's get you on over to play.
autos than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Based on new Chevy registrations, 2023. Shoot, yeah. Thank you, Chris, and for Lucius. Time now for the... The rim session here. Here's Eric Chiafala. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Right now in the G-Bag Nation, we cut the lights out. We put the kids to bed. We're going all 56 inches around that rim. Let it rain! Rain dance! Rain dance! It's always a special occasion when Luka Doncic gets named Player of the Month for the Western Conference for the month of March. So he's won the honor of back-to-back over the two MVP front runners, Mr. Jokic and Mr. Gilgis Alexander. So uh, maybe Luca is about to go on a bit of a a ninth inning heater, if you will, and, and find a way to swing the votes. I really think it can happen. Uh, you know, the the winning is what's brought this. You know, Luca has been dominating statistically, but he just wouldn't be comfortable, I think, giving it to a guy who's who's going to be in the play in. But now fifth, and maybe heading for fourth, two games from the Clippers, and a schedule that is so juicy. You know, the final game of the season is at OKC. Mm-hmm. If the Thunder have something to play for, I think the Thunder would probably be a one and a half, two point favor, something like that. But I think every other game the Mavs are going to be favored in. Um, so you, man. go ahead and win out, and I think he wins the MVP. I think you can lose one, maybe two games, and him still win the MVP. Well, certainly looking forward to getting uh, some Mavs action tonight in Golden State. This is the makeup game from earlier in the season when, unfortunately, Golden State had a member of their organization pass away shortly before the game, and so they were like, we're not playing tonight. This is the makeup for that. So it'll be tonight in the 9 o'clock hour on TNT. Uh, so certainly looking forward to that one. Again, uh, playoff implications all over the place uh, for the Mavericks and for Golden State. Golden State has won four in a row and uh, six of their last nine. Dallas obviously crushing it right now, 11 of their last 12. And you just heard Draymond Green on his podcast with Mark Cuban, and he's talking about Luka and just how un, you know just how unbelievable he is, how amazing he is. And, of course, he is when he's doing 20-foot layups. You're just like, what, what, what do we have? What do we have here? This guy's insane. So just, you know, watching Draymond and just seeing what the Golden State Warriors try to do defensively to attack Luka and Kyrie in this offense, I think is going to be extremely interesting when you just think about Draymond Green, the defensive prowess. What What, what is their game plan going to be? I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. I can't wait to see it. You know, this is the best team the Mavs have had to go up against the Warriors in a long, long time. If I'm Luka, maybe I'm thinking revenge. I don't know. What else do you have? Powell and Kleba that were around. Like the the amount of turnover this team has had in 22 months is awesome. Salute to Nico and and the front office for getting this uh, this job done. But yeah, you know, I, you, you got to look at this as a, as a chance to to deal a major blow to them as they try to avoid getting caught by the Rockets. You know, so uh, and then you're two games from the Clippers. So all these games are massive, but this is one of the more difficult games you're going to have the rest of the way. And if you can get this one especially after this whirlwind trip that they've been on. Mm -hmm. Their bodies are fatigued for sure. Can they be so mentally focused and emotionally up for this that it doesn't matter? If if that happens, it's just the latest hurdle this team has cleared in convincing you they're an absolute contender right now. I will not be surprised if they win the championship. That's what I think of the matter right now. Let's go. Cross first. Boom. Okay, the bandwagon has Tim Legler on it. Yeah, It's got the Wooly Bully Zach Wolchuk on it. And now they welcome the general, Gavin Dawson. That's right. Luka versus Porzingis in the finals. It's going to be great. <laughs> what what you, a storyline like that. that would be. I'm here yeah. for that. Okay, uh, on this day in history, one year ago today, you had Wimby uh, making the play that he describes as his best play of his career. And of okay. course it is. This is when he was playing overseas and he did the dribble, dribble, step back three. He missed it, but it was okay because he ran and caught his own uh, rebound off of the miss and in midair while catching it, he just dunked it back. It was a miss three put back yeah. from the man who shot it. It is still, I know it wasn't in the NBA. It would, have, it would have been even cooler if we saw him do that in a Spurs uniform, like actually in the NBA, but doing it anywhere. I've never seen that done. You miss the three, you get your own put back dunk off the miss. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know if any many other players would even imagine it, but he, he's like when you're old older brother would come play dunk hoops with you in like seventh grade and he's like a junior you know and you're on seven foot rims uh that's that's what it looks like yeah yeah it really is i mean he's it's it's hilarious watching i watched a 
a possession where I, it was the other day and it was just a highlight that I saw on Twitter where for like 30 seconds he is protecting the rim and it was supposed to be a fast break opportunity for the opposing team and guys just dribble close to the rim but he's there and then they just dribble away then the next guy gets it and they just they just dribble away like he really is a giant yeah. human at a kids basketball camp but it's actually NBA players all the all the players or at least most of the players have developed the nice floater the yeah. floater is even too dangerous. Right. Yeah. Uh, just a total cheat code. I, I, I just hate that Pop has done this. I, I think as a I result, know. he might coach into his 90s. That's what Pop might do. Yeah, dude. So I mean, I ain't leaving this. Why it's, not it's, coach Andy, it's Andy Reid with Mahomes. It's like, why, why would I Why would I hang <laughs> him up good. now? I'll just keep yeah. coaching. Uh, congratulations to Rajon Rondo, who has not appeared in an NBA game since April the 10th of 2022, but decided today was the appropriate time to do the formality of announcing his retirement from basketball. Thanks so yeah. much. You bleeped yourself, Rondo. The yeah. NBA retired you. Former Maverick great Rajon Rondo hanging him up today. Even the big though, three man, they had some good played. moments. They had, but may, that was perhaps the first major red flag that Rick Carlisle was just too tough to coach. Um, at least all players, he needs a very specific kind of player. I don't think he wanted to coach him. Yeah, I, I think that was one of those deals that they made, and he was like, "Okay." He was hacked off about yeah, it. Yeah, he wasn't too happy about having to. Rondo was hacked off about yeah. having to play for Rick. Yeah, <laughs> just quit playing yeah, middle of a playoff game. Off. Hey, dude. Speaking of hacked off, LeBron James is apparently a little bit hacked off because two doors down from his Beverly Hills estate, there are squatters that have taken over a home, oh, no. and they are throwing what is being described as quote cocaine orgy parties. What? And uh, now LeBron James is understandably very concerned. One of the neighbors, this is a quote, one of the neighbors got in touch with LeBron James's house manager. They were told James was very concerned. James purchased the property in 2022 for tons of money. The squatter home throws frequent parties that usually don't start until 2 a.m. The squatter home. The squatters are even impacting squatter James's club. pockets. The yeah. NBA star reportedly needs 24-7 security guards because of the frequent parties. So the police can't evict these squatters yet. I guess they're in the middle of trying to get these people out of there, but they've been in this house for the better part of a year. Yeah. Somebody abandons their own house. These dudes show up, and now they're, like, making money off it. They're charging cover fees and stuff for people to come into these ragers that they're throwing and stuff. And LeBron's like, what the heck? Everybody in that neighborhood, I presume everybody in that neighborhood is not only extremely wealthy, potentially you know, extremely famous, whatever, and one of the houses in the neighborhood is now used for cocaine orgy parties. Wow. And Thanks we're sure that's not just Puff Daddy's house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, they that, moved on to the squatter house. No, because it's not a squatter at that point. It's the that's man right. who owns the crib. No, so if you're in the club, you go, hey, we're going to the squatter house yeah. after this. Yeah. After party at the <laughs> yeah. squatters. Yeah. yeah. LeBron's seeing his teammates <laughs> a couple houses down. <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing over here? Hey, what are you guys doing tonight? We're going to the squatter house, man. You up for it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we just crash at your place afterwards, LeBron, since you live right there? Yeah. Yeah, here. come on over. So what do you do? You get security, you send them over there, and you say, don't let anybody in here? Or I, I know there's some states where the property rights are so like tough, even for the, the homeowner, that if somebody's squatting, you can't force them out. Yeah. I think that's problem number one. If any state has that rule, I don't want to be a landlord there. I should be able to go in and like whoop that ass <laughs> until mm -hmm. the dude never wants to come within a mile of my property again. If he's just sleeping there in my house, that's like... You know, justifiable assault, isn't it? Doesn't that sound right to you? A hundred percent, it yeah. is, dude. Yes, yeah. the squatter, the squatter rules is is crazy to me. I mean, if he invades my home while I'm sleeping, I can get up and and shoot him. Uh, I wouldn't want to, but I could legally in a, in a lot of states. But other states are saying he can come in and like live in your home, and you can't like force or even call the police and say, "Make this guy get out of my house." Apparently, they're pretty impressive. They forge yeah. like lease agreements and the driver's license and stuff yeah. like that. These squatters know dude. what they're doing, and they'll, they're they'll, professionals. I mean, anything for a cocaine orgy party, of right? Course. Oh, dude, and they'll they'll take you to court and somehow manage to win ownership of it because they've stayed there for That's so long, and like the landlords don't, they can't keep track what of all their the properties. Hell? And the next thing you know, the courts are like, "Well, I, I guess this is your house." They sign it over to him, and he's like, "Got gotcha. you." It, it's, it's, it's nuts. It's dude. like a whole hustle out there. You can you can uh, especially you know. I, I grew up in Portland, so I, I still see some of those stories on my Facebook feed, and it's a big deal there because there's so many homeless people. There's so many people that have not been able to afford their house. They got evicted, so all, there's all these homes, and it's like a full-on industry to try to squat you one.
It's crazy. And, and I take over it. Yeah. We can, I can kick you out of your home, uh, yes. but then somebody else can just come right in, and it's that's no right. problem. Can't yeah. kick them out. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, so thank, backwards. Thank you, G-Bag Nation. That's two down, one hour and 15 to go. Our Rangers pregame show is coming up at 515 as they, they try to get game two against Tampa, now sitting at three and one on the year. And we're going to get some more baseball. Isn't that right, Wolchuk? Yeah, Boach gives us a uh, Josh Young update. And how about Scherzer? How's he looking? That's next on the fan.
You're rolling with the G-Bag Nation. Let's do this. Right here on 105.3 The Fan. Yeah, baby. Hour 3, G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. Woolchuck's got his top 10 coming up. We're going to discuss where Luka is in the MVP race. Jared Sandler is going to join you coming up in less than an hour as Rangers pregame is tonight at 515. Let's do that proper round tripper. Here's your guy at the plate, Woolchuck. Let's do it. 9-3. Rangers got that dub. They're 3-1 and one on the season. Shout out to Adolis Garcia. Home run number 100 of his career, but certainly the bummer was Josh Young, who has now been placed on the 10-day IL with a right wrist fracture. Bruce Bochy on with KMC earlier for his weekly manager show was asked by the fellas, hey, how, how's Josh Young doing? I'd say closer to six weeks is what we're kind of looking at. No, don't know exactly it is his throwing arm, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing six weeks. Six weeks uh, for Josh, who is starting to get used to some of this rehab stuff. I know he hates it. I mean, when we got to talk to him prior to the season, you could tell just how annoyed he was with the thumb injury. He was ticked off about missing basically every single outing, and you know he's going to be hating this one. You feel for the guy. Uh, Justin Foskey has been recalled from AAA Round Rock. And moving forward, uh, you know, I guess this is a great opportunity for Ezekiel Duran, but you absolutely hate this for Josh Young, who was an all-star a year ago. Oh, yeah, you do. Um, uh, an amazing kid, you know, great player, uh, uh, asset on – both offense and defense, you know, I, I I'm just so impressed with the roster this team has built. Yep. It, yeah, it, it, you know, the very very few teams are in a situation like this where they can lose a, a player of that magnitude and, and feel like they're going to be just fine. Yeah, and he was playing so hot. A lot of people thought he was going to maintain that 14 hundo OPS all season. I think he could have. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He was on pace. For <laughs> he was that. on pace. Uh, Simeon is going, of course, to be leading off playing second tonight as we've got the lineup out. Seager at short. Evan Carter will be at left field. Adolis Garcia in right. Wyatt Langford DHing. Uh, you've got Jared Walsh hopefully getting the G-bag bump. will be playing first. Jonah Heim catching. And Josh Smith will be playing third tonight. I believe Boach was talking to Eric yesterday. It was already intended for Smitty uh, to get the nod there at third base. They wanted to give Josh Young an off day, but now he'll have, hopefully it is just six weeks, according to Bruce Bochy there. Now, Phil Maton, of course, uh, was public enemy number one, former Houston Astro, uh, bleep hole of the week, and it was the third consecutive Ranger batter that he had hit. Fellas asking Bruce Bochy, do you think Phil Maton should have even been in the game at that point? Well, I mean, one guy was hit with a breaking ball in the foot. Uh, uh, he was trying to throw a two-seamer, and, uh, you know, Josh did swing at the pitch. So, <laughs> yeah, I know everybody's going to look at it. Well, you know, is this done on purpose? Uh, do you like it? No, nobody likes it. Uh, Base is loaded. They're still somewhat in the game uh, when Dooley got hit. Um, but, hey, fortunately, uh, you know, we're we're going to hit guys, too. It's not always on purpose. Uh, uh, <laughs> you do do you uh, uh, like to see it? No. Well, no, nobody does. But, uh, you know, it's it's a case where you try to read everything, but what the situation is. And uh, I don't think Josh thought he was thrown at him. I think Dolly was. Dolly was upset. Nobody likes to get hit. But, you know, Smitty got hit in the foot with bases loaded. Uh, not Smitty, but uh, Carter. So, you know, you take that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that the Rangers are going to retaliate tonight or not. Uh, we'll t we can talk with Jared more about that in an hour when we have him on. I thought there was a good conversation on Rangers extra innings when I was driving back from the NICU last night. And, you know, I think some Ranger fans were ticked off, and they clearly want the Rangers to respond in some sort of way. Maybe sometimes that's not the best course of action. You listen to Boach talk there. He seemed pretty calm. Didn't seem to think like this was intentional. Yeah, although he did say we hit some guys too, sure. and it's yeah. not always intentional. Maybe yeah. a little foreshadowing Could there. Be. Could be. Yeah, I you know, I want my team to get revenge um, in situations like this. It does get personal, especially with a team that you have postseason history with. Um, and you want to make sure they fear you just a little bit. So I, I just want the situation to be right. You know, I'm having a lot of fun winning right now and just maybe being above it. I wouldn't mind that either. Yeah. Dane Dunning, though, was brilliant last night using five different pitches at least 10 times each. Got 18, 18 swings and misses tied for second most of his career just goes uh, 76 pitches 
for the first six innings. Third time through the order, you saw, okay, he gives up that home run. But again, Dane Dunning kind of picking up where he left off last year as the Rangers pitcher of the year. Yeah, he had some, Huge. when you listen to the game, though, he had a lot of, uh, you know, first ball strikes. Yeah. You know, the, the, the way that game started out for him, for him to get ahead the way he did. And then, you know, he had the command. And I guess when you do have your command, the ability to use all those different pitches, but the way that he was able to get up on hitters to, to start the counts, I think was a, uh, a big factor in him having some success. 100%. Speaking of Ranger pitching, Gavin, you brought this up during the Open, but good news on Scherzer. 55-pitch bullpen session yesterday, his third since returning to the mound last week. Scherzer said he's basically on a spring training schedule. It's like February 8th for me. It's like a week before spring training, and I still have to get to spring training before I can face hitters. Now, Evan Grant notes that spring training is usually six to seven weeks. So based on that schedule... Scherzer could be looking at a return to the rotation sometime around May 20th to the 25th. Now, the Rangers have held off putting him on that 60-day IL. If they did, he wouldn't be eligible to return until May 28th, which is a World Series rematch against Arizona. So they must be hoping he can hit uh, a return before that 28th, or else they probably would have just moved him on the 60-day IL. But either way, great news on Scherzer. I like the idea of a uh, combo platter return situation with the Jungle Cat and Scherzer. Just at the same time? Yeah. Ooh. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's exciting, you know. And if if uh, if Dane can just be a stabilizing force for for a couple of months, I mean, that would be great. But it, it certainly feels like he's building on what he accomplished last year, and now he's setting up a resume of being able to have this kind of success with his stuff, you know, which is difficult to do in today's game. But he's proven it now, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and Hicksy was talking last night, whereas like Dane Dunning throughout his career, you think of him as more of a ground ball pitcher. And now he's mm -hmm. becoming a little bit more of a punch out guy. Yeah. Uh, and if you can continue to do that, now you're leveling yourself up a little bit. That would be that would be huge for the pitching staff right now. And tonight will be Andrew Heaney uh, getting the start for the Rangers, the lefty. Now I don't know if you guys saw this. So the Cubs, of course, had their first games at Wrigley after they left Arlington. The pyrotechnics. But, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I sent this over to Carter, Cubs. and he's putting this video up right now. So Couple if you're watching sprinklers. on Twitch on YouTube, but these are this is the pyrotechnics display. That the Cubs were one, walk, walking out to. It looks like sparklers, yeah. basically. Like the Rangers had a badass display, mm -hmm. okay, when they're announced uh, on, on the first game of the season. It looked like Wrigley just ran out of power or ran out of gas. I don't know, but they're getting trolled massively on social media for this. It's an embarrassment. Yeah. Dude, it looks like they went to Party City or something for that. Like, yes. Like discount section as well. Like not even the good stuff. Just failing miserably. Well, um, you, need, you need full fireworks there, don't you? Don't you want a full firework situation, or do you want like a like actual fire where it's like blowtorch style? You I see that in the that. NFL when yeah. guys come out of the tunnel and yeah. they, it's That's like some badass. legit fire and not like you said, which is a sparkler that you could imagine like a seven-year-old holding on the 4th of July. Well, baseball fans were chiming in on the poor display, said that the Bellinger deal ate into the uh, pyrotechnics budget for the Cubs, a uh, new <laughs> intern bought the Aldi brand set up for them, but just not a good look. No, that, that's weak. If you're going to do that, just don't do anything. Yeah, let's just go ahead and scrap the idea. Because yeah. this just looks poor. Well, yeah, it's funny that they were, they saw what the Rangers were doing. How could you not, like, have some ideas? Yeah, it should get you a little like, revved up. Like, you're like, okay, hey, let's steal this idea from them. Let's steal this idea. But no, not at all. It was... It might have, it was really a cold day there too. They might have had some problems with you know getting that done. Oh well, then that makes a little yeah. more sense. Anybody you can guess what it is. Like I, I, give them a pass because of the uh, the weather. I think the weather was not conducive to fireworking. Yeah, none yeah. of us are going to be our full selves in the cold. No, no, that's true. I don't know if I've seen this for a while, but the NBA used to do like fire in a barrel like they had a contraption and in the pregame with the lineups coming out they'd hit that thing and if you were sitting in like the it lower bowl it. you it would feel the yeah, heat yeah i don't know if they had a situation with some singed hair or or whatever uh but that that was a nice touch that mm. that made it feel epic shout out to uh, the 903 they texted in that they had their child on the 23rd that's in the NICU at children's right now Rooting for you guys, uh, and we're hoping that we can bring Eliza home soon. She is making progress with the bottle. Let's go. So where our fingers are crossed that uh, we can get her home, home soon. 903, I hope you can get yours home soon as well. Rangers among some teams that were in attendance to scout the 22-year-old Japanese ace, Roki Sasaki. He has a 2 ERA and 293 innings pitched in Japan. There was one uh, MLB GM who told USA Today, everybody in baseball wants this guy. 
but there's no way he's going anywhere else but the Dodgers, and we all know it. So expected to be another L.A. Dodger player, so they just get an embarrassment of riches. But Rangers doing their due diligence uh, and being out there and scouting them out. So you never know. Maybe things fall through with the Dodgers. Rangers can swoop in there, try and add another arm to their staff. Yesterday was a pretty big day for pitching as Mike Clevenger has reunited with the White Sox. They're adding him to the rota- rotation after they traded Dylan Cease. We also had the Cubs, um, who their their new pitching addition, Shota Imanaga, had a no-hitter going into the sixth inning against the Rockies in his Struck Major League Struck out Baseball nine and debut. walked none. Yes, he was absolutely fantastic. Watch that game. Signed that $53 million contract, and it uh, looks like that's going to be a steal over four years for Chicago. He's 30 years old, but quite the debut for him. I'm glad the Rangers didn't have to face him. And then, yeah, the Astros got their first win as Ronel Blanco had uh, a no-hitter in his eighth start. It was interesting listening to Mikey break him down earlier. Like, he's 30 years old. This dude's kind of been a journeyman. He's had a 4.78 ERA throughout his career. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think this is it. This is going to be a one-and-done deal for Blanco. I hope him and the Astros lose every single game the rest of the season. Don't get too excited, Astro fans. You don't have another phenom on your stands here. No, you. no, absolutely not. Yeah, I think we're we're clear on that one. Plus, it wasn't even at home, was it? They got to win at home. They uh, went at home. Yeah, they went at home. It yeah, they, home bro- yeah. they broke the streak. They still yeah. can't hit at home. They, they can't a, hit. They, they can't hit no home. hitter. Yeah, they got to have a pitching guy go out there. Yeah, they got to have a no no to be able That's to win. Right. Yeah. Yankees though were five and zero. Oh. That's their best start since nineteen ninety two as they knocked off the Diamondbacks five two final store, score. There, um, man, Juan Soto has been absolutely fantastic for them here early on to begin the season. Him and Aaron Judge. I mean, it's nice to see these guys healthy again. Big question: be, How this, long can they stay healthy? But they've done this all without Garrett Cole, right? He's yes, he's done. Garrett for, Cole still has not been available for I, them. I want to see the Yankees have a good year because I, I so want to tear them up in the postseason. Yankees Rangers in the playoffs and another Rangers victory would be fun. Yeah, I mean, it was a blast in that ALCS in twenty ten, knocking them off. That was one of my favorite memories. We got two more to go before we even the score, and I'm going to need to see a sweep as well. Yes, I would love that. As, and last thing here that I want to put in, had a couple people send me this, and uh, I showed Eric as well on, on the Twitters. Pirates have a new food item called the Renegade. It's a foot-long hot dog. It's a good stick song, Gavin. That is topped with... m pa- song, too. Yeah. Renegade. Now, I've never had these. Potato pierogies, yeah. pot roast, pickles, and onions. And these pierogies kind of look like little raviolis. They yeah. do, but I guess it's, is it potatoes inside of it? Yeah, it's some type of filling inside of, of a crust. Pierogies, yeah. yeah, it's some type of meat filling. A combination of meat and potatoes, you can do both. I love Put it. Put them inside of, a, inside of a, a crust filling, or actually a crust shell, which works out pretty good. Interesting. But I, this looks like something I'd give a try. Yes, Damn 100%. Right. I, I, would, I would love that. Uh, I, I like the... I like the pot roast on top of the dog, the hot dog. Yeah. Oh, you yes. know, like I'm thinking. I I think like at the Rangers ballpark, can we get some some brisket can, on can top? We get some of the hurtado brisket on yeah. top of a, a like ballpark dog. And it, you said is the it's a foot long. It's foot long. So bang for your buck, foot long dog. When I've been making brisket, I, I when I'm done, I'm taking part of that and putting it in a crock pot just because there's so much extra. And, yeah, and that I I think crock pots or you know this particular dish is is uh, so underrated. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Easy, glorious, delicious, the whole deal. I want to uh, ch- shout out eight one seven. It says, uh, "Can you guys salute my best friend Kevin Garrison? He was in a tornado today, hmm. got hit by a steel pole. Oh, and he's a huge Broadus fan. Well, thank you, sir. I'm sorry you got hit by the pole, and yeah, you know, thank you for being a fan. Hope, hope you're okay. Better. Yeah, hope you're okay. You almost lost one, Brian. Yeah. That is a wild deal, dude. The wind, the, the wind. I mean, <laughs> the wind has been shocking. The the wind around the here. We, we are general. the windy city. Like Chicago on, gets no, all average, the glory for being the windy city, but it's average, actually us, dude. Yeah, Much or the windy year. state at yeah. least. Like yeah. it seems like everywhere you go, it is Very extremely, windy. extremely windy outside. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now we're gonna blow into an edition of Woolchuck's top ten. Here every afternoon, 420. Bully, where are you taking us? One of the most shocking revelations today was that Jared Walsh has never had a PB&J. Well, it's National PB&J Day. I've got the top 10 tastiest flavor combinations in all of food. What's your favorite? That's next in the fam. You might not be.
to stop a train. Welcome back, Nation. It's time for Wolchuk's Top 10 at 420. Segment of the Nation is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Go to carsforkids.org. It's brought to you by the Frankels. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Franklin Frankel, the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks and DFW. If you or a loved one's been in an accident, contact the Frankels for a free consultation. 214-817-333-3333. Go online to frankelfirm.com. Pre-game's coming up in 50 minutes. Jared Sandler will have you covered. It's time now for the Wooly Bullies Top 10. Here's Zach with an H. Thank you very much. Uh, what is your favorite food pairing on National PB&J Day? Did get an update on uh, Josh Young. As CY told the media out there in Tampa Bay that Josh Young is having wrist surgery this evening about game time. He should have a plate and screws inserted to help healing. Then a general six-week timeline. So that is the latest on Josh Young. So we hope that uh, he heals quickly. All that surgery goes well. And we get uh, the Jungle Cat back on the diamond very, very soon. Josh Smith starting at third base tonight for the Rangers. I'm sure Ezekiel Duran will handle more of that role, though, moving forward. I think I like uh, pepperoni and pizza, Woolchuck, not to jump the gun Ooh, here. I like that. Uh, you know, I, I I like steak and potatoes as well. Did that up last night. Steak and potatoes is a great, great pairing. By the way, I'm working the Gordon Ramsay frying pan, which is amazing, Brian. Do you have them? No. I, They're I, unbelievable. I've seen him. I've seen a lot of his, when I, and I've watched him cook like now. I mean, every night I watch him make something. But what's he got that's different? How does it, is it different shape, handle, depth? The, what it's made of is like indestructible and easily cleanable. It doesn't matter how you Not scrape stick. it, what you cook on it, how yeah. plastered on it, it is. I just grab like one of those, uh, you know, coarse uh, uh, like sponge type things, sure. yeah, and hammer it's gone. Like yeah, SOS pad or something oh, like sure. that. Yeah, it, it it's yeah. made of something that like nothing can cook onto and and destroy the pan. And you could take a fork and be like, I'm trying to chisel it off, and the pan will be like, I'm still fine, bro. Yeah, yeah. wow, yeah, that's badass. What are you doing? Your steaks in your pan? Steaks, burgers, omelets, mostly. Yeah, yeah Gordon yeah. loves doing the steak in the pan. That's his thing. His thing is that you got to make sure he's a big baster. Mm -hmm. He likes to take that, like you put. Yeah, uh, herbs and then the butter in the top and yeah, tilt the keep pan. Scooping it. Yeah, yeah. And tilt it. it yep. and, and tilt it. Yeah. Didn't he like stand the steak up on its side at one point? Well, he does yeah. that if you want to take the fat and you want to render the fat and kind of cook the steak in the steak fat. Take your steak and flip it up on its side and hold it with tongs and put the fat side down and kind of and just run it on the pan. You can even throw a little bit of garlic in there. Throw the garlic in there kind of late because garlic tends to burn. Yeah. So if you want to get a little garlic butter flavor on your steak, but you could use the actual steak fat. Okay. To, to, so the pro tip is towards the end of the cook is when you throw the garlic in. I would say because if you throw whole cloves of garlic in early, they burn and you don't want it. And that gives it like a sour taste. So if you got some butter, you got some of the thyme, herbs, whatever you're using, and you want to throw a little garlic on the top, just throw it in at the end there and get a little bit of flavor to it. And then, it. And then use that the butter, just use that spoon to baste it. So you agree with him when he calls himself the master baster? Yeah, I do. I think You don't a, think there's even a close second? There's not a close second of him and master wow. baiting. I think you and I would well, disagree. Or basting. 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 Yeah, yeah, there's an S in He's there. He's a hell of a baster. Somebody's Donuts and pigs in a blanket? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah, you got to get your proteins. Uh, chopped brisket. Uh, and mac and cheese. Oh my goodness. From the 903. Mm -hmm. yeah. Spaghetti and meatballs. Fried fish and chips from the 682. Chips and queso or chips and salsa. Chips and hot sauce. We do have somebody text in chips and hot sauce. Red there beans and rice. There you go. Yeah, that's a good one. Cookies and milk. Wings and jalapeno sausage. You know, <sighs> one of my personal favorites. Sounds freaking delicious. Yeah. Peanut butter and chocolate. Brisket and potato salad. Getting texted in. A17 says, I eat PB&J almost every day, and you haven't lived until you try peanut butter, strawberry jam, banana, and chocolate granola. Whoa. That's a lot going on there. Sounds like you cracked the code to me. It's like yeah. a craft PB&J. All right, some of the other honorable mentions for best food combos. You've got broccoli and cheese. What about bread and cheese? I know it's obviously like pizza or whatever, but bread just like cheese. cheesy bread and stuff. Yeah, bread and cheese. Garlic works. bread with the cheese melted on there. Hummus and pita. Yeah. Good combination. That's good. Lobster and butter. Clarified. Biscuits and gravy. Better. Mm. Uh, we've got pretzels and chocolate. I think it's more pretzels salty. and cheese. Salty. So that could work. Yeah, the, the pretzels, the salt with the pretzel, 
and the cheese works, or not the uh, the chocolate works yeah. really well together. You know those dot pretzels? Okay, the yes. mustard ones are insanely good, but they have a new cinnamon and sugar one. Oh, I saw those at the grocery Ooh, store yesterday. Oh my! It took I haven't had very it. hard for me not to. They're pivot. buttery. <laughs> was they're very buttery hard. too. Buttery, yeah. Oh, they're buttery. Yes. There's something special Stop about it, those dot pretzels. It. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, Chuck. I ate the whole bag. Shit. I ate the bag. I don't blame you. I would do the same thing. All right, we've got bacon and cheeseburgers. Is on here as honorable mention. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Uh, cookies and cream, cake and ice cream, cinnamon and apple, brownies and ice cream. How about strawberry and whipped cream? And mashed potatoes and gravy. Those are your OLIs, the honorable mentions outside Vodka of Vodka and ginger ale. Whiskey and Coke got texted in. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken, bacon, and ranch. The boomstick and beer. Chicken fried steak and ketchup. Hey, Eric, do we need to try on Friday when we're out at the park the $33 meal? Oh, the triple play? Yeah. The triple play box? Do we need to see if we can get that delivered? And I, I mean, I'll pay for it. Heck yeah, you sure will. We can, I'll uh, eat text it. Our buddy. You, 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 you text buy. Casey. I'll fly. Yeah, I bet you Casey's listening right now. Casey, we uh get one uh, for for us, if you don't mind. Triple play and, that thing. We'll and, tear and that up. Tear it up, and I'll, I'll pay for it. Guys, Deal. can I give a shout out Very to nice. uh, chocolate chip cookies and ice cream? I mean, come on, sandwich form. Like, oh yeah. What okay, are we yeah. doing here? So, do you do that? Uh, have you seen that McDonald's hack where they go through and they get the chocolate chip cookies from McDonald's and they'll order a uh, vanilla ice cream or a McFlurry. Dude, if, if the machine's working, like you can it's, go, right. it's never, you know. Which you is very true. But they take the McFlurry, they actually will put it uh, in between the cookies. And now yeah. you have your own McDonald's. That's an expert that's play. That, yeah, that brings unreal. up something I want to ask you guys, though. Would you go get something from another restaurant to combo it with something from another restaurant? Yeah, my yeah. fat self has done that numerous times. Like you, something over here, like the sauce at Chick Fil A. Yeah, would you combo it with something else? Definitely. 100%. So you drive to two shops to make sure that happens. Yeah, in right? fact, yeah. Uh, the Chick Fil A I used to work at, there was a Whataburger right across the street. So there might have been one time where I said, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a Chick Fil A breakfast fillet. Then I'm going to go to Whataburger. I'm going to get the honey butter biscuit. So the biscuit with the honey butter. Then there I'm going you to go. Put the breakfast fillet from Chick Fil A, which is far better chicken. No disrespect to Whataburger, I love you. And now I've made a combo wow. honey butter chicken biscuit with Chick Fil A chicken. With Chick Fil A chicken. Oh, that's really really special, yeah. dude. Yeah. I, I like I like what you did there. That that's awesome. It was pretty damn delicious. I've done the McDonald's French fries with the with the Whataburger ketchup, obviously. Okay. Yeah, I mean the Whataburger ketchup's Fun undefeated. Move. I've actually done the Chick Fil A sandwich with the Wendy's honey mustard. I know Chick Fil A sauces and they, like they're really good, but the Wendy's honey mustard is kind of the fast food one seed for honey mustard. I, I agree with you. I, I like that McFl McFlurry play with the chocolate chip cookies, maybe the best though, because I, I feel like the McFlurry is always going to chinch you on the ingredients. There's like a half an Oreo blended in there. Yeah, yeah you know, yes. and you're you're digging around looking for it. So I've always felt like the McFlurry is just not. It's just a bad blizzard because they don't give you enough of the M and M's or or whatever the cookie is. That's you got to add like a little extra cookie in there. Yeah, yeah. that's hundred percent. You do. I feel like that you you could take anything like from the Dairy Queen, like their blizzards or whatever, and combo it with something else when you're talking about this cookie. Or I think that's mm -hmm. a, a great. You're absolutely right. Wings they stop do it the best. with golden chick rolls. Uh, I'm a fat man. I've gotten the molten lava cake from Chili's many times after a meal from another restaurant. Me too. <laughs> that's that's Me a good too. point. I've done the thing. I've done that with the Pazuki at BJ's. You have a meal somewhere, too. and then you go to BJ's to get the Pazuki. Dude, it was really bad when uh, Maya was pregnant, and one of the pregnancy cravings, she wanted a Pazuki. So we're literally sitting down at a hibachi restaurant. Yeah. And hibachi, you know, like they Keep give you a lot of off food. the table. You're stuffed. Yeah. She says, there's a BJ's right next door. Can we go get a Pazuki? So we did. Ended Just, up there to get a Pazuki. Or you could always well, Uber Eats it. Yeah, I, I considered that, but she was said that was lazy. It's right next door, so I had to go in and well, wait for 50 That's minutes. the thing about... <laughs> Trust me, Gavin, I tried to pull that off. We stood so it'll be at the house waiting for us. I, I'm sorry. You, so you bought it with your money? Yeah. And you got told how you were going to buy it? Yeah. Wow. Yep. We did um, the thing with... All right. It's, I'm in the life now, man. Happy wife, it. happy life. I'm in it, bro. Nice. <laughs> What's a Mexican bar and then knife, right? Yeah, right I next to each other. I, I yeah. had dinner at knife and had dessert over at Mexican bar. Yes. Tres leches, I think. The tres leches, leches. Yeah. 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 So I here's the... wrong. <laughs> leches. Leches. I like that. Yep. Um, here is the top 10 of the tastiest flavor combinations in all of food on National PB&J Day. Number 10 is chips and nacho cheese. Mm -hmm. You can't have the nachos without cheese. Bacon and eggs comes in at number nine. Love it. I'll have all your bacon and eggs. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you miss 
I don't want a lot. I want all, all of them. The bacon and eggs. Number eight is cookies and milk. Mm-hmm. I was going to say cookies and milk. I didn't know that yeah. counted. Yeah, it's Banger. Close, close in the family there for the you. The food Chris. bevy. Seven cereal, is, cereal and milk. Cereal and milk. We'll get to that. Uh, Seven is crackers and cheese. Crackers and cheese. Go cheese and crackers. Oh, dude. Cutery yeah. board. It really is good. It's and so simple but delicious. It, it, it is. It, and I do it with those those chips that you guys always see me eating, but I do that with the block of cheese and oh. those chi- and it's just like nice. I got one of my daughters hooked on it now. Which one? Julesy. Nice yeah. set of baby jewels. Like, can I get some cheese and chips? I'm like, yes. That actually sounds great. I want to get some dude. Let's do it too, Julie. Is that Come a on. constipation thing working maybe for the young daughter there? Uh, it's not, it's not overdone out. and it's not bad cheese. She's eating raw cheese. So it's, it's good bacteria for yeah, the gut. Okay. She's going to be a superhuman. Yeah, don't be watchdog. I need to look into that I was just cheese. asking though for a small child. You need to get that raw yeah. cheese, bro. I know. Yeah, I you can buy that over the counter here. The raw okay. milk's a different store, but the cheese, you go to Sprouts, you can get raw cheese. So what makes it raw? It's, they're not heating it and burning out all the good things that's supposed to be the same with the milk. Like all of our milks that we drink, oh. they're pasteurized and they're getting heated to a temperature that's burning out all of the good bacterias. And then you're drinking a milk that is nutrient, the opposite of nutrient dense. Hmm. Uh, it's just not nutritious really at all. Go get a to Pasteur. Right out of the, right out of the saucer. Yeah. That's where the nutrients that, are. That is where the nutrients are. So there's bacteria in that cheese that'll fight off the constipation for you. Yeah, I believe so. Really? We're getting yeah. jobs. Yeah, the raw, the raw cheese, all the, the raw dairy is really what you want, man. It's 469 said legs and eggs. Uh, and you know, I don't know how obsessed we are with that anymore. 469, okay? That was a one-time deal. We phased out of that. Six well, is uh, for yourself. chocolate and peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Five chips and salsa or hot oh sauce. Gosh. Yeah, hot the, sauce. The, 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 hot I need sauce. to figure out. I got to figure out what it was that uh, my my mom's side of the family is from the Northeast, and they have like specially these chocolate, uh, these eggs, these Easter eggs that are oh, chocolate yeah. and peanut butter. But they specifically bring them like they they get them ordered from like Pennsylvania or something. And my uncle's crazy about them. And I had a little bit on Sunday, and it was like, oh my gosh, blow your mind, kind of like, the, the best Reese's chocolate eggs? peanut butter comment. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. So it was like a leveled up Reese's version. Oh, Okay. It was it was unbelievable. I, I mean that. Four is cereal and milk. Three is butter and popcorn. Two is macaroni and cheese. And number one is bread and butter. Oh, so good. Yes, yeah, slept it's, on. It's the classic. If you're putting bread and butter in front of me at a restaurant, you got it's, my business from now on. Absolutely. It, it, could be, bring the it could be a loaf of generic grocery store bread. Oh, they do that. Little it, sweet butter on it. Dream, Dreamland Barbecue, they give you a whole loaf of bread out of the package and then give you a, a, a dish of barbecue sauce so you can dip the barbecue sauce or the bread in the barbecue sauce. And eat that, that sounds divine. Yeah. I ever tell you about the guy I went to high school with that named Hot Sauce? No, I don't think so. Okay. He was special education, right? Which mm-hmm. is just a sidebar. But when he would hear a cuss word, he would yell Hot Sauce. We always wondered why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As we get into like ninth or 10th grade, somebody knew their parents and, and asked why. And when he was little, he would always be cussing. So his mom would put a hot sauce like dip on his tongue to make him stop cussing. Oh, So when, you know, in high school, everybody is cussing in the halls and yeah. you would always know when he was around because he'd be yelling hot sauce. He put his hand above his head and shake it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hot sauce. Uh, yeah, I had to be there. I, guess. I think, no, I think I'd prefer that over the, what my dad did, which was get a bar of soap and yeah. water and he would rub it all over his hands and then he would stick his fingers in your mouth and just rub them all. Oh. Oh. That's what my dad would do. Oh. That taught you. Yeah, so I didn't how, really learn until I was about 20, 25 years old. You probably still don't cuss around your dad, dude. <laughs> no, it, it's rare. <laughs> it's I'm rare. with you, man. I got, I got a little, I got a bar of soap from my mom a few times. Maybe I was yeah. six or seven. Okay, where is Luca in the MVP race? We'll do that next. We got Sands the Man coming up at 5 o'clock. Rangers pregame at 5 right here. It's the G Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. I want to chat DNM Leasing. A very pleasant experience. Call DNM. Ask him for a brand new vehicle, any make, any model. They'll deliver that to you. You sign the documents on a smartphone app, and, and boom, you're, you're, you're done. It is that easy. That's why they named it the Easy Lease. Right now, it has more benefits than usual, though. No down payment, no payments for 60 days that'll make you happy sweet new vehicle for the spring and summer you're gonna look great in it and uh you know nothing down nothing due for 60 days plus with interest rates this high you know people on purchases that that money just it gets out of control they're having to do seven years 84 months of payments to get a payment low enough you don't have to do that just eat uh, just do the easy lease with dnm real uh, easy real simple 972 
Place to hear sports. Sweet, 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 and a miss. Struck it out. With lots of this mixed in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening and sharing some laughs, Tolos, on the fan.
This segment of the G-Bag Nation is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More new Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Based on new Chevy registrations, 2023. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chris and for Lucius. Luca now the favorite. Do you think he's going to win it? The truck wreck, uh, the Frankel Firm Injury <laughs> Attorney text line is open for you at 877-881-1053. Mavs and Dubs tonight in San Francisco, 9 o'clock on TNT. Could be a tough game with the travel. We were we were talking about this a little bit earlier. I think this team is so mentally sharp, and I think Luka is part of this. I just don't know if he turned it around early enough for everybody that's going to vote around the league knows it. You know, how, how many of these voters are still thinking of the way that he acted up until very recently with, you know, his overreactions to to fans or refs? You know, so I think there's a lot that goes into it, but if they keep winning out, I I don't think he he will be denied. I think the only thing that would take it from him now is a a, a team collapse around him. How, how about you? The the text line is open. Please leave your name and city you're texting from. Boys, what do you say? I mean, look, if this thing is competitive, it could come down to you know, in, in assuming that the Mavs aren't in a situation where it's a rest day, the final game of the season against OKC. You get a head-to-head -head with Shea Gilgis Alexander, and I think Luca has already jumped him in the odds. But he's averaging more points, more assists. The only stat I don't think he's leading in is rebounds, and of course Giannis and Jokic would have him there. But, but otherwise, he's still top fifteen in the entire league. Yeah, in rebounds. Yeah, I mean he's basically averaging almost a triple double. Uh, for his stat line, which is incredible. So if the Mavericks go on this run where the the win streak, which I think is likely, I mean, it's something that's very, very probable. What is it, 15 in a row? Yeah, any... it, I think it would be 15 in a row. My gosh. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you could really deny that. It's 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 absolutely unbelievable what he's doing. I mean, go go six and two down the stretch. I, I think it's there. I, I think it'd be tough if they slip to seventh and it's a play-in team. I, I I do think that those kind of things should be considered how much each individual does. You know, I'm uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how Shea Gilgis Alexander is even in the conversation with these absolute stat stuffers. You know, like to me, the the definition of superstar is, is going to be like 25 points, and then another stat, rebounds or assists, it's got to be seven, eight, right? Especially when you're dealing with guys like Jokic and Luka, who are damn near averaging a triple double. I don't know how you can give it to a great score. Unless he is just an unbelievable individual defender on top of that, or he's yeah. blocking shots, or 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 something other than you know, hey, I I scored four points less than you. I hand out half as many assists and get half as many rebounds. I'm the MVP. Ugh, I don't. I know. think that's a case of best player on the best team, right? OKC's okay, so he's been the number one seed in the West for the majority of the season. Now, if Denver, I mean, the, the Denver's a half game back as we speak today. Minnesota a game back, but I think that's what's put Shea Gilgis Alexander. Just the the season that OKC's had, he's their best player. That's why he's up there in the conversation for sure. And that that's a little bit overrated. I'm I'm with you. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're not going to give the MVP to somebody who's barely in the playoffs or something like that. But Luca and the Mavericks might be a home court advantage team in the first round you know you're talking about a 50 plus win team perhaps and uh having home court advantage you qualify as being okay you have you have met the winning expectations here when you consider all the other things where you're first in points second in assists yeah and then still being top 15 in rebounds he's seventh in steals i saw mark followell put out a tweet just contextualizing some of the numbers and it's like yeah this is when, when if you're staying in the top 15 in rebounds and then you're in the top you know, you're number one in points, you're number two in assists, and you're top ten in steals. That is a historical season. And he's and now that's playing MVP defense. caliber. I mean, absolutely. Like, that was the one thing. Hey, Luke is a one-way player. He's not trying on the defensive floor. Now he is. He is trying on the defensive side of the floor. Yeah, yeah, and I think he's got the size and rebounding ability to to be a, a, a positive factor on that end of the floor, even if he's never locked down. And he had a 20-plus foot layup. Yeah. yeah, on Who a night where he that? had 47 points in 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah, it was like the reverse sky hook. I'll just shoot it under your arm. <laughs> hey, come on, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Mavs are uh, Warriors are 10th, so the, the Mavs have a chance to to deal Golden State a, a a tough loss here. They're two games ahead of Houston. Mavs are fifth, two games behind the Clippers. By the way, Clips visit the Kings tonight. Mikey B had a good question earlier. Who you rooting for in this game? The Clippers to beat the Kings push Sacramento maybe another full game behind you. Or Kings to beat Clips, Kings stay on your heels. But if you win, 
clips are now within one game. Who you rooting for? Yeah, tonight? I'm rooting for the Kings. I'm I'm all eyes on what is in front of me, and right now that's the Clippers. I'm trying to jump them. I'm trying to be the four seed. I'm trying to have home court advantage. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Sacramento as well. I think I'm getting greedy. I'm, I'm kind of assuming it wins, especially with this schedule. I am too. Yeah. Now all of a sudden that could change tonight with Golden State, but I, I agree, man. The schedule's favorable. And Golden State's playing better. They got that scare from Houston, and Draymond said what he said about the Rockets not being a factor, and they've lived up to that since. They're on the rocks. Yeah, they I mean, are. I mean, they, well, that's they, desperate they, team they, right they are, now. Yeah. They are fighting for their lives right now. I mean, this is a, you know, and I didn't realize this till. We opened the broadcast. This was that makeup game because of their they lost their coach. Yeah. I, yeah. I was thinking, why would you schedule a game where the Mavs had played in that area for basically all week, then have to fly to Houston and have to fly back out there? And I was like, going, why would the league do that? But yeah, here it is, the, the makeup game. And but they've also got Golden State coming up here this week at home. Yeah. So yeah, this is. Golden State is fighting for their lives right now. You're going to be facing a desperate team and never underestimate the heart of a champion no, on top of no. that. We got the numbers, by the way. Iowa, LSU, they're out. Oh, Average yeah. 12.3 million viewers on ESPN. Wow. Most watched women's college basketball game ever. Shout out to Joe Pompliano. Okay. 12.3, huh? 12.3 million. Imagine if they put it at like a proper time instead of... Remember, yeah, still trying to rush and get home. I wonder from what work the second game was too. Did For that, UConn, yeah, UConn. Yeah, I UConn, mean, UConn, I just like, like to see USC what, the, yeah, what that game was. Okay, so the NFL averages 18 million viewers. Just to kind of put that in context, that's a bad game. That's, that's a, the that's average. A, that's an Arizona versus uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Denver Cowboys are probably you know <laughs> closer to double that. Yeah, and oh. I saw NC State and Duke men on Sunday on CBS was 15 million watts. Okay. So just for some context. Everybody's fascinated by this North Carolina State team, I think. Yeah, yeah well, they're yeah, fun yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah they're, they're they like, are. wow. Duke's always going to pull. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Average NBA game, 1.6 million. It's it, it's really interesting how much uh, socially or culturally like this thing has shifted around women's basketball. I know there's some folks out there on text either trolling or, or in disbelief, but it's it's a real story. Like it Now, if you don't like it, it's like, you don't like soccer or you don't like hockey, but it's a very like credible piece of the American sports uh, TV plate uh, for sure. It also uh, set records for uh, gambling. Uh, the most gambled on women's game of all time says ESPN across DraftKings and FanDuel and, and whatnots. Okay, you got a Heaney against Eflin in just under an hour now. You're 55 minutes from first pitch. You're 20 minutes from pregame. And Jared Sandler joins us to talk all your Ranger storylines coming up next. It's the G Bag Nation on the fan. Well, let me tell you about my.
You're rolling with the G-Bag Nation right here on 105.3 The Fan. Welcome to The Nation. It's hour four of the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan, our Rangers insider. We, we're just constantly but peppering questions. Let me ask you, though, you, you really think that? If you worked with somebody the whole year that, yeah. that he has no Doesn't thought matter. at all that – Hey, I, I, you know, these guys were good. We won a championship. I was comfortable with them. Superstitious. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball people are like that, right? Especially down on Mitch Garver here. Am I making it? Do you want me to like give you the answer you want to hear? Do you want me to give you the honest answer? No, no. You told me that. Lie to me. Yeah. You know, we can. Yeah. This is a good conversation for off air. It is a great conversation to be had, Brian. It is. I was just kind of like slammed that you said that. I know you're upset. I am a little bit. Well, I would never lie to you. Part. Yeah, okay. We helped propel that team to championship glory last year. I think everybody's yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. comfortable with understanding yeah, for sure. that. Yeah. Who cares if Garver doesn't appreciate it, Brian? Come on. So okay. He's a backup guy. Jared Sandler's Rangers preview I do the brought to you by these interviews. I try to, I do. Blue Nail Roofing. And our proper round tripper every <laughs> afternoon is brought to you by Uber Eats as Jared Sandler joins you now here on 1053 The Fan. <laughs> I, I quit, man. I'm done. <laughs> you did a great job. To do with you. <laughs> it is quit. It's not personal. He takes it is this personal. So, no, he oh. takes this so personally. I thought it was a great interview. It's just business. Yeah, Jared Walsh joined us back there in the 320, the he, first he players. And the, the text oh, reaction like it, to that was incredible. <laughs> they the love, they the love people them. just loved him. Like, he was freaking dialed. He he was good to go, and and we, we salute uh, both Jareds You're here. Like, Finally, a Jared that we enjoy listening to on the station. I was like, settle <laughs> yeah. down on wow, that, dude. Strong. Yeah. I, I agree, honestly. <laughs> I, I, if I ever hear anything back that I do, I'm like, why? Well, I, I don't know why I have a job, to be honest. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hey, uh, Jared, we're, we're wondering tonight, are we going to get fireworks here between these teams? Oh, you said we're going to get fired. <laughs> well, <laughs> geez, I mean, might. Uh, that's a good question. I heard you guys talking about what Bruce Bochy said. I'll be honest, when I heard him, li- I was listening to the interview live, I immediately thought, all right, he's not as mad. And then I thought, wait a second. <laughs> You know, he he could also be protecting a potential suspension, and you know, what he's not going to say. I, I don't know. I the the way I answered it last night, and it was interesting. We had people call in who you know they puffed their chest out and oh, you got to throw at them and you should throw at all of them and blah blah blah. And then there are people that are like, I don't know, like what's the point? Yeah. Why give them a base runner? We're trying to win a game. I uh, I think that the answer will be. What, the answer whether or not it's important to the guys in that clubhouse will be carried out by Andrew Heaney's actions. Because I will tell you this, there there are times, and it almost never becomes public, but there are times when players are upset that a teammate of theirs who was on the mound did not do something. And they get usually gets handled in-house. I mean, I, I don't know the last time I saw a story that was like, oh, such and such team is dealing with internal conflict because Gavin Dawson didn't throw it, whatever. There are times when I think teams operate, they feel like it's an understood thing that you're going to go out and get someone's back, right? Like when you when you foul someone hard when they drive, it's not like in the timeout before you guys are like, hey, next time that guy's in the paint, you're going to foul him hard. No, guys take it upon themselves to... I think in this situation, if Andrew Heaney does something, then it's because there's an understanding that something needs to be done, that a message needs to be sent that you guys can throw inside on us but we're not just going to allow you to to miss a lot, yeah. right? If something is not done, I don't think it's Andrew Heaney ignoring the wishes of others. I think there probably is an understanding that, hey, you know what? Let's not worry about it. It's not, or if you want to look at it strategically, I think Baskey brought up a good point. They right now they they need you know to protect their bullpen. They're getting ready for 17 games in 17 days starting on Friday. Maybe we'll get him next time the Rays come. You know, the Rays come in the to our sixth place. July. Inning. Yeah, we'll get him in July yeah. before the All Star break. Yeah, no, yeah, just smash him in the sixth inning if you're Heaney. You don't have to do it in inning number one because I thought that was a great point by Basic as well. But I'm like, if you're Heaney, why don't you just keep it in your back pocket and then once you know your time is winding down and you start here, you pepper him one time. Hey, baseball error. He seems like an instigator too. That Heaney. He, I'll tell you this. So Heaney's a huge basketball fan, right? Big Oklahoma City Thunder fan from there. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I felt the need to add that in, but I just did. Uh, he he is a great teammate, and there is a reason why uh, he wanted to be back because he fits in so well with the clubhouse, and I think he understand. I think the guys understand 
him and and he th- they appreciate what he brings to the table. What did you think about Dunning last night? Really good. Change up was was really impressive. Hey, Fork ball? Did we, hey, did no, it's yeah, it was ball? just it was just the change. Okay, just the change. Yeah. I uh, at the end of the day, there are guys who can get away with not being big strikeout pitchers, but the numbers show that if you want a better chance of sustainable success, missing bats is huge. And he missed bats at a really high rate, specifically with the changeup, uh, but the slider as well. And it was really fun to watch. How was, you, uh, were you surprised about Foscu being the reason to get called up? No, I, I'd, I'd be surprised if they're like, hey, Justin Foscu is going to be our everyday third baseman. But I don't think that's the plan. I think Justin Foscu will platoon at first. Uh, when they're, when there's lefty on the mound, he'll play first. They'll find other ways for him to get in there. Uh, you know, it can be a bat off the bench, but I, they're kind of at a point with Foskey where I, there's just not, I don't want to say there's zero value to him being in the minors, but if you have an opportunity to bring him up and, and give him a chance, he's earned that. There, there's really not a whole lot he needs to prove to you in the minors. Did Wyatt Langford read that play right last <laughs> night? I, I thought your question to, to Mike was an awesome question about the, the pitchers throwing, yeah. Hey, whether I felt like that the way that the pitcher was, he got carried to the plate, yeah. with his glove being on that side, yeah. No, yeah. that that was that was a great point. I uh, I think you read it right. The in, the instincts were there, right? Like I think yeah. I think you're you're pumped about the instincts. It didn't work out, but he could run. Yeah, oh, dude, he, he put a run. lot of pressure. Fly. It was yeah. chaos on that infield when yeah. he was running around those bases. He is, yeah, he is. Like that's I think the Mike Trout comparisons. I'm not saying he's going to have that career. You know, if he does, amazing. But like, that's the thing. Mike Trout, ton of power, but he flies, right? And, right? and White Langford can really get going. How much of a concern is Josh Young being hurt? It stinks. I, I don't think that the comparisons to his the team's performance when he was at last year totally fair because the bullpen was not impacted by Josh Young's absence. Third baseman collectively hit 150 uh, when he was out. I, and they were that was at the back end of dealing with all these injuries. It's like, oh my gosh, again, again, again. Uh, it's not a good thing, but if this team is a great team and we believe they have a chance to be a great team, then you got to be able to overcome something like this. I think my uh, one of my favorite stats going right now as it regards the Rangers is Evan Carter being 0 for 11, but having an OBP of 389. Yeah, Four yeah. all the walks. It's unbelievable. Insane. Yeah, it's awesome. For sure. But my favorite stat going around all of baseball right now is the Oakland A's. They had five errors last night, 13 errors in their first five games, the most by a team since 1906. As many fans as they had in the building their last game, too. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Jared. See you guys. This Have a great night. This one's for you. This one's for you. <laughs> Everyone gets an error. Everyone. All right, the pregame is coming up here at 5.15, the first pitch at 5.50. Hope you're enjoying this uh, Ranger season just as much as we are. Okay, we will have uh, a little bit of a shorter show tomorrow, and we will join it after the Rangers game. Tomorrow's first pitch, the finale, will be at 12.10. And uh, that means we'll be on about, I don't know, 3.30 or so. That, that post-game show going to go about we'll 35, here. 40 minutes or so. Yeah, we'll be hanging out, watching the game, cheering these guys on to victory, and then uh, joining you for the rest of the G-Bag Nation into the evening about 3.30 or so. All right, thanks uh, to uh, Chris Strong taking care of you. Uh, our substitute pimp of the weekend for Lucius Alexander, who shall return next week. Thanks to Carter Freeman coordinating that video. You can watch us at 105 thefancom Twitch, and YouTube. Of course, Woolchuck and Chia follow. And uh, for Brian Broaddus, I'm Gavin Dawson. Until tomorrow after the game, you're going home with the G-Bag Nation. Addies. Hi, I'm Jeff.